Good morning and welcome to day two of the Hong Kong Football Club Tradition 10s. It's a big exciting day, eh? A big exciting day. <laughs> it's 8.30 down here in Happy Valley. Uh, a little bit of an overcast day. Again, though, don't let that fool you. It's not chilly. It's quite warm. We are expecting a little bit of uh, rain maybe in a couple hours. I don't think anything uh, too hectic. Um, Game one. It's building up to be a great day, I think. Um, tropics of everyone New Guinea to the field, on please. a public ho holiday here in Hong Kong. If you've got nothing better to do, you should come down here and watch a great day of rugby. We had a great day yesterday, Kim. Oh, I had a super fun day yesterday. Um, and I was really lucky because I was here for the last game of the day, uh, which was part of the men's competition, uh, Hong Kong Football Club, home team. Um, we're playing Scottish Exiles. Um, but we've got exciting things happening here. We've got Women's Cup Qualifier 1 on. On screen, you can see Papua New Guinea's team. They'll be taking on Haywood Tropics. I think it's going to be a really tough game for them. Yes, uh, Haywood looked very good early on yesterday, but I think they'll be disappointed with their later on performances. Um, and there's, there's Haywood Tropics now on screen in their bright orange attire. Uh, but the uh, so this is uh, cup cup quarter final. Uh, the winners of this go into the semi-finals, and the losers uh, go into the the women's bowl. I think is yeah. correct. This Papua New Guinea team uh, showed some really good individual skill sets and talents. Uh, haven't always been the most clinical or or discipline, but you can expect some fun stuff from them. On the Hayward Tropic side, really look out for number 16, Kelsey Tinetti. Um, she's the leading try scorer of the whole tournament at the moment. Um, she's certainly been a big threat for Hayward Tropics. We're going to kick off. Quite a short one right down the center there. And that kicks off day two of the Hong Kong Football Club Tradition 10s. A little bit of a scramble, um, and PNG have managed to turn it over. Papua New Guinea, this is actually their, their national side, and they're getting an opportunity to play such a wide variety of like, really big international talent at this tennis competition, so it's awesome to have them here. Both their men's and women's teams are playing. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's interesting to see in a different style. Uh, like you were saying, maybe a lack of organization and team drills, but there's certainly some individual talent out there. Yeah. Uh, they had a few problems with the scrum yesterday. Uh, maybe they've fixed that overnight uh, in lots of training sessions, which these team, yeah. these young people do these days. Uh, but let's see. As yeah, so we bind up for the first five-on-five five scrum of the day. Just a reminder, in tense rugby, only the nine can get the ball, as we'll see a lot of pressure applied to the nine. Tropics are running it beautifully, though. Oh, some beautiful hands. And that is the danger player we spoke about earlier, Kelsey Tinetti. She's passed off to Olive Watherson. Yeah, and a beautiful try there to start our day. Yeah, the, the thing you notice there is that they had, uh, she had support all the time. She could pass at any moment. Uh, and of course, she picked the timing perfectly. But um, the Tropic side were putting a lot of support with that. And that made it a lot easier to score. Yeah, they have like three dangerous players in there. It's a good run also from 18, Dice Falafaga. Conversion uh, is successful, so straight off the bat, we are already 7 0 in the favor of Tropics. No. Tropics, of course, are coached by legendary player Heather Fisher, and you can see her just in front of the commentary box yelling support and advice to the team. Yeah, I think you can hear her voice in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Number 12, Tess Press with the kickoff, she's gone a bit deep to the right. Not the keenest take, but Papua New Guinea come away with it. Yesterday, they chose to just crash up the middle, really uh, backing their physicality as a team. Oh. 
is a good example. <laughs> so, moving it along nicely. Well, oh, we found a bit of space. You sort of get the feeling is they could just create some space. They, they could easily manufacture a try. And while they didn't have a successful day yesterday, they, they always look dangerous. Um, they, yeah, they really did play some great rugby. Um, they scored some really good tries. Uh, to look out on Papua New Guinea's team, number 15, Joanne Laguna. She scored two tries, three conversions yesterday. Well, um, what do you think the tactics are for uh, Tropics? They, they can obviously see a long run and the tournament for today. There's going to be a lot of games for them. Um, they just need to basically keep their skills, keep their uh, game plan going without putting in too much effort because they'll need that energy later on in the day. Um, oh, running beautiful hard lines there. Number 12, Tess Perez taking it through. for the big pass out wide. Oh, that's a lovely that's a bit lovely. of running there. Kelsey Tonetti once again. Oh, unselfishly passes back to Olive Wathaston again. They're just really linking up well today. Yeah, Same uh, duo as before. They are over for try time. Yeah, looking, uh, well, looking very confident, I'd say. They're certainly looking a lot more together than they did yesterday. Um, we talk about this a lot. A lot of these teams don't train together. They're from all over the world. Tropics in particular has players from all over the world. Um, and you sort of come together and you play in this high-level competition with a lot of play <laughs> like really good players from everywhere. It takes a couple day days for everyone to a uh, games for everyone to find yes, a group. Yes, uh, and clearly what we saw is you know everyone on the pitch has a lot of talent, and um, and you know. You've got to work as a team so you can release players, give them space and release them. And um, that's how it would actually run forward. I think they've got really a, a very, very powerful side and they should be looking uh, for a, a great tournament. Oh, I'm pushing a knock on there and a take. We're going to play advantage. Chuck's moving the ball nicely. It's a bit messy here. Ah, oh, few too many rolls there. <laughs> Breakdown has uh, been refed very strictly. Um, and you'll see holding on. Ooh, big tackle. She's not back to just have a breather there, get a run into the right spot. Oh, refs having none of that. Oh. I did have a little chat yesterday with someone who said often at the start of the day, yes, refs like yeah. to lay down the law, remind everyone what they're going to be refing strictly, what they're going to let not slide. Yeah, it's the... So. Well, this whole tournament is a massive thing for a tournament for local referees in Hong Kong. We bring in some international referees, but for them it's like their own local tournament. They, they can't referee in the Hong Kong Seven, so... This is the biggest tournament they get to referee in the local circuit. So there's a lot of competition for them to qualify for the, the big matches at the end of the day. So everybody's on edge here, I think. Nice fella, Barge. Strong drive from her, great support there. Tess Perez looking to move the ball right. Francis pushing up through the centre. Eloise Hayward pops in at nine. Oh, they've got a bit of space out right. We've got to retain the ball to get it there. Yeah. I think it, you know, Papua New Guinea there are not really putting much pressure on uh, Tropics. Uh, the Tropics team uh, can practice their moves, really. Um, uh, if they could... PNG could just put a little bit more pressure on them, uh, you would see mistakes coming up and perhaps opportunities coming from it. Um, easier said than done, though, to be fair. Big 
big push there from Tropics. trying to find some space with a little offload. It's been stolen though by Tropics. They are dangerously close to their try line. Almost. And that's the... Oh. oh, trying to come back with that little inward ball. You get the feeling it's the final pass that's uh, causing them and uh, trouble in and not the, you know they really should be way ahead in this game and it's the final pass is going to ground each time making the the job not quite as easy as perhaps i said earlier for tropics papua new guinea have done a great job of getting that ball back but they're right on their own try line there ball still in the hands of the papua new guinea ladies Got about a minute so, left of this first half. We're bringing on a sub. They really want to take advantage with the uh, the, the one player down. Uh, so uh, PNG have managed to slow that down really rather well. <laughs> good really tactic in the, all forms tactic. of rugby. Yeah, you really want to break the momentum in a. And the team's near the near to scoring. Oh, under pressure, they come away with the ball. The dummy pass. Oh. oh, but it's found the hands of Dice Falafaga, and she's going to punish PNG with that, and gets over for his, a beautiful try there. Yeah, um, the coaches used to call that to me as aimless play and that nobody knew quite what you were going to do with it and then um, that is a consequence of it and that nobody else in the team knew what she was going to do with that ball um, from a tropics point of view though they'll they'll be very pleased with those seven points and i, I think that's that's probably where they wanted to be at this stage um, if you, that try is going to bring us into half time of the first game at Hong Kong Football Club Tradition 10s. We're looking at 19 points for Hayward Tropics and, and a donut still for Papua New Guinea ladies. Yeah, no, it's uh, well, it's building up to be really rather a nice day, I think. That's going to be the, the point. The music starting, the party. Give it a couple of hours, perhaps. <laughs> it's but it's going to be a long day throughout the day. And um, I think the, the best feeling we got from yesterday was you felt the Thames was back to its old traditional, rather great day of rugby, a fun social day for the, for the whole family. Mm. And I think um, many, many people will be coming down uh, for hopefully what will be a full house um, for the major matches this afternoon. No, absolutely. And obviously we've got uh, seven stars from all around the world in town at the moment. Uh, a lot of them have been I've been down here at the Tens. Uh, yesterday I spotted Michael Hooper and a bunch of the Aussie boys. <laughs> this morning uh, I walked past some of the Black Ferns, uh, including Portia Woodman. They're here to cheer on. There's a lot of Australian and New Zealand development players playing in the Tens, so they're, they're here to watch a bit of rugby themselves before well, they've got to get real competitive. Uh, but we've also had people like Gordon Titchens, who used to be the Hong Kong Seven, uh, New Zealand Sevens coach for many years. And he was the first coach to seed the Tens with uh, seven squad players from New Zealand. And um, he, he uh, retired from that position for New Zealand. He's come out of retirement and he's looking after the seven squads for China. And he's got an eye on several of the Chinese Tens teams at this tournament. So, like I said, we're coming back to the days when we're, we're getting all the best players and coaches coming down to the tournament. So... Here's to a great day. It's going to be a great day. We're getting ready for the second half. You just tuned in. Hayward Tropics are 17 up over Papua New Guinea, still looking to score. Tropics are uh, getting ready to kick it off. Oh, they've gone really high. Not sure oh, if it'll make 10. Almost. Oh, a Papua New Guinea. Come in and touch it, so we'll play on. Dace Falafaga there, fighting away. 
Olive Wackerston scored two tries, moves it along. So many dangerous players in this Tropics team. When we commentated last yesterday, the ah, oh, well played. Oh, we're fighting towards the try line here. Traps have come away. They'll take a quick little tap there from Eloise Hayward. She goes for the skip pass. Finds Dace Falafaga. She's shut down by two players from Papua New Guinea. It's a big fight there. Great little push. We've got some space. Well played. And Olive Wetherston. That is a hat trick for number 15, Olive Wetherston. She's just having a fun morning. She's down having a here. good start. She was obviously had a quiet night last night. Uh, but I think, uh, again, they, they, the whole team are involved in that try. And, and I think that's really what they're going to have to rely on rather than ones and twos. And as we said earlier, there's a lot of talent in that whole squad for the Tropics. Not the easiest kick, but a beautiful strike there. So close. Very strong the version performing test short. Hey, with Travis, are now 22-0 up over Papua New Guinea. Really looking so con in control of this game. Papua New Guinea gather the ball. Oh, she takes it herself. There's nobody home, but can she outrun the three players chasing her? Kelsey Tonetti says no. She does such a good job She's to get around, up. get yeah. over, and wins her team the penalty. What an excellent display of defense there from Tonetti. And now Haywood Tropics are on the ball. Wow. It's Olive Wathiston again. She's searching for space. Beautifully shut down there by Pinji, but they've really got to get that her to the ground. There we go, Papua New Guinea. Big skip pass there by Tinetti. Doesn't quite find the play, but it's all right. Eliana Rashum fighting, fighting, fighting down this right wing. Oh, she's put to ground. Great to see them using the artificial turf. Um, Hong Kong based uh, Taffy is heading towards the try line. Oh, she's inches away. Olive Wathiston, once again. Oh, but she's flung out the well, sidelines there. Now, I just noticed there when they were passing, they're quite content to let the ball bounce because it's artificial surface. Uh, you always get a clean bounce and you can anticipate it. So it is a tactic you can use carefully in tens. Um, and that's maybe something they learned from yesterday. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it creates, it, well, it makes it easier to do miss passes and things. Yeah, we did chat a little bit about it yesterday. A lot of teams are probably used to playing on real grass pitches. Yes. Real grass varies a lot. <laughs> Uh, can the, be rocky, can be muddy, it can have like uh, Exactly, so you get a consistent bounce and also the speed is, is always the same coming off it. Um, and um, you, you, you can make yourself look at uh, a real Charlie if you get it wrong, but um, I just noticed that that was almost a deliberate, that the player waited for the ball to bounce. Oh, well, kick has not gone out here. Papua New Guinea uh, we're kicking after a, a high tackle from Tropics this is um, put number nine Ree Parker in the, the naughty seat she'll be there for two minutes uh, the tournament director coming in and helping us with our commentary today it's, uh, <laughs> it's a huge reduction here today. 
to get everything going. We've got multiple screens, we've got the live stream, we've got us chatting, we're trying our best. Papua New Guinea, though, they're on the attack. It's their danger lady, Marilyn Malt. I've really enjoyed watching her this tournament. Back into the hands of Malt once again. Now, can they make space? Lovely pass out to the wing. Oh, a little flick through under the legs from, from 15. Jo Joanna, Joanna Laguna. Laguna. Yes. She scored two tries yesterday. Yeah. Tropics though, have come away with the ball. Oh, oh, they absolutely had space. I'm going to come back for a penalty. Ten minutes before the start of each game, seems to play point toss with the referees, please. I think everyone's quite happy to walk slowly towards, <laughs> towards yes. the scrum. I was thinking the same thing, they're letting the clock Have tick a little down. breather. It uh, might only be ten minutes aside, but it's a big field when you don't have 15 players. And, well, we're coming from Europe or... Uh, it, it's quite a warm day already, and it's only uh, 8.40 in the morning, so um, they'll be feeling it in the legs. Nice ball from Tropics. I love a skip pass. They found Kelsey Tonetti out there in the right wing. She is such a speedster when she gets going. She's looking for space, and that's enough. Tropics score another try. She is just being fantastic to watch. And I'm yes. sure she's got a lot more tries in her today. We've got a full day of rugby, of course. Um, finals uh, are on at 6.35 for the women and 7.05 for the men. So it's going to be a, a yes. whole day of delightful rugby. If you like rugby, and uh, and yeah, a whole day with fans come down, and the atmosphere will build up. So it starts off low in the morning, the first few games, and then it will build. Uh, but every game is a knockout game of, um, after this this first uh, set of games this morning. You're playing for um, quarterfinals and semi-finals. So yeah, we played uh, all, all our play pool for. games yesterday. They're done and dusted, and, and now it's it's a day of finals rugby. Ball is out for Papua New Guinea. Oh, and play is in her way. It's been knocked on, so it's going to go back into the hands of Hayward Tropics. View of the bind there, and in in and out of goes to Hayward Tropics. Ah, oh, great communication there from Kelsey Tonetti. She passed inwards to Eloise Hayward. However, PNG have done a fantastic job of coming away with the ball. What can they do with it? They haven't had a huge amount of possession. Everyone looking a bit uncertain of what the next move is. Oof, breezing tackle there from Valley RFC's Taffy. Yes, that was... Uh, <laughs> well... Taffy Fetalago has been awesome this year. It certainly stopped the momentum. It was a great tackle. And all very legal and below... Uh, and uh, even with the new uh, rules that have been considered by the Rugby Union or World Rugby. Papua New Guinea getting a chance, gets the offload in nicely. Meryl Mull trying to make something happen. Catherine Wenner never scared to run straight into contact there. It's the best phase of play, actually, for Papua New Guinea. Um, Beautiful pass there from 
Joanne Lagona. Uh, the, uh, she's their leading uh, point oh, scorer. Oh, that is just a thing of beauty. Can they find a little bit of space by There's a pity there's nobody standing out here on the right wing for them. They're all quite bunched up together. Johanna Lagona is taking it. She's going to need support. Oh. <sighs> Big sigh from the crowd here as well. We all want to cheer on the, the underdog team. Uh, Puppy New Guinea certainly looking down on the feet. They're, uh, they're feeling the effects uh, as we've come to full time in this match. Uh, just playing oh, extra time at the moment. Beautiful little pop up there. By Tanetti, keeping the ball alive. Olive Wathiston. Not the cheating Puff. 10. Uh, Papua New Guinea conceding a few too many penalties here. Right at the death of the game. just kick it out, but... Uh, <laughs> oh. They're much better champagne rugby players. <laughs> So it's tens all Here about it. to it's entertainment, a, yes. A little bit more fun. Oh, but you do run the risk of giving the ball away to the other team. And we've got three quarters of the field to run. If you find a little gap, you could be away to the races. Everyone would love to see Hayward, to see PNG find Ooh. that score. I just love their fighting for every last breath of this game. Well, it's certainly for pride. So much pressure down there at number. the rack. Number five, Caitlin Hubbard taking no prisoners there. To win for Hayward Tropics the penalty. Maybe they'll choose to kick it out now. You can hear the bench calling time for Tropics. So oh, no. I think they... There <laughs> they are. And that is game one of game day one two. Over. Yes. The Hayward Tropics for their impressive 27 0 win over Papua New Guinea. I mean, that was a dominating performance from Tropics. Yes, I, I think we probably did expect that. But um, uh, again, a useful game for Tropics in that they um, played well as a team and they didn't overexert themselves. Whereas Papua New Guinea, especially at the end, did start to look uh, much better than they uh, began the first half. So I think it's uh, good to see, because uh, they still have a game to play, uh, I think, in the women's bowl competition. Yeah, so we've got, yeah, we've got um, bowl semi-finals on later. Tropics, of course, will go uh, on to the women's cup semi-final after this win. Okay. No time though to dwell <laughs> on, on any games played because yes. we've got to get straight into our next one. We've got Find Rugby Now, team in green. The team kicking off is the Shandong Rugby Club. Find Rugby Now found their groove in their last game of the day yesterday. It's taken them a little while. They're a, mi they're a, a mixed team. They've got a couple players based yeah. in Hong Kong. They've got a couple players from overseas. Shandong Rugby Club have come up from China. They look like they know each other really well and they're playing good single rugby. I think it'll be a really good uh, yes, toss up I, I, between these two. I think this would be a real competition. And difficult to pick who's likely to win in this one, I think. Shandong Rugby Club on their attack. And it looks like the tempo of the game is much faster than the previous game. Uh. Really good comms here from the Chinese team, speaking to each other, calling for the ball. Oh, big tackle there from Fine Rugby now. It's Montana Heslop plays on in Hong Kong. Oh, almost found a little bit of space, yes. Number 13, Zhang Jingying. This is great possession rugby. Uh, fine rugby now. I don't think have touched the ball yet. Uh. Phase after phase, Shandong rugby are putting together here. Uh, oh, set up for a mall. That's quite. We saw some really good uh, mall work last night at the end of the day. 
A lot of teams losing it to their advantage to get the penalty. Oh, beautiful tackle. tackle there. That's good rugby all round, actually, from both sides. It was great to see. As Xiang Xinying tackled, she was able to get the offload. However, now this is the danger player. Oh, if she gets a little bit of space. Emily Lecure, she is beautiful to, to watch run. It's great to see, isn't it? Shandong shut it down well, though, and they've come away with the possession. Ref Aggie Poon, former Hong Kong 7 star here. Find rugby now of the ball. They've gone with the kick. There's no one at home, so it's all about the chase. There's a great chase on 17. Song Wing Yang gets there first. Beautiful Look pass the off there. Yeah. There was the tackler was coming in, so there was a bit of pressure, but she still managed to get it out wonderfully. Han this Wing. This is impressive rugby, isn't it? it the pace has just gone up, as you said. Fantastic skills on display here. Phase after phase from Shandong Rugby Club. Not rolling away, fine rugby now. We see a lot of penalties for not rolling away and holding yeah. on. Uh, Mentioned it a few times. The refs are uh, uh, riffing quite quickly at the rack because we want this game to be moving. Yes, exactly. They want it's they fun. want it to be a fast tournament. They don't want to sp spend their time on set pieces and everything else like that. They want the ball in hand and. Uh, and that's why it's such an exciting format of the game. And they, I, I, I assume the referees have been told this very much as, uh, as a thing to look out for. Um, which is great for everybody watching and for the players as well. So. Fine rugby now, number six, Tyler Boerter, looking to apply pressure. Oh, oh, that fantastic. is just the most beautiful, <laughs> oh. beautiful line there from seven, Gao Xingyang. She gets a score right uh, under the post. Oh, what thing of beauty was that? That was absolutely fantastic. Very, very high level of skills. My morning is made already. Perfectly time pass. That, that was very good. Oh, uh, I, I can see that replay a few times, please. Uh, right. The conversion well, is over. Conversion is good. Put Shandong well. Rugby up 7 0. Oh, still got chills. There she goes. Just cannot defend that thing of beauty. Well, they're hitting the line at speed, but it, and the timing of that pass and the line was outstanding and a thoroughly deserved try. Um, we did say this is a team that's played together a lot, that often comes up when you know each other well, you know where your, your partners are going to be. Fine rugby now, though, they're on the fight. They're not going to sit down and give up. Emily Lakuru, got to be careful there, no hair tugging allowed. Straight into contact, Isabella Gonzalez, but Azuta Burgos. <laughs> well, it's the first we've really seen anything of fine rugby now in this match. Excellent support from fellow green players there. Montana Heslop. Heslop not finding any space, but she found Jade McGrath, who sends it out. That's Shea. Watu Herrera. Oh, just a little foot there, overtouch. Well, it, uh, it took uh, Shandong a long time to find space for a try. Um, and if you're in this game for uh, fine rugby now, they've really got to lay down a marker and come back from this. Uh, I think they certainly have the talent. But Shandong are playing very well. Um, and the one thing that is different from the game before is apart from the speed is there is real pressure on both teams when they have the ball the very aggressive defense shandong rugby on their attack again again they're looking dangerous here they do have space out wide song wing yang is on the wing 
She gets the oh. ball, but she can't hold on to it. Fine rugby now. I've gotten the ball back. Oh, Again, only to uh, give it away. Great defense. Shandong not wasting any time. No, Swung Cheng Cheng over the line there. It's in the corner. It's going to be a tricky kick. But you take those five points. And that came from their aggressive defense. Uh, very impressed with what I've seen from Shandong. Uh, the speed of play that they're, they're putting together here today is something uh, that I think uh, we'll enjoy. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of it in the tournament. Um, I think fine rugby now are a good side, so to make it this one-sided is really quite impressive. Um, I'm very, very interested to see. I think they can go further, but Shandong are obviously looking for to play in the major cup competition, and if you give them time, they, they look a really good side. So. High kickoff there. Fairly shallow, well taken by Fine Rugby now. It's number nine, Jade Wang. Good to see Fine Rugby now. There's certainly a lot of talent and, and some different techniques and ta tactics at hand. Should show them getting the ball at some point. They've still maintained possession, I think. Yes. Um, and some quick thinking, I think, is probably a good tactic. Holding answers, ref Aggie Poon. Shandong Rugby are on the attack. It's a pity. No, it's great to see that. It's a very... Um, Shandong's game is to play quickly, um, and uh, which is great entertainment for everybody watching the game. Uh, and uh, one thing you see is their passing is excellent, um, and it is creating space. There's an injury down to uh, fine rugby player, rugby now player. I uh, can't see who it is. Uh, hopefully nothing. <laughs> yes, hopefully too nothing serious. too bad. I don't think. Uh, uh, she looks like she's getting back up. Yeah, she looks okay. Good work Quick there. Quick pat on the back. That will make all the difference. So. Oh, I go go straight into scrum as well. <laughs> they build them tough. To Rugby now. Again, this is. And there's some real speed. You were mentioning that speed before. Uh, nicely brought down, but you, you get the feeling that uh, just given a little bit more space, mm. we'd, we'd see some uh, Oli Olympic style running in that. I'm sure Shandong Rugby were given strict instructions to shut down Emily Lakiru. She's going to start day one. It's going to bring us into half time here at the Hong Kong Football Club. Fine Rugby now yet to find a score, sitting at zero. Shandong have taken every opportunity yeah. and have come away with 12 points into yeah. the half.
Up, kicks us off for Green Fine Rugby now versus Red Shandong Rugby Club. Oh. Shandong oh. Rugby Club starting the half That's... on attack again. Will she be caught? She's been chased by Emily Lecou, the speedster, who gets to her, does get the tackle. And she got but the try. Over the line. Yeah. So close to being a try saving tackle. Well done to number 17, Song Wang Yang. Uh, do you think that was the, uh, could have been the game breaking try, I think? Um, Fine Rugby now would have been looking to come back and get points on the board as soon after half time as they possibly could. Um, and that would have been your team talk at half time. So. Uh, as with all great things and great plans, uh, they can go wrong right from the start. I mean, it's absolutely the way any team would want to start the half for Shandong Rugby Club. Stump down, get some points. They're now 19-0 up if you find rugby now. Oh, kickoff has gone straight up. And we'll come back to the halfway line. Okay, so. Well, it's time for Fine Rugby now to do something with this ball. Uh, they need to get points out of this possession. Ah, oh, great little bit of running there. Offload. Finds, finds the player. Matana Heslop there avoids the tackle. She's looking for someone to parts too she finds familiar hands this is good support there at the rack Heslop again decides to go right into the hands of Amy Eliza uh, this is better from fine rugby now they're playing some better rugby they're under a lot of pressure defensively from uh, Shandong but they're playing good rugby themselves and they, they should back themselves beautiful maybe a bit more. offloads Heslop goes for the little kick pass oh she finds oh. the hands of Emily Lecou just got an option there from Heslop and they were so close to getting that right yes that and such fine measures can change the whole game but that would have uh, well it's up to them to go and find another opportunity to do this so. but it makes for an enthralling game to watch for for us down here at the football club at the tens today oh absolutely if you're into entertaining rugby this is the place to be it's a warm-up before our Hong Kong Sevens. It kicks off on Friday at the Hong Kong Stadium. Shandong, ball in. Here we go. Oh, scrum up, just there's couldn't hold quite, back there. Yeah, there's some quite savvy uh, play going on. Old, old hands rugby being there. She worked for the penalty and she got it. And, uh, oh. and they've decided to go for the scrum. Presumably that will take time and therefore mm. um, that, that will benefit Shandong. I think, yeah, quite feeling savvy thinking. Feeling here. confident in their scrumming yeah. as well. Uh, Kelly, the, the scrum map knows the rules well and she used it to her advantage, as you said. Charlotte Medulla going to have to hold herself back. But she's keeping the the fine rugby now defence by this fast movement and fast thinking. It keeps their defence always checking and always keeps them on the back foot, and that makes it difficult to put pressure on. So yeah, it's been super uh, play by very Xiaoying. impressive. She moves the ball, oh, big crash there from Ren Ziu. And the backup support in that there was. Oh, heavily running there from Shandong Rugby Club. Just moving the ball back across the opposite direction. Such a little space down the middle there. Keep moving right. They do have a little bit of space there. Excellent tackle there. Textbook stuff, really. From Alessandra Benda Cruz. They're playing excellent rugby here. This, this is really well drilled rugby. They know exactly what each person is doing. 
Shandong Rebbe Club putting in phase after phase. There is a player down. Gao Yang, two-time try scorer. Uh. Oh, oh, we found a little bit of space. Speedy chase that there from Alessandra speed, Cruz, but she's not going to get there. And once again, oh, we find Song oh, Wang Yang, Yang under the posts. Oh, that is, uh, yeah. Beautiful breakaways from Shandong Rugby Club. Their, their uh, ball retention is really good, so they're putting in phase after phase, and at some point, you're going to find a hole. Uh, yes, it, it, it's... Uh, it really is teamwork. You can. Everybody knows what they're what they're meant to be doing, where the ball is, what their job now is when they're away from the ball, who's going to provide the sport. Um, it's very impressive. It's a very very well drilled side. Um, and then you add a lot of talent in that, and there's clearly some good athletes there. Um, the this is a side the to try. watch. Impressive chase there from fine rugby Niles Alessandro Bender Cruz. Just couldn't quite get in a tackle. The chase is hard enough, and then you've got to tackle someone before the line. <laughs> yes, you've got to you've got to do all the parts, not just some of it. Yes. Shandong with a kickoff. Try scoring team boys with a kickoff for tens. Oh, they've done super well to try to retain the ball, but fine rugby now's Jade McGrath stealing it away. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Fine rugby on, now. Them, Have a little moment. What can they do with it? Helena Duble. Oh, oh, she's knocked it forward. It's gone into the hands uh, of Shandong Rugby tackle. Club. Yes. And they're just there, ready to react when something goes wrong. They've got a player out wide. Oh, is she going to be able to go all the way? Han Wenkyu. Excellent tackle, uh, but the support was there. Beautiful is, offload to Zhang yeah. Ru, who gets over. That is fantastic rugby. Yeah, it's... Uh, they're, it's re they're playing reactive rugby. The ball popped up, they took it. They were in position. There was an extra player out wide, and the support ran with her. So when she did get mowed down, there um, were two options even to pass to they're looking very very strong i'd say uh, it's a very good side uh, conversion kick is over adding the extra points there today we're 33 nil up for shandong rugby club we've got about two minutes left to play Well, I must admit, I thought the game would be much closer. So Shandong have really come back and, and seem to be playing at a much higher level than mm. they did yesterday. Absolutely. They're certainly putting their hands up as a team to watch today. Kickoff's gone a bit deeper this time. Beautifully taken there by Fine Rugby now. They choose to kick themselves. There is a sweeper at back, though. Liu Xingyu. And Nug Rugby Club passing beautifully again. The players all just seem to be in the right positions. Nicely taken down by Maya Sangala. It's the recent try scorer. She finds her teammate, Xiao Cheng Cheng. Beautiful steal, though, by Fine Rugby now. Chosen to kick uh, again. It's gathered by Gao Xiaoyang. Yeah, who's been a real live wire throughout this game. Um, she's had a great game herself. Fine rugby now, retaining possession. Got a lot of players out on this right again. Players beautifully taken to the ground there. Looking for space up the middle, not finding any. Moving the ball so quickly yeah, out of the breakdown. Yeah, and then this we'll is just real. go again, go again. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's simple rugby, just keep possession, don't be afraid to take the tackle and, and give the pass. And again, as soon as I say yeah. that, uh, that whole At touch some point, someone makes a mistake, <laughs> and that's an unfortunate way to end a game uh, that uh, yeah. was so positive and exciting for Shandong Rugby Club. An extremely commanding performance there. They've won 33 0 of a fine rugby club. They'll be moving on to the Women's Cup semi final, which will be on later today. And it's. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little change coming up in the commentary box today. Mark Fatilofa, fats to those who know him. How good is this? Player in, ex player in Hong Kong, ex coach in Hong Kong. Love, love. The vibe the Tens brings to the city every year. It's a wonderful way to kickstart the Sevens weekend. Now yeah, we started with some exciting rugby and we're moving in straight away. There's, there's barely any time to breathe over here. 100%. I tell you, it's impressive walking around the change room, just the size of these athletes, having these athletes oh. in town. It's, it's, it's quite a thing for Hong Kong rugby. It adds such a vibe to the city, I must say. Always fun, always fun, Simmons Week. Keen for this game, we've got Shogun Rugby uh, against Tokyo Sankey Phoenix. Sankey Phoenix are having a tough tournament this year. They were finalists last year. They just don't feel like they've hit their stride yet. And we've got a few Hong Kong based players. You can see number 15, Bella Milo, there warming up. <laughs> Hastings, Lea Tua as well. Tokyo Sankyu Phoenix. Tokyo Sankyu Phoenix playing in the Maroon. They've kicked it off. They were finalists last year. Jeez. The competition must have picked up this year because it's pretty physical out there. Wow, that's physical. That's a good way to start the game. Get your defensive sets in like that, get the shoulders in. It's always a positive for the defense moving forward. Shogun, of course, have been playing some excellent rugby. They're no strangers that's to a tens tournament. You notice they're not competing in the rucks. They'd rather get their line speed up. They're just putting them down. Players look out for scrum half in the Ooh, back. First, first bite, first bite. Ref says let it go. Piper Simons there, she nice. scored four tries yesterday. Oh, Good vision. Later. This is key, they should finish this. Look inside, she didn't bother to look. Still choosing to fight right near the sideline. back. Oh, that's a good, good, good defensive set there, finding their feet, looking up, their line's intact. Short run. Had some contact there in the middle of the field. Oh. Shogun rugby there under immense pressure oh. at this rack. Tokyo Phoenix have managed to turn it over. That is very impressive. That breakdown work, that counter attack, much needed for the defense. Tokyo Phoenix having a chance and attack here. Bella Milo in with the support. They continue to move the ball left. Running number five, Yumi Okuroda. Into the hands Good of space. Mana Furuta. She goes to ground. A pick and go, a rarity. Meguta Gak takes it herself. They, they need some direction. Bella will give a short ball. Nice. Cleans in. Beautiful clean out the rack there. Whoa. They are looking for a ninth. They're going to be under pressure now if no one comes in quickly enough. Well done, Phoenix. Just felt like Phoenix hadn't quite found 
the top end of how they could play yesterday. So we're hoping today that maybe they're in their groove a bit more. Wow, that was a fast start. They'll be sucking in the big ones right now. They'll be pretty tired. That was a long period then. Is this our first scrum? It's our first scrum in this game. That's a good one. It's gone. Piper Simons there in with the ball. She's a nifty little player. Ooh. Scored four conversions yesterday. She's moved the ball out well. Great feet. Gets the edge. Now they're in oh. behind them. Wide breakdown's key here. Logan, Phoenix not putting me. scorer yesterday. Yeah. Oh, good read. Great read on D. Offload causes trouble. It's great offload. Piper just couldn't keep her hands on it, but we've retained possession. They're still going. Oh, have they found a little bit of space? Logan's looking. She's brought to ground. Places it beautifully. Look how quickly they're in. Clean. They're able to get the ball out of the breakdown there. Oh, almost some space. There. That's immense work. Holding on. Immense Beautiful work. Beautiful penalty one there for Tokyo Phoenix. Bella just pointed to the corner. I think she needs uh, some oxygen. Gather their thoughts here. They've been on a rough end of some defensive sets here. Their first real attacking opportunity. Kuroda there with the kick. You can see a nice line out. Tokyo Sankey Phoenix edging towards their try line. Nice, good start. Here we go. Strong carry from the 12. The reverse play. It's a set. Ooh, they set them up with a set play there to come blind with an inside ball. Unlucky. It's frustrating they've given away that. An opportunity there for ball in hand. So early too in their attacking phase. If they had a bit more patience, they bring could... Bringing uh, on some subs. Tokyo Phoenix like to bring on a whole lot of ones. Yeah. I think they need it after that defensive set. So they're about three or four on the, on the head then. Second scrum of the match. Oh, bit of pressure there. Bit of pushback. Oh, we're going to reset that. Tokyo Phoenix started yesterday out with a 21-21 draw against Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea scored all their tries right at the front. They lost China five stars and certainly be looking for a win here. Some committed defense then. Some of the players feeling it out there. But back straight into it. Nice, finds a weak shoulder, goes in, makes three or four yards. Oh, oh some strong running up the middle here. We go straight to the edge. Shogun not shying away from the tackle. See, this, this Phoenix defense is stubborn. Oh, Here we go again. And there she is. Oh, great Here little kick. Go. She's going to need a chaser kick, though. It's Piper Simons. But she, she needs to bounce. It. She's been Got hounded it. down by a couple of defenders. But she'll make it, and she's going to make a conversion. She'll need to take easier by getting right under the post. Beautiful try there from 
Piper Simons for Shogun Rugby. I was just giving them the rep about their defense because they've been quite stubborn and it takes a long range effort there. There's Piper Simons, the conversion. Had the vision to put up the kick in because no one followed him in. I think everyone's a bit out of breath. She goes under the black dot, converts her own try. Here's the replay. Just such beautiful vision there from Piper Simons. Oh, patient on that pickup. Good to see. First try of the tournament for her, and it's a beauty. <laughs> that was a wobbly old kickoff. Oh, breakdown. I'd like to see Tokyo Sankey Phoenix can do something now with ball in hand. Advantage. Oh, yes. A little chip Don't and chase. No oh, oh well what done. a beautiful bounce was that, Mark? Yes, that was class. And the vision to see that early on. That might be the advantage gone, mine. Here we go. That's a great. Oh, oh so I'm, beautifully taken there. I, Number 13. You're still playing the advantage offside. Yeah. With these two defenses being so stubborn, I think the chip and chase is helping break down that line. We've seen right. two effective kicks thus far. Yeah, opens up a little bit of opportunity. 100%. Oh, a little set play. Oh, the Knicks are running it. There you go. Going to that left hand edge. Nice. Getting some yards there. Breakdown's key. Oh, oh big offload there. causing problems. Oh. Blow of a scramble on the ground here. <laughs> that yeah. was an impressive half. Goodness, a half time just snuck up on me. We're, we're one try difference here. We're going into the half. 7 0 Shogun over Tokyo Sankey Phoenix. It was a beauty of a try by Shogun Rugby. Um, some great individual play there from Piper Simons. Really, both teams are in it. 100%. 100 t both teams are really going well. It just takes one or two moments of brilliance, and the game's broken wide open. Uh, Hyper Williams. Went herself, chopped off the left foot twice, and then decided that her support wasn't with her and put that long range kick and showed the patience to convert that and put it under the black dot. Oh, it's good to be back in Hong Kong, huh? Rugby just gets more and more exciting as the the games go on. Got a full full day of rugby fun for you here at the Hong Kong Football Club. Yeah. It's public uh, holiday here, so if you're out and about, bring the family down. See some world-class athletes running around. I think there's a few future All Blacks, future couple of Springboks, couple of English pros running around. And, uh, and if you're lucky in the stands, you might see some some seven stars having a relaxed day out. I mentioned earlier, I bumped into a couple of Black Ferns on arrival. Yeah, the Ferns were here early, weren't they? They were, they were marked out on that bottom right-hand corner. And the Aussie, Aussie men were here yesterday cheering on uh, the PAC, lots of Aussie players in it. Yeah, Aussies, thanks for coming, guys. We're half time here in the Women's Cup quarter final. It's RKS Shogun Rugby, Tokyo Sankey Phoenix. We've got one more women's quarter final coming up after this game. It'll be China Five Stars versus home team Hong Kong Football Club and the Texas Ice. And then we're moving into the men's ball semi. Wow. Try scorer Piper Simons there. Yeah, just and a full day of fun rugby, Mark. It just flies. It just flies past. Our Big rest of the day is uh, Rory Crombie. Those of you who know domestic rugby and Hong Kong will know him well. Deep kick there. Bella having to chase all the way to the try line. She won't be happy about that. Nudge. Thank Thankfully, she has a decent boot, though. But yes. it's Samba 
Oh, good spot down the blind. I tell you, this game is nicely balanced right now. Not much in it. Shogun Rugby looking 13 to be shooting up the middle. 12, sorry, number 12, the headgear. She's going up early, cutting the field in half. They've come away with the penalty of Shogun Rugby. Yeah, Rory not happy about not rolling away from the breakdown. Surely it's a tap and go. Here we go. Find the edge. The old laser move. <laughs> Strong carry. Breakdown's crucial here. Shogun Rugby slowing the ball down. Ooh, not to Rory's liking. Good. Matt straight in defense there. Again, still searching the space. Oh, that's a great steal. Be oh. Again, what's... Rory's having none of it, though. No, he's got zero patience on the rollaway. Oh. Tried it a few times about it. The, the refs have been told to, to really be strict to the breakdown. And be consistent would be a good one, too. There we go. Harming everything down a bit here. Players get into position. They'll go to the corner. Good ploy here. They've got some deadly edge players, but will they just go up the middle with the forwards? Would Shogun compete or will they have all ten men with their feet on the ground ready to defend? Hyper Simon's doing all the work here. Very good oh. hooker as well. A little bit messy, but nice work. Good defensive setup. They challenged that line out and they got the goods from it. Well done. Shogun have to show some some fire here to get out of their half. They've been in here now for close to three minutes. And they just have to need a solid exit ploy. And get down on the right side of the field and build some pressure. This is an exit scrum for the Shoguns. For the Phoenix, sorry. So loopy old pass to Bella. She drills it down, finds the 10 meter line. It'll roll all the way to halfway. It won't even go to touch. Oh. It stays in. Really thought that one was going to roll yeah. out. Yeah. Good pass from number eight. Well, Finding the opposite edge. Ooh, Rory. Shogun. Didn't think so. Shogun Rugby trying to find their form, but it looks like they found a little bit of space instead. Oh. Excellent tackle. She oh. gets the offload, finds her teammates. Offload. Oh, he catches that one, Rory. Good work. Here we go. That was great counterattack from the Shoguns. Shoguns. Got a feel for Bella. That was a great kick. It's an excellent Did kick there, but props to Shogun Rugby. Getting back in time. Nat Flair's getting back to, to make something of it. Yeah, and being effective on the way back. Jeez, they almost turned it on its head. A good kick from Phoenix almost turned into a try for the Shoguns. Out to the edge. 2 3 cut. Oh, old school. Beautiful little bit go. of run lines going on there. Miller down on the ground. Whoa, oh. Some physicality on the poor halfback. But then gained powerful, powerful wall. That's nice. Me, yes, good work. Off the feet. She didn't want it. Tokyo Phoenix with the ball, but under so much pressure here from Shogun Rugby. Yeah. They're rushing up in the fence. They're in their face. Yes. Over in Bodies that everywhere. Here they come. They've got a nice little line up here. Someone's got to do something. Beautiful Great cut. ball from Bellamy. Here we there. go. Oh, oh, tell you what, that's forward. Rory's on it. Good and work, Rory. Blitz. 
to her with a desperate pass as she was falling to the ground. It's gone forward, but awesome. Just beautiful play there. That has been absolutely some remarkable play. That, that's the first time they actually stretched their legs with the balls. It's going to haunt Sting for a bit. Hey, Sting, Leia Tua has played a rugby in Hong Kong this year for Valley RFC. I think that's the time they built more than three or four phases. And then they come around with that, they sweep across with about five or six players and Bella drops someone in with a cut. A little glimpse of really what Tokyo Sanky Phoenix are capable of. I hope we see it a bit more. Oh, that's a big scrum. Rory not happy with the front rows going up. Going to take Tap. it again. Phoenix can just keep them scrummaging. I think they'll probably get them in the scrum. That information's coming from an uh, inside center, so do with it what you can. <laughs> Got some big cheers here as the, the crowds grow a bit. We've got eight women's teams and 12 men's teams playing in this competition. That's the first time, isn't it? Jeez, that's so good. Big scrum. Oh, they went for it. Oh, good pressure. Oh, excellent pressure, pressure, pressure. there. Surely she was. Sh yes. Yuma Kuroda has been immense for Tokyo Sanki Phoenix this tournament. What a cultured little right foot there. Oh, the speed oh. to get back. Watch them. They're deadly on the counter. Hina Hamano has almost done it. But Shogun Rugby snatched that ball away and they're coming away with the penalty as well. They didn't need that, Phoenix. They didn't need that penalty. I know it's only th under three minutes to go. You don't need to make things happen straight away. Let them kick out, they'll get the ball back. Now they'll kick it out and get their own ball. Shogun Rugby's defense. Really been great today. Yeah. I think Shogun Rugby, we have one eye on the clock now. And here come the subs. These are the guys who will probably see it out. Bring on. Joyce Leung, Elizabeth Tafuna, and Emilia Kushiansen. Crucial stage here. The ref stopped the clock, surely, right? Messy line out there. Ooh. So Tokyo Phoenix have snatched the ball away and they're on the attack. They're not too oh, far a away from the try line. Oh. That was a good line, unlucky. Oh. Tokyo Phoenix really going for it here. I'll have to. They're going to throw these bodies in. They're going to slow that ruck down. Oh. I have to Feet. Making Feet. Kick. There's a little bit of That's space here for Shogun Rugby. Got to finish it. Oh, oh unlucky. Awkward to catch. Maybe she could slow her feet down just to give a better quality pass. But it's, what, 18 minutes of rugby and it's been going that very fast. Full danger zones there. We can see the try being on. Impressive footwork by the halfback then. Jeez, just chopping ankles. Setting up for another scrum here. One minute left on the clock. Oh, tell you what, here they come. That's the game. What Whoa. a push there from Shogun Rugby. The bench in front wow. of us erupts with cheers as they come away with huge. What a formidable penalty that one is. Just a psychological oh. win oh, as well, right? Really. That is exactly it. Considering their scrum was under the cosh just about two minutes ago. Can they pull this effort in? Well, the Shogun's be thinking now. Phoenix has a chance to reply here. And Maybe. surprisingly, they've gone for the scrum again. Mm. Perfect way to wind down that clock. 15 seconds to go. So when they sub, is it a rolling clock or do they stop the clock? Because they took about 40 seconds to get in the subs before. I think it just rolls on. Yeah. Tactical. Wow. 
what an impressive game. So much rugby for just seven points. It took that individual brilliance. Chip and, and chase. Been some exciting stuff here from Shogun Rugby. Yeah. They're only seven nil up. Don't want to jinx anything. It looks no. like they'll be going. That's that. Going oh, through. That's strong to kick out. Semis. She kicks wow. it out, and that is the game. Smart play there from Shogun and Rugby. Excellent fight from Tokyo Sankey Phoenix. Be yeah, sad not to rest. see them going through into the cup semi final. Phoenix being out of form, I tell you what, Shoguns will be happy to see the back end of them. Um, they will be pretty relieved, the Shoguns. I thought they made a lot of good running, but just couldn't get over that line. They couldn't convert a lot of their positive play into points. But they'll be happy enough. And I think they'll go deep into this tournament with that squad. Very oh, good-looking squad, that. Some fantastic rugby. Running onto the field now is the home team, Hong Kong Football Club Ice. They're going to be taking on China Five Stars, who I can tell you are just uh, well-disciplined, have trained together, long-time, looking so connected team. But then Hong Kong Football Club, of course, is, is a club team here in Hong Kong. They've had a terrific season this year. They'll be up to the challenge. I'm actually excited. I know a few of these players, and I'll be quite interested how they hold up to this test of this Chinese team. This is our last women's cup quarterfinal. One more place to nab in the cup semis. Is it going to be China Five Stars playing in red here, ready to kick off? There was, yes, there. good call referee. Oh Glaringly obvious. It's a good start. Football club in their traditional blue and white stripes. Mm. China just a bit eager there. Kickoff proceedings. About three or four players in front of the kicker. A little bit too excited. Yeah. It's an exciting day. It is day two. <laughs> the best days. The best athletes come out day two. Let's see how the set piece holds up for Football Club. Nothing like starting your game off with a scrum. <laughs> Only the purest. Ooh. Here we go. Rachel Fung getting it out. She's found Sophie Feller. If Sophie Feller can get a bit of space, she's Whoa. strong and a speedster. Very good. Showing her strength there in the drive. Giving them the breakdown. High pass from the fly half. Slows you down a bit. Big fight down there in the rack. Going back door. Oh, pressure. Swarming defense from China. Get back, football club. Good clean out. Strong clean out from football club there. Zoe Tees, she's been immense in the, Strong. the league, what, domestic league here in Hong Kong this season. Very good. Rachel Fong goes to the kick. Good option. Get your team on the front foot. Get. Ooh. Referee deemed that China were all offside on this blind side. Referee for this game is Peter Buchanan. Peter. China giving away two penalties early doors. Nice kick there from Rachel Fung. Sorry, a free kick and a penalty. Unfortunately, uh, Football Club lost the big boot of Aileen Ryan yesterday. Uh, I think it was an ankle injury. I'll be missing her today. China starting having all 10 feet on the ground. Football Club going rolling more. Rashini Turner leading there. A bit of physicality. Oh, wow. It's been snatched away from China Five Stars, Good work, though. number 16. There we go. Nice work. Now let's see. Nice to see them on attack. What will they do with this ball? Just behind the halfway line. Oh. Oh. Unusual mistake there from the team from China. Yeah, with no real pressure on it. It's just feeling the pressure of playoff it. rugby. Yeah, 100%. 
that's three minutes gone and they've made three errors i mean it's not like them they were the form team yesterday i thought yeah certainly had a really keen clinical day yesterday lovely line out there yeah. from Papa club there Solid. always been really good at those day two is not for everyone oh strong recovery leg drive oh that's not needed it's a little bit high strong carry great clean out football club football club looking for some space good there. carry that leg drive is really getting Excellent china back carry and he bunting then support Rachel Fung decides oh, to go with a little a kick. Trip. Who's in chase? That is a searching trip. Oh. Sophie Fellow was hoping to get there, couldn't quite. Tell you mentioned what. yesterday she's back from, she recently moved to Dubai. She, she hasn't been able to play with her club, but football club is the team she's played for for many years. She's now a German international for both sevens and fifteens. Impressive. And she came back for this tournament. And maybe some sevens fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The old oh, what a beauty of a little kick there. <laughs> not, more, not your more traditional way of finding touch. But nevertheless, more effective Does this time. Does the job. <laughs> Does the job. Very good. Oh, I tell you what. I think the pressure's showing here. I think football club can just hold the ball inside these red zones. They'll, they'll come away with something here. If this was a heavyweight fight straight away, I would judge football club are on top right now, doing a very good job of just pushing China and making any errors. Football club certainly, well, every team certainly wants to get three to the cup semi-finals. Football club being the home team would really love to do it. Wouldn't that be good? Wouldn't it be, be great for Hong Kong rugby? A football club can just sneak. That scrum looks powerful. China not dealing with it all that well. And whilst we do have uh, Hong Kong based players scattered through many of the teams playing this women's tournament, football club's the only team that is based here. Yeah. This is, this is a danger. Super Getting it to the edges. Guy, trying to five stars on their Good tag. chase. Great oh, tackle. Yeah, Brilliant Sophie tackle. Wide Fella. breakdown. Talk about try saving tackle. Even though it's only in the halfway, you could feel that number 19, Chen Tan, was going to go all the way. She did score a try yesterday. Oh, trying to five stars, finding more space, though. Here on she the comes other again. Side of the field. And he bunts oh, in, can't decide who to tackle. Oh. And I think we're going to see the first try of the game. Down it goes. Chen Shiying with the points. You got to feel for football club then. You just got to feel for them. They just pushing China to make these errors. And then one time they get it through the edge, reload, and then they push it to the sideline again. They just so, so, so much more effective playing in the wider channels. I think football club have made them play in the middle and they don't seem comfortable playing there. They want to play the skill based game where they can get their big runners on the edges and eat up some yards and then swing the ball back. Yeah, so making a couple of mistakes, China five size really just took the opportunities that were given to them and have come away with the first points of the game. It will stay unconverted and China five stars are up a 5 0 over home team Hong Kong football club. Still got three minutes to play in this first half. This is our final quarter final for the Women's keep Cup. Football club, they can keep the game a little bit ugly, take the scrums, take the set piece. They've got them there. China. As a, yeah, as a team that's just finished, wrapped up a, a, a league playing 15s, they're probably very comfortable with their set pieces. Their lineups have uh, been really great this season, and Rashini Turner there. Hong Kong National is often they go to jumper. Oh, well, it's Hong Kong uh, Football Club ball. Take that. Up goes Turner. She collects it Good as work. she almost always does. Change of call there. She's isolated. Oh. Nice, nice go through. Excellent run up mid. 
field there. If you get to the rock, clean it. Oh, help her out. You're on the front foot. And I thought about passing. Nice, uh, get to Quite the H. Carry, carry, carry. Good carry. One man rock. Nice. Kick. The old Let's banana. Rachel the old Fong's banana gone kick. for the kick. She's backing herself in the chase. Oh. oh. That wasn't late. Come on. Oh. Ref's not happy with that. Oh. I'm hoping it's just a warning. Let them play, ref. Let them play. China had the advantage there in the back then. We could have seen some good gotta, rugby. Gotta have some big tackles. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, China five sub ball. The kick oh. doesn't gone too far though, so it's not really making them much ground. Bit of fatigue there in that kicking technique. I mean, that's reminding everyone it's 10 minute halves, but there's only 10, 10 people on that field. <laughs> Get tired quickly. <laughs> With a minute to go. Oh, there's a tiny ball. Oh, Gone lucky. for the overthrow. The trouble now. Here ten, they come. 25 stars really trying to move that ball quickly. They do so. Couple cabs shutting them Reload. down nicely on nice, the wing. Nice, nice. Get their line intact. Good work, football club. Their line's intact. Coming back. Oh. Oh. Unfortunate there can't afford to be missing tackles and you will get punished and punished right under the post by Chow Yang. Chow Yang, just when you have athletes on the front foot, just one step, power, and then you're off. Pretty hard defensively if you give them 20 yards on the edge and you run back 20 yards and you front up and you've got to come up again with an effort against an athlete. A little bit about it yesterday that football club just kind of had 85% of it down and just were battling to to get those points at the end of the day. They're really into it. They've got 10 minutes to work it out. Yeah. I tell you, they had the game plan sorted in the first six minutes. Just keep it ugly, taking the set piece. Their scrum is strong, line out strong. They know each other much better, but if you let China show their athleticism on the edges, they become so much more effective. And Yang, long striding Yang, goes in for a second, is it? China Five Stars, of course, is a development team, part of uh, the China Nationals' largest squad. They're getting some experience in there amongst high caliber players coming uh, to play here today. I'm impressed, I'm impressed by their ball handling, how they're passing, um, their skill sets, just the way they do everything on the edges. Once they get to the edges, they look so much more comfortable and they're yeah. more effective. In the middle, where Football Club, I think, were just trolling them and just giving them trouble, They'll, they don't want to get involved in that. Message for Steve Dolman, Steve Dolman. Yeah, I, I found them to be accurate, passing really quickly yesterday, and as you said, just dangerous on the wing when given space. So, how do you find a way out here for Football Club? In the next 10 minutes? Yeah, that football club. How do you find a way out for football club here? They got 10 minutes. They're down by 12 against a group of athletes who are quite well trained. What's the magic formula? Just score two tries, Mark. <laughs> well, my job is done. <laughs> if only it were that yeah, that's easy. Right. <laughs> Public club made a, a couple changes here. Georgia Rivers there is going to kick everyone off. Scared to jinx her, but I've been impressed by her boots. Crucial first 10 minutes here, two minutes, sorry, for football club. They've got to get on the front foot, whether it's on the attack or defense. they just got to get their shoulders going. They're a more physical team. Rivers goes left, taken beautifully there by the try scorer. Oh, oh. So young. The 
Book Club rushed up in defense, but they've left a gap open. George on the edge. That's okay. They forced them pressure. They're down here. They're down in the right area. If they can push China to make these errors and get them to set piece, they become more effective as a team. Let's see this lineup from Football Club. So he teased with a throw in. Football Club walking in. Nicely taken once thing. again. But, but stop start, but strong. Good work. Good, good enough for the clean out then. Sabay line him on the edge. She gets Physical. stuck in at nine. Georgia Ooh. Rivers back to the beach. She's kick, for the chase, kick, kick chase, kick chase. Decent chase there, but wonderfully taken out by tackle. China All-Stars. Great All -Stars. tackle, oh. great tackle. And excellent pressure, 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 pressure. Oh, man, you got it. That is a tough call. I didn't even see the arm come out or anything. Oh, that was a great kick and chase. That kind of stuff picks teams up. Almost done for a try there. For yeah. Club. They're starting this second half well. Oh, Another. not a good kick. There we go. All Come stars. on, Football Club. An unusual number of mistakes Itch. from them today. Day two nerves. Going down to that right end edge. It's strong. Come on, football club down the edge. They've got the pass away. It is. Oh, she's What a tackle. She's short. So they're so Pick close. and go. Support Body angle hit. Gets in there. Over. What a team a try. We'll call that one. Beautiful work there. Cheers are wrapped from, for the home team. That is truly impressive. It's come again from another error, kicking error, from uh, China on their penalty. Very unlike them. But now Football Club have cashed in with a try in the corner. So China, we will now see what they are like under the squeeze with about seven minutes to go. Georgia Rivers there. It's a tricky kick. It's not gone over. Ooh, it's a good place to be here. Great seat, Football Club. Uh, seven points behind the more fancy China team. But let's see how China can cope with this pressure. Beautiful Football Club more physical. There in the replay. Oh, Revisit good the chase, kick good chase. Excellently taken once again. Still, still. still. Oh, the steal was almost on there. Octavia Lafetta. Got a couple of hands to it. They just want to get on that edge, don't they? Good defense football club. Here they come up again. Boom. China five size fighting through the contact there. Almost got held up. They'll push it, make it. Come on. Looking for holes back in against the grain. The holes They've are got getting the bigger. Oh, she's Is she away? She's fucked. We've oh. got a speech on our hands here. <laughs> Lu Zhe Ya. When the squeeze comes on, big players stand up. Tell you what, that nearly could have gone the other way. You know, the football club come up with the defensive pressure. They were able to chop off their right foot, come back towards it, and people just didn't fold in and they ran out of numbers. Games like this, it's always nice to have a little Suzuki quick person to run. Ball in two hands, breaks into stride. Just impressive work. 
Got five minutes to play here. Scores up 19, China five stars, five, Hong Kong Football Club. Big carry. Maya Feta with the crash. Big carry. Any bunting moving people out of the rack there. She was great yesterday. Football Club moving that ball nicely. Annie Bunting once again. Oh. Shini Turner, unfortunately, losing that forward. She's disappointed. Look at her body language. Let's Annie Bunting see. there on screen. She's really rallying her troops well. Football Club need a scrum here. They need to step up. I know the lungs are burning. That's a solid scrum from China. Get him to the edge. Lift a little bit of footwork there. Keeps everyone guessing. They've got numbers on the outside here. Jeez. George River's not sure who to tackle. Doesn't tackle anyone. So that number eight just pulled out of the scrum, reloaded, and then just ran 35 yards to score a try. That's a beautiful try there from Wu Juan. I really feel like this game's opening up a bit. It's like any of the Black Hong Kong Football Club had the edge at the beginning. Yes. It's just a shame they didn't cash in when they were on top. Um, and the conversion is a valiant attempt just to the left. But I thought Football Club, especially in that first half, did trouble them. And especially in the first half, uh, second half in the first five minutes when they scored their try, put them under pressure. So certain ways to squeeze this Chinese team. And I think Football Club have sort of like laid the template there. Certainly the other teams will be watching this. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's, but that's it, it's 24-5. And... Um, Not rolling away. Nice work. Bubba Quick Club tap. on the attack. Annie Bunting there. Offload, strong offload. Good Ex carry. Excellent carry there from Turner. Quick, 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 quick. Move the ball. Move, move. Edge, edge, George edge. Rivers goes straight. Find Sophie Feller. Oh. Supported nicely by Caitlin Simpson. Aya Feta moving buddies out of the way to get the ball. She takes it herself. Drops that shoulder. Such a strong player. Very strong. Fella in to Bunting. Bunting goes with a kick. We need cool. chases. Good vision. Popo Club need, just needs a speedster no. in that moment, right? They need to be more in sync. I think she's the first chaser there after her own kick. I think just lungs are burning a bit. And they give him a nice football club. Let's go. Finish the game on top here. Got to take it on the mark. Turner's excited there. Here we go. Let's go. What do we got? We got football club. Bunting go to the says, corner. Yeah, let's let's go for the line out. Good choice for them. Okay, here we go. I think it's going to be a drive. <laughs> you would think they've got a decent amount of size. This football club team might not have as much speed as China Five stars. You've got to use what you've got. You've got to know uh, what your team does well. Can't stray from your DNA. Their line outs tend to be really simple and solid. We would expect it to go well. Pressure does do weird things to people, though. Beautifully taken by Rashini Turner. It looks like they were definitely in there for the drive. Not straight, says the ref. Oh, they'll be crushed by that. You definitely picked it well. Yeah. Turner was there, ready, ready to drive to commando troops. Let them play, ref. It wasn't that. Settle for a scrum instead. Here we go. Football club scrum. I think it's been a valiant effort from football club. I really thought that they pushed them all across the pitch, especially in that first half. Just couldn't turn them into points. Seconds Kip remaining. Chase. Trying to fight for Go for the kick. Have they found oh, the hands? No, they play a, finds the hands instead of the football club. Oh, what oh a big counter racket. 
this is going to be a turnover. The physicality. Physicality. A couple of get squares then. Squared up some accounts. Oh, good. They've moved it over to the opposite side of the field. Searching for space with China Five Stars. They can't hold on to the ball, though. Last forward. Back into the hands of Football Club. It goes. And that will be the game today in our final Women's Cup quarterfinal. China Five Stars make it through to the semis with a 24-5 win over hometown heroes Hong Kong Football Club Ice. Will be the last we see of Ice today. There is a women's uh, ball. So we will get to see them a bit later. I think that kind of ball stuff, I think it really helps the game. It pushes them. It's enjoyable for everyone else to keep watching local teams still turning out and performing their tournament. So, well done to our, our five women. Winners here, Haywood Tropics, Shandong Rugby Club, Shogun Rugby, and China Five Stars all proceeding through. I'm going to hand you over. We're going to get some men's games going now, and I'll see you later for the women's final. Thank you, Kim. That was, that was good work. It was first time commentating, commentating with uh, Kim. Joined here by James Cook. So here we are, guys, uh, just waiting for uh, the two teams to come out. Um, welcome in. Day two. Day two of the Hong Kong Tradition Rugby Tens. Hope you're watching. Hope you're on board. Love to have you in. Uh, the weather's fine. Track is firm. And we've got uh, Mark Fats Fatty Alofa alongside us, ex Exeter Chiefs, and uh, Hong Kong Rugby Valley Rugby Club legend, Fats. Great to have you on board, mate. Great to be here with you on day two at the uh, at the tents. Absolutely. Day two's not for everyone. This is when the big guns come out and flex a bit. And you see some absolute beast athletes coming here. And it's good for Hong Kong rugby. So this is going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, two, uh, two good sides, Pirelli Barbas, uh, up against... Uh, the uh, PNG national side, um, PNG. They had their, they had their, uh, they had some good, some good times and some not so good times yesterday. I think they are typically Fats are a team that, you know, come here for the first time and, you know, Hong Kong's, you know, it's a place that you, when you come to it, it's like, you know, it's not like any other, right? You got the heat, you got the humidity, you know, you got the crowds, you've got a, you got a bit of a cauldron here. And uh, so all that pressure comes on and you've got to perform. So I think they found that quite difficult. And, um, but I think overnight they've probably reflected on that and I'm sure they'll come out firing today. You know, this is, we're now day two, we're getting into the pointy end of, uh, of the competition and this is, uh, this is knockout, mate. So, and you know all about that. <laughs> yeah, being with uh, Gavcal for the last three years, I think um, Gavcal won it three years in a row this kind of competition and in its peak they brought it brought a full house and the finals were just immense finals with international Fijians a lot of professional rugby players running about so just uh, just waiting for these two teams to to join us on on the on the field here at Sports Road and just while we're uh, we're doing that hey let's remember we've got uh, you know without these sorts of tournaments without the sponsors uh, these kind of tournaments and events don't take place. So I just want to mention, you know, uh, some of our key sponsors, uh, Shoford Press, Samurai, Havas, Play and Haywards. And, uh, of course, let's not forget uh, our major sponsor, Tradition. Um, and they also have YCAC, a team in the men's, on day two, Natixis, AIA, Morant, Taiku Place, uh, Allied World, and Streamline Sports. 
So thank you to all those sponsors. Um, we love you guys. As I said, without you, these sort of tournaments don't take place. So build up, men's. We're waiting for the uh, two teams to come out, Pirelli Barbars. You know, they had an interesting run yesterday, uh, made up of uh, the back-to-back -back Welsh National Sevens champions. They're a young side. Uh, they've got a lot of talent. Um, again, I think they're a side that, um, you know, that came, came here yesterday and had high expectations and then found that, you know, this tournament is a, is, is, a, is a professional tournament and the standard of rugby is really, really high. But, hey, they're here. They're in the bowl semi and they'll be looking to do one better. Uh, as will PNG, Papua New Guinea. And so nice to have Papua New Guinea here. Papua New Guinea, you know, men's and women's sides. Just, um, uh, you know, Fats, just so nice to have Papua New Guinea here and just the men's and the women's sides. I think it's just great, great for rugby. It is great. It's great. It's good for them too. It's great for us seeing these kind of athletes come through. I feel looking at these athletes, a lot of them are quite raw, but the athleticism shines out. You know, it's exciting times. They keep turning up, keep coming, keep rubbing shoulders with some of these great teams, some of these great individuals that this, te this tournament brings together. I think it could only benefit Papua New Guinea rugby. Yeah, absolutely, 100% true. So we see, we're looking down the sideline here and we see PNG men's coming along the sideline here, ready to come out. They'll be nervous. They'll be nervous. They'll just want to get into the onto the paddock, and they'll fats. You know, it's that that first kick off, that first kick receipt, or that first kick off. You've got to make it go ten, and you've got to get that receipt right. And you no know, tens is about, as you know, is about holding onto the ball. Very much so. It's just for this team in particular. Just keep do, doing the basics well. Get yourself into the game. Get the shoulders in, whether it's running or tackling defensively, and give away less penalties. Try and stay away from the penalties because yesterday. I think they're the most penalised team. And if they can just stay away and just keep the ball into a contact build, build confrontation, I think they could, you know, surprise some people. I'd definitely like to see them throw the ball around. I see, like, like, like you said, I think their discipline probably let them down a little bit. And I think also just those, those little, those little, you know, those little last passes, those little bits and pieces around a ruck or a mall, they were just losing the ball in the contact, turning over ball when they didn't need to, and they just didn't get any momentum. And I think today they'll be looking to, they'll be some of the key improvement areas that they'll be looking at. 100%. Just those transitions from when that last match try winning pass goes to ground, the heads drop, they don't transition into defensive patterns effectively, and then two passes, and then they're under their own sticks. So just looking at the two sides, uh, I'll just, uh, number one, Tony Joe. Number two, George Y. This is Papua New Guinea. Number three, Jordan Tokawasa. Number four, Maneo Noga. Number five, Willie Carlisle. Number six, Jonah Karu. Number seven, Yuni Patrick. Number eight, Juno Tokion. Number nine, Bruno Sindra. Number 10, Francis Mira. And on the Priscilla Barbars, Nick Brown, John Hill, Jordan Coxley, Lauren Hedlam, Callum Coxley, his brother, Cyan Bennett, Stephen Davies, Ian Davies, Sam Potter, Carl Jones, Cole Nash. So here we go, guys. Strap yourself in. We're ready to go. This is the men's bowl. First of the men's bowl semi-final day two at the tradition Hong Kong tents. Papua New Guinea to kick off. So it's a nice high oh, ball. Goes up. Is it going to go it 10? Play on. So, so goes down. Silly Barbars get it back. Recycle. Out to the 10. Take it out the back. Decide they want to run early. Moving it wide. Ooh. Out to the winger. He's got, what's he going to do? Yeah, he's going to have a go. Takes the ball up. Takes the ground. Barbas. Win the first penalty. PNG just, again, just that short tap. Barbas. Keep the ball in play. Decide they want to move it. Taking it back on the inside. Trying to redirect the defence to the outside. Great shot. Great shot. Rattled at him a bit. So, early nerves from PNG again, but uh, they have a uh, they have a defending scrum here. They need to get out of their own 22. 
their own uh, 10 yard mark I should say and uh, they'll be looking to move the ball wide I expect at the first opportunity Fats 100% like you said the kickoff was crucial it was their kickoff they made just made 10 and then they gave away a penalty in the edge but that defensively they've mopped that all up now they've got a defensive scrum strong scrum at that and they've lost it so Stephen Davies gets it out into the centers out to the wings we've got Henry Shiel on the outside he's trying to get it the ball inside and he does and another good offload looking to move the ball but there we've got a turnover PNG like a thief in the night he comes in and snatches the ball PNG looking to build something Uni Patrick oh. giving a nice ball on the inside to Willie Carlisle oh. taking it up the middle this is more like the PNG side that we know and love Josh Kanu takes it up looking for players in motion George Y a nice carry soft skills nice soft skills from PNG here get to the edge looking to get a wide PNG Francis Mirra taking it up he'll take some stopping on that edge Good continuity from PNG here. Looks like, and they look, they've got, they've got numbers. numbers. They've definitely got numbers on the outside. Jonah Tongu, beautiful feet. Oh, where's the gate? Where's the gate? Referee says, no, you can't be doing that. You didn't come around the gate. Nice quick tap. Fatigue, come on. Jonah Carlisle. PNG were looking for be looking for a, a nice wide angle here. Ball to ground. Looking to recycle quickly, PNG. Their reload is slow though. A lot more continuity with this PNG side than we saw yesterday, which is a good sign, Fats. Yeah, very good. Don't slow it down, you slow it down. You've got to keep them moving. Let's go, you've got the efforts. Nice. Good carry from Eugene Tokaval. Yoni Patrick in there again, first receiver. Oh, stolen, stolen, stolen. Transition into defense. So, very go. difficult. Well, they've, got to take, they've got to burst away. Down the middle, is there anyone there to take him? No, there's no one there to take him. Number five, Callum Poxley. He's going to get the first points on the board. Totally against the run of play, unfortunately, mm. Fats. Priscilla Barbar's. Five PNG nil, and the danger signs were there when they were slowing down the ruck ball to try and get a geese of where, where, where to go to next. And unfortunately, the defense sets up. You're a little bit strong, you get more air in your lungs, and you can double up and you start stripping the ball. It's a shame that I think they had just too much ball. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. And we've got a uh, unfortunately we've got a got an injury to one of the PNG players, and he's limping off the field, and he doesn't look happy, which is which is understandable. And I think the Barbars played that at a blinder. They just stood their ground, held, and they got back, and they just made sure they wrestled themselves into a position where they could be effective defensively. Yeah, the thing I like about this Barbars side, especially even when I saw them play yesterday, they, they were able to suck up pressure and uh, and be able to regroup and uh, and, and then counter-attack. And then they kick off like that. Good Valley man. So not a good kick off there, unfortunately from uh, Priscilla Barba, so that gives PNG the initiative. Then they will tap from halfway. Five minutes gone. This is the first men's bowl quarterfinal. PNG take it up, looking to recycle. Uni Patrick. Jordan Kahu. And moving it right wide. Jeez. Francis Muria, he's a Jeez. hard man to stop. And they've got oh. it on the inside. They just get him in the end. Francis Muria on the outside. He's looking very strong on attack. Priscilla Barba say, no, we're not going to muck around here. We're going to take the advantage. And they do. Quick line out. But the referee has other ideas. Pedantic. Do we know what that's for, Fats? Up offside, was it? Yeah. So uh, Priscilla Barba is not retiring on the tens, on the ten. And uh, again, here's an opportunity, PNG. I think the Barba so playing is just out. right. They're just keeping the ball in playtime high here, and I just feel that the recycle and the eagerness of the uh, PNG team just don't want the ball too many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uni Patrick again, lovely ball. 
Francis Nogra. Strong. And we've got it out on the outside. Oh, Francis Mirror again. Is he going? Francis oh, Mirror into the tackle. corner. Try saving tackle. Still with PNG. Two metres out. Take Trying to move on. it Take wide. They've got the Take numbers. On. They've got Take the numbers. On. Taking it to ground. PNG. There's a 2v2 here. Take him on. PNG. It's too good. Come on. Oh, Great. what a clean out. Great defense by Keep Barbas. your feet. Keep your feet. Up, caught out. Referee's well, slowing it all down. Well, PNG, you don't have to panic here, fellas. They've taken a quick tap. Hands. Bring it on to the outside. The hands. It's the big fella again, and he's going in, in the corner. Well, he's a crowd that's favorite. Num that's number one, Tony Joe. Big Tony, <laughs> Big Tony scores. Big Tony Tone in the corner, <laughs> football club. So, you know, what do you make of that? That's the that's, size that's of this human, the way he can move, the, the athletic ability of someone that can that big, that can shift. That's impressive. He's been a menace on that edge all day. For the last all day, eight minutes. Yeah, so they've got to be, you know, they've got to be buoyed by that, right? I mean, that's 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 the kind of play that we want to see from this side. You know, not not panicking, slowing it down, moving the ball from side to side. You know, they got repeated penalties because they were just putting the pressure on the Barbars, and uh, and they got the reward. Absolutely. And now it comes down to the next two minutes. Stay away from the pens and just do the simple things well. Now they're just scaring them a bit. They're in. They're in the Barbar psyche now. So, two minutes 20 left in the first half. This is a, we're locked up, 5-0 on the match. This is a men's bowl. Quarter final. PNG, nice high ball. Nice, nice, nice. Nicely taken by the Barbars, looking to move it. Looking to shift it out, shift it wide. Test out the PNG defence. Looking to recycle, and they do. Just kick. Go Shield. Got Henry Shield here. Got Henry Shield got some numbers move. here. Nice work. Now they got the edge. Boom. Big. Tanasunga Tana from the Valley Rugby Club in Hong Kong. Oh, he's Strong carry into Tana the tens. Sunga. Very, very good. So, oh. Tom Nash takes it. Now, Yuni Patrick, who has been uh, who's been featuring heavily in the first half all around the park, unfortunately tried to tried to take the ball in the middle and knocked it on. Of course, in this sort of rugby, you get two minutes in the in the naughty chair for him, unfortunately. But play goes on. Sometimes and, you just uh, got to PNG. Sorry, sorry, Fats. What were you saying? Sometimes you just got to leave the law book and just try and read the body actions of that player. Yeah. That kick. Yeah. Now here's a breakout from PNG looking for field position and they get it and that's quite that's quite a smart move considering that man's just gone to the bin there's only 50 seconds Good left work. but they didn't Here mark up the game open it didn't mark up all the way Ooh. and again just just a fingertip a fingertip on that man <laughs> that was enough to get him out ned bennett and he steps into touch and png and get the chance to throw it into the line out and that's an interesting throw and the referee says no that's your next round into special own, said just straight so it's straight into your own man and again you know just i think just match management yeah. fats you know 15 seconds left in the first half you know it's five all you really don't need that kind of play i wouldn't have thought absolutely not with a man down as well you just got to make sure that everything you do technically is sound Especially a set piece, because just hold to the ball and kick it out, and you're in in the sheds. So um, another chance for last chance, really, because time's up for the first half. Last chance for the Barbars on attack, oh. but it's a it's a messy scrum. The ref said the ball didn't really go in; just came in and out of the channel. So Barbars get another opportunity Nick to Brown. put the ball into scrum. A renowned scrummager in the ten circuit. Let's see if he can lock down the right-hand side here. Strong. Balls in. Stro oh. Good strike. He decides he's going to go on the blind. Oh, good tackle. Ned Bennett. Good but he's, but he, he, 
equal to the reload. task. Eugene Tokabau says, no, you're going nowhere. PNG looking to come up, but they've split their defence, which is probably not what they want to do. So that gives the advantage back to Barbas. Nice ball, staying out on the left-hand side. Looking for the advantage, but the half referee time. said it's knocked on, and that's the end of the first half. Interesting first half, Fats, what do you make of that? Jeez, it's exciting, isn't it? I tell you, when PNG have the ball, they seem more effective with it. But uh, the Barbars are playing to a game plan here where I think if they kick long and keep the ball in play, they become more effective because you're running a tired PNG big man. But unfortunately, they can't seem to find a way through. So they haven't had good phase ball play. That said, knockout putty, it's a tight one, five all, and, you know, I, I don't know what the coaches would be saying at half time, but I would say, in terms of PNG, it's probably just guys, those little errors, you know, the momentum, you know, just losing the momentum when you're on it, when, you, when you've got when you've got the attack and you've got the field position and you've got the ball in hand, it's just those last little passes again. Um, but both sides, you know, I think it's hammer and tong here, and uh, yeah. I think it's going to be one or two special plays, Vats, that probably are going to take this game. 100%. It's Yang versus Yang, really, isn't it? you got the power runners of the PNG, and you got the fitness and finesse of the uh, Barbas. And it's going to be interesting. Because it depends who gets the lion's share of possession. I don't think PNG won all that possession, because they can rest up, and then they get it, and then become more effective. Give them too much possession, they have nowhere to go, and then they, look, they run out of ideas and become sloppy on the ball. So both teams get a chance to put on some fresh legs as we restart for second half of this men's bowl quarterfinal. Again, this is knockout. This is knockout rugby, folks. Wherever you are watching around the world, don't go anywhere. Get your cup of tea, your cup of coffee, sit down, strap yourself in. This is great rugby, and we're in for a hopefully cracking second half, Fats. Just teed up so nicely. 5-5 five, five with different kind of styles at play here. So she should be a beauty. So nice kick off with Barbas, nice and high. PNG take it up, and they take a good take. Referee, referee says, Barbas, no, you took him out in the air. So that gives the, Barbars, uh, the, the PNG team a chance to tap and go. So move it into the centre to their big men, trying to just take it up the middle, looking for possession. They recycle, taking it back left. Oh, nice show and go. Take it to ground, moving Watch it out. again. Here's the big Ooh. fella. No, he decides, no, he's not going to have a go. There's numbers here, moving it to the outside. Make it, That's Henry. That's a great step Ooh. from Henry. But ball goes to ground. Again, just those last passes from PNG, but they've managed to regather. She's a scramble. Priscilla Barbas have won the ruck. And they get up now up to the 22. They're looking to move it wide. They've got a few numbers. Bodies in motion. That's a nice little run Whoa. there right tipped by, by the number 10. Oh, Barbas, Barbas. PNG, that's a great scrambling defence. <laughs> great scrambling defence. The Barbas just go to ground and hold on to the ball. That's a great defending tackle. It was good and to see the Barbas move the ball then, get some face play going. Yep, yep, definitely, no doubt about it. You know, uh, Ian Davies, number 10 for the Barbas. He's looking to try and create stuff and get stuff moving. No chase from the PNG. They all thought that was going out. So Barbar's coming back in the hands of... So again, moving it into the centres. What do we got? Barbar's plenty of room for attack. PNG are giving them too much space. And they've got some fast men, these Welsh boys. They know what they're doing. Five metres from the line, but again... Wide breakdown, wide breakdown. Again, PNG are winning the breakdown. So that's two opportunities in the red zone for the Barbars that they haven't converted. So that 
you know, that'll start to play on their minds a little bit as PNG try to exit out of their own 22 here, but oh, it's been stolen it. oh. back. <laughs> and folks, clearly it's, uh, you know, we've got high humidity here today and there's obviously a bit of bit of moisture on that ball, Fats, because both sides are finding it hard to hold on to. Very much so. And some of the physicality there around the ball carrying area, around where that area they carry the ball, it's easier to dislodge the ball. And for those who are not from Hong Kong will find it like a bar of soap until they acclimatise and treat the ball with proper respect. Yeah, no, I totally agree. So just having an injury break, break here, folks. Um, one of the Barbar -Bar boys is just taking a breather. Number seven, Sion Bennett. No, Sean's actually injured. They've changed his jersey. He's in the uh, oh, Maroon, okay. so it's okay. another player. So okay, not sure who that is. They're playing jersey roulette with us. Okay, yeah, all right. Well, I'm going to call him Stephen Davies. Stephen, if that's you, I'm not sure. Anyway, he's recovered. I think it was probably just a bit of, um, he's just, just winded, but he's back on the, he's back in play. So, classic scrum winded. going down. Six minutes, five all. This is a tussle. PNG, they'll be looking to get out of their 22 here. They're under pressure, but they do have a good solid scrum. Bar bars will be looking to try and turn this over. Oh. Balls in. Solid scrum. Athlete on athlete, Bob. That's the only problem. PNG just looking, they don't, they, they're not kicking, they're just looking to run <laughs> the ball out. Testing, testing the, uh, the, the bar bars, defence, fats. 100%, it's just pure size and physicality to help them. There's no science between it, they're just bashing it up the middle. Just getting themselves out of here, getting themselves a comfortable place. What I like about this PNG side is they're actually keeping the ball in hand. Oh, you know, yeah. they're not, they don't want to kick, they just want to keep the ball in hand. They're but saying, hey guys, if you want to test us, you know, you've got to come and tackle us. The soft hands of the big men probably shows a bit of rugby league background here. Ball's on the ground. So the referee, you're hearing cries of more, more, more from the sideline. And in fact, that's what it was. That's, that's, that's great work. Great, great, great work from, uh, from number 10, Ian Davies. Yeah. He uh, he was able to hold that player up, the PNG player up, and uh, and get the uh, the collapse more, and it's a turnover. So, Terracing is on, Nick Brown's on. So they're bringing this team, they're bringing the big guns in to try oh. and close this out. Oh, good to see, good to see. So Barbar's ball in, comes Channel out very one. quickly. It's un untidy. Halfbacks Nine in goes, here. yeah, no, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have a go up straight up the guts. And he does, I'm able to Chaya recycle Singer. quickly. Oh, Traya Singer, Traya Singer, still going. Lost the ball, unfortunately. Again. One of the standouts in uh, club rugby here in Hong Kong. Yeah, very could, much so. Very much deal so. deal with the humidity. So, but looking dangerous. Again, PNG. I mean, Fats, what would you do in this position? They've tried three times to run it out of their own 22. They've been here for like two or three minutes. Would you be put it, giving it to one of your kickers and getting it down the other end of the ground? It's a tough one. We're not built, PNG are not built for the kick and chase. No. Because you've got to run 40 metres, then mm. make a tackle. Mm. It's a tough one. Um, yeah. I'll just stick to what they're doing. Yep, yep. Yeah. No, keep going, yep. And I guess that's, you know, that's going to tire the bar bars out. So. 100%. Another scrum. We've had... More scrums than hot breakfast at the football sportsman's. Here we go. Here we go, the kick. He's heard us. He's heard he us, and he's decided to kick, and that's a pretty useful one, I've got to say. Oh, the, uh, the chases that, that runs out. But no chases. They're giving them go far ahead, too much respect. Come back to this edge. As they go always ahead. say. Go. Coast to coast. As they say, the kicks is only as good as the chase, and in that case, the chase was poor. And PNG are back where they started. Barbar's on attack, looking to move the ball wide. Oh, no, 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 no. They've decided this for could a 50-50 oh, play. Oh, he's got to get the bounce. Uh, no bounce there. 
try game. But I think the referee, the referee What's was the re right there. Called a knock on. And he's called a knock on in the last gasp of that play. Again, just Barbars, they'll be they'll be a little frustrated by that, but they'll be happy to know that they're still down here in the 22, you know, near the PNG line and still putting all this pressure on. Was the chip the option then? They had them back paddling. They didn't look that interested in the edge defence. I thought they had five guys on the edge there, yep. Barbars, yep. and I thought just the hands could have gotten them, but... Yeah, no, I agree totally. So, yet another scrum. Folks, 156 to go in this match, 5 all. Remember, we go. It's a not. It's a. It's a knockout. This we're in the knockout stages. So Fats, if uh, if it ends five all at full time, we go into uh, we go into extra time. Five five minutes each way with uh, first to score takes all the lollies. And if we have that first up in the first game of the knockout, wouldn't that be quite exciting? <laughs> <laughs> Promoter's dream. That's right. <laughs> So PNG, is there pass a kick behind coming? their own line. Oh. They've decided there's some room here to move. He's going to have a go. Oh, geez, he he's, he's got a few wheels, this boy. Oh. Again, just trying to, just trying to 50-50 passes. Hold him to help. You know, yeah. you'd want to just stay strong and take that into tackle, wouldn't you? He let him know. Yes, he 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 made 30 yards. He made 30 yards. Number six has just given him a mouthful because he was unhappy. <laughs> he was unhappy with that little pop pass he gave because I think he was in prime position to clean that ruck out for him. He did everything right. Yeah. He did everything right. But uh, Jonah Katu said was not very, not impressed at all uh, with his uh, with his fellow winger. Anyway, another scrum. Another scrum, another restart. Nick Brown struggling to hold the right-hand side there. Barbas. Inside ball. What have they got? Strong. Strong. Some from Staying Fijian up in strength. the carry. Oh, he's opened oh, it up for Henry Shield. This could Henry be Shield. the clincher. Henry Shield. They're yeah. in. Yeah. Doesn't want to dive. There it is, folks. Some strong. Fats, take us through the replay, mate, on this one. 100%. Both Valley players here. <laughs> yeah, well, I wasn't going to say it, mate, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Begrudgingly, yes, both Valley players. <laughs> no, no, of the course, mate. The physicality up the middle. Of course, mate. Of course, <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> course. <laughs> so, conversion in front. But he hits the goal, and that's the end of the game, guys. PNG, they'll be, you know, extremely unhappy, I guess, with that, you know, going out in that fashion. But, hey, that's rugby, and, you know, let's just um, let's stand up and applaud the PNG side and say thanks, guys, for coming to the uh, to the 10s. It's, it's, it's been great to see them. And, uh, you know, they'll move down now, I guess, to, to the Shield, uh, and they'll still have some games. And... Uh, Priscilla Barbars, will they go on to uh, to, to the final? I, yeah, will they? It's hard to say because I thought they had the, the technical now to take care of this PG, PNG team, but again, humidity, heat, and size of the PNG makes makes that picture a little bit more cloudier because they struggled to put them away. <coughs> so, folks, uh, second uh, men's bowl quarterfinal coming up. And we have Morant and China All-Stars. Morant Apache and China Five Stars. China Five Stars in the red. Morant Apache in the white. Morant Apache will kick off. And again, both these teams yesterday, they uh, showed some really good rugby. And then there was patches where, you know, they just, uh, some of their discipline and, and just some of the unforced errors meant that they came on, on the wrong side of the score. So I think, again, this is going to be a very interesting matchup, Fats. So Apache kick off, they kick deep. Five stars take it to ground remember these china five stars players a lot of them in the national from the national sevens national 15 setup so they know how to play they like to move the ball wide but again sometimes the combinations just don't quite don't quite get there and that's one of them 
So they're defending right on their line the first minute. Five stars looking to exit here. Carried up the middle, but a strong, they made a strong Apache defense. Ball's coming out very, very slowly. They've got a number 10 here, and he is very, very quick and has got great feet, and he's moving it to his outside, and he's got some wheels. Number 17, Yao Ming, and uh, he puts the ball down. And that's the first try against the runner play, I'd have to say. Coast to coast, Fats. Um, you know, you give this, if you give this, uh, this all stars, sorry, into a five star side, um, any opportunity, any room to move. They're very quick, uh, very good feet, and very athletic. 100%. Technically sound on the skill level and athletic. We've all got pretty good speed out here. And that's the only problem when they, these Chinese teams get to the edge and they, their technical skills take over. Two on ones, well, nicely ex executed try time. So uh, the kick unsuccessful, the conversion unsuccessful. China, five stars lead. Apache, Morant for Apache, 5 0. Ball tap back on the Chinese side. Again, they're looking to just tidy up here. They've got options on both sides. They know what they're all about, they know what they're doing, they've got combinations, they've got inside balls. Again, looking tidy. Moving it wide, using the width. Getting it out to their big man on the outsides. Good broken tackle there, and we've got our speedster again. He's got the ball in hand, beats one, beats two. And again, under the posts. Try again to number 17, Zhu Yahweh. And uh, we saw him featuring yesterday. I think he got a brace, or well, maybe three fats. And he's one of the quality players, no doubt about it. And he's also, yeah, uh, he converted that. So, yeah, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's lovely to watch. He's got great feet. Impressive team. Uh, they mirror the women's team a lot, where they, they're very dangerous around the edges. They're not very ruck heavy but they're technically sound to get away, to give enough, themselves enough time and speed just to get to those edges where they're most effective. Again, their technical skills, catch pass is very, very good. So China kick off again, it's a, it's a low kick and they look to compete at the receipt. But Apache, they win it and move the ball wide quickly, really, and that's a great breakout. That's a great He's breakout. Gone. That's just, that's, that's poor, it's poor handling. Sorry, poor, poor tackling, I should say. And Ed Allen, he decides, I'm just going to take it all the way to the line. And that's a good comeback by Moran Apache. A good reply. 55 metres out. Too big, too strong. Takes it all the way under the black dot. And it's, I think that was kind of an easy try to give away from China. I don't think they'll be too pleased with that. Yeah, just do you think just, just a bit of lack of concentration there? Yeah, definitely. Um, and the boys around him not reacting in time. Yeah. to know that he was under stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the conversion successful. So all of a sudden we've got China five stars leading Apache, Morant Apache, 12 points to seven. There he is. Still early days, five minutes left in the first half. Good leg strength there, just power, power through all the way to the try line. So big kick here by Apache. They're going to let it run and it's going to go all the way. Don't see many of those line. deep, deep kicks anymore. I don't think I saw one yesterday. So back to halfway. It'll be a tap, middle of the field. China five stars. This is where they're dangerous. They've got both sides of the field to play with. They'll come it left. They swing it left, get it to the edge, and carry. Big man. So border ground recycle. Looking to move it wide again. Oh, good line speed from Apache. They've got players there. But again, Ooh. these men have got good feet. These men from China. Yeah. They're looking to move it on the outside oh, again. Nice no, he does to double back in. Oh, that's a lovely ball. 
Clean up. Lee Shell takes up. it to ground. Here they come. China Ooh. looking to recycle, and they do. Oh, that's great hands. Great hands. Over the top. Clean Hughes in clean lane. Here. Taking it up. China looking to recycle again. They've Nicely got numbers. Played. Scrambling back. Apache. They're doing their best. Hugh had the ball. Hugh was looking to go over the line, but just that last trying to trying to do an Artie Sabir. I think their fats, but didn't quite have the didn't have the arm length or the strength. Impressed with our man from the Hurricanes. Impressed with the small skills here by the Chinese team. In the small spaces, just a little step. Bunt and offload, soft hands back to each other, caused havoc. They, they made about 15 meters just going up and down. I think about four or five players handling the ball. Very impressive. I didn't see this part of their game where the big men have nice skills like that. I think um, yesterday, I, th I think it was more about composure with them. I think maybe they were just trying too much too quickly and they weren't executing as well as today. Like they've got much more, they seem to be much more poised and much more composed. So China on Jeez. attack. On attack, Apache win the scrum. China have been told that they're going up in the scrum, so five stars unfortunately give away the penalty and a scoring opportunity, and that gives Apache a chance to relieve the pressure. I don't see, I don't think we've seen much of Apache yet, and they're still 12 7 down. They'll be happy with that. I just feel that, that they've got something to offer this game and they haven't shown anything. And that's credit to China, limiting their... So Ewan Kingdom, got to get this throw in straight. Oh, and he just does. Back to their 14. Sam pointed, but he's taken to the ground. Ooh. And uh, referee says no. Unfortunately, that's illegal. Uh, another relieving penalty for Apache. They're looking to get out of their 22 here. They've been camped in the 22 for a while. Just looking to bustle it up, take it up. Because they job. can see that China are spread out and there's not a lot of not a lot of five-star players in the middle of the ruck. Step. So Good step power. show and Here's go. The danger. He's got yes. a lovely ball. Got a lovely ball out to Adam Kovac. Oh, he's gone. And he's showing some good skill. Adam Kovac. The flyer. And he scores, puts the ball down. Apache, that's an emphatic comeback from the Apache side. Adam Koblik, Fats. Again, that, it didn't come from much. There wasn't much strategic planning in that. There was not a strike move. It was just a pure athleticism. Just a, a couple of jinks, a little fend, and then he took him on. I think it was about an 80 meter effort, 70 meter effort. So obviously, it's, they're going to take some beating this team. They've got enough athletes to surprise a lot of teams if they go deep into this playoff. Yeah, they're, they're a young side, and uh, yeah, they're young and they're fit, and they know and they know what they're about. Gee, that's not... annoying, isn't it? Young and fit. <laughs> Tell me about it. You're telling me, mate. <laughs> so, Apache, kick off. What are they looking to do? They're just happy to get the ball into touch. That ball sailed through the air like a loaf of bread. Yeah, well, <laughs> we've got the sun out now as well. We've got the humidity and the sun combined. That's going to be sapping for these guys. We're down to 47 seconds, first half. We've got a close game here, folks. Apache, Miranda Apache 14, China 5 stars 12. Another great matchup. Bowl semi final. They'll swing it to the edge. Again, China with bodies in motion. We're going to move it to the outsides. Nice. Good defense. Great defense. There's no release. There's no release. Yeah, that's, that's, that's just poor technique there by Apache. So it gives. The five stars, a oh. chance, and they decide to bring it up the middle. He's all Number alone. He's all alone. Oh, he doesn't need it. Oh, that's just uh, outstanding from from Louis Luda. Louis Luda, number 10. He's a big lad. And he just, he's like, man, I just want to get to the lock try line. And he does. Right at half time. And, you know. Fats, we talk about championship minutes, you know, either side of half time, and that's got to be a big, big fillet for 
uh, the Five Stars side as they go into the halftime break. They would be a lot happier in that last 35 seconds than they were for that probably last two minutes because they just didn't show a real picture of themselves. Just too big, too strong, Mr. Luda. But um, yeah, there, there is there is a lot there. You can see that they go to the edge to set that play up, and then they come back and strike the middle with a big player. Um, so uh, wherever you're watching uh, around the world, tradition, Hong Kong Football Club's 10s 2024 version. Great to have you in the house. This you're watching. This is half time at the second men's bowl semi-final. Morant Apache v China Five Stars. We've got some and good games coming up too. We've got China tradition. Five Stars 19, Apache 14. Fats, tell us what's coming up. we got tradition against uh, football club. Uh, the trade overseas, old boys in the tropics. Some good. Well, they are going to be great matchups. So, folks, again, don't go anywhere. Wherever you are around the world watching, we have some exciting rugby tens rugby coming your way again quick thank you to all our sponsors tradition natixis aia morant taiku place allied world streamline sports budva stoford <coughs> press samurai havis play and haywards Guys, again, a big, big, big thank you to you. Without you, your sponsorship and your support, this event would not be taking place. So, again, thank you very, very much. So here we go, folks. Second half, another 10 minutes to go in this men's bowl semi-final. Apache take the receipt cleanly. They decide to go to ground. They'll be looking to recycle it wide test this formidable Chinese defense as five-star Chinese defense just engulfing them in the edges here and now the counter ruck yeah, yeah very unlucky there I would have to say Fats yeah anyway we're back on live Apache moving it wide again looking to test not really going not much movement forward but the That's referee the yeah so they're getting some momentum here the apache side numbers on numbers on Whoa. That's a yellow i think card. the referee's probably going to call that unfortunately hugh jing yi and he's been a, he's been a, a standout player for this china five-star side Unfortunately, he gets a rest in the naughty chair. And uh, we have uh, we have a man down injured, James McRae. Ed I Allen don't know coming if he's on. got cramp or an ankle, or but he's looking in some discomfort. And uh, he said, and he's a big strapping lad. And you know, when you're when you're that size, Fats, and you've got an ankle injury, a bit like a horse, mate, you probably find it hard to hard to continue. This is nut. Yeah. I've got plenty of grit in me. I'm ready to go. So he just wanted some camera time. He's fine. <laughs> He's okay. Yeah. So well done, James McRae. We want to keep you. Want to see you on the field, mate. 100%. So Apache get the opportunity to put the ball into touch on a penalty. Patches should get excited here. They get the ball so from a set piece. They're looking uh, about eight metres from the 22, 30 metres out from the try line on attack. What have they got? Short oh, line out goes to the cheeky. front. Nicely executed. Ball to ground. Moving out to centre. James McCray ball. decides to have a go. Good, good ball. Recycled again by Apache. They're standing really, really deep, trying to get some space, and they're behind the advantage line here. They need some get forward, go forward. They were too deep then to be effective. 
China looked like they might have a turnover here. No, referee says no, you're the first man on the ball and you didn't release, so back to Apache. They are slowing the ball down effectively. Again, taking it up in the middle. What have they got? Ball oh. out the back. We've got some room trouble, to move trouble, here. We've got, trouble, trouble, got, trouble, got trouble. in motion. Well they done. just, unfortunately, China type, uh, rather, uh, the Chinese players, five stars said, well, you take him, I'll take him. No, you take him. And no one took him. And uh, that's just, that's a great try by number five, Olivia, sorry, number 15, Sam Poynton. Tell you what, when you come from that depth and you come with intent to make to dent the line it is it puts the defense in so many uh difficult situations and they the boys from china china just couldn't unpick that one yeah yeah point and converts his own try so that takes the apaches we're a swing swing seesaw backwards and forwards in this match pats 21 19. what a apache, game apache what a game. china five stars there are and we still have six minutes left in this uh, second of uh, of the double, the uh, men's bowl semi-finals this morning, day two, Hong Kong, tens, 2024. China get the receipt on attack. Looked like there was a, bit of, a little bit of shepherd, but Luda. no. But Luda says no. I'm going to just take it up the middle. And I don't know why they don't give it that to, give that to him more often, because he's a very dangerous player. So dangerous. Again, China, China clever, five clever. stars. Luda again, is it? Looking to no, take this ball up the middle. Guy. That's a different strategy for them, Fats. They're yes. looking to take it up the middle rather than move it wide, although now they've decided they're going to take an inside ball, and that's a lovely ball, and that is and that is lovely, lovely feet by number five, Shan Chang Shun. He looked very, very swift. But unfortunately, our man... Wang Bao. Well done got to the Apache the ankles. defense. Yeah, he got a ball around the ankles, but that was probably down to pressure of, uh, of Apache, yeah? Yeah, 100%. Apache wore a few good carries then, but they still were able to force the play at the end there. So fresh legs coming onto the field for Apache, number 14, Timmy Olapade. And number four, Johnny Holiday. They'll be welcomed into this Apache side. Fresh legs with four minutes to go is always a good thing, Fats. <laughs> it's never a bad thing having fresh <laughs> legs with three minutes to go and you're on top. The only time it's a bad thing is when you don't win the game. So we've got a... The referee has just... signaled something, I'm not sure. I was just getting them... Getting them My concern is down. the clock is still rolling, so... Yeah. So Apache looking to move it wide, using hands. He's got nice. the double round there, that's good. Good defense, nice bit of play, good defense. But good defense by Five Star, Ooh, equal to the wow. task. And looking to good counter ruck, but it doesn't get there. And that's a very awkward oh. ball for Apache. And they're going backwards at 100 miles an hour. And Five Star have also got the turnover. Again, you know, just under pressure, trouble, trouble. making mistakes under pressure. Good tackle, good contact, strong contact. So Xing Shi Long says, I'm going to take it up the middle, but he gets met by ferocious Apache defence. Five stars looking to move it wide. I would have thought they would have given that. They had three on two overlap there, but no, they've decided to take it back in and they move it back to the other side at number five. Shan oh, Shan he's gone, he's gone. And back into <laughs> number three, I think it is. Lee Hao Tao and Lee takes the ball under the post. Good continuity by five star and well deserved try. Fats. Very much so. They just the ability to hold the defender away from them to free that ball up. That looked a lot easier than it should have been because they just kept their calm, kept their composure, and picked their holes. Yeah, and I, I look at I, you talked before about strength and conditioning and sort of you know sapping this energy, sapping humidity, etc. Before I look at the uh, the Apache boys, a lot of them had a lot of hands on hips, a lot of guys sucking in the big ones. You know, they 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 know they're in for a match here and they're, they're struggling here a bit, yeah. and they also they've got a man coming off. So 
So there's a bit of damage done in that last phase of play or last phases of play, Fats. Yeah, and the, and the sun was coming out, they're looking a bit pink as well, yeah. the boys from Scotland. Yeah. So, still anyone's game. Five star have the advantage, 26 21. Two minutes left on the clock. What a cracking game this has been. It's been great, hasn't it? It's great. And it's, you know, and Joel just Bing. not even 11 o'clock. The size of Gal Bing. Here he is uh, coming under the ball, number one. Oh. And that's a planned move, obviously, to tap it back, but not collected, unfortunately, by five stars. And this gives this gives the Barbars Here come the Barbers. Here come the Barbers. And a chance, and he's got it. He's got the ball in hand. This could be an upset. Number 12, Leyland Gordon. Oh. And, and Leyland Gordon, he's, he's pulled one out of the bag there. Oh, that's a brilliant play. You know, a lot of the times those 50-50 kicks over the top bats, they don't come off, but that one did. China struggle when the game goes into chaos a little bit. So there's just a couple of moments there was a turnover kick chase. They don't react as effectively as they should, but when everything's programmed and to their liking, they are very strong. It's going to be interesting here. This is a so cracker. Fortune, Fravis the Brave there, and it came off. And because he was under the post, that gave the con converter the chance to, to convert. And it's now Apache 28 in the seesaw match. China five star 26. But folks, hold on to your horses because it's not over yet. Clever kick. Low kick to the back. That's Straight quite, quite a smart strategy. Gal's got it. So they're going to get. They've got to give it to their big man. They've got to give it to their big man. Edge. Ooh, ooh, oh, that's a turnover. It's a turnover. The tackle. Oh, good call. Well, I've taken it quickly, five stars. Edge, edge, edge. 18 seconds left on the Boom. clock. Bang. Down by two points. What are they going to do here? They pick it up and move it. And they've got numbers here. And they move it again. And again. Looking to move it up the middle. They've got the they've got the patchy at six and sevens. China. Here they come. China five stars. Turn over. Taking it to ground, they've got numbers out on the left, and uh, but as what can often happen in pressure moments, the ball is dropped. Unfortunately, the ball is dropped, and China five stars they just fall short by two points bats. What a match! What a game! Oh, I'm, I'm just sad that both these teams won't. Won't move on and go deeper into the playoffs because that was a cracking game. That oh, I just thought China did have more in the locker, but they just oh, I don't know. Fair play to the Barbars, is it? They just stayed in it, stayed in it, stayed, never went away. Yeah, well, yeah that was that was never that, went away. That was just a fantastic match. Yeah. Um, hey, well look, it's been um, it's been great to uh, to to be with you. <laughs> and uh, and be part of this, and we'll see you later in the day, mate. Absolutely. Let me Thanks so much. Thanks, Pleasure. Bats. Good morning, James. John, how are you, mate? I'm very, uh, very well. Did you uh, did you have a good evening? Yes, very quiet. Meeting lots of old friends. As people are coming into Hong Kong for a, it's going to be a very, very long week of rugby. Yeah, I uh, like. I think because it's the last sevens at the you know at the stadium, um, we're seeing a lot of. I mean, I have, personally, I have a lot of friends coming in that I haven't seen for a long time that moved away from Hong Kong and decided to come back. Yeah. And then, you know, everywhere I looked last night, you know, before I left about 10 o'clock, there's just people everywhere that, you know, you haven't seen for five, six years that we used to kick around with or play rugby with. And it's, 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 it's really cool. Yeah, very much the case. And uh, with it being a public holiday here today, um, 
and all these people flying in and uh, lots of people make it easier to come in for the Thursday and make a long weekend of it rather than the Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be really big. This afternoon is going to shape up to be a very, very full tournament. Full house signs up, you reckon? Could be get close. I mean, it's perfect weather. It's uh, humidity is not too bad. There's a nice cooling wind and everyone's enjoying themselves. Um, so I think that we can look forward to a fantastic afternoon of entertainment. And if you can't make it down to the football club for the world's best tens, you can watch it here with us. Yeah, just great to have you in. Great to have you in wherever you are, whether you're in Hong Kong, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, anywhere in Southeast Asia, the Greater Bay Area, mainland China, and oh, the UK, yeah, that's the next Australia, ship. New Zealand, all around the world, wherever yeah. you are. Welcome in. Lovely to have you. And so... We now are waiting for two well, sides to come out. The Scottish Taiku, Scottish Exiles. And uh, Shogun. And they will be up against Shogun. And, of course, Shogun. Uh, well, you'd think they'd be favourites. The old you? samurai, right? Yes, so, that's correct. Um, so we saw them yesterday. And, yeah, they looked... I mean, I think all of these teams as typical first day got off to slow starts yeah but then later on in the afternoon their class sort of came through and they showed what they're capable of and yeah. so i think you think i think shogun probably are going to be too good for scottish hey. you know hong kong scottish being a team that made the the premiership grand final this year here in hong kong so and they have a you know they have a lot of players that come in as well but but there's some guy like their captain Tom Wilson. I mean, he's a guy like he just he'll just he is so competitive. That fellow, lovely man, lovely human, and he will uh, he will lead that team around the park. And you know they certainly won't want for trying. Yeah, they'll, they'll certainly be a major part of it. But I think what you you often see on the Wednesday is as the teams because they're invitational are getting to know each other. The the other tactic and they they the good teams with experience do is they make sure they don't tire themselves out on the Wednesday and so they they keep you know maybe running at 75 percent where they can uh, and then you see a completely different uh, team stroll out we're now into the knockout phases this is the men's uh, quarterfinal world uh, cup and um, you know we're getting down to the business end of the tournament um, I think from now on it's full on so I'd be very interested to see how Shogun go. Yeah, really excited. So here we go, folks. Two teams coming out. Scottish Exiles. And then Shogun. Shogun in the black. Scottish Taiku, Scottish Exiles in the white. So the teams just, the final preparations, just, you know, talking to each other. Same boys, come on, we need this, we want this, this is knockout. Let's go. It's a, it's a daunting side to look at, actually, yeah, the Shogun yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just looking at it, there's, there's talent right across that, yeah, yeah, that there team. Is. Speed pace and skills so. so captain tom wilson will kick off for hong kong scottish taiku exiles and here we are underway nice high ball from captain wilson taken down by shogun looking to move it straight away with their playmakers that's a nice ball out of the hands and a good strong carry. Referee says, no, you're not offside. Wilson says, I'm gonna have a bit of that, but they, the, the clear out comes in. Strong clear out from Shogun. Looking to move the ball wide now. And they do. They've got, they've got a playmaker out there and a big strong winger. I'd say the intensity has gone up by 
50 percent yeah you? i would say very accurate in the pass but he's lost that he's lost that ball in contact but the referee says no he has and he regained it which is interesting so they get a chance to create some more phase here shogun they're going about their business very efficiently they're now up to the 10 yard mark in scottish exile territory moving in out here to the on this near side again just happy to take the ball up recycle reface nothing fancy a couple of missed tackles there by scottish they're now having to really put the effort in and make these tackles the hard men to bring down the shogun men again going to ground recycled moving it up the middle just now they're in the 22 shogun looking ominous here their work rate is really really high and that's just efficient and finally i think finally the try is scored Safal Maka, number six, Safal Maka, first try that was, for uh, Shogun. Pretty direct That there, was pretty impressive, Dom. Yep. Uh, but as we sort of said earlier, that the intensity's gone up. The, the, it really now matters every second of the game. Um, these guys are looking. They need to put points on the board from the Shogun point of view. Get them on there, get them on early so they can control the game. They don't want any shocks. And um, now you'll see... Scottish Exiles coming back, wanting to make their own mark in this game. Yeah, well said. So, try unconverted by Shogun. 5-0. And that kick, hit, I don't think has gone 10, but it's been taken by Scottish, so the referee says play on. Scottish with the initiative now, ball to ground, looking to recycle, and they do. Moving it wide, and they've got numbers. Have they got hands? Yes, they have. It's in the captain's hand. Wilson moves it on the outside. Great work, great work by Rue Campbell. Takes it to ground. Wilson again. Playmaker, Merv Lowe, and that's a long, long pass. The referee says that's okay. Out to their speedster. Scottish looking good here. Good, efficient movement of the ball from both to both sides of the field. Wilson again. Numbers. Oh, oh but like a thief in the night. Oh. Like a thief in the night. Oh. Number two. Harrison King. Rather. Ian Stevens, I should say. Ian Stevens. Well, mate, that's uh, tense rugby for Ian you. Ian Stevens. <laughs> that's impressive. And, you know, that's, I mean, Don, that's always a 50 50, that yeah. one. You know, do you go for it? Do you not go for it? You've got to be confident because if you don't, if you miss it, you go to the bin. Um, hey, fortune favours the brave. Yes, I mean, Scottish were doing everything coming back into the game, uh, putting real pressure on, making space, looking good for a try there. Uh, I thought they were, intercept and they, they, uh, were, they were creating some good phases and uh, and yeah as you say you know looking equally as good as uh, as Shogun in terms of attack um, conversion misses so two tries to nil so Shogun lead Scottish Exiles Taiku Scottish Exiles here at uh, the Hong Kong Football Club tradition tense yeah and uh, Exiles will have to pick themselves up again I mean they showed they can do it um, <laughs> you know, and that's an unlucky, but it's also part of the tens game. So uh, they've got to t the ball is kicked to them. Uh, they've got possession. Let's do a bit more of what they were doing before, and maybe cut out that last pass. To yeah, the, yeah. For the intercept. But the, yeah. so just waiting for uh, we've got a bit of a oh, bit of a knock. Um, number four, Michael Loft. Michael Loft. He's featured in a few tens tournaments. Great player, great servant for Shogun. So Shogun kick off, nice high ball, but well taken. Well taken by Rue Campbell. 
Scottish get it out to their playmakers looking to move it wide but there's a the high big line, line speed there was great from Shogun still trying to get it get it get an exit here Scottish that's a loose ball but well picked up by their big winger and Shogun equal to the task on defense looking for a quick throw in but the referees picked something up here there seems uh, to be an injury as well I think he's picked up something maybe he's picked something up from the assistant referee and he's going back to chat with him now uh, yep so that's uh, sh that was a short arm that's a great kick that's a 50 meter gain for Taiku Scottish Exiles but it will be Shogun throw-in because it was a short-arm penalty or free kick I should say yeah. well this is where they want to be for the, from the Exiles point of view absolutely and they've got to put pressure on the line out but it's well executed and a, a very very good seated ball there but he's, he's pulled up he's pulled up lame he's pulled up lame and he'll be absolutely shattered with that and Scottish Exiles say well we don't really care because we just want to play and uh, but that's a helter skelter and really this is where this is where Scottish they don't need to be doing that kind of play the they have on the ground all over they <laughs> had the advantage Scottish there and unfortunately they just I think it was a bit of sudden you know rush of blood to the head and they they could see that uh, Shogun were were under the pump with a man down and you know they're breathing quite heavily Shogun so it's hard for both sides but yeah the initiative could have been taken there by Scottish Exiles and it wasn't there's just a, a one moment there there are four people on the ground looking for medical attention there's one guy from uh, Exiles is uh, limping off the pitch uh, we've got the hamstring for some issue going on a lower back issue there so I mean I mean that uh, the, the physio is there and he's doing the work early, moving his legs backwards and forwards but you know I look at that guy and I think you know man he he got shot by the mystery sniper but it looks like he's getting back up maybe it was just cramp I think you're um, right. yeah. yeah number 14 Nick Mully we want to see him stay on the field but he's limping no he's on he's coming off Nick Mully coming off his game play uh, game goes on play goes on Scottish looking to get some momentum going here get some phases going held up that goes to ground it'll be a recycle to Scottish exiles comes back to their playmaker he puts a long kick down into Shogun 22 they got to go all the way back There's some good chasing going on here and he's undecided what's he going to do that's great that's a great game for Scottish they've got to keep Shogun down here though if they want to make that pay off and they do great line speed but the referee says no you're just too quick just too quick off the line right idea just unfortunately not quite well executed yeah I think we call it uh, aggressive defense and it's the only way you're gonna knock uh, Shogun off the game so relieving penalty for Shogun they opt to kick it into touch a raking kick downfield into the wind 30 meter gain and they get the throw into the line out you know they're not having it all their own way Don I mean you look at these players you know they're all breathing heavily and they're yeah. you know they're having to do a lot of work and it's quite humid out there so yes. you yes. know this is far from 10-0 first half far from over this game so Shogun successful in the line out give it to their big man in the center taking it up but well met well met on defense by Scottish still with Shogun but again again Don uh, like yeah, you said that aggressive defense yeah, it, it, that's it's, working it's, it's working really for working. Scottish couldn't agree more that um, and and it's, it, even though it's the uh, quarterfinals and everything, uh, Scottish, who you would expect to be losing heavily, are coming out really, really strongly. And they showed signs of it yesterday. 
uh, they do have the talent to do these this and um, when you get up against a side like Shogun, uh, nobody, no side likes being playing against defences like this. Um, and it's producing the ball and giving the ball back to Scottish. So, great so to scrum, see. scrum down here, Scottish defensive scrum here. This will be the last play of the game, I would imagine. Time up on the clock. It's what a Scottish going to do. I think they're just going to decide to kick for the touch. And they do. And that's a great kick. What does the referee say? No, he's looked at his watch. He says, no, no, I'm going to take one more line out. So, right, so, so one more initiative for Scottish. They've got to get this line out right and get some phases together. They're capable. So, ball in, but Shogun too good on their set piece take it to ground and I imagine they looking to recycle and they do that's a strong carry and a great clean out Scottish I'm not sure whether they were on side there but the referee hasn't picked it this is aggressive defense once again they're giving them no room their light speed's good S Scottish exiles Shogun finding it very very difficult it's pretty rugged in there Referee says no, bit of, bit of back chat, Don, bit of back chat, yes, I don't want again. the back chat, so a relieving penalty to Shogun, that's, that's a shame. I think it's Shogun are going to, yeah, they're going to kick it out, because uh, that's been a bruising half. Oh, yeah. That is uh, an outstanding that's kick, and probably, from my seat, that's probably one of the kicks of the, of the tournament so um, far, especially the timing and where it is. And this gives Shogun another opportunity to maybe put some more points on the board before the halftime break. Yeah, it looks as though they didn't want a piece of it, but they certainly do now. And their line-out's working really well. And they've got a ball going here. Shogun, they know what they're about. And that's just one, two, three. Uh, that's training ground yeah. play right there, Don. Good execution, great execution. Uh, and, and give them all their due. Uh, that's changed the whole complex and look of the match. Uh, going up 15, 17 mil will be a uh, tremendous difference from 10 mil with a, with a streaky intercept try. Um, and it puts them in the controlling position for Shogun. Um, yeah, so the, uh, that's half time, folks. The uh, try was unconverted. So Shogun lead Scottish, Taiku Scottish, Hong Kong Exiles, yeah, 15 I, points to nil. Yeah, I think they're showing a bit of experience. And, uh, and, you know, you would expect them to do well, but they're controlling, they're now in a controlling position. I've been very impressed with Scottish, though, they've, they've, especially their defence um, and, and how they're putting pressure on them all the time. Uh, so it'd be good to see if they get a bit, bit of luck and maybe a couple of tries just to bring themselves back into the game would be um, what my team talk would be about. What do you reckon? Yeah, no, 100%. You yeah, know, I think, you know, if I'm, if I'm, the, if I'm the, uh, the Scottish coach, I think, you know, there's not, there was not a lot wrong with what they did. And it, I think it was just more the precision play and the, and the phase play from, uh, from Shogun that, that, that really got them to where they are on the scoreboard. But it's, not a, it's probably not a really a true reflection have to yeah. say um, I think you know Scottish had their opportunity you know when they were down down in the uh, in the in the 22 but they unfortunately weren't able to convert and they will be ruining that chance so it shows that they can actually get down there and create those opportunities when they keep the ball in hand and yeah. I think they've just they've got to keep up the aggressive defense yes. you know and stop and just you know they've got to score first second half and they've got to stop Shogun uh, from scoring so it's about it's about controlling the ball, ball security, not giving it away cheaply, and uh, you know it's it's you know one tr one score, one try, and they're back in the match. Yeah, I mean, you'd probably say if you were the coach, you'd go carry on with what you're doing. You uh, just be a little bit tighter. Uh, it really is that. It's a simple game sometimes, uh, but this is a really big. There's some big hits going on, and uh, yeah. 
I, I know we're in the cup final, a cup quarter final, but um, it really does show. So here we go. So restart. Shogun, nice high ball down into the corner, but well taken by Scottish Exiles. As they look to move it wide, Wilson moving it out into the middle. That's a high ball that's gone over his head. That puts pressure on the guy outside him, but he takes it cleanly and goes to ground. He's under pressure here, though. He's under big pressure. The counter ruck, the counter ruck was good from Shogun, and now. Scottish find themselves under all sorts of pressure early on second half. Shogun looking to recycle. They can go either way, but they decide to take it back into the middle, give it to their big men. Again, the recycling ability of the Shogun side is, a, is, is to be hold. A very, very quick on the recycle. That's a loose ball, though, and it's been picked up by Scottish. And then overran giving the initiative back to Shogun. Yeah. But that was clever play, I've got to say, heads up play by the uh, by the Scottish player there, because you'd think he'd come from an offside position, but he didn't, he was in general play, and uh, and that meant that the the uh, they were awarded the penalty, but then they've decided after that, two phases, and they've coughed it up. So, again, Don, just yeah, those little things, those yeah, little yeah. bits and pieces, those exactly. little pressure points. Um, they tell, don't they, in, this, in these types of games. Quite surprising number of mistakes. Uh, there is a bit of wind yeah. uh, today and things like that, and uh, the humidity isn't that high uh, yet, but um, for teams of this calibre, you don't yeah. expect them to no. be dropping. Uh, I think it's probably like testament that. to the intensity of the match. Very much. You know, to, to you know, pretty fit, pretty yeah. athletic teams, players looking to fight for every inch of ground and every ball and when you're in that situation yeah sometimes you do just cough the ball up so scrum down just outside the 22 of scottish exile scrum going back there though it's a great scrum by scottish what does the referee say yes and that's a turnover it's a turnover to scottish well done looking to recycle now get out of their own half We've got some width here moving it wide Goes back inside. Again, moving it to the middle. That's a pretty high. That's a that's around the neck, but the referee hasn't called it, and neither has assistant referee. Looking to move it back. Tom Wilson. He's got some men outside him, and he's got a bit of room to move. What's he going to do here, Wilson? Gives an inside ball. That's great feet. They're now on the 10-yard mark. Scottish working hard. Now into their fifth phase. Storming defence. Storming defence, but that's, that's a high shot. Referee says that's a high shot, and it was. So Tom Wilson decides he's just going to slow it down. Captain. Yeah. Of this, of this I think Scottish that's very side. necessary as well. It, it, again, this panicking, or trying to do everything at speed at 100 miles uh, an hour is not yeah. really helping. No, uh, no either I, side, but yeah. especially Scottish. Yeah. You, you yeah, definitely do have some some real athletes here, and and uh, just get them some space. And the ball and passing does that for you. You don't have to run at 100 miles an hour every yeah. all the time. So Tom Barnum to throw it in for Hong Kong Scottish Exiles. Throws it into the back, finds his man. Oh, but it's a loose ball. Wilson, oh, that was clever. That was clever. He kicked, that was a kick pass to his outside player. And he's decided to have a, Tom Barnum it was, and Tom's decided to have a little kick. And he's put pressure on, and we've got something going on here, but that's pretty clever, I've got to say. By... The Shogun 10. Quick line speed here. Shogun looking to... He's looking for the advantage. <laughs> and, and the referee oh, says, yeah, uh, yeah, you impeded that player, unfortunately. So that was uh, that was a, that was a pretty good yeah. uh, <laughs> heads-up play from, from Jacqueline Moses. And here he is again, Moses with the ball in hand, looking to seed it wide, and he does. Gives it to his outsides. We've got some speed here. This man's got some feet. 
and a good offload back inside so good ball continuity here from Shogun going towards the line moving it again and that's just nice. too much pace too much power well that seemed inevitable to me uh, and uh, I think it's big Rue Campbell in fact he might have been the man that did the hamstring was it or no maybe not I'm not sure no, I don't think so, but they've got a lot of guys that size. And but, that uh, speed. yeah, so, again, just Shogun showing their class, yeah. being able to recycle the ball through phase, going left, going right, putting their big man in the middle, and they're just creating the numbers and the space. Yeah, it's a sort of um, lack of awareness by Exiles, I think, because, you know, it was a silly penalty to give away. It was unnecessary, and it can change the, well, possession but the uh, nature and position of on the pitch yeah and so that just gave them uh, the opportunity to score yeah sorry Don absolutely so that takes Shogun out to 22 points to nil against this Hong Kong Scottish side they're playing for pride now ball goes to ground Shogun again have control looking to move it wide no Moses says no, I'm going back in. And he goes back inside and they recycle again. But that's good, that's Scottish, good defence by Scottish. And number six, Rue Campbell. That's great strong carry from him. Moses again, moving the ball into the middle. But they're just happy to just bring it back in. Test the Scottish defence. Moving them around the park from side to side. Yeah. Referee says play advantage there. Was it knocked down by Scottish? Not deliberate. Plays the advantage and is, is gone. That, well, that, 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 could, that could be the ball game. Yeah, I think so. I think once the, now they've calmed down and they're feeling the pressure's not so much on them. Uh, they're creating the spaces uh, which are creating the tries. So uh, a bit of a good lesson. I think we were right earlier on they were rushing it too much um, now they look very very much better just just taking the time and calming down a bit yeah uh, not much to say about the exiles I'm afraid no this stage. no uh, so that try scored by Rue Campbell for Shogun and converted by him as well that takes blows the score out 27 Shogun Taiku plays Scottish exiles nil Two minutes left in the match. Scottish, what have you got, boys? So restart. Shogun. Taken. Well taken. By Exiles. As they go to ground, looking to recycle. Get out of here. Wilson, what's he doing? He's just sending his men. Go forward, boys. I think they want to be uh, scoring, at least getting a consolation try. Yeah, that would be great. That would be good, moving it wide. But they're just moving it across the field, and it's a it's a shifting defence by Shogun, and they've stopped that pretty easily. So they need something a little bit different here, Scottish, and they try and look for it. And that's illegal, you can't do that on the ground. Scottish again looking to move this ball. Wilson comes in, but he's pretty easily wrapped up. Well, the Shogun defender there. Scottish trying something different. The kick pass, and it comes off. Now we've got a two-on-one. Have we? Yes, we do. We've got a. We've got Tom Barnum taking it up the middle. Now on the 22, Scottish. What do we got? Keep it going, lads. And they get the penalty. They need to keep the momentum going. Don't slow it down. And they don't. Moving it again. Lewis Berg takes it to ground. Scottish. Close. Yes. <laughs> and we asked for it. And we got it. Number 12. Dean Squires. 
in, in between the, what three penalties yeah uh, i mean that was a great <laughs> passage of play don yes. we've got to give it to them right yeah and look at and if you look at the uh the showgun boys i mean they they are knackered they are you, you can't see them scream but all of them are bent double very pleased that the game is over i think <laughs> so Taiku, Hong Kong, Taiku, Scottish Exiles get the last play of the game, just as we see here on the screen, doing all the hard work. Yeah, I think and a pretty good game, to yeah. be fair. Um, and going over under the post. Probably what we expected. Yeah. Um, uh, but there have been a few knocks and bruises. I noticed there were several sort of semi-injuries in that match, uh, which may be a bit concerning for later on in the tournament for... Shogun. Yeah, well, I think I think definitely Shogun will be looking towards the ice baths after that one. Uh, so now we've got the uh, the the other favourites coming up, which is the tradition team uh, playing the Texas Hong Kong Football Club, uh, the home home side. Um, again, you've got one team. Uh, this is still a cup quarter final. Um, but you'd think that the favourites for today will be the tradition side. They are the defending uh, champions and they, they will be looking um, to win this as easily as they can without using too much energy. Um, I very much hope that Natix's uh, club can uh, put some pressure on them and, and uh, get some of their own plaudits and why not sneak the game? So here we are, we're back. Tradition YCAC kick off and they're on attack. Football club defending their own 22 right now, moving it wide. YCAC really early on, testing this Hong Kong football club defence. And that's a nice steal from Hong Kong football club. They're like, hey, we're, we're, not, we're not just going to sit down and take it from you guys. We're going to come back. And that's a great steal and a great forward run out to Jamie Ross. He moves it wide. Out into the middle, nice kick down the back, good chasing, putting the pressure on. But that's a good chase back, and there's no one back there for a football club. They have to get back. Mike Walsh is trying to make his way back. Walsh get it on the, gets it on the left foot, but that goes straight into touch. He's outside of 22. Again, that was uh, that was a nice breakaway there from football club. Yes. But uh, just not able to finish off, Don. Yep, I... Uh... You know, it's it's they are the uh, the Hong Kong League and uh, Grand Final champions. So they've they've won a lot of games this year. So um, and they finished off yesterday very well. So uh, they'll be looking. You know, they, they want to be playing this game. Yeah. So great, great spoil there from Football Club in the line out. They spoiled it and they've got it back. Football Club. Here they go on attack and they're not, they're not mucking around. That's a good breakaway up the middle. Looking for someone to pass to, people in motion. Taking it to ground, that's holding on right there, but the referee hasn't called it. Walsh gives it to his outside. He's having to have another run at it, coming up to the 22. This is good continuity here from Hong Kong Football Club. Again, just testing out this YCAC defence in the middle of the park. Walsh again, that's a nice show and go, but he gets well tackled by YCAC and a 50-50 chip over the top, chip and chase but of course Don in so situation yes. I say it so often it's a 50-50 risk and reward in that case it was too much risk and not enough reward yes and, and, and we've just seen exactly the same thing happen in the last game uh, that is because uh, football club are playing really really well there and putting uh, real pressure on them look keeping control and possession throughout and uh, sure enough the intercept happens and instead of nil all or seven nil to you is seven points down uh, unlucky but football club have shown they can come back no, 100 percent they're showing some good some good signs there and uh certainly you know i don't see this you know being a one-sided match that's for sure you know uh, as the uh, as the host club of this tournament uh, the, the the Hong Kong Football Club lads are making us proud. It's great to see. So seven nil, seven minutes gone in this men's cup quarter final. Well taken by Football Club. 
and they'll be looking to work their way out of this but it's been but it's been a it's a turnover turnover to ycac and unfortunately don that was pretty soft yeah um they just didn't control the ball when it went to ground they didn't have the did it they didn't have the dogs as we call them the clean out was there they weren't securing that ruck and that gave uh, that gave the YCAC team a chance to come yeah. over the top and take the ball and score the try in the corner. Very very easy soft try. Can can you are you allowed to say 12 nil against the run of the game? Uh, I think you probably <laughs> are. Yeah. Why not? Uh, um, to, to be fair, they, they've you know they've yielded up two tries, soft tries, you'd have to say, um, uh, having put in all the effort and really controlled most of the game yeah which is which is kind of which, frustrating uh, especially if you're the coach <laughs> sitting on the sideline anyhow um there it is conversion unsuccessful so score now ycac tradition 12 hong kong football the texas hong kong football club nil restart again football club they take it back but it's well positioned by ycac and they get the control position again. They look at to bring it out and move it wide. It's good matchups here, one on one. You've got to get the play. He's made him. He's made an advantage. Nice offload there, and then a second offload. Close to the line here, YCAC taking the ball to ground. They'll be looking to recycle left all the way. Again, just testing this football club defence, moving it from side to side, that's got players it. in motion. Again, that's just the class of this tradition YCAC side, Don, coming through there. Yeah, I, I think they just took the right option every single time, especially that final one. Instead of going with all the men, he spotted that there was an overlap, and uh, as good sides do, they took, they, they took it, they went the other way and quietly ran it in. Um, this is very, very impressive. They don't seem to have done very much, and you're already there 17 nil up. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, <laughs> well. Uh, so you just, uh, just uh, football club, they've decided to bring on uh, some fresh legs, which I think is a good idea. Three new players coming onto the field. I see Gabriel Carroll on there, which is great. Brinwa also on. And a great great, happening, great yes. to see him on board. He's, you watch him carry the ball. He's a he's a tough, uncompromising Welsh prop, and he's got and he's quick for a prop as well. So anyway, kick off. YCAC ball taken again this time cleanly by Club, but again he's just held up. That looks like uh, yeah. Just you know that's again smart play. YCAC smart play, and they've emptied their bench five new players coming onto the field for tradition so look out Don. Yeah I think uh, again a good tactic they uh, the, basically they want to get everybody on the pitch Yeah. especially at the first game of the day get everyone touching and understanding getting into the game mentality uh, but also making sure that no one's getting overused yeah. and they're not under pressure so why not and of course the bench that came on uh, are still outstanding players yeah so brand new scrum there but uh, but that said that was a great scrum by a football club there but tradition managed to just get it back referee's got his arm out i think probably for offside no he's yeah he has he's gone back inside players off the back of the scrum were offside So again, that gives the initiative to YCAC. They can create something here from attack. They'll probably put it into the corner, I'd imagine, and take it up and get their big men in and uh, and look to yeah. look to maul it over the over the line, Don. Yeah, I think uh, again, it's 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 controlling possession, um, and we keep saying it, but it's it's where you win the game. And and I have to say, uh, tradition just looked like the. They are the experts at tens, and um, if you're controlling it this way, you've got an easy way through. When you get to the end of the day, which they look like they're going to be in, and that's yeah. another try. Yeah. So they didn't. They, they. They. You know, what you expected didn't happen. It was basically a short throw to the front of the line out, and just a stroll in, an easy stroll in, in the corner. Yeah. So again, mixing it up, YCAC professional side. They know when to pull uh, the different tricks out of the bag, trying all their tricks of the trade. 
and uh, it's it's you know it's impressive to watch. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not a betting man, but I'm, and I think I know where. I'd, I, they're certainly the best team I've seen so far. Um, yep, they'll definitely be uh, they'll definitely be vying for for the cup, and we'll see them in the semi-final later in the day. In the interim, it's a restart. YCAC emphatically in front, 26 points to nil over the Texas Hong Kong Football Club. Football Club now have possession again. Let's see what they can do. Show and go there from the nine. But he's in a tough position there, but referee says no. You've got to let the man go. So they have another go at it. And that's great there by Brunua. Bring it out to the middle, trying to find Walsh. Can't find him. Gevo goes in, but of course he didn't, unfortunately he didn't hold his feet. Thomas Gibbs, so it's a turnover. And YCAC again come away with the ball, and they've got players in motion. And it's pretty nice to watch as they go towards the line, but football club, well done nice. football club. They've stolen that in the tackle, and that's a great run. Taking the ball back up to the 22. So still showing some real grit and determination, this football club outfit. And what has been a pretty tough match for them so far. Looking for a kick chase. The ball oh. just beats the player. And that's half time. Yes. Don, what do you well, make of that? Yes, yeah, that was, uh, well, an easy and a tough, tough, easy for one side, tough for the other. Uh, and yet, uh, I, I think tradition have been uh, flattered by the uh, the score, um, but and whilst uh, football club have looked good, they've had chances, they've made spaces and everything, but the defensive tradition just looks at so much more professional, and they they're able to cut them down, even if they give up a bit of territory, they're still bringing them down, and they're generally winning that breakdown and the possession changes and yeah. uh, tradition are coming back, putting pressure on and not panicking and just finding the spaces and putting it in. Um, and also, unfortunately, I think too, with the two wins that Football Club had yesterday, two great wins, sort of, you know, when you see that, the side of the draw they're on, unfortunately, they've drawn <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> probably the top <laughs> side of the tournament. In fact, yeah. they are seeded number one in the tournament. Yes. Um, and and that's you know on day two first game up that's really really tough and you know I take nothing away from the Hong Kong Football Club side you know they you know there's there's a lot of grit there's a lot of determination there's a lot of will and they've had some moments but when you're up against the class of a side like YCAC all across the park and just their like you said their ball control their ability to move the ball around have many plenty of options players in motion. Put, put all the tricks, take all the tricks out of the bag, you know, the, the whole package. Yeah, I, I think, you know, if you are a football club, you, you want to get your name on the board as well. And uh, they'll do that by creating more pressure. There's a bit more in, intensity into the game, I think. Uh, and try to put tradition under a bit of pressure. Well, you know, they've got the second half here now. You know, Mike Walsh is going to run them around the park. Gabriel Carroll clapping his hand, saying, boys, come on, let's go. You've got Brinway in there. You know, he won't take a step backwards. You know, no. Gibbsy as well. And then, if, you know, some other players that are, that are that are come on, that are visiting. We've got a couple of young players from Hamilton that, that Logan Asplin has brought in. I think they're ex-Hamilton uh, old, um, you know, uh, Hamilton boys high, old boys. So great to, for them to have a chance and an opportunity to play in this type of environment. And I'm sure he's probably thinking about maybe next year to bring those guys back and, and play in the Premiership. So, right. you know, that's one of the great things I think about, about, these, about this tournament is it showcases a lot of different players at a lot of different levels. Yeah, it, it, uh, over the years it's certainly helped football club with with new players coming in uh, and this is the first place to go to when they're thinking about joining a club when they arrive in Hong Kong so football club in position what can they do here ball goes behind him but that's all right Walsh picks it up tries to step looking to fight unfortunately he gets it's big uh, <laughs> big man on little man unfortunately Mike Walsh I'm afraid Walshy 
you know, you can't stick your foot out, mate, after, after you've been penalised. It doesn't matter how frustrated so, you are. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're going to the naughty chair. In the meantime, YCAC break out, but Football Club have got in, in the middle of that and taken position. Gabe Carroll, what's he doing? He's moving the ball wide. That's a great seed. Club looking to move this, keeping it in hands. Is he, there's one of the young lads, Callum, I think it is, from Hamilton. Old boys getting the ball to ground. Again, football club playing with nine men. Mike Walsh in the naughty chair. Brinwa getting the ball in the middle. That's lovely hands from Gabe Carroll. Car He's a seven, but he looks more like a ten in this match. Football club fighting for everything they can get here. Referee says release, and he does. Carroll again at first receiver, but he's been taken out without the ball. And the referee says, says no, play on, YCAC. Again, they've got numbers, men in motion. Just too quick, too powerful, too fast. Another try in the corner, YCAC. And that'll make it 31-0 with the kick to come. Don, again, just, you know, I mean... No discredit to Hong Kong Football Club. They're showing a lot of grit, a lot of determination. But uh, the class of YCAC able yeah. to withstand that pressure yes. and then turn turn it into attack, on defence into attack. Yeah. And, and seeming to do it at ease, that's the sort of thing. They're, they've got the speed, the time. Um, and, you know, whatever the break that Football Club are making at the moment, uh, they're just getting tied up held down and the, and the possession is going back to uh, tradition and um, you know you do that often enough you're going to leak points yeah so YCAC conversion unsuccessful uh, that takes them out to 31-0 this uh, some games go very fast this game's going very slow for me there's still seven minutes of the second <laughs> half <laughs> uh, nice kick off an equally nice receipt by Hong Kong Fo the Texas Hong Kong Football Club moving the ball wide to the edge looking for some kind of opening here referee says no YCAC you off your feet you didn't support your own body weight so again another penalty to Hong Kong Football Club looking to break out of there the 10 yard area but the referee has said no advantage to YCAC to playing the ball on the ground so again, YCAC, a bit of show and go here. And this man, number two, he's looked good all game, and he gives his uh, counterpart, you know, a hug and a pat on the head and says, hey, mate, well done. But takes YCAC out to 36 points to nil with a kick to come. Don, again, this is... Yeah, um, well, like you, I'm, I'm hoping that clock comes down very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> It's not good if you're a home supporter that Cookie and I are uh, seeing this, um, especially when you've seen how well they've been playing during the tournament and the whole season. But you, at the end of the day, you've got to acknowledge real class. And, yeah, uh, at the end of the day, you know, like you said, that you've got to acknowledge the class, and that's what we've come to see. You know, when it comes down to the sharp exactly. end later on in the day, that's, what, that's our expectation of these top sides, and they're showing it here. Again, great receipt by Hong Kong Football Club. They need to get out of their, uh, try and get out of their own half here. Can they do that? Walsh seeds a wide ball, taking it up the middle. They need to have some players there that they protect him, but they said they didn't hold him. That's probably the smallest player on the paddock, making the most yardage. Again, taking it to, up to the, uh, the left-hand touchline, Hong Kong Football Club. What can they create here in the hands of Walsh? Looking to miss pass but he wasn't expecting that. They've said it's gone back. Ooh. And two football club men run into each other. And the referee says that was fortunate. The referee says Gabe Carroll decides to take it quickly. Uh. And that's a knockdown by YCAC, and that's two minutes on the nutty chair for you, my friend. Mike Walsh in his hand, ball in hand. What's he going to do? He's taking it up to the 22. Quick tap. Gives it to Gabe Carroll. Come on, Gabe. Take it up, mate. Gabe says, no, nah, I'm going to send it out to the wingers. And he does. Football club looking to recycle again in the hands of Walsh. Again, looking for players. Take him back. Bit messy. Struggling to get out of the 22 here. The Texas Hong Kong Football Club. 
Carroll at first receiver. Go on, Gabe Carroll. Oh, and he gets swung around by his opposite. But we've still got the still ball. Still got the recycle. <laughs> Bryn was in there at halfback. Good to see him in the halfback position. Looking for a show and go there. It doesn't come off. Ball goes to ground. Picked up again on the recycle. YCAC, they've got players in motion. Just taking the ball direct as they've been doing all match. Looking again for their sixth try. Moving the ball wide. They've got numbers. Football club equal on defence, but this YCAC team still full of running. They take the ball to the line. It could be held up, but the referee says no. That's a try. So that's either the sixth or seventh score. I think it's a sixth score, Don. Yeah, well, for uh, uh, for YCAC, you know, and you know, I don't want to sound belaboured, and I don't, uh, and I don't mean to, but it's just, you know, it's. It's just been a procession, really, in terms of just their ability to, again, withstand that pressure and and then turn defence well, into attack I, I think, and, uh, then, and, and stay down this end of the field and score. We've run out of superlatives, really, haven't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it'll be... It's up to the opposition teams watching how tradition they're playing and how well they're playing and working out how they're going to beat them. Um, Football club didn't have the answer today. Um, but maybe later in the tournament, uh, the teams will. Yeah, I mean, you know, so they'll drop down right into the plate, right? Yes. Yeah. To, uh, for, the, for the next game, that'll be a plate semi-final. And uh, so, you know, they've still got plenty to play for um, later, in the, later in the day. Yeah, and when you talk to the players, they're having fun, they're loving every second of it. Uh, but even so, um, you've still got your pride and you want to put a point, point on the table against the best team. Yeah, yeah. So YCACA again, break out. Just too good, too powerful, too smart. Again, that club's and not going down. <laughs> club boys, you know, keep your heads up, boys, because, you know, you're up against the best team in the tournament. And, uh, you, you know, you've tried your heart out. You know, look down at these guys, Jamie and Ollie down here, Jamie Ross, you know, blood all over their faces. They haven't given up. They haven't stopped trying. They haven't stopped you know, tackling, fighting for every inch, every ball. Proud of you guys. Proud of the effort. Represented the club well. And, uh, you know, one minute 20 to go. Heads up, boys. See if you can't pull something out of here. YCAC 52, the Texas Hong Kong Football Club now. It would be nice, be nice to be able to see a football club getting a try, but... To be honest, I've not seen anything that's likely to suggest that will happen. Again, good restart and good receipt. So that side of their game oh. has been great, but just coughed up the ball again. They can't afford to do that and give this YCAC, classy YCAC side the ball again in their own 22 because they're going to punish you. And that's what they're doing right now, looking to move the ball wide. That's a loose pass, but well picked up by the big man. Moving it to the corner. Good feet, great defence by Hong Kong Football Club. Still there, another phase. Ball comes uh, wide, and that's just classy play. And probably Don, that's probably the best try that this team's put together. I know it's late in the match and people are tired, but you know to be able to do that, yeah. I think uh, shows again the class of this YCAC you me, side. You've got, to, you've got to suck it up and enjoy at the end of the day. Absolutely, it's great rugby. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, you've got a great seat. The uh, best, tournament is, best is in the house. filling up. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> uh, the stands are starting to fill up now. Uh, it's building up to be... Uh, well, if we get to see tradition play again today, I'm going to thoroughly enjoy it. And so there it is, guys. Final score. YCAC just way too good for the Texas Hong Kong Football Club. Final score, 57-0. Don... Always love sitting in the in the in the hot seat here with you, mate. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure there's probably more to come later on in the day. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I look forward to hearing your dulcet tones as we go throughout the day, yeah. and maybe we'll have a beer at the end of the end of, end of the event, mate. I end think of the day. I think we'll have deserved two. it by then. Or two, if, if we're good. Cool. We're well, good. well, we're now I mean, we're now handing over there. to to two legends of, of, of Hong Kong rugby, Sammy Afida and Mark Fatia Fats Fatia Lofa. 
semis here in his Cav Asian Cavaliers kit and looks resplendent. So, guys, handing over to you. Talk to you later on. Absolute shift there by Mr. James Cook. Cool cookie here, as he well known here in Hong Kong. Absolute legend. Big game. Big game. Right, here we are. The Ashby Tropics against the overseas old boys. It's going to be yeah. a ripper today. Fats, what do you think of the conditions? It looks like it might kind of rain soon. Yeah, I think, I think the cloud cover uh, will suit, I think, most athletes because the heat is quite sapping in Hong Kong, as we know. But um, having this cloud cover and a nice breeze, hopefully they won't be too fatigued coming over and doing their stuff. Here they come, overseas old boys. They've been actually one of those teams that, since I've been in Hong Kong, 13 years, have always been have always had a team in. It's it's great, it's a good mixture of young and old, some locals, some from abroad, but they seem to make the trek every year. Elvis Sevilla of Bath Samoa, he actually suited up with them. An old uh, Gillies Kaka used to play for the old boys as well. Another ah. New Zealand Sevens legend so many legends and this is what tens tournament is it's a beautiful little introduction into the hong kong sevens it's it's just one of the most more magical weeks of being in hong kong being a rugby player and looking forward for it to unfold we're in day two now here so keep an eye out on the the ashbury tropics Balarin, panday adam mclean alex todd Charlie Crawley, some good players to watch out for. Sportsman's end of the grounds. Here we go, and we're off and running here. Nice high, solid kick. It's, well, it's a knock-on advantage. Ooh, double knock-on, I think. That could be the only way to explain it. Yeah, not really a good start from the uh, the old boys to, to lose that straight from the kickoff. Yeah. Hundred percent, but they're fortunate enough to get the scrum here. So this will show us a little glance into the set piece battle that's going to take place between these two teams. So keep an eye out on the uh, number twelve Fats, Tony Lamborn. Tony Lamborn, overseas old boys. Here he is. It's a sniper. Nice. The kick, early kick from the old boys. Chase moving forward. It's, it's an effective ch tactic. Oh, wow. Some jungle stuff there. Some juggling. There it is. Breakdown. Ref letting, ref letting it go. Swing it wide. Another chip shaping. No. Back door. Carried. Will be very tidy. The ref says no advantage will come back. Must be a penalty. That's a knock on. Okay, nice piece enough. of uh, play there from old boys. Fats. Very much tactically aware, knowing that they're going to start kicking to the trams and having 10 players on their feet defensively is a nice way to transition out of a set piece. Might be a tactic. He shaped the second time the 10 to put it over the top again. But decided to go back door. I think they got caught out there. Big scrum. Lamborn with the feet. There it is. Solid from overseas old boys. Oh, oh, they can't hold the second shove. They can't hold the second shove. Impressive work. He's a bit of an a no man's land there, but he gets through. Not contesting the breakdown as much, which would probably suit them good solid carry by the one i think the short numbers attack wise out there but nice step gets him away releases the wing down on the edge bit of a goosey and bundled into touch jeez oh, not sure if that was uh, the, the right decision the effects it was three on one and yeah. he had nowhere to go 100 percent and i think they're just going through this period where they're just feeling each other out seeing where where they're hot and where they're not, and I don't think that was one of the places they were hot. That's right. 
over here that there's a lot of a lot of kicking i think kicking is a very crucial part of this if you haven't got enough guns in your team to put the ball in front of your whole team and just chase tropics with the ball oh well, pinched stolen by old boys but stolen back knock on tropics tropics get this one back double knock on i'll be interested to see what the tropics have in store here Yeah. So we've just been handed uh, some vital information. There are two 12s in the old boys team, is it? One <laughs> well, the 12s, number 12. <laughs> uh, one, the noticeable actually. One is uh, the halfback, the other one is a prop. Wow, strong scrum. Good work, but they get it out. The kick again valuable no one was on the same playbook only one man chasing not linking up this could open up uh, an opportunity here and good some good Ooh, yards nice. back loose carry but going to the open nice ball strong carry strong defense second man very lethal on that contact shooting out now the tropics meeting them head on head here Ref letting it go. There's another kick. Not as much oomph on it. Yeah. It's a kickathon here. Oh, it's opening up. Sneaks through. Needs support. He's isolated. Ball's out. Lucky. This is trouble. Trouble for the old boys. And it's a knock on advantage. Transitional defense now for the Tropics. They're going to have to find their feet here straight to the goosey coming back in yeah, getting getting some good yardage on that edge there the old boys somewhat scrappy but they still get a three on two there's an offload here that's it oh, oh look after the ball young fella here he goes the kick no one home oh see it looks it's like a he's taken Watch out, out. Oh, there. I think he was in front of the kicker. Yeah. <laughs> what an exhausting passage of play face. Yeah. It's just every, all the action was in the middle of the field. Absolutely. Absolutely. And something almost came of that. They just keep the ball alive. You notice that the kicking has become more prevalent in this game than, I'd say, the last two. Some good kicks, some good choice of kicking here, and then the chase. Day two chases. Who's up for it? It's a tough day to chase. Kick for touch, a relieving penalty here for the Tropics. And he, ooh, a little bit of a cheeky there. Running it out, going to the edge, left edge. Over the top, contesting well, the Max ball, slowing it down. Here. Oh, the kick again, finds the back of number 22, but scooped up. Strong carry by number three. Very strong. Not rolling away. A little pick and go from the base. Tropics. With plenty of intent here. Good carry by the big number six. Number eight. Oh, no release. No roll away. Yeah, Will Morris. Big, strong man. But it's number eight. Charlie Crawley, strong. He'll be a handful on the edge if they keep feeding him the pill because he has a plenty of intent. Crawley's a big unit. Oh, yeah. Big athletic man. As they walk in tropics, they'll no doubt have a strike involved because no one's warming up on the bench. They're sitting with this starting 10, feel their way in. Eight minutes, nil all. Great game. to the back I don't know if that was a planned move or not number 12 pretty strong very strong for the tropics as they reload again inside four and the big number eight Crawley again Crawley causing some damage close to the post here it is oh some nice nice little intricate passing there 
Release, so release. Ref says release. Still can testing those rocks in the wide channels. Good shot. Referee. It's claiming a head high. Quick tap. These are dangerous. Oh, didn't find the right man. A little bit of footwork here. Strength. Beautiful offload. I tell you what. Old boys really hanging in there defensively. It's numbers on their feet. He's isolated. Oh, good call, referee. Great work by old boys. And tremendous defense there from overseas, old boys. Jeez, they defended their line for about a minute and a half there. Just getting bodies up, recycling bodies. Those are tired bodies. Those are day two bodies getting off the ground and coming over and, and making defensive stops. It's tough. At least the sun's not out. That's all I can say. Both teams sucking in the big ones, Fats. Oh. I mean, what would you do here if you were old boys? I would say another kick. Get the ball in front of all the players now and just get them in front, get them in the right areas. I think that would be ideal right now. Miscommunication. And then lost the ball. Good skills here. Go. <coughs> oh. Breakdown. Breakdown's been heavily contested by both teams. Not giving him a chance to release. Old boys have got like four guys in that breakdown. Should be a kick here. There's no one. But past the back 20 meters. This is why they get the edge. Oh, he's not half quick. He's gone. Beautiful pass back. Try time. Old boys to Luca Fufula. Malo Luca Fuller. And Great try down the end. And that's right on half time fits. Luca Fuller backing up a nice break. Here Great I was try. calling for the kick. No need. They knew what they were doing. They've been together for 17 years. <laughs> no, 17 hours, I think. But um, they knew what they were doing. Class act. Um, some nice little work interchange of passing down here on this flank, yep. on this edge, and then they swung it back. They have the conversion and it's half time. What would your coaches be saying to you now if you were the, 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 the tropical team? Score some more tries. <laughs> <laughs> That's that easy. Score a few more t meat pies. And Bob's your uncle. Fuller there with a try at the end. Great try. They really needed that. As we go into the half, old boys leading Tropics 7 0. What impresses me about these two teams defensively? Strong men standing upright, taking their defensive challenges, and it's, it's finding it very difficult to get through each other. There's bodies everywhere. So I was particularly impressed with old boys who went through probably 11 phases off the top of my head, defending, getting up off the ground, and defending some more to turn that penalty just out, just just five meters out of their try line, and now they've reversed it for a try for them. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, guys like Lockie Monroe running the show for old boys, Jack Barnes and old PC Leilua as well. You know, they've got some really good players. Outstanding. And I think if I'm serve, memory serves me correctly, this is a good team. This is one of their better old boys teams that I've seen. And I've been here for nearly two decades. That's a long time, Fitz. Maybe I embellished on that <laughs> for 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> two decades. Who's doing the maths? <laughs> Well, as we start the second half, we want to thank everyone, especially our sponsors, Tradition. Tradition, thank you for uh, helping us out. Natixis, Natixis, thanks for coming to the party. AIA, yes. Morant, Taku Place. Taku Place. Allied World, Streamline Sports. Thank you. Uh, Budva, Stowood Press. They've been immense. Samurai. Hey. Hey. Hava Play and Haywoods. Thank, thank you so much. That's right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for all your support, you know, during the world's best tens, the 2024 tradition, Hong Kong Football Club tens. What? A, can't argue with that. Best tens tournament in the world. It's only going to get better in Hong Kong because we're opening up here. That's a cracking kick. And, oh, unfortunate here. 
not picking up the crumbs. He's heading in. He's not heading in wide. He's heading in. And we've got ourselves a ball game. Oh, he's pleased about that. Florian Mackay. Florian. What? Florian Mackay. Class. Good work. Mackaya. Great try there, Florian. And with that little celebration, that was class. It was uh, they. It was a great kickoff. They just didn't deal with the crumbs. They done everything right there. I feel you got to feel for the old boys. They the kickoff was on point, but they no one to pick up the crumbs. And Pakalani just uh, missed that kick. What a great try, though, Fats. Yeah, very much so. It's how crucial will that kick be? Yeah, super crucial, Makaya. As we look back on the uh, the replay there. Oh, look at that! Just right from the kickoffs running technique all oh, the glory look at him go boy stumbling his way there oh nice one makaya you deserve that try mate here we go back live tropics looking to play the edge short ball oh it's a miscommunication there fats i think the big man wanted it to go behind him yeah but well charlie crawley got in a little bit in the front. There's a little bit of miscommunicado there, but um, just give the man the ball. Mate, he's been chewing through the yards up the middle. Keep Wherever an eye out the for the, the big cheese, the Mani Nadolo. 135 kgs of pure corned beef. Yeah. He's on the prop. He's propping. <laughs> That's 135 kilos there, ladies and gentlemen. We haven't added the, we haven't added the GST. Solid. Oh. oh, dragged down, didn't hot keep his bind. That's a great kick. Pressure's on. That's a great kick tactically. Astute there by our man, number Lachlan. Just finding their places in their set piece, both teams. Tough day to be here at day two, warming into the grand finale later on this evening. Crawley with a throw in. Oh, right that's one of the better executed lineouts in this competition. Right on the 15. Try and get to the edge here. Struggled. Oh, couldn't. Cook Tropica and couldn't handle the pressure. The counter ruck out wide. The breakdown's crucial, especially those wide ones from a set piece. Yeah, unlucky in number 19, Sam Smith. Didn't really have a choice there. Yeah. Old boys now rubbing their hands down side. The 22 of the trouble cut. Yes. Overseas old boys. Looking. Lambo. Lambo on with the throw, big one, crucial one. There's an early jump. Referee hasn't Ooh. picked it up. Oh, pressure. Get it away from their foot. Oh, it's not what you wanted. Pressure does funny things to people here. Just inside the 22. Now they're back on their 10. They only went backwards from that set piece. They would rue the positioning. That's right. Number 10, uh, Xavier Christoph there with the drop ball. Unlucky, they really needed that uh, position. Very, very much needed to just to just to imprint some physicality back into this game for them. But now they're on the line out. Uh, sorry, on the scrum on the 10 meter line midfield. Not the best place to have a scrum defensively. There's a there's a question. Are you going to scrum if you're old boys back to or that scrum, or are you going to look up to try and cover that flank? The edges here, especially the blind side. Halfback will have to stay. Can't follow in. And Adola has switched to prop, uh, to lock, sorry. Really need his weight behind the props. Yeah. Solid. Solid scrub, solid engagement. Good scrum from old boys. Unfortunately, the ref thinks it was illegally done. Playing it back. Switcheroo coming straight back. Slow, coming slow for Tropical. Nadolo. 
Modelo. Have a go, bro. Little Finn. Have a go. There it is, just batting them away with a backdoor offload. No look by the big man, the legend. He was here with APBs over a decade ago, and he starred in their win for the APBs. I think that team was led by coaching-wise Alama Ramir. No, sorry, it was Tano Manga and Philo Tietia. Boom. Oh, tidy. Here they come to the middle. Strong carry. Ah, this physicality's picked up a notch here. Here we go, the big man meet. Oh, he's gone again. That's three in a row. He will need... That is some explosion. Three times in a row. Big number seven. Nadola on the edges. Oh. He puts the chip through. That's a clear. Oh, unlucky. Oh, seen it all here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, the intention was there by the Tropics. As old boys look to ring in the changes. I think by the looks of it, they're bringing a whole defensive unit. Special teams coming on the field. Special old teams. Boys. If we can get, can we zoom out? We can see almost 12 replacements marching in. New attack, new defense. Here so we go. Look at Nadolo again. Look at that. Left. Nice little uh, chip there. Oh. Just a shame he couldn't regather. He was under, uh, under immense pressure there. But here we are, we got a scrum. Old oh boys, defensive scrum here. This is probably the winning of the game. Can they deal with it? Three minutes to go. Day two. It's only two points in it, Fats. Yeah. Old oh boys, if they get this. What do you think? Maybe kick downtown? Absolutely. Exit strategy? Absolutely. They've got enough good chases, another load to make defensive stops downtown. When they kick, again, another scrum penalty. One can't think uh, that's more of an easy out for the old boys. Nice easy out given them by Tropical. Tropical, Tropicana. <laughs> What's that Wham Tropics. song? What's the Wham song? Tropica Club Tropicana. Oh, Club that's Tropicana. Great song. Great song. Legends. Good old George and uh, Andrew Ridgely there. Ashbury Tropics behind by two points with two minutes left on the clock. They really need to pull something out here. Nice. As old boys, oh. Oh, they knocked on the ball. This is it. So, Tropics ball. What would you do here, Fats? Let's get to the edge. Oh, just play power. Oh, it's, it's crucial. It's teed up so nicely here. I guess this is where they really needed Nadolo to be in the midfield, right? And just crash the ball up. But unfortunately, he's off. They've taken yeah. him off. So, yeah, midfield crash, you reckon? Looks like it. They're loading up. Keep the ball. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh what did he? Oh, oh. Ball's. Here we go again, the tap's coming, this is crucial part. Cool heads here, cool heads. Would you tap or would you go for the, the points? Looks like they're going for the points. I Fitz. would go for the points, if he, if he trusts himself. Alpha. Alpha Bakalangi. Just, Just put them in the lead. Here we go, it's all to play for now. Can they sneak through? 40 seconds left on the clock. Old boys need to do something here. They need to kick short. Get the ball back. And hopefully score. With only 30 seconds left. I, to be fair, I did not see that on the cards, but obviously very tactical head on the young man decided to put it on his shoulders to see if they can get the penalty to get them in one point in front. This will be the last play of the match, Fats. Oh, we really need uh, to hold this ball. Something's got to happen. I've got... They're going got backwards, keep driving them forward. Yeah, must hit their targets. Yeah, draw them in and go wide. Great clean out. Two men in that clean out. 
That means less men out wide. It's a big carry by the big fella out wide on the edge. Oh, that's what the Tropics didn't need. Another penalty using their big guns up the front. Oh, old oh boys, offload. This offload is causing problems, not just for this defence, all defences. Backwards, play on. Tropics are one play away, one stop away from... Go, there it is. Oh, it's getting tasty. Oh, they're through. Tropics are through. Drama there at the end, Fats. All they needed to do was hold on the ball, but it only took one knock on to yeah. turn this game. It was always tough. You had you get to a point where you have the chance you're on a bit to break the a defensive line like that. They've been impressive. They didn't go away. Old Tropican <laughs> Tropicanas. And the Ashbury Tropics win it eight points to seven over Old Boys. Old Boys walking ahead. Old Boys always been one of those teams that boys have a rich history here at the Hong Kong stands. And I must say, like I said before, this is one of the stronger teams I've put out. And it's good to see. Yeah. It's always good I to mean, see. I mean, one point in it, did you think it was going to be this close, Fats? <laughs> That's a good question. No, but I, what I saw yesterday made me think it was going to be closer. Yeah. And it was. It lived up to all expectations. I would say they're unlucky. But um, the young Pakalani, when the penalty was scored, he stepped up. Yeah. And had no problems with it. And rightly so. You know, just the kind of nous you need in a high pressure cooked environment. Yeah. As the in this tense tournament. Nadolo seems pretty pleased. Knows the old boys quite well and that's what it's all about. That's right. Who we got next? So we'd like to uh, do a little shout out to all of our viewers from all across the globe, especially the Pacific Islands. Tokelau, Maloni, Hakahitai Lava, Samoa, Malo, Malo Tui Four, also Tonga, Samasi, Fefe Hake, and our Fijian friends. Bula Vanaka, welcome to the Hong Kong Tens. Bula Bula, here we have Pig Athletic, and they are lined up against. Yeah, Pack Babas. These guys are super strong. With a few Hong Kong boys running about, we got Luke van der Schmidt, Sunia. Some some legends here. Against Shogun RFC. Pack Babas against the Shogun RFC. The Jiangsu Lions. Here we go. The last quarter final. Last spot in the semi final. They're rushing up and here they go. They're straight through. Oh, offloading nicely. Good start. Big try. Nice offload. Ume. Posita. Just the line speed pressure. Very noticeable from Pig Athletic. Yeah, we've, we've seen a few tries scored right from kickoff, right? Absolutely. It's just how teams can deal with yeah. kickoffs. We saw one from, uh, who was it? Pig Athletic? Uh, not Pig Athletic. Tropicana last game, right from the kickoff. They scored and got them back into this game. And conversion is good and by Fosita. Good kick, nice and deep, just outside the 22, just inside the 22. Nice big carry. Ref's blowing for something he didn't like. Trying to figure this out. Scrum coming here, more pressure coming. It's a defensive scrum for the Gian team. They've got to get out of here. Nice work, sweepers back there already, nice and early. 
Jackson Deacon. That's a great kick. That's a 40-20. That's a 40-22. No, it's not a 40-22. Nope, my bad call. What a great kick. Jiangsu Lions with a great kick to get out of their own half. Pack Barbas getting ready. The Barbas looking to play this game at a bit of pace. Their set piece is all set to go. Middle, nice throw. Let's see what they do with this. If you're crash. Boom, coming through. One cleaner. Slick. Work. It's an exit play. No one back there. No one back there for Jian. So there's a lot of pace, a lot of ground to cover. But the young man is very quick back there. Ooh. Oh, he's overrun it. So it's gone out. Some good kicks we've seen so far from both teams. So two big wipers from both teams' fats. Looks like they're letting the ball do all the all the work there. Very much so. Saves you saves you for later on in the tournament, but obviously they just gotta hold this field position. Jian will have to deal with the physicality that the pig barbars bring. That's right. 30 seconds earlier, Jiangsu was in the same position that they are now. Yes. Got to get out of here. Line out's a bit wobbly, and it's gone for the pig barbars. Number 10 takes it in. It's an advantage. Advantage to the pig barbars. Luke van der Schmidt, footwork, running into some people, offloading. Beautiful ball. Sets up a nice little crease. Oh, got to hold on to that ball. Well, that unfortunate for Theo Manahera. It's good, good defense by the Jiangsu uh, Lions here. 100% good defense. They were just a little, they were bent a little bit by Luke van der Schmidt when he was trying to find that offload. He's going to be a handful in the middle all day. Um, and then once he's once he got the offload nicely away, they were down on the edges. Just need to look after that ball in the wide channels. So Schmidt number six for the Pig Babas. Hong Kong International, number eight. Big scrum for Jian here. They've got to hold their own. Oh, that big athletic scrum is big. They're going to cause wobbles. Nice, clever little kick through. Offload would be good if it went to hand. Jian looking like they're going to open up their feet, open up the legs here. Down on the edges. Oh, nice little run carry. Wide breakdown is secure. Good work, Jian. Jian moving the athletic team around. They won't like this, being such a big team. That's the trouble. Offload number 16. Strong. Nice little skills into play. This will take a lot out of the big athletic defense. They get back. This kick, kick, kick ploy is a very good one. Did he need the second kick? Oh, the big athletic just losing their composure there, Fritz. That's the only problem, isn't it? With well, having such a big team like that, constantly kicking, kicking, yeah. just turning the big men around. That's right. I think Jiang Tu Lions know that they really need to keep kicking behind them. That's it. Just and it's worked well for them. I mean, they're already inside their 22. Very much so. And all these big guys that they do carry, the big athletic, use up a lot of diesel getting back, and now have to set themselves for a scrum. Keep an eye out for number four, McGregor, with the ball now. Very good. He's the star of this team. Jay Gregor. Gregor. Be a solid scrum here from Pig Athletic. They walk it nicely. Little, oh, nice move. Opens up the edge. Big man. Cosita. Big, <laughs> big carry here. Now they rewind it back. It'll be a nice, good carry by Netani. Numbers here. Oh, low oh. pass. Not the best from McGregor. I don't think Tom Connor would be too impressed with that low pass. Yeah, he's not very happy. They're on a roll, too. Problem with teams like this big rolls, big players getting in. It's hard to stop them once they get into their groove. Junks who's doing a lot of tackling. You can look at their back line. A lot of them hands on the hips. Another set piece. They can grab their breaths here because I've got a defensive set coming. Just one of those games they have to get through Pig Athletic. But I Jian not making it easy on them. What do you reckon a kick will come here this phase or next phase? No sweeper at the back, so probably this phase, I reckon. 
Here we go, midfield. Oh, good feet. Oh, oh, taking ankles, taking ankles. Good offload. Oh, lovely. Big athletic being stretched here. Luke van der Schmidt with a solid stop in the middle. There we go. Oh, they are finding these little offloads. Makes it difficult. Long pass. Very long outside. They've got to keep this ball alive, Fetz. There it is. They can't get caught keep in the rucks. Moving around, keep moving them around. Pig Athletics now set in defense. That's the only problem with just setting yourselves up. Running into big units who've just grabbed their rest from that set. McGregor in the pocket for the Barbars. Nice and deep. There yep. it is, little chip. There it comes. We caught it early. McGregor back there. They're ready for this one. Firing through. Good ball. Solid ball. Another chip. Chases coming through. McGregor with a lift. Oh, brilliant. Started and finished. But Keith Power. James McGregor, bro. He's the star of this team. But let's talk about the pack, Barbas. I mean, the good blimmin' balance there, eh? The big, strong forwards and a blimmin' backline full of F-14s. <laughs> I tell you what, they've done their homework and exactly what DNA you need to win this tournament. You need some big, big units who can actually get up and be mobile. And obviously don't shirk any responsibilities in the middle. They've got a lot of firepower. And that came from a kick that we were talking about earlier, we alluded to earlier, that was coming. This time they were much more ready for it, and uh, McGregor, I think he started and finished the move, or? Started, yep. Class. Started and finished. Very As we good. look here at the replay, sets it up for the winger. He winger has a look inside, Very takes good. the bounce. There he is. Great player. Good try. Good try. McGregor with the kickoff. It's a beauty. Oh, well dealt with by Gian. That's, that's a great kick off reception. Big carry in the middle. You don't want to take these guys on the middle here. Clean outs, turnover. It's, it's tough to play a big pack like that. Oh, loose. Knock on referee. Good call. Oh, good tackling by Jiangsu. They really need to make all those tackles. Yeah, absolutely. That turnover, that one out might suit Pig Athletic more than, than it does suit the Jian team. Yeah, they may be down on size, but I'll tell you what, they're really good at scraggling and uh, tackling, Fats. 100%. <laughs> they got the firepower. They're just going to have to deal with trying to embrace this physical challenge that the Pig Athletic team offer most teams they play. The so scrum, it's going to be a beauty here because it's a new scrum from Pig Athletic. I think they changed most of that forward pack. It'll be nice to see what they come up with under pressure. And then they're on roller skates going back. Gian, but that's okay. The ball's out. Oh, oh a little double pump. Loft load off the ground. They are, that is yardage that you don't expect. Oh, unlucky. Transition. Good call from the referee. Good call. A little bit of afters here. Well. A little bit of afters, but that's okay. That's more out of frustration. That scrum, they powered through that scrum. And yet they made 50 meters. Well, yeah. 30 yards of just yep. right. full work. Yeah, the Lions did really well to get out of the half. Will they go to a set piece or is it a tap-tap game? Are they looking for the tap-tap? Well, the half is already over. What are they going to do? They really need to run it and score a try. Here we go. They're going for the, the direct approach. Out wide. A try here would put the here. cat amongst the pigeons here. Oh, big solid hit. Will they counter? <coughs> Got to straighten up. Oh, he's oh, and he gets out. This could be it. Finishing it here. Pass. Has he got the legs? I don't think the big man has. Oh, good, good tackle. This three on one. Beautiful work wow. from Gian. Great scaring ball. Junksu did he really well just, to get back there. Just isolated, I think. 
Jian Tzu scrambling back, showing they got some fight in them. Are they going to have a go, or are they just going to kick it out for the half? What do you they, think, Fitz? They're going to get the line out, I think, from here. Get deep. Yeah, they've got to get something back. That sun's out, so that's going to be quite sapping for the bigger teams, especially with the black uniform. This Jiangsu team's did, done really well to stay in touch with them. That's it. That's it. That's all it is sometimes. Just got to stay in touch, like Tropica. They, st they stayed in touch, got to try, and then they were there to sneak it at the end. I'm not saying this is going to be a similar script, but always best to be in touch. Line out, Jiangsu ball. Great throw. Great set piece. What can they do here? They'll take it to the edge. Good feet. Got to keep this ball alive, Fitz. Nice. They go to the middle again. This is where they'll have the edge on the reload. Get to the edges. There's some big numbers getting taken here. The boys that just come out of that set piece. Oh, it's another turnover. Sunia from the football, uh, from the cricket club. No, yeah, Sandy Bay goodness. club. And McGregor says. Peck Barbar's leading 12-0 over Jiangsu. What do you think, Fitz, so far? I'm really impressed with the Jian team here. They, they've given a good crack. They've seen out the first 10 minutes here of the physicality that the, the Peck Athletic team have brought. And they're still in touch. 12 nils, 12, 12 points is not a big margin in 10's rugby. Yep. And they will know this going into the half. Like, they'll be looking at the scoreboard thinking that wasn't as bad. Yep. That's no, 12, to... 12 points to Jess. Can touch this. We want to welcome everybody to the tradition Hong Kong Football Club 10's. As we're going to the half, Pak Baba is leading 12-0 over the Jiangsu. And Fats, this Jiangsu team uh, got a lot of heart, right? <laughs> they haven't given up. They're only down by 12 points. Yeah, very much so. And they've shown the technical well and that uh, nous <coughs> to put the ball behind this big athletic team, big athletic team, which is um, you know hands good on them. As we go around the grounds, we see some of the fans just really enjoying the uh, the afternoon here at Hong Kong Football Club. Uh, we've got a guy there checking. Uh, thumbs WhatsApp. up, thumbs up. Oh, uh, the young here's, and old. Here to all the kids. Big yeah. shout out to all the kindergarten kids. There he is, enjoying his rugby. It's a good good to see a young young fellow out there enjoying footy. Can't touch this. Also a big shout out to uh, Alice Meacham in Melbourne, who's uh, watching the Hong Kong Football Tens. Alice Meacham, uh, former international uh, rugby coach and also the West Roosters coach. Big love out to Alice. Love you, bossy. Cock-a-doodle-doo from the Roosters in Hong Kong. 100%. As we start the second half, jiang -Soo with the kick. <laughs> They really need to stay in touch with uh, Pak Baba's Fats. Yeah, 100%. And how would they do that? They've got to keep the ball alive, attack the space. Yeah. Totally, totally agree. Wow, another great oh. kickoff return. They are. Oh. Put them under the cost straight away. Good feet. Good feet. Oh, powerful as well. He could go all the way here. Strong. Inside the 22, Jiangsu ball. What can they do here? They've got to get in. Must attack. Need some cleaners. Cleaners are there. Move him around again. It's One great two. recycle ball. Great stepping. There it is. A three on two. Four on two here. Read the line. Oh, cheeky. Cheeky. Oh. That was very nice. Good play. Oh, yes. Jian. Unlucky. He just did a falcon to himself. That would have been a great try, Fitz, from the kickoff. Absolutely. And they stretched Here we go. the Pig Athletic. Oh. And they won't like this Pig Athletic. Yeah. They won't be in control. Good to see the Lions come alive in the second half. They really have nothing left to... Uh... No. Don't know what they're figuring out here, the referees. If it was a knock-on. 
Ah, another or forward. Not. Yeah. No try. 22 dropout, is it? Tap and go, watch the quick tappy. Nobody at the back for Jiangsu as they get their number five to sweep. Pak Baba has got to really engage this game. They go long. Big chase. Big chase here. Nice work. The line's up from Pig Athletic. They look strong. Sunir with the tackle. Good. Over the top. Oh, oh, here he goes. There's no one with him. Chip and chase, that's okay. Oh, was he taken out? It looks like he I was. I think he was. Oh, good call, big call, ref. Yeah, we've got the sideline referee. Yeah, confirming it. He was taken out just after he kicked it. Let's have a look at the replay, Fritz. Great uh, kick. Oh, it looks wow. like he sold what it. What do you think? Yeah. I think he sold it. It was a bit of shoulder to shoulder there. He just didn't have to go down. Yeah. But here we go. Oh, a little step and go, maybe okay. He was he was feeling it after his run, so now they're gonna have to be really physical here because Pig Athletic defensively are strong. They've conceded one try all tournament. And it's unfortunate. Oh, it's a wasted opportunity there. Hands fits. go up by Big Athletic. And if we can pan out, you're looking at eight nine substitutions coming in okay with uh just under seven minutes to go big yep. athletic have cleaned house and bring in some energy some just, yeah they just couldn't really just under six minutes uh seven minutes sorry Pak Baba's leading 12-0 over Jiangsu Lions. Rowan Turner, the referee for today's match, is having a solid match here. He's picked up everything that's been going on. It's not never that easy. Scrum goes in solid. Scrum from Pig Athletic. Out wide. Crash in the middle. Nice and easy. One man clean. Now they're looking to get wide to the edge, the fresher edge. And here we go, Luke van der Schmidt. Oh, unlucky with that. Just rolled off his hand. One little offload away. Could have put them down and feel another 50 meters. But again, those fresh legs, dynamic runners, and a little bit of offloads. Pak Baba is doing a lot of inside balls, Fitz, because they know that the cover of Junction Lions, yeah, they're just sweeping. But let, let's say again, it's 12 nil. It's only 12 now. Jian can really put the cat amongst the Persians here if they can just pinch one. Which way would you go, Fats? Left or right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ooh, that was clinic. They need to be more clinical on that edge. Junks oh, they really need to help each other. Going in trouble, and... trouble. Oh! Ones and twos. Hot potato. Ball going everywhere. Yeah, Junks are not really going forward with that ball. They were just passing, but nobody was going forward. I think Pig Athletic will be happy to scrum, happy to get things under the control and just get it for themselves. Try it. Junks are with no sweeper at the back, so Pak Baba is happy to take their time, and just wind the clock down. Four and a half minutes to go. Here we go, strong, strong. They go left side with some hot step feet there. Has he got the legs? He's got it all the way in. <laughs> good try, Connor Hickey. Just too good off. Great feet there, Connor Hickey. And that's what they needed to rely on. It's just some class operation from. Connor Hickey, some yep. great, great footwork. That's right. I, th I think that's the buffer that they really needed, Fats. Now they can kind of relax just a little bit, right? But you never know with these lines. 
got to watch out. That's a great point. That is a great point. That's, yeah, that is the conversion button. is good. Things weren't going their way. Pick Athletic. They were just giving Xi'an too many edges. But this gives them that buffer point where they can actually just relax and now put together a, for the next three minutes, three and a half minutes, some yep. quality football. Oh, I think Mickey they'll be with happy. The ball. Look at that. Great try. <laughs> Back here live. Oh, unlucky. Advantage, Jian. Let's see what they got. Back Pig to the Athletic. knock on. Up fast. Great defense by Pig Athletic. I'll take the, uh, the first knock on. Pig Athletic won't mind this. If they get through here, which it looks like they will, no injuries. Um, a tricky assignment, the Jian team. Very tricky. Junks who really need to strike here, Fats. I totally agree. Sweepers back. Keep an eye on Monroe. And also McGregor. Good scrum. Gian. Going to the middle. Out to the edge. It's nice. You get money for jam out there. Oh, unlucky. The pass was on earlier before he took contact. Set piece to set piece for the big athletic team. They can get, they can rally up for a strike here. <laughs> just over two minutes left, and big athletic will be happy to just walk this. Absolutely. Junks has really got to do something. I think this assignment is a little bit trickier than they thought, big athletic, but they're happy to get through. Bigger challenges await them. There it is. Could be a finishing try here. Boy, oh, tell you what, they keep turning up, Gian. Yeah. They keep turning up in crucial defensive stages here. Been no means an easy game. And you can see the Pig Athletic boys just happy to just walk this down. And just run the clock down with only one minute and a half left. And Jiangsu, you can see the players already tired, get already gassed out, Fats. Absolutely. They, they put in a stellar effort, though. This, this game, Pig Athletic know they've been in a game. This is the thing. It's, um, they would well, you, like, Yeah, you've got to give credit to the Junksu uh, Lions. What a great effort from them, eh? 100%. 100%. Oh, just... I know it's day two, it's the first game. It's just a little bit... The fatigue flow coming in to the Pig Athletic team. Oh, not what you want. They'll be happy for this clock just to tick over. Assignment yeah. completed, really, for the Pig Athletic going into the knockouts. I think it's semi final next for them. Who awaits them? Some great matchups in the top four. Yeah, well, I mean, it's good to see uh, the Jiangsu Lions come all the way up from China just to attend this event. So we want to thank everybody from Jiangsu for uh, making an effort to come down and take part in this global Hong Kong Football Club TENS. Yes, 100%. And the TENS is just a remarkable tournament for such, such things to happen in, you know, bringing these teams together from all over the world. From China, New Zealand, Hong Kong, seeing different skill sets. McGregor again. Oh, that's 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 classy. That's a nice little finish. The score does not reflect the massive effort. Right at the end of 24. Does not reflect the effort that Jian put in. They have made this a game, and you just got to take your hat off to them. Yeah. Good on them. Oh. Definitely. Well, the Barbars, too big, too strong. Without really hitting their straps. Yep. And uh, you could tell that uh, by the end of the second half, they were just trying to conserve their energy. Yeah. Getting ready for the their next game. As they march forward, the Big Athletic Club, 24-0 over the Jiangsu Lions. Fetz, what do you think? I think um, game, your first game on day two is always the tricky one because you come off a big win the night before. I think I think they beat Tradition. 
and uh, it was just one of those difficult games but then you come back and you play day two your first game just trying to get the cobwebs ready cobwebs, cobwebs out of the, the machinery yep. and moving forward but um i think pick athletic will be very happy yes very very happy to get through unscathed some good players oh they've got strike weapons both in the front and the backs what a strong team good balance Monroe, you know, just leading the, the charge from the middle at halfback. He's a great player. Yeah, absolutely. And none of the players in that game, to the to the Gian credit, didn't allow them to really hit their straps. Everyone was in third, fourth and second gear. Yeah, so I tell you what, there's more to come from that big athletic club. Yeah. But next we have... There we go. The next game, football club lining up. This will be a special game for you to call, Mr. Yafeta, Mr. Oh. Semi. Oh, it's the Natixis uh, Ice. <coughs> yep. And they'll be taking on the team from Papua New Guinea. As both teams getting ready, here they come. Natixis Ice, Hong Kong Football Club. against PNG. This will be a good game. Rashini Turner, one of the stars for football club. Absolutely. PNG. It's it's been a tough tournament for them. Up and down, but always so dangerous with their athleticism. Yeah. That's right. So don't count out this PNG team, mate. Very They'll be so. looking for the big hits. Yeah, some some great athletes running around, and good on them. Another team that's travelled quite a field distance just to be here today. Yeah, good for rugby, good for tens rugby. It's great, great lead-in for the world tournament here, sevens tournament. As we start the first half, football club go long. Super long. Right into the try line. Ooh, PNG should have forced it. They run it out. They're going to have a go, PNG. Very good. Football club squeezing them in the under the post. Good defensive stand here for them. PNG still moving it around. Quick carry down the middle. By Lorraine to Rao, whoa, great pass, find space, opens up. Was that a pass? That was a great pass. Here we come through down the middle. Wide breakdown's crucial here for PNG. They swing it back. Good shot, great shot. Oh, pressure, defensive pressure starting to tell, but oh, good work. Knock on. Well, you can see PNG's intentions to run the ball from inside their own uh, try line, Fitz. 100%. And Octavia with a great little chop there. Bring that PNG player down, causing a little bit of a fracas at the back. But uh, the referees called it for a knock on. Yeah. Keep an eye out for Zoe Tees, Katie McLeod. Georgia Rivers, Rachel Fong, Eileen Ryan. These guys are all strike players for Hong Kong Football Club. And out wide, Kiana Ray. She's a great player from Kowloon Club. As PNG win the ball, they're inside their own 22. What can they do with this, Fitz? Oh, nice little run around there. They, oh, the football club defense is so physical. Getting in there. No pens, just squeezing them. Keep squeezing the PNG team defensively. They might have to look for a kick now. And a nice deep one. Rachel Fong Rachel at Fong. the back. She's three on one. Not really a good That's kick a, there. Oh, this could good tackle, Rachel Fong. Didn't go around the 10 meters. Good call, referee. Rachel probably didn't get enough boot on that. And she would like. PNG inside football club half for the first time this this uh, 
this play. They're coming up. Football club girls are now starting to fall off a bit of tackles here. Well, that's a penalty. Well played. Everyone's just standing around, Fitz. I know. <laughs> fatigue set in. Yep. Fatigue has set in, and it's a nasty thing when fatigue sets in because things just yeah. don't go your way. Keep an eye out on number 15, Joanna Lagona. It's their captain and strike good. player, Fitz. Joanne Lagona. Here they come, big carry up the middle. Boom. Good. Physicality's there. Fatigue set in. Everyone's sort of like going half pace here. Good work. Strong carry. Football club walking back. Nice carry. Good strong defense though. Swinging the ball back to the blind side. Joanne running down the line. Strong run. Strong. Good strong run number offloads again to number four four great defense from football club oh the ball stays in play this is it <coughs> it's, a kick -a it's a kickathon and the refs blowing it back knock on against png i think that was a long passage of play the players looked pretty Holy heck, everyone's just been tackling. They look exhausted, Fitz. Oh, the heat here is sapping. Football club really got to do something with this ball. They haven't had the ball in the right areas. They were down there, but they were on a defensive set. So this will be good. This will be their first real clean possession for football club. Rachel Fong at half back. Keep an eye out for her. One of their strike players. Football club ball. What can football club do here? There's no sweeper at the back for PNG. Just brought out the back, out back door. I think the edge is on. She takes the edge early. She's got number 11. Good defense. Good carry by Sebe Leitner. Lenham. Catherine Wenner with a good defensive stop there. Both teams not really settled, Fitz. Really cancelling each other out. Oh, good steal. Rashini Turner. Good steal. Very good steal. Clean out by Octavia Yafeta. Up the middle, bought some dummies. The cloud with the ball. Great run. Clear, clear. It's on. Zoe Tees with the big hit. Oh, good She's still on her Zoe. feet. Strong by Zoe. Quick ball. The bounce needed to have bounce into her hands then. And McLeod wasn't expecting that. Playing advantage. Football club penalty fats. Yeah. They've got to tap and go here. Tap. They've really got to pick the pace up. I think so. They run this PNG team around. No. They go left. The strike plays, they've got to do something. Create some mismatches, Fats. 100 percent Here they go up the middle. Strong carry. They Inside the 22. Out. Clean ball. Nice. Rachel Fong. Good hand. Two on one here. Oh. Just couldn't finish it. The pass was a bit high. Crucial. It was uh, McLeod to Yafeta. Missed opportunity there. It's a good game, though. It's a good game. It's nicely teed up for us here. Yeah. Still in a little football club playing in the right areas. We see a change there as uh, football club make a change to the two props. Zoe Tis and Octavia Yafeta. Watts got to keep their their tight their tidies all fresh. This is crucial part of the game here for PNG. We get out of it nicely. Go straight to the edge. Good defense. Flag stays down. Good work. Popped it up. Oh, here they go. Got Football go. club, tap and go. That's another 10 meters. And it's Might. a card. It's a card. Might have to yeah, we've got a yellow piece of cheese here for the captain and danger. Danger player. Joanne Laguna. 
Well, now with Laguna off, Laguna is the biggest strike player. Fitz. Absolutely. But they need to be in the right area. Yeah, football club needs to create some mismatches. Draw and pass and just really attack the space. With only two minutes left. With this break in play, it gives the PNG a much needed break, breather that they need here. And one of the players doesn't look too well. Must have twisted something. If that's PNG. a PNG. That's a tactical setup. That's pretty good. Yeah. PNG, a player down. It's 10 v 9. Football club really got to take advantage of this. Absolutely. Very much so. It's a crucial part of the game. Two minutes before half time. With this rolling clock. They need to come away with some points here. They've called for the scrum. <laughs> Referees stop the clock here. He wants them back five meters. Slick passing. Rosie Fong looking around, looking for the gaps. They need to do a strike move here. Yeah. Only a minute left on the clock, Fitz. Four on three, out wide. Let's get the ball wide. Space is there, they just need to execute. This will probably be the last passage of play before the half, so Football Club really need to score a try. They're in attacking position inside the 22. So, solid scrum. 10. It's a cut. Cut move. Offload. Oh, she knows where the space is. Oh, unlucky. Kill the ball. Oh, that was, it was there. Unfortunate for Football Club. It was a good set move. Justin managed to execute it. <laughs> Penalty, still time to play. Danger. Offload. These offloads are causing havoc for the defensive line of Football Club. Oh, good, good contact. Oh, 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 oh. Rachel Fong chasing chase. This is against the run of play. Oh, oh she's going to go all the way. That is pure danger. By Mandolin Swanky. What a lovely piece of running against the run of play. Must have gone 80 meters. Must have gone 80 meters. That's incredible. Conversion is good. PNG are leading 7-0 over in the Texas Ice at the half fets. What do you think so far? That was crucial. That was they had 10 on 9 for the last two minutes of that period and just unfortunate for them. Yep. As, as we, we watch it. Yep, it was look at the replay. Oh, really trying hard, but she I'll tell you what, she put in a big effort. And that's a well-deserved try there to PNG. Magdalena Swacky with the effort. Probably a good 75 yards out. Day two at around midday sun. It's not easy. And she showed a clean pair of heels here to put under the black dot and put PNG, surprisingly, ahead. So we have the Hong Kong Football Club, the Texas Ice team. They are the hosts of our Hong Kong Football Club 10s with the uh, blue and white stripes, the hoops. They've been one of the uh, stronger clubs here in uh, Hong Kong for a number of years. Fats, uh, you, you've They're obviously played a few games against uh, Hong uh, Kong Football Club. Yeah, Football Club have been the measuring stick of uh, Hong Kong rugby for the last ooh, five, seven years right now. They're yeah. They've been one of the powerhouses of uh, Hong Kong rugby traditionally, but they've come into their own in the last seven years. Yeah. And it's um, it's been tough, you know. They've got some very good players. Yeah. This is and the men's and and the women's as well. And it's good to see having a powerhouse like that. As we start the second half, PNG up seven 0 Hong Kong Football Club really need to strike early. 
halftime talks, what would you say to the football club right now? What to, I would say, to uh, just really create some, some energy, attack the space, draw and pass. I totally agree. That's out in the fall, that's not what they needed, a midfield scrum or a tap. Uh, football club will start with the energy here. They'll have the ball in the middle of the field. PNG with their full complement of 10 players back on after their captain was Sinbind. Football club calling a scrum. I can just see there's more energy in football club right now. We've got uh, some fresh players on. Sophie Feller there. Keep an eye out for Ivana Samani. One of their strike players, Ivana Samani from uh, Wellington, who has joined the Hong Kong Football Club ice team, Fets. Yeah. Lovely. Big shout out to her parents, Mosse, Bronwyn. Welcome to Hong Kong. Nice. Parents travelled. Good pick and go here by the big man. Big lady. Sorry. Good follow with the ball. Strong. This is good. This is good from Football Club. Be decisive. Find the edge. Good work. Offload. Look for support. Football Club. The crowd stands on their feet. This is good rugby. Here we go again. The lady that started it. Going wide. Go forward. Nice work. Ooh. Some attempted big hit by number one there, Greg Giefler. Try time, is it? Oh, she dropped, lost the ball. Unlucky. Oh, done it. Tap and go. Boom, try. Two. Viva. Great try from Football Club. They really needed that. Now we have a game, ladies and gentlemen. This kick needs to go over. Uh, she sprays it to the right. 7-5 with about 7.41 remaining. This is a great game, Football Club. With the wind in their sails heading back into this last seven minutes some great rugby yeah they try fats i mean football club really need this ball back they go short quick tricky short one and they really need to pick up the pace the tempo fats absolutely and contest for the ball on the ground like that very much so couldn't agree more could not agree more by oh, the physicality of they, the PNG. they better be careful there's no sweeper at the back for football club Play the advantage, don't go to the set piece, that's it. Keep the ball moving. Unlucky. Samani cleans up. By the way it looks it, the football club know what they want to do out of this game. They yeah. want to keep this ball alive, turnover ball, they're looking to spread it. Not that's giving right. any rest, not taking them to a set piece battle. Yeah. Just moving that ball wide, keeping them on their feet. Yeah. Win the set piece, yeah. send to the strike players, score some tries. They hold it for enough phases. And still move them from side to side. They, they, they'll find some joy there. <laughs> Big scrum, solid scrum from Football Club. Halfback comes in, causes havoc. Play on, there says the ref. Bit of a roll there. Okay. It's a scrum. And Sophie Fellow was going to take a quick tap, but. A football scrum. Club have got there. They've they got their ears up. <laughs> They're inside the half, just outside the 22. They've got an attack from here, Fats. This is good. This, they're going to look pretty solid here. Keep an eye out for Samani. She's one of their strike players in the back line. Solid scrum. Got to win this. Not, not the tidiest from the back. Samani. Rivers. Rivers make eating up a lot of yards there. And this is the gas man. Gas lady back inside. Good offload. That's a try. The back end. Georgia Rivers. Georgia Rivers. 
Georgia River Rivers. Great try. A lot of edge work there. Then the offload. Dangerous. Georgia Rivers from the mighty Kowloon Club here in Hong Kong. Bit of Kowloon magic on football club's field with the football club colours on. It's very nice. Important kickoff here for football club to just really dri drive in the pressure. It's just under. What do you think, Fitz? They need to keep going, right? Yes. They need to build up the momentum yeah. and just keep going forward. A nice long kick. No. Nope. Mid range missile. Now just going to stay on their feet and defend. Put in some good defensive sets. Empty the tank defensively. I'm sure they'll make some subs after this. Here they come up. There it is. Very good. Was that needed? But remember from chaos, they can actually score. Ooh, saying that. Is she on her feet? She wasn't on her feet. This is trouble for no them. No one home at the back for football club. Oh, jeez. And that's the problem. Lorraine, the captain. Joanne Lugana. Just pure. And just like that, you can't give Joanne Lugana any space. These long range athletes, they can go from anywhere, need little invitation. That's right, and Football Club really needed a, someone in the back door to just, you know, sweep. But PNG just took a quick tap and just went for it. And that's it. They that's just, the momentum we really need. And it's very hard for Football Club to score tries compared to, say, Laguna straight up the middle no one around the captain leading the way and PNG are leading 14 10 so impressive three minutes left Rivers with the ball Set this. she probably wanted that to go long definitely definitely wanted to see that one go long here we go Two minutes 50. PNG inside football club half, making some changes. Not straight. Football club. Long range efforts. Have we got any long range? What do you think, Fed? Ah, scrum hit a target or scrum and just kick it downtown? What do you think? You see, I'm old school. I'll go. Kick, I'll kick downtown. Put the chase on them. There's two minutes. Have all 15 players of your team, like all 10 players of your team, running forward on their feet. PNG with all the momentum at the moment. <laughs> Football club really need to strike now. Oh, oh, unfortunate. Lost it in the scrum. No pressure. Miscommunication there between the halfback and the hooker and the timing of the ball. Joanne runs behind. But Gona with a long pass. Who's on it? Football club ball. They've got to move it now, football club. They've got to attack here. Fatigue now sits in and a kick. Trying to get them behind. Trying to get them behind them. That's where that PNG could be dangerous. They must contest these. Slow it down. Oh, yes. Football club, no sweeper at the back. They've got to be careful. Mm. Good tackle, solid tackle that. Backwards. No one's looking to take it forward. Football club defense coming in. Eating up space. Oh. Another penalty given. And Laguna doesn't want to rush this. No. There's a minute left. They're leading by four points. This is why she's the captain. Yes. Understanding. Kicks for the corner. That's a great kick. What a kick. That's a great kick at this stage. Oh, football club won't like that one. Not a bit. Well, if you're going to win it, this is the moment your players have to stamp up. Football club. PNG really got to win this line up and attack on this ball. 30 seconds left. So this will probably be the last, uh, the last play of the game, Fritz. You would think it would be, wouldn't it? It's a tough one. Football club, they must contest this. 
Nice it's straight. Ball. Not straight. Hasn't gone straight for PNG a few times. Scrum, Hong Kong Football Club. It's do or die now. It's a long range effort. Making some long range athletes here. You've got a feel for them. They have. They feel like they had the upper hand the most of the game. It's just those two breakaway tries under the dots. They're inside their 22. It's their ball. The timer's up. They're behind four points. Ball, the scrum is melted. And PNG just rolled them in the scrum. The Unlucky. captain takes the ball, calms the chaos. This is the last play. Yes. And that is it. PNG. PNG come away with the wind over the local hosts, Hong Kong Football Club, Ice. PNG winning 14 10. Fex, what do you think of that game? I think it was. Uh, it was a just unfortunate football club. I thought they were the better team, but the scoreboard would beg to differ with those two long range efforts from supreme athletes. Uh, number seven, uh, Madeleine Swanky ran 80 meters, and then the captain, Joanne Lugana, yep. showing a clean pair of heels. Just honestly, sometimes you sit back and you just wonder right. where did that effort come from or well, how immense these athletes are. And it's so, so wonderful for our local crowd to see such kind of athleticism. Yep. Well, you have to feel for the uh, Hong Kong Football Club team, the hosts here as they walk off the park. The crowd probably not as pleased with that result, but now we got another game. We got the Phoenix up against Tokyo Phoenix against Fine Rugby now. Next up, correct. Second ball, women's semi final. Fine Rugby now versus Tokyo Saku Phoenix. Tokyo Phoenix finalists last year and the number one team in Japan, women's team in Japan, as they take on Fine Rugby now. This will be a great matchup. And a few local legends here. Playing for the Tokyo team in uh, Bella Milo. Phoenix with the ball inside their half. Going to the edge. Nice work, good defense. Phoenix recycling the ball, still in their half. Good work, moving the ball. And the ball's been turned over, fine rugby now have the ball. Here we go. Find me ball, still going, Bella working inside that ruck area. Looking to get the edge, nice work from number 16. Hannah, Chris, unfortunately the ref deems the clean out. Great tackle by Hamano. Just turned the ball over there, held on a bit too long. Tokyo with a relieving pressure kick. Penalty. Will she find touch? Doesn't look like it. Kept in by Emily Lakuru. She runs across the field. Finds herself a nice pass to this young lady here who offloads it again. Good carry up the middle, strong Tokyo defense in the middle there, absorbing a lot of the pressure. <coughs> held up, referee's quarter held up. Scrum, Tokyo ball. Good effort there by Phoenix to hold that ball up, it created the turnover, now it's their ball. Scrum inside, fine uh, rugby now's half. Very good. Bella Milo will be looking to try and breach this set-piece defense. 
It's a lovely day, love great rugby conditions here. Ball out to the 10. Nice ball, that was a, oh, number eight. Pressure coming through. Oh, unlucky. Breach from Mal Shida. Hermano with the ball to Bella. Milo, number 16, strong carry in the middle. Over there, clean out is good. Oh, Bella. Oh, that could be a yellow. You've seen it all day. Put your hand out like that on a passing play, and yeah. it could earn you two minutes on the naughty seats. Yep. That consistent pressure by Tokyo Phoenix. We'll find rugby now a player down. Here we go. Tokyo Phoenix inside the half. You can see Milo here with the ball. Uh, it's unlucky. Even though the intention was there, she's got to go. And that's number one. We'll find rugby now. Set move here, some cuts there by Tokyo Phoenix. Nearly ran out. Phoenix ball. Who's got the ball? Phoenix got the ball. They're wrestling it back. It's a real. Ooh, referee. Thinks there wasn't. Carl Dickinson feels like it just wasn't time. There was enough release. He's a top notch referee, Carl Dickinson. Refs in the Prem. Back in the UK. Went to the World Cup. Oh, really? I might be overstepping there, but let's say he went to the World Cup. Oh, nice one. Fine rugby now with the ball. What do they do here, Fats? Exit strategy or just run it? What do you think oh, with a player down? Yeah, player down. <laughs> Play to the clock. Big scrum from Tokyo. That is they, a kick. Yeah, they, they go kick down chase. Down. That's a good kick too. Finds a lot of grass. Two Come bounces. Three. Oh. oh, and the chase. That's a crucial tackle made. You've got to move it. Move it again. There's space out there. Oh, good dummy. Don't listen to me. Run. Good work. Nice little interchange here. The skill sets are impressive. On their fifth game, I think these girls are playing. Oh, that good offload. It's oh, four and one here. Fats on the left. There we go. Impressive. Oh, they just needed to straighten up. Recycle ball. Phoenix ball. Oh, they've given her the door. Straight through. Ball needs to be recycled. Quick hands. They'll walk this in here. Or will they? Oh, unfortunate. Tanaka just dropping that ball. They could have led to five points. Golfer's mentality, walk it off. Such, such good skill teams, sets. Yeah, both teams making the changes. <coughs> Do you think that was their moment to strike and shine then? And get themselves yeah. away and put put some points on the board for all their possession I think you know with a with a man in the bin they probably needed a dot down or show some points you mean a player in the bin <laughs> here you go that scrum is not looking good from find me and it's going to be five meter scrum to Tokyo Tokyo Looking like... Looking dangerous. Well, that's a powerful scrum they've got on them. <laughs> Tokyo, really great set piece. Scrums and lineouts. Last year so, they were the finalists, weren't they? Yes, they were. Expect the back line move. I mean, if you look at the Tokyo back line, spread right out across the field. Oh, they didn't push. The Tokyo scrum was not ready for that. There we go. They, they're lucky they get a second bite at the cherry. Tokyo Phoenix with the ball. There we go. Three minutes left in the first half, and it's nil all. Tokyo ball. Oh. Whoa. I did not yeah. see that coming. Yeah. Did not see that coming. Yeah. I thought yeah. after Tokyo that another just... scrum. Yep. 
That's it. That's a bouncy. Oh, that's a, that's great, a great kick. kick. As they find me, rugby would be pleased with that defensive set they just set there. Now they exited well, they kicked, they scrummed well. I think they will have their sails in the wind there. Yep. They can put the spinnaker up. They go. Long way away from spinnakers, but here we go. Two minutes. Great game. Tony Rogi got to win this ball. Just a miscommunication there. Tokyo Phoenix oh, clean up, but look, was that a knock on? Mm. It's play on, says the ref. Moving Phoenix backline have Good the ball. Good pass. Good pass. Release the backs. Find me are playing some good rugby here. Woo with the ball. Good defensive rugby. It's an advantage to find me. Moving the ball to the blind side. Jaden McGrath there, one of the key players in the good carry. Oh, was that a drop on offload? Carl Dickinson said it wasn't an offload because it hit the ground, went forward. Scrum. Great defense by Tokyo. Tokyo Phoenix will be happy with that. Very happy with that. <laughs> it's a still nil all ball game here. I tell you, these teams are evenly matched. Find me a thing to play their finest game here. Defensively, this is up against a real class Tokyo outfit. And look at this Tokyo backline fit. It's just stretched all the way out. They know that if you attack the space, the daunting. space will come. Yes. Very daunting. And they have great passing skills yeah. too. Let's find me now a rugby team with a good scrum. Find me have found their found their flavor and scrummaging. I tell you, that is impressive. They deserve that. They deserve that indeed. They could just scrum it here and walk it all the way in. <laughs> But that'll be against Ten's policy, I think. Number seven with a quick tap. They're going to run it. He's running so big. I love that. To a number 12, good number 13 was Judette Van der Visser with a good offload. But they've lost the ball. Turnover's deadly. Turnover. Phoenix with the ball inside their 22. Tokyo need a clear. They release. They don't find touch. This is trouble. This could be trouble. Good chase by Tokyo. Making good tackles here. There they go. Find me. Looking wide. Short ball to Vanda Vissa. But they're waiting for her. Tokyo waiting for her. And now they've turned her over. That's the wrong person. This is here. Oh, good tackle. It's a big hit on Yoko Roda. And she gets the penalty. There was pretty solid contact. Okuroda with a good uh, punch up the middle there. Created the penalty. Time is up on the clock. What would you do? Jeez, it's tough. It's tough, isn't they it? They go for the tap. They want to try Set and go piece. for the points. Nice. It's open here. Number eight. Oh, they just needed one more pass yeah. to the winger. There it is. This is good offload skills here. Oh. Tokyo slowly creeping into the half. Time is up for the first half. This is going to take a lot of diesel out of both teams here. Kim sets up the ball. Ref has got his hand up. He's got to find a way through. There's no kicking in this game. I don't see much kicking here. Maybe they should look to a kick to try and unpick these solid defenses. Oh, solid. Great driving tackle. And the turnover penalty. Find me. Go with her. Find me. It got the wind of their sails here. Oh, oh, there it is. Not going to catch her. Find me, number 14, Emily, Emily Lekuru. 
It's the break they needed, Fitz. Athletes, just athletes, like PNG showed in the last game. You just need some athletes in the right time in a clear space. Sometimes it's worth 14 points if you get under the dot, and this could be worth seven here. Yeah. Find me rugby with a great try there. And Tokyo Phoenix won't be happy with that. They just let them in the last minute. And I think they would be upset with this. Look, Lakuru, Lakuru's try winding it back, coming in on a short run. Big fan. Yep. And a clean pair of heels. <laughs> yeah, Tokyo Phoenix, the defense was all over the place. Late in the game, late in the half, very end of the half, and the fatigue setting in. And she pulls out an effort like that. We saw that with uh, Swacky in the PNG game. I think she scored just on half time. She ran 80 meters. That's right. Athlete. It's half time here in Hong Kong Football Club. Find me rugby are leading 7 0 over the Tokyo Phoenix. So, Fitz, what a great first half. Again, all these games very highly competitive um, in the women's league. Yep. Right to the half. It's always good. You don't know how tired you are when you're commentating these games until you go out and you sit down. And you think, geez, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite tired because you're so invested in these games. So we've got some uh, great text messages coming in from overseas. One from Samoa, from the village of Salimo, and it says, Sale, Fiai, which means go Hong Kong, go. We have another one here from Fasto Otai, the village of Fasto Otai, which says, Sale, Fiofusu, which means go Senex, go. So Japan have a really good following here. Amazing. From all the way of. The islands of Samoa. Fats, what do you think? Those are some great messages. It's nice yes. to see this touching all sorts of corners of the globe. There we go. Tokyo, point to prove. They played the better rugby. Oh, they turn him around with a kick. That's a great option. Lakuru going back. And she'll run her team out of trouble here. As she does, she could go coast to coast here. Then she passes it off to Van, to Visa, to Visa. I might have mixed up again. Good option, good skills. Great shot. Out wide here to, I think that's Visa, the Visa, yes. Good the clean out. Side. Great ball out the back. Unfortunately, a bit high for her, for the receiver. But they're keeping the ball alive. The kick comes out. I think it was an afterthought. Unlucky. The idea was right. Oceans of space. Yes, facts. Oh, there's kick on the fall too. So Turkey looking to speed the game up. They really need to. They have so many strike players across the field, but they, they, they're not settled yet, Fitz. No, and they. What I think is they lack people who can bend the line. They've got their skills going around it to the outside is class. But need someone to just bend, go through them. There it is, midfield crash. Out wide, moving the ball. Bit of hot potato. Oh, skills, now there's some space. Here we go, through here. Good defense, Visser, great carry, eats up the yards there. Bala, Maya, Bala Milo, the, the Hong Kong legend, hands on the ball. They needed that Tokyo, they were just starting to find their feet there. The find me club, find me rugby. Tokyo Phoenix going for the kick. Find the rugby. They really need to win this this line out hit some targets in the midfield and create some I, I, some mismatches face just feel that their physicality in those middle hits is not getting them yeah as much cash as they want set pieces a bit wobbly not straight 
They'll be disappointed with that feat. Yeah, they will be. It's not an easy job, though. <laughs> if it's not your daytime job and you're asked to throw something in like that, just some actions don't come natural. Seven minutes on the clock. Find me rugby. Leading 7 0. Seven minutes remaining in the tournament for one of these two teams. Find rugby now. Put the ball in around the blind side. Number seven, Charlotte Mudula. Going out wide now. Backdoor play again. Tokyo soaked that up. Tokyo looked quite comfortable on defense, not asking the right questions. There comes the boot. The Kuru on the chase. Good kick. Find me now. Rugby will be pleased with that. Punched in the middle a few times and they a good solid kick out. And right. they get their rest. Okudora at the back trying to clean up. If she had got that ball, she would be able to counter attack, but just let it go out. Tokyo Phoenix got to start again here. It's their chance to attack. What have they got? Nice, nice. simple one, two, three down the middle. Makes yardage, post contact. Then they switch to the blind side. It's a set move. Bella Milo there. Loading up, hitting the middle. Nice little skills there. Good decision to hold on the ball there. There's by a 4v1 the here on the right. Nice. Natal Sharks. Natal. Late hit. The arms extended. Tokyo playing a lot of rugby. Just not getting the cash for it. Tokyo Phoenix. It's a yellow penalty. card. Second yellow card. What they do here? They go for the scrum. Tokyo Phoenix have opted for the scrum. One of their players in the bin, one of their props. So, an advantage here. They must win this. This ball back and strike. Making some changes here. Under five minutes for Tokyo. right in the middle of the field difficult place to defend for find me now rugby but their scrum oh step she's gone she's under the post gun now we got a ball game yama okuroda yume okuroda great try just jams off that left foot that's right and gunned it now we got a ball game 7-7 seven, seven. Converts her own try. Seven. It's seven all, ladies and gentlemen. Just under four minutes left. Let's have a look at the scrum here. Oh, great individual try, Okudora, using all of her skills and her experience under the purse. I'll be happy with that. Very happy, very very happy, and it just just took again just one step break these defenses just someone with some really good natural ability flair late Kuro. in the half Kuro goes long when he gets the moments like this system defense against system attack you just need someone with a bit of x factor and a bit of luck i think yukoda left foot jam under the sticks not Tokyo now finding their groove, going through their set pieces. They've got that one try back. Beautiful kick. What an option. What an option. It's going to set up, is it? Oh. That'll be a scrum. What an option there from Bella Milo. How good is that? Late in the game. Just a weight. Just a weight of that kick. Just what they needed to fit. Tokyo ears are pinned up. Yeah. They can strike here. They've got the spinnaker up now. They can see it through. The 229 remaining on the clock. 
big scrum. Remember, find me scrum has been very good. Watch out the, for their the half challenge. Back. Or order with the ball. The sniping half back. Look at that blind side. And as you could, oh, Bella. She drops it. Is it drop? Is it chip? Fine rugby now. Get out of jail with that one. Can't help but think they should have just played a simple strong phase and yep. get him around the corner. But again, if you're confident enough to have a good strike early, why not? It's rugby. We love it. With the spinnakers. With the spinnakers. Spinnakers. <laughs> Fine rugby now, scrum. You've got to be careful scrub. here. Easy out. That much easy out there. I think you, Tokyo have let them off the hook here. But they are by no means out of the woods yet. Find me rugby on the 22. Defensive line out under, a, no, just a minute, just over a minute remaining. Fine rugby has really got to get this ball, hit some targets and just make their way up, up the field and just sit their wingers out. They have got the athletes to go coast to coast. Oh. Tokyo playing advantage. They're going straight to the back door. Someone's going to go middle. Big dummy. Offload. Here we go. Here we go. Recycle ball. Tokyo attacking. They just need Dangerous. one more try. Go back to the blind. Go back to the blind. There's too many of them there. The kick option. No. That's Rogue. Is it's it? going to land. That's the game. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yo, Rogue. again. Okay, order. That's a double for her. Oh, Rogue kick. Yumu Okudora. What a try to seal it. The halfback, one of their best players. That, honestly, did not see that coming. Very and happy again, for Tokyo. Right, bounce of the ball. Ah, she converts her own try. And that's it, Fats. That's the game. That is the game. Tokyo Phoenix have won the game 12 7 over fine rugby now. Let's have a look at the replay, Fats. Nothing on there. They were attacking. Ball out. Number 12 looked for the kick. One bounce over the players. Oh. Oh. That's all she wrote. Good order. And she deserves it too. She's yes. been outstanding. She's been a thorn of the side yep. of oh, fine rugby now, who actually put in a splendid effort. <laughs> As we go for the next game. We'll do all the games, okay, Kim? <laughs> That's all right, guys. Me and Fess will just sit here and do yeah. all the games until Monday. Yeah. Up next. The mighty Shandong rugby team against RKS Shogun. Who's the master? Who's the prettiest? RKS Shogun rugby. Right, so here we go. Strong carry. Nice cut there. Shogun with the ball. Inside the half. Nice fin there. Looking for the offload. Shogun hitting the middle.
Shandong with some good tackling there by Shogun team. Just keep recycling the ball. No, no problem. Their hitters. They're coming left. Shogun. Just keep fending. And they lose the ball. Shandong has the ball now. What are they going to do? Oh, they... And a knock on there. Some great tackling by Shandong. Yeah, um, welcome, Sammy. Um, um, get rid of a, an aging Samoan for a better looking Scotsman to join you. <laughs> um, but both these teams looked great yesterday, didn't they? And we say goodbye to Mark Fatilofa. Yeah. As he heads to Wan Chai. Well known tourist in Melrose with Hong Kong Scottish That's vets. Right. Scrum, Shandong ball. They go left. Working the tram lines. Nice carry there. Shandong ball is super deep. He's hitting their targets. Recycle ball. They take the quick tap. Shandong rugby. Halfway, over the halfway. Shandong has all the possession at the moment. They go left. Space there down the side. 17 Win Yang. It's a great run there. Shandong. All the ball position at the moment for the last minute. Gotta look for the O for Oh. And they get a uh, well deserved penalty. They take the quick tap. Cut there. Sang Shangdong inside the 22. That's the goal line right there. Quick position. They've got to play this quick. They go left. And it's a great try there by Ren Jie Yu. How many phases was that, Sammy? Oh, about 100, I think. Yeah, yeah absolutely brilliant. Great defence, great defence by Shogun, but Shandong just um, big, strong and great skill set. That's right. I mean, the Shandong team is strike players all over the field. Zhao Ying, Han Wen Xiu, Zhang Yu Yan and Song Wen Yang. Look out for those players. But uh, at the moment, the spotlight is on Ren Jie Yu, try scorer, number four. And, oh. oh, hits the post with a conversion. So it remains Shandong 5, Shogun Rugby 0. So as we look at the replay here, Ren Yu takes the outside. Oh, creating a mismatch there. But they were so patient to get that try too, Brucey. Yeah, yeah, just, absolutely brilliant. Just, but, but, but I think both of these teams with the ball in hand look really good, Sammy. So let's see it. Shogun inside there in 22. They hit the middle. Strong carry. Let's keep rolling. Set it up. They've got to get out of there inside their 22. They still have the ball. They look left. They look right. They decide to go right. Ah, oh, losing their composure there. The Shandong defense all up in their face made them kick okay 17 someone young with the ball good carry uh, it's great defense shogun just really quick over the ball there and the, and the referees in this tournament they've been really quick if you can show that you're over the ball you're getting the penalty yeah that's right i mean when young had no oh, she just got caught unfortunately But Shogun just taking their chances. It's good defense from them. Now they're finally inside the half. Shen, Shendong's half. 
for the first time this yeah, this half, I think. Yep, first time this half, exactly. Yeah. So cup semi-final here. Shogun with the win. They go out wide. Dummy runners. They hit the middle. It was a uh, forward pass. Yeah, close call, but the forward pass given, so Shandong will get the ball back. Looked pretty secure in the defence there, actually, Semi. Yeah, I mean, Shandong did well to get across and just close them down. And... Here's the, the forward swap, a bit, something a bit unusual for the tournament, apparently, when you swap your front rows, you have to do them on mass. Right, right. That's yeah, Shogun looking for with. a fresh yeah. front row there. I think that's it. Shandong ball. They'll either do a set move here or they'll kick down. They'll kick long because there's no sweeper at the back. It's a, great it's a set move, it is. It is. I, oh, that's hit that ball at pace. Shandong still have the ball. They recycle, they go left. Oh, wasted opportunity there. Yeah, too close to the touchline. Yep, and Song Win Young, number 17, just uh, wayward pass there. So, quarter final game this one. Brucey, what do you think? I, 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 I think Shandong are, are looking tidy here. I mean, but I mean, the thing is, the skill set in both teams, I mean, they're just. The, the few mistakes, yep. the, the phase after phase to keep it going, it's just great to watch. And athleticism, obviously. That's right. And the one thing I have to remark on is, let's see, off the pitch now, the best hairdo in the tournament <laughs> is, that, is that girl from Shogun. It's brilliant. Shogun attacking. Well, wardrobe malfunction there, but Shogun still have the ball. Recycle, they go right. They're just going sideways, not really going forward. But they still have the ball. Just Shandong. Shandong's physicality is improved. That's that's a clever nudge and some you know, bit hesitation. Yeah, miscommunication there. Who's going to clean up? Yeah. And it's worked in the way of Shogun. Yeah, no, it's good. Shandong get the scrum, giving the knock on. I think just a bit unlucky there. Just hesitated. Uh, Shogun. They had their chance. This Shandong defense is, has been pretty good. You see them in the first, the first game against China Five Star yesterday, the two Chinese yep. teams. Yeah, that, that was a great game of rugby, and I think they were just edged in that, but they've got better, I think, as the tournament goes on. Number 10, Zhao Ying, the halfback for Shandong. She's one of the strike players. And the Shogun front row. While well, we're waiting here, is it not great to see a Premiership referee, Carl Dixon, here? Actually, yeah. refereeing games in this actually. What I yep. thought was quite funny is they made him run the line yesterday. <laughs> Maybe just to have a good warm up first. Yeah. Carl, good to see you back in town, mate. Tiao Ying with the ball. Shandong leading 5 0 over Shogun. And Shogun ah. with a big scrum right there. Yeah, it's second dominant scrum in a row, and they get, get the reward that time. Yep, they just take a quick tap. They don't want to waste any time. They've got a score here. Cut. A bit premature, Semi. Still the first half here. They've got time. Just keep a hold of the ball. Shogun. Hard yards up the middle. They go left, right. They go right. They hit the gaps. Shogun. Oh, it was a big two-on-one, big hit. Oh, and there's the turnover, and really quick. Yes. And they're going to play out, they're not... Shandong, they don't want to waste any time either. They really want to pick the tempo of this game up. Will they, will they kick down? Are they going to go for the kick? No, they go for the cut. They hit the middle. Oh, Great good. hands from yes. big number eight, absolutely brilliant. Good recycling, Zhao Jiao. With that big ball carry there, number eight. May have the numbers out wide here. Griff's got his arm out. 
That's scrums. That's probably the end of the half. But semi. The one thing I think the remarkable thing about the women's rugby here, the fitness levels. I think, I think maybe more more noticeable than in the men's game, maybe because the way it's played. Just constant movement, constant running. We have some pretty uh, fit specimens running out there for the women's rugby, which is great to see. Shandong are leading this half 5 0 over Shogun for this cup semi final. And while we're here, we want to say a big shout out to our sponsors, Samurai. Samurai, thank you. Have us play in Haywoods. Thank you, guys. Allied World Insurance. Who else? High Five. And also Tradition. Morant. Thank you, guys. Natixis. EIA. Taiku Place. Yep. Taiku Place. I'm coming over there for a burger tomorrow. Hey, Sammy, I mean, now, now that you're back um, commentating in your first career, um, how's the acting career going, pal? <laughs> are, you, are you still a villain or does they ever let you be a good guy in any of these movies? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, Brucey. Ah, <laughs> it's not a secret, mate. It goes out now. It's, we, it's all over the world. <laughs> Semi Quaveraya Feta, the singing bad man. <laughs> <laughs> As we go into the second half, Shandong. Leading 5 0 over Shogun. Shogun needs a strike in the second half. I, my Shandong looks strong, but I, I think Shogun have got a try or two in them. Shandong, the defense has been outstanding, Brucey. Oh, it's, it's the combination of just physicality and pace. I mean, you. And the, 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 the skill set li lined up. They'd, they've not been caught short, basically out wide. They haven't. They've not. And Tokyo. I mean, Shogun looked really good. Yeah. Against other on, so we'll see. Yeah, the crowd's having a good time. And also a big shout out to my friend Philippe Jolie, who's just joined us here. He's one of the biggest Asian bad bad men in the uh, film industry in China. Oh, it's funny. I was just asking Semi about his film role. He said, "I said uh, singing bad man Semi Quaveraya Feta, but he was denying all knowledge of it." We're starting the second half. They go long. Oh, no idea who's going to pick up that ball. Shandong really need to clean up inside, just out. They go back inside the 22. They go long. Oh, Shandong just missed that ball. Now that this this may be um, Shogun's chance here. Inside the 22, turnover ball. So, good position here for Shogun. They need to score here. 10 meters out. They've got a big, quick backline here, Shogun. So, they really need to utilize their backline. Commentator's cuss, it'll probably be a break off the back here. Nope. They go right. Got to get this ball out. She gets caught. It's a good tackle there. Shogun, go left. Oh, they really need to hit the targets and hit the space. Any quick ball. That's a better run. Offload. But Shandong defense is just Shandong immense. Defense up so fast, and none of the tackles are dominant as well, Sammy. Shogun going left. Just no way through this defense. Shandong patient, not to, they, they don't want to give away any penalties. Shogun just going from side to side, left to right. Might be on here, Sammy. There could be some space here. Number 19, it's one on one. She gets caught. Shandong defense is just unreal. Ah. Oh. Oh, but they've been referee playing caught, advantage. Caught high tackle, I think they're calling over there in the corner, Sammy. Shogun with the penalty. What do they do? Take a quick tap or they take the line out? I think they might take the scrum actually, Sam. They were pretty demo dominant in there. I think that's they're what they're going for a scrum. For. Well, that Shandong defense is like the Great Wall of China. <laughs> How do you get over it? Or through it? Well, actually, I think. Some farmers knocked some down recently, didn't they? If you watch the news, they drive their truck through. They said it was on the news, it was it. That's kind of it. No, um, honestly, um, I think the scrum's a good call here. Just give themselves a bit of space out wide because the, the Shandong defence has just been numbering up on them. Shogun ball. They hit the middle. Big fend. 
Oh, great defense. Shane Dong. They've got to get this ball out and just kick it down. There's nobody home. Oh, the wayward pass. Yeah. So the referee plays the uh, advantage. No advantage. You know, really, that, that, I thought that went an advantage over. Um, I think that was a critical moment. Yes. Um, Shogun, lots of pressure, but they just could not break that defence. That's right. Just under seven minutes left. Shandong have the ball. They're just outside there, 22. Shogun really need to get a uh, big push on the scrum, Brucey. I think they will, mate. I think they might go. They might go for the penalty here if they can get. My referees have been pretty strict unless you drive straight. But no, they're. No, that's a good scrum from Shandong. Held nice well. scrum. The big kick. Nobody home. There's no sweeper there for Shogun. And oh, Wen Yang. First one there. Well back from Shogun. though, really well back. Game breaking open a wee bit here, Sammy. Yeah. Shogun did well to get back. They have possession. They go left. The step. Trying to keep the ball alive. The Shogun. But Shandong is just not giving them an inch. I don't know if it is touch. If, 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 they go for the quick line out. If, 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 if your pig, pigtail touches the lane. I don't think I had the eggs. I'm here touch the lane there. Shandong ball. They'll be happy to just kill time at the moment I but they really got a strike from here i think it's semi the way they play through phases here i think they'll just get the ball and they'll just play two or three phases yep and you can get to the strike runners yeah the shogun team not really settled they've they've got strike power all across the field but haven't really turned anything into points shandong in control five nil they win the line out yeah, there's a knock on referee playing advantage Use the ball here. Shogun ball, they go left. It's good hit there. Recycle ball. They go left again. Oh, some good feet there. Recycling the ball again, but Shandong, they won't give them an inch. This defense is incredible. Straight up the guts. That was needed. That just gets on the front foot again. It's oh, on here. There's Femi. four on two here, but oh, she's oh, gone she's, back inside. She went inside. Keeps the ball alive. Ah, oh. ah skill just, set. Just letting them down at the end there, Semi. That was it. That was that. Mm. That was the equalising try. If she held on to that. Yeah, this is not really the showgun of previous games. They've been playing really well over the last couple of days. Just the quality of the opposition. Yeah. The opposition semi Shandong are just yeah. quick, physical, and so organized. Oh, great defense by Shandong. You got to give them that. And Shogun had a four on one oh, advantage at one stage. Shandong with the ball. What can they do? They really need to strike. Ball retention here. We can't give any penalties away. Shandong win the scrum. The big kick downtown. It's cleaned up. Oh, that might be a deliberate knockdown. Yeah. And it's a card. So this just might be um, Shogun Rugby's chance. That extra man, if they can get organised. Back away from the touchline. But they've held, yeah. caught holding on. Yeah, Song Wen Yang is in the bin, number 17. That's a great recovery. Oh, oh, um, still in the ball with the jackal, though. Yeah, the, the rest of the team really needs to lift here without her presence. Shogun. Shan, Shandong calling the scrum here, man. Uh, that, Let's have a look here. It's a ruck there. Oh, Shandong all over that ball. Yeah, great tackle by Han Wenyu. 
Han Wen Chiu, sorry, number 11 for Shandong. We've got a player coming off for Shogun. Yeah, she, uh, number. Yeah, I think it's it maybe number 10. Once I'm not sure. We'll get the number which turns round. But yeah, coming off injured. But there's a, there's another. There's the front row subbed off and the forward subbed off again. Shogun going to go for broke here because um, Shandong have called the scrum with their penalty. But Shogun my next demands. So there'll be all sorts of pressure on this scrum. Not in the, they've obviously got five in the scrum, but they, they'll be desperate to turn this around, Shogun. That's right. As the clouds, the dark clouds come over Hong Kong Football it. Club today, it's getting a bit dark. We might see some kind of precipitation soon. Oh, some kind of precipitation? It might even rain. <laughs> now, Shandong have kept a hold of that despite a lot of pressure on the scrum, but here's the Shogun pressure now. Here they are, they're up on them. But, oh, they've, oh. they've come offside. Yep. Shandong will be happy to just slow oh, this that, down. That's that, that's but they take the quick tap. Which doesn't make much sense. They'll just over a minute to go in their leading with one and they're a man down. And a woman down, should you say? And there's a player down outside of the TV coverage for Shandong. If that's the case, they're playing with eight at the moment. Shandong recycled the ball. But they they the win penalty. another penalty. They take another quick tap. Not sure why. But they want to speed it up. Shogun desperate to get this ball back and score a try. Shandong recycle the ball. They go out to the backs. Good cut there. Good recycle. She's they need a the halfback. Oh no, she's not giving it. Um, and it's like the fourth penalty against Shogun. Somebody better watch out. Look at Shogun yellow. girl with uh, that's the Sinbin player back on. Shogun girl looked over the looked like she's over the ball, but obviously he's giving her not releasing. Yep. She's giving her not releasing. Song Wen Young comes back out of the Sinbin. Whoever wins this, they're, they're going to be well worthy winners and into the final of the Hong Kong Football Club Women's fight, Cup Final. And they've played, both teams have played really well, but Shandong have always just been on top, Timmy. Yeah. This will be the last play, I think, with time up. Shandong ball. What do they do? Will they play or will they just kick the ball out? Since we think they kick out, but I think on the way they've been playing here, I think they'll play. Shogun really need to win the scrum. They have been slightly dominant in the scrum, so let's see how this goes. No. They just need this ball to go out. And there they are. Shandong kick it out. Oh. Great. And there it is. Okay, when well, uh, Shogun players look absolutely out in their feet big congratulations another great performance and thank you very much for coming to this 10th tournament um, have a great weekend hope you're staying for the sevens the great wall of shandong rugby club have burst into the finals or semi-finals yes yeah, semi that, that's the same we're into the cup final shandong are into the final Whew. what a game what, what a game. game. I know. They, 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 and this has got to be good for China rugby. I mean, oh, it's a great reflection of... Both of, both of these, both of the Chinese women team, Shandong. Yes. And China five stars, they look exceptional. And I, we were yep. talking um, to the old New Zealand coach, Kitchens, is saying that a, a lot of the very good China players aren't down here, actually. Right. The, the, this, is, this is the extended feel out that other girls that they're looking to bring in. So oh, amazing. It's got to be good, yeah. Yeah, they've got some uh, serious depth up there so it's great for the game I mean, I, you'd, I mean I'd say we've been here for years long enough we would love to see the 15s game kick on a bit more yep. in China as well but this 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 format anything in the Olympics obviously interests them but it's, oh here we go next up is the Nick is the it's the women's second cup semi-final and I believe that would it be Ashbury in China five star definitely China five star This China Five Star, great team. They all massive, tall timber. Against the tropics, this China team, they are so tall. They all look like volleyball players. Oh, they, they, they looked very, very good yesterday, Sammy. That opening game against Shandong. Absolute Shandong specimens. These girls 
What did I mean? Yeah, the physical is very, very fit, ladies. Tropics to kick off. As the dark clouds gather here at Hong Kong yeah, Football Club. I think, I think your precipitation call may be right, Sammy. Yes. <laughs> Great kickoff taken right on the 10 by Ashbury. Keeping the ball alive. And uh, oh. just off their feet. That at the ruck. Unlucky. It's unlucky and it didn't mean we weren't coming, but it was their ball. They didn't need to be. Um, There's a good start though by the uh, Tropics. Piri actually, and it's winning that aerial fight. Kickoff was bang on the 10 meter. Yeah, he caught in there. Yeah, it was great. And kick that's off. one of their standout players, number 18. Who we will give you a name for soon? Yep. Just waiting on the name lists of both teams. Scrum, China ball. They got to get this ball out. They hit the middle. China recycle. <laughs> Go left. Yeah, China recycling the ball. Tropics, no one at the back, no sweeper at the back. It's a I great think they're going to put it through the hand China. semi. I don't think they'll be kicking. Oh. Penalty, I think, for maybe being offside again there. And it's not a penalty there. Not rolling away, but looks of it. Yep. I'm going to go for the line out here, I think, Semi. They're going for the and scrum. Wrong, they've gone for the scrum. And the one thing you'll, you can say about this Chinese team, they, they'll have a set move to play off of this Semi. They'll, they'll know exactly what they're going to do. Yeah, keep an eye out on number four, Xiao Yang, 16, Chen Zi Ying, 18, Han Zhu, 19, Chen Kan, 24, Wang Rui for China. The strike, strike power. Scrum inside the ball, inside the 22 for China. Oh, it's a great scrum from Asbury, and they've turned it over clean. Ball getting out to the backs. Great carry great by yards. Ashbury. Great yards. If they can cycle quickly, they've got to have every chance here. Good straight running. Tropics go left. They've got numbers out here. With a chip through, that looks like great. And it's... Oh, no, she just hesitated too long in gathering that. Unlucky. That'll be a 22, I think, I believe. I know, is she claiming it? Okay, the touch judges and the ref are just looking over. Yeah, no, no try, unlucky girl. Um, number three, um, that was Celia Kansa, very, very close. We'll look at the replay here. She waits and waits. Oh, oh she nearly looked. And um, we will obviously argue the referee. There might have been a hand in that. What, what do you think, Sammy? Yeah, I think there was a try, to be honest. Tropics ball, they go right. Big run. Oh, that's lovely, Cutty. Setting the ball up, they go right again. Squeezing that tram line. Number 11, got to turn around, set the ball up. Tropics now come left, inside the 22. S just over six minutes left in this first half. Tropics recycle. Yeah, he's come blind, she's come blind. Number 18. This is Dispalia Faga. Long ball, you've got to clean up here. Good DP, defense by China. Tropics. This will be good back for it. Really physical team, this Tropics team, actually. They're matching the Chinese. Who had looked really, really dominant in some of their games yesterday. Tropics That's ball. Penalty advantage, Tropics. China just can't get their hands on the ball here, Semi. Yeah. The China five stars. And Ashbury have called the scrum. They played this whole first half inside the China half. They have. 
So Tropics will be happy to be here. They just need to capitalise on the ball and I score think some that's tries. The thing, Sammy, they need to get some points for this dominance because we know how quick and how skillful this China team is yeah. when they get the ball. 23 Cheng Tian for China, the halfback. I think they might, they might even really put some real pressure in this scrum match and see if they can pull a penalty. Yep. It's not really that much of an advantage from Ken's, but let's see how we go. Tropics got to set not their back line on fire. Tropics go right. Running sideways though. Still on her feet. Still going. Falefanga with the ball. Oh. One on one. The big fan. Falefanga's got to stay in. Oh, she, she's, she's on her own. Right. She's still going. She needs help. And she's oh, throwing it back ball. out the back of the hand. It's still live. Great Tropics play. go left. Oh, There's shit. room. There's four on none. They've got a score here, line. surely. The big girl, oh, no! Oh, boy. Oh, just just the, under the pressure of time. They just knocked it on. That's the second clear chance out here. And here's the, here's the substitutes hitting the pitch on mass. And uh, Tropics are not really helping themselves here as they roll the changes. We look here at the, uh, the playback. Right here, there's four on none here. That's not a bad pass that... Oh, she's just yeah. taking her eyes off it. That's it. That's actually the big number three who maybe touched that one down earlier on and wasn't given. Yeah, no, Celia Kansa. Yeah. She won't be happy with that. But they're still down here. They're still inside there, but it's China ball. It seems a bit of confusion uh, 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 there. They're shouting back at the VA. They're uh, missing, a 10, missing a player a forward. up to 10 now. They're yeah. missing a lock. Yeah, missing a lock. The Tropics. Number 15 looked to run into the back line, and then she's actually in as a lock, I think. Well, Brucey, yeah, I think China should win the scrum. They need to win the scrum, and if I were them, I would kick the ball all the way down. Yeah, get yeah, out of yeah, I think get out of here, because they've only played in their half the whole time. But We're going to see a big kick right there. Kick. Exit kick downtown. And here's the piece. Palea Funga. Gets it, and she'll, she'll just go. Oh, that's a great tackle by China, five-star. Recycle ball. Tropics. Oh, not quite. It's just not really so, settled. Yeah. Not really hitting their targets. Wayward passes, wayward catches, and China will be happy with this. Yeah, they, they, they basically they've had no ball. Yeah. Nothing to play with, and it's nil nil. And yep. two minutes to go, two and a half minutes to go. They really need to kick this ball out. Downtown. I. I think uh, the near up way, I think they'll run a straight play here, Semi. Yeah, they're, they're well drilled in there. Did you, these outside backs haven't had the ball in their hands. Ching Tian to feed. Good pass. And Semi, they've kicked. Oh, that's a great kick. Look for the bounce. And number 21's knocked it Jiang on. Yutong. Jiang Yutong with a with a drop ball there. Ah. Oh. Both teams, well, I suppose that's China Five Star. Sorry, China Five Star's first big chance, but yeah. it was a clean chance. Yeah, Jiang Yutong with the uh, the unfortunate uh, drop pass. It was a great kick, absolutely great kick, spot on, put her in space. Yeah. Yeah, China know that they got a kick down, get the territory. Now they have the ball. Tropics with the ball. Jiang uh, Yutong. That missed uh, bounce of the ball there. Tropics with the ball. First time inside their half, actually. Just over a minute left. It's nil all. Tropics zero. China five stars zero. So I think what the Tropics will do here is they'll win the scrum and they really need to set some targets in the midfield. Or they'll kick it downtown. I think they looked a bit, try and get it to Big Fally Afaga in the outside wing there, because she's, yep. she's been the big dominant carrier. Yeah. But that's a great scrum from the Chinese team. Oh, but oh. you really have to drive straight to get the penalty and here, don't Kang, you? just too keen. I think they win it if you, if you don't drive dead straight. For China, a quick tap there. Tropics, they run the ball straight up the guts. China contest. Tropics again. 
going right the show now. and go no, she's gone sideways again though but she's oh. through she breaks out what can they do it's just messy here great pressure from china now china five star just try they've driven them back 30 meters without the ball oh, but they've kept it it's quite messy here we come. Tropic's got to clean up here. She doesn't want to go too far, this girl. Oh, great pass. Oh, she stepped up. There's the space. There's the space. It's one on one. Can she do it? What a tackle. Magnificent wow. tackle from number 23 in the China five star team. And that was the China halfback who had to get back there and make that big tackle. She looked out pace. She looked like she was beaten and she got there. Wow. Kang. Cheng Tian Khan, halfback for China. Look at that. Held on for her life. At, at semi, coming into this game, I would have thought that China Five Star were big, big favourites. Yep. And if you watch this first half, yeah, they've been played off the park. Woo! Well, sweating bullets in this first half. Tropics, no. China, no. I'll tell you what, though, Semi, that, that tackle there, Semi, that could be a game changer. Right then, that then, that was that was going to be Tropics taking the lead, right on half time. Yep. Instead, it's nil nil. Great spectacle here at Hong Kong Football Club. Hey, what you look, you looked at the other side. China Shandong are through. Yep. Oh, I'd love to have a beer right now. Yeah. Brucey. I, 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 and some of the audience members on the on the global TV screen that we'll be looking at. Yep, we want to welcome to all our friends from all over the world: New Zealand, Australia, Scotland, Scotland, Scotland. Oh, Scotland. Come by, on! And by the way, semi sevens sold out. Final the sevens, fi final sevens at the stadium sold out. What a great advertisement for such a great tournament! And and Robbie McRobbie's final as chief executive of Hong Kong Rugby Union. I'm expecting Robbie to uh, take his clothes off and do a streak during the Hong Kong sevens. That's, well, perhaps we could, uh, you put that out in a, in a, on international television, you're daring. Yeah. Uh, so, Robbie, that'll be me and you, brother. I think. Uh, Streaking across the Hong Kong Sevens, your last run, our last run, we'll be holding hands and <laughs> hopefully we'll get arrested and then they'll take us back up I'll, to the box. I think it'll definitely be your last run. If you go <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, big ups to Robbie McRobbie, who's been a, a stalwart of Hong Kong rugby for the last. 20 years. Oh, yeah, 20 years. But for, from, from his early days doing the development stuff with the yep. young kids and getting so many of them back in the game to, right. to, being, to running the whole thing into, and through that awful period yep. of COVID and coming through on the other side to see a tournament like this go in the seventh full. Brilliant. Here we go. China five star, two kick off, second half. And I think China will go long here. They go deep. Oh. They'll be under pressure, Ashbury here, because she didn't gather clean. Oh, and they pass, well, they're passing. The they've gone across the face. China steaming up on them. Some great tackles by China. Ashbury have just got to make sure they make no mistakes here. Hold on to the ball. Oh, as we speak, they were held on. Quick take penalty. a quick tip. Oh, they oh he's called them bad. back from the wrong place. Yeah, they've got to take it back behind China the line. China five-stars coach was here yesterday. He, he's pretty upset with his team and they're not playing well quick play china go right is there a space there there's a try right there yeah. so china number 24 one Lui. that all came about semi from just not fielding the kickoff the ball went back and they were then under pressure inside their own 22 for the first time in the whole game actually that's right and china reacting really quickly to the the referee's whistle they want to speed this game up so Tropics not really, not really reacting as fast though. They, 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 they've just got to remember how they played in the first half. Get the yeah. ball back down into the China Five Stars half, and then just keep the pressure on. Get their big ball carriers on the ball. Big Fali Afaka in the number 18. They need to get the ball in her hands. Yep. If you look at the replay here, Wang. A nice try there. Well deserved try to China. Nice tackle there. China swarming all over that ball. Tackle release. Tropics. They hit the middle. The big fan. She's going to go for a big carry up the right. Oh, she pops it back in. 
Oh, that's that's a penalty, surely. She's interfered with that. No, it's just given the scrum. Uh, Funny, I find that the danger player here for the Tropics. I do feel that that, that was, should probably win a penalty to Ashley there. You know, the upper feet killing the ball. Fale Afanga came all the way from Wellington. Big shout out to her family in Wellington. Hello for lover, you guys. Well, we're right in front of the action here, and this is a um, critical scrum for Ashbury. They need to get the ball. And he lined up the, well, they'll be lined up in the outside centre. They'll be looking to run this up through the outside centre, Sammy. Yep. Tropics ball. Ah, the reset scrum is not, not, not what we really want to see at this point. So we're expecting a uh, Tropics to hit the middle. Hit some phases in the middle, drawing some yeah, of the players. Like two big runners, Sammy. They'll get that. Yeah. They've got to get Falefanga into this game. Get it to carry the lots. Insider as well is one that's been carrying really well, a bit laterally, but getting round outside. So it's got, yep. they've got to be looking to hit the middle of the park here. Tropics win the ball. Go left. Ball goes out wide. And sideways again, but she's found that hole. Show and go. Inside the ball. Falefanga on the inside. Stays on her feet. Oh. Ball is out. Tropics regather. But China are up in their faces really fast. When they come out right here, Sammy, there's numbers. Oh, yeah. Have a go. Uh, uh, Have a go. It's one on one. That's big Celia Cancer that was unlucky in the first half with the first attempt. Now they come back. Oh, and they nudged it through the middle. Maybe not the right thing to do, Sam. Oh. The bounce. Well, what do I know? And the try. Absolutely brilliant solo effort. Number 16, Kelsey Tanetti, who's actually been outstanding throughout this game, actually. Great carrier. They really needed that try, too. Well, they... that, that has set this game, blown it wide open, Semi. Ooh. Five all, conversion to come. Oh, still a good five and a half minutes to go here, so all to play for, but I think that was critical for Ashbury because after all the pressure in the first half, yep. they'd gone behind and things weren't quite going the same, but to me, they're still playing the better rugby. Yes, yeah, for sure. Well, Tropics are really giving it to them, but this China team, they won't stop. They just keep coming at you. No, they won't, and they've got some real pace there, Semi, as well. Just like the Great Wall of China. The kick... Oh, it's good. It's good. Ashbury Tropics take the lead. Ten. Number 10 kicked it, yes, Elo Eloise Hayward. So they go, 7-5, Ashbury Tropics against China Five Star. Nice kick there, and she's just following up her own kick. On the, we will, the China will come back very hard now, you would think, Sammy. The bounce of the ball there. Nice that try. kick-off's not gone 10. So that's, that's a mistake from Ashbury straight away. China got to attack here. They set up their systems, get ready. Tropics. They got no sweeper. So China has opted to go for the, the scrum. They called the scrum again. Seems to be the, the, the good teams. That, that's, the, that's the call for penalties. Just try to make some space. We've seen it in sevens in the last few years as well, a bit semi. Yep, I guess China are really banking on their backs to fire. So they'll hold up the, the uh, Tropics forwards and then the backs will take the space. 11, Liu, halfback, puts the ball in. Liu's got the ball, they go right. And nobody at home for Tropics. Liu. There's Liu. Oh, she's got to put it down. Held up over the line. I think and um, that was Liu, I number 11. We'll, not sure we'll get this in the replay, Semi, but I think the first China player was taken out there yeah. and before it bounced out. Um, she was in front, got a shove in the back before she gathered the ball. Yeah. 
but I don't think I, I don't think the referee's seen it, so we've gone for. And by the way, this is the second time I've seen this weekend that's held up and he's given a scrum. Is it not a dropout in tens when it's held up over the line? I saw a game yesterday. The same thing happened. Held up over the line and gave the scrum. Right. I I'd have thought the rules were still going. So number Great eleven, Liu. Yeah. Defense. China are attacking. It's a perfect time to strike here for China. They've got to win the scrum first. A lot of encouragement for the tight head for it. Ashbury from our colleagues here. I think they think it's a free kick. Oh, well, free kick! That's probably they've to done China's it. advantage. China five star. Oh. Big oh, tackle. High, great tackle. No penalty. That was to the, the tropics. The pass was just too high for this. She was always going to get out there. Say, great turnover for, turn from tropics and get on the ground. Turned it over. I'm not sure. I think it might have been. Might have been Big Celia who did chance the other one that turned that over, I'm not sure. Yeah, China will be ruining that. Yeah, it's just couldn't get bodies over the ball. And as we look back at the replay there. Oh. The turnover. The turnover's actually number. Uh, I think she got injured yeah. during the tackle. Yeah. yeah. Tropics ball. Pressure on though. In front of their own posts. I think. I know the backs are split. I'm not sure if they'll kick it if they'll go to the big ball runner out the right here, Sammy. What do you think? Oh, actually, no. Maybe they'll need to exit here. But they decide to run. Falia Fung has got the ball. Yeah, the big fan. Big runner, big fan, big great Pumping carry. the legs. Got to recycle. Well, that's great play. Tropic setting their targets in the middle of the field. Oh, the ball is there. China Great turnover, China. The offload. Oh, just near the line. Great defence, Raj, but he holds that out. But no, that's, oh, that's that looks like a double movement there. Double but movement ref says play on. Chin at half back at number 18. And it, Ashbury desperate defence. We're into the last minute of this semi-final. They're leading by two points. They got to get this ball wide. China need to go right. But they go left. Oh, a big, big, great tackle with the prop. And again. China oh. attacking, recycling the ball. Tropics desperate. They China's mean, got a back line. Yeah, they've, they've gone they wide. They've got to get it out. Wide. One more pass. One on one right here. Oh, great defense great again. And they might they might turn this over. They've turned it over, Semi. Oh, penalty. China yeah. five star. They take the quick tip. Oh. The referee's pulled them back. Here we are, Semi. Basically, it's almost full time. Another quick China tap again. Star. Number 10's got it. China's got it. Three on one. And it's a try. Three on one. China come up trumps. Oh, and the, the whole bench is on, the, on their feet here applauding. Han Jun, number 18, Han Jun, scores the winning try. Semi, we China make, five stars. Today what we still haven't got is a smile from the China five star coach. He is fizzing down there. Yep. Oh, he he'd be stoked. I yeah. reckon. He should be. He should be. He should be congratulating his players for that because they were they were on the back foot most of this game. Semi. Take a kick there and the penalty not good, but it doesn't matter as China come away winners 10-7 over Tropics. Oh. We say goodbye to Tropics in this competition. Meanwhile, the star of China is rising. Brucey. Yeah, there's a replay of the first game. The final of this will be the replay of the first game yesterday in the ladies' tournament. But the Ashbury, that, that, I think that was better than that. I'm a better, I think, than the neutrals expected in that game. They were dominant at times there. Right. And just unlucky, I think, as well. Oh, it's just some grunt up there in the front for number 18, Han Jun. A bit, but for China. Number, number big failure, Fagger. It was absolutely brilliant. Celia that would try disallowed in the first half as well. Yeah. And the and the girl in the centre, I think it was actually Kelsey Tanetti. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. All of them great players. Um, what a game. I, I hope they're back next year, that's all, because there's a couple of years they've been here now. That's right. Yep. Now the Tropics have done well to get this far. What a great team. A great mixture of players from all over the world.
and uh, keep an eye out for Faleafanga in the future. Number 18 for the Tropics from Wellington. Good do, job. Do you know what? Do you know what age she is? Same age, she's a young girl. Oh, she's only a baby. She's only yeah. uh, 18, 19. Yeah, she'll have a future in the game. I yep. mean, and yeah. I think she's in the uh, the Wellington and New Zealand uh, seven setup, uh, rugby setup. Yeah, she, so, she, she, yeah, she looks like a big, big ball carry, and, and yeah. she'll only get better. Yes. As we look forward to the next game, but beforehand, we want to thank our sponsors: Tradition, the Texas AIA, Taku Place, Morant, Allied World. Thank you, guys. Streamline Sports, Budva. Tradition, Samurai. Thank you, Samurai. Got some nice gears from them. Stowood Press, Harvest Play in Haywoods. Thank you, guys. Next up, semi, we have the men's 11th and 12th place final. Not, not what these teams probably wanted to play in, but it's one more game and they've got to win something. Uh oh. And we believe, and just to be double checking, we think it is once again between China Five Star, the men not quite matching the women. All oh, right, right, yeah. And now the women's uh, comp has yeah, been yeah. awesome so far. Yeah, and and Papua New Guinea. Oh, PNG, the big hitters. Yeah. They've had some discipline problems, both the men and the women's team through the through the yeah. tournament. But you know, it's I mean, you think, Sammy? I mean, as I say, we've been here for years. Two Papua New Guinea teams at the Hong Kong Football Club tens. Isn't yeah. that just brilliant? Yeah, that's great for the game. Yeah. Uh, it's great they both um, made the effort to come up here and take part in this awesome community uh, event. As we look to the crowd and uh, you can see everyone's having a, a good time. I think so. I, th I think, you know, when we come out of it, the, the story so far, though, I think, is that are the China women's teams. Oh, both of them. Just looking wow. spectacularly good. And just the progress of the game. I mean, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, you see the, the professional game everywhere, there's opportunity for players, but yep. China can only, only get better. They just hope that they get someday, I, I know from talking sometimes it's it's difficult, the country's so big and there's different regional politics, yep. but if they could just get behind that game. Yes, the Shandong team, yeah. the China five-star team, they're really showing their colours yeah. uh, at this tournament. And we'd love to see more teams come, right? Oh, of course we would, take of course part. we would, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and, it's, and the thing is, I mean, we've been here with the men's, the men's. Sometimes the team will come up, that first year a team will come here, and they get absolutely blindsided by how good the, the tournament is. Yep. They just find their way, and then they'll come back the next year, and they'll, they'll work out. They just need to be a bit better. The a track. bit better, yeah. Anyway, yes, we are China Five Star, Papua New Guinea. Be pretty physical. So here we go, look out for PNG, some of their strike players, George Wai, Brendan Yomoro, Bruno Sidra, Cameron Wai, Eugene Tokavai, Andrew Karai, Ron Butler, Manao Noga, Jordan Tebagawai, George Wai and Tony Joe. Yeah, and we are starting here with Lee Benju, Lee Haitao, Chang Chan Sun, Hu Zhen Yi, Gao Zhe Hao, Lu Luda, Zing Shilong, Wang Bao and Yi Zi Wen. And Actually, Fan, no, Jibai Wei, the starting 10. Here we are, trying to end the tournament in a win. Yes, China 5 star, they'll be looking to get a underway here. But PNG, the big hitters, a lot of them uh, come from rugby league backgrounds, so expect uh, some big hits from PNG. I think a couple of penalties against them yesterday, they were quite, they didn't really expect to be given. They were the kind of tackles they've been regular in the rugby league, actually. Yeah. PNG ball, they go long, super long. PNG with some space there. At the back with of the, the cut. Oh. It's a high tackle there from China. PNG take the quick tap, they go right. PNG got to set up some targets. They're going long. Big step. China defense is holding, but they're going backwards. Oh. And held ball. PNG held onto the ball too long. China ball. They see what China can do with the ball. Number three. Oh. Check slips. This China team, yesterday in the opening game against the pool leaders, they, they were there trying to go 5 0 ahead and they dropped the ball over the line and they've never quite got back, got their fizz back after that. Trying to recycle the ball, they go left. Big number ten, who had three on two yesterday. 
stayed on his feet. Oh, stayed on his feet until the second tackle came in. Penalty. And number six, Jonah Kautu takes the ball quickly, gets tackled. And he held on to that ball too long, unfortunately. So yeah, China. Referee in this game, it's so quick to give the penalty holding on. Yep. And yeah. I, I think they really want the game to flow. Yeah. And I think, I think Papa from watching yesterday, I think their only rule out out gas is number 10 here on this side, Timmy. Yeah. He's the guy through quick, but they dab it for the ball in his hands very often. Yeah. He's their, their strike player, number 10. Number 10, Brendan, you know more. Okay, so here we go. China ready for the lineup. They've got to win this ball. Chances are they'll either go to two or four. And they have one jumper. China hit the middle of the field. Oh, lovely pop inside. Just mistimed, but they've got to go man long. Wide. China recycle. They go left. Long pass, number 14 for China, Zing takes the step. Oh, he's still going live, good carry. Papa over the bottom, no, he said not at least. It's a penalty oh. there to China, they need to take this quick. They do. And they have, and oh, but it was off the mark. One has to say that, that in, in this shot and game of rugby, there was nothing wrong with that, that, that penalty, yeah. you think. But yeah, he's, he's pulled them back. Number nine, they go Number right. This, it was a bit of a star yesterday. No. Number seven. Oh, and just a bit too strong there. He's through. Hu Zhenyi. Try Hu Zhenyi for China five star. Great try there by China. They were patient. After just watching the women's game, the defence was just a wee bit soft there, wasn't it? Yeah. They, they just, they just, he, he got through a bit too easily. Yeah, I think PNG were just too busy sliding across. Yeah. Just took one step by the number seven try scorer. He's got a nice tattoo, by the way. Yeah, uh, Pacific yeah. Island tattoo, Samoan. Yeah. I think you're talking about Pacific Island. There's a, I think he might be part of the in the <laughs> Jangbo Lions team, the Janzu Lions team, the number 96. Yeah. Oh my god, I'll tell you what, there must be 95 very good players before him if he's number 96. Because he's the star of that Lions team that's playing later on in the bowl. Yep. And here we go with the try again, number seven. Yep. With a Samoan tattoo on his right arm. His name is? Yeah, got yeah, yeah. Hugh Zenyi. Yeah. But also, as we start again, PNG ball. PNG, got to find some gaps, but nothing in the middle. They recycle the ball. PNG go left. Trying to make gaps for the big boys, but here we go. Here's the, this is the strike runner, but he's now in no space. Oh, he gets carried towards the side, but he keeps the ball in. Number three takes the ball up. Jordan. Long ball. Long, they're, they're doing the long passes, but they're going backwards. They're losing yeah, ground. The, the passes are a yard behind the guy when he's taking. He's having to turn around and take them. They PNG in inside the 22. Now have, they come out. Oh, he left Francis Mina. PNG still have the ball. Up the middle, number eight. Tokyong with the ball, the big run. China the managed to cut offside, so they've got a chance here. Probably go for the line out, I think. You don't think they'll cut? Yeah, go for the line out. China are just happy to defend oh, well here. The ball's the not going to find the touch. Unless he gets a bounce, that's. That's a huge mistake. It's going to go gonna way over. Scrum back for China Five Star. Yes, it, uh, I tell you, the, the, the big prop turned round and looked at the kicker there and maybe said something to him. Don't think he was very happy. Yeah, I reckon. The PNG boys sucking the big ones, hands on hips. China are happy to just defend. As they lead 5 0 with uh, just under four minutes and 30 seconds left in the first half. These two teams are playing for 11th and 12th place. Scrum. China ball. Yeah, China what ball. are they going to do here? First scrum of the game. I don't know whether Papa will be able to put anything. They've obviously got some natural scrummages in there, but we'll see how it goes. China. Nah. Well, I guess China will go left. 
Oh, but the half back is offside. Yeah. He's come round offside. Take the quick tap. They do. Oh. oh. Now, will he let him take that again? Yeah. Yep. Is he all offside? Yeah. Pretty. And on the mark. Oh, they're going to go for the line, China. They're just winding this clock down. China in control. 5 0. PNG. Behind. So right on the 22. China need to win this ball and work one of their backline moves, create some space and score a try. 14 off the back here, off they the back to of the, the fly half. Do you think? They go to the back. Anyway, I think they'll pop it back into four. Some strike runners on right now. Oh, but they drop the ball. Get their composure. The try score here. Oh, but he drops it as well. Unlucky there. Knock on by China Five Star. Just a bit patchy and messy at the moment, Sammy. But I just get the impression China Five Star need to string together two or three phases and they'll just they'll find the edges. Yes. Because they're, they're, yep. they're just a couple of quicker guys. Well then you really need to hit their targets in the midfield. Draw on the PNG players. And then just use the sideline. PNG ball. Jonah Kautu feeds the ball. Kautu swings left. PNG hitting the middle. Good drive, drive boy. Gets the ball back. China all offside. Quick tap by Kautu again. And the big unit here, but he drops it. Advantage, China ball. No one in front of him. He passes in. Great try. Try China Five Star. Lee Zitao. Hautau. Lee Hautau in back, sorry. Nice try there by Lee. Oh, PNG just weren't really in it. They set their targets, but then bounce with the ball, turn around, quick tap. I think the thing is, Sammy, they're, they're, gonna, they're trying to win it with physicality, but if they don't hold on to the ball, they're going to get done for pace. Yep, and we'll see the turnover here. Inside ball, 24. Has he got the guess? Inside again to number three. And PNG won't be happy with that. But China are in control at the moment, leading 12 0 in this first half. Just one minute left on the clock. China leading 12 0. PNG got to got to do something here. They need to strike. If they want to stay within striking distance, China win the ball. They win the ball back. PNG are not up there. It's like PNG are just waiting. China hitting their targets. They get the ball. They go left. They got three on one here. If they manage to get it out wide. Staying up, now he goes down, sets the ball up. Number two, the big step in the fend, releases the ball. They got four on three here. China attacking the space. PNG, got to be patient. Oh, great job there by PNG. They take the quick tap. PNG ball. Can he find the gap? It's close. Recycle ball. PNG stuck inside their own half this whole first half. Yeah, can oh, get that, out of there? That's, that's a good ball. off board. He has a chance, Sammy. And he's got it's the Willie Kalai. And Willie Kalai scores for PNG. That's blown the game wide open, Sammy, because they were under pressure. That'll just give them some confidence. Yep, and that's right at the end of the first half, too. So well done, PNG, for scoring that try. Kalai, the danger man here on the wing. Love the dreads. Great try. Yeah, some gas out wide. That's the, 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 their whole game, Sammy, is to get their first guy through the hole and offload, and they've just not been managed it. But that's, yep. that's going to make it very competitive in the second half. And we go to the half. China leading 12-7 over PNG. 
Let's have a look at the replay there. Oh, the PNG ball is just, oh, that pass there is yeah. what set it up. It. And then Kalai at the end. Running down the tram line. China coming through. Can he get him yet? He has a go. But Kalai too good, too fast. Well deserved try. It was a great try. And I mean, it's the first time actually they've just had to carry the offload, the next offload. Got, 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 it's worked, it's stuck. It just hasn't been sticking for them before. Well, that's great. I mean, there's a, there's a bit of you would like uh, Papua just even to win, just to win, even though it's the 11th, 12th place, it'd be great to win a game and yeah. come, away, come away as winners. Not both teams are giving it their all. No matter what place exactly they're playing for well, it's great to see both teams just uh yeah and I, I, I just hope i just hope that they're all here for the weekend and yeah uh, after the game that they they can enjoy themselves that's right especially the png boys oh absolutely i think all the good money is the png guys will be here enjoying themselves mate. <laughs> so png keep an eye out for number seven uni patrick he's one of their danger men yeah. Eugene Tokavai, another well, good the, player. Well, the, big, the, big, the big try scorer was Super a, fast. Showed some real wheels, didn't he? And then, yeah, yeah like Willie Kalai, number oh, five, yeah, yeah. yes. Here we go, PNG to kick off. Different dimension to the game now, 7 12 rather than 12 0. We'll see how it goes. They'll be wanting to put some big hits in, I think. So they may just try and disrupt China Five Star, so we'll see how it goes. Well, that's. Oh, that's a missed pass there. China got to clean it up and they do looking for this the space there's space right there inside go boy China recycle the ball and they win the penalty it's PNG just killing the ball trying to take the quick tape they go left nearly dropped it he recovers set the ball up China go right they spin right they all the numbers out here four but they're trying to super deep and he loses looks like he loses yes yeah, he's lost the ball png ball oh great turnover ron butler number 15 with the turnover there Whew. Both teams looking a bit tired there. PNG waiting for their uh, front row to arrive. Yeah. It's a scrum. So let's look to PNG. They set their backs alight. Well, the try scorers um, sit outside centre here, and the, the man we were talking about earlier on, the number 10, is outside him, so I yep. think that's where they'll be coming, Sammy. Yeah, Willie Kalai, the PNG number five, is in the centres, so I expect them to hit the, the middle of the field. Here we go, PNG ball. Number 13, on his feet, driving, recycles, PNG. Some numbers here, looks for the space, but he's held up by the Chinese players. Gets the ball out. Kalai with the ball, gets back up. Pumps the leg. Oh, oh. Great ball, but it was knocked on. China with the ball, the try score. Oh, what a great run. A great scramble by Papua New Guinea, but yeah, China. China's got all the space here. They've got the whole back line here. What can they do? And they come left. China is just working the space. Trying to put PNG in doubt. But PNG happy to keep tackling. China okay, recycle the ball tackle, and they win a yeah, they win a quick penalty. He's still going. Is he gonna get another try? That's another try to China, number five. I think when, when Big Willie Kalai was quite good there. He pulled out of the, he pulled out of that in a penalty try. Anyway, number five, Shang Chang Sun, yeah. try scorer for China five star. China did well to just take the defense left to right to left to right, and finally they came up with a good try coming down here on the left hand edge. 
PNG is just running out of energy. They've been tackling the whole game, they just, the whole half. They, they just don't seem to be too ugly. They came to the outside side window there, but they don't. The number 10 is a straight runner. He, anytime he gets the ball, he's got three guys on him straight away. Maybe maybe China are just aware of him. Yep. That, that he, that he's not put him in any space at all. Conversion has not been successful. Some As we look at the, uh, the replay here, number five takes on one, two, three players. Good try there. So China are now leading 17 to PNG 7. Yeah, PNG need to strike back fairly soon. Oh, it's a great kick off and carry. China have got their ears up. They set the backs alight. There's four on three here. They can just get the ball out. 16, great carry and presentation. China go right. PNG scrambling. China looking for the gaps. There's two on one here. Second big carry for number 16, Wang Bao there in this move. 14, Zheng Zilong scored one already today. Sit down, Bert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second try, I think, for number 14, Zheng Zilong of the, of the game. Just constant speed and pressure there. All from the kickoff, actually. Regathering their own kickoff. Well, was there, it was only going to be a matter of time before they scored another try. China, the ears up. The tries are up. Yeah, the conversion is good. Is it 24 to China, five star. Papua New Guinea, seven. Papua New Guinea on their hands and knees. As we look at the replay there, oh, some great stepping there. Continuity. No, number 12's not got his boot on at the moment for Papua. I think he's looking for somebody. Oh, his boot's broken. Uh, yeah, we need we need um, Papua New Guinea maybe have to make a substitution because number 12's boot is not is broken. So Papua China contesting for the ball and trying to get penalty. The, the penalty. And he let them take that from in front of the mark. He's not. He's been pretty pernickety early on, but they've just done that. Number 24. Yeah, he's been looking threatening all game. Zhao JB. By the way, a bit lucky there actually, because he's been very pernickety about kicking behind the mark there, and yeah. that was a bit in front. But he just let him go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't really consistent, yeah. but you just take got to take your chances there, uh, Brucey. I think so. Just. Uh, I think Papa have just run out of gas a wee bit here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you've got a feel for them. But China are leading now, 31 to PNG 7. And I don't know if they've replaced that lad's boot or replaced the player. No, he's still. Oh, he's got a different boot on. He's got odd yeah. boots on. So PNG number 12 has got two different boots on. Keep an eye for that. And they kick to him, number 12, Cameron. Cameron Wise got two different boots on. PNG look for the chip, but it doesn't work out. China recover, but it's all over the place. Referee says play on. PNG ball, just go, boy. Big carry, yeah. PNG got to make the most of these chances. They win the penalty. What do they do here? Quick tap. tap they, they go. Oh. Ball went backwards. China. China have gathered it, yeah. Covered the ball. China just Referee's playing advantage. He's China's trying to back line out. getting ready. China back line. Firing to the left. Number oh. 17, a lot of space. Yeezy Wen. Steps. Oh, Papa a bit unlucky over the ball, but couldn't get hands on. Trying to go right. Hands through the ball. Oh, oh is the space great there? Line. Great cut. Number three with number the step three, and the but pass. He's given it off to number 14, and that, I think, will be Zing Zilong's hat-trick in this game, actually. Pretty unselfish from the big number three as well. Yeah, great passage there by China. China, five star, 36 conversion to come, fairly likely to get it, I would imagine. And it's good, China, five star, 38, Papua New Guinea, seven. And Papua New Guinea just uh, all over the show at the moment. They look pretty tired, but I'll tell you what, they're not they're not giving up. Yeah. 
with the rage of Ricardo. Just as we look at the replay there, the impasse to number 14, the try scorer for China. China playing well, leading 38-7. As we go to the kickoff, China contesting these kickoffs. PNG win the ball. PNG have got it. I don't know what a body's in to win it. <laughs> They're up though, but here we go. What can they do here inside their own 22? PNG. This three on one here. Someone's got a cut. Nobody oh, gets caught. PNG no way through. China up to the task. Just tackling all day and trying to get the, the penalty. They'll probably take the quick tap. Yes, they do. Behind the mark. Quick tap by number five. What are they going to do here? China straight oh, through the three. middle. Is he going to stop and give it to somebody this time? No, he'll score it himself. Number three, Li Hao Tao. I tell you what. Uh, this referee referees the breakdown like Simmons. I mean, that, that that China had hands on that ball momentarily, and he gave the penalty. Yeah. China okay, just taking that, 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 that's um, clock run dead, and I think Papa will be quite happy as well, mate. Conversion's good, full time. Congratulations, um, China Five Star. They finish 11th, and I hope they've had a great tournament. And I hope the Papua New Guinea guys have enjoyed it. And thank you very much, Semi. Um, see you soon. I'll see you at the weekend. Yeah, mate. I'll be there for So here we go, we're underway. This is the men's bowl final. Two exciting sides. The Barbars up against the Apache and the Barbars will get the first opportunity. Parallel Barbars looking for the inside outside ball, but no one to pass to. Comes back to Apache. They're looking to defend here. Try to get out of their half. It's a frantic start. Nice take up the middle. And advantage, first advantage, go to the Barbars. Looking to force the issue here, the Barbars, looking to recycle. Just deciding to move it forward, best way up is straight line. Ball's been recycled now. Oh, that's when you want it. At the, in the bread box, not down the bottom of your hands or in the in the ankles. That, they'll hey be, there, they'll Cookie. be ruining that. G'day, Richard. Nice now, to have you in, mate. Sorry, just coming in that first couple of minutes, mate. Looking nice, like a good game starting off. Nice work there. Some good early pressure from Priscelli there. Hugh Alexander with a big bust and a long run, but just couldn't find a couldn't find a mate when he needed one. I know how he feels. So. So we've got a scrum, Morant, Apache's feed, middle of their own 22. 
that want to try and clear away from here. This is going to be interesting, Cookie, because these two sides, they play similar types of rugby. There could be a lot of cancelling out here on both sides. Oh, and the referees had enough of all the faffing around. And Apache just setting up a wide ruck here, trying to draw some of the uh, Priscelli boys in. Nasha Taranga all rights that ball and a really good hit and spin there. Pressure's all on and Tarasenga goes again. Rolls away from that, but the ball's spilled. But illegal there and the first wedge of cheese handled out Johnny Holiday. So it'll be interesting to see whether they spot the scrum or just go. Just went very direct there. And another penalty. Patch, you've got to be careful here. They could have two in the bin. Oh. I think there was a hint of looking for through the legs there, but uh, Priscelli putting all the pressure on here. Ball slipped to Tarasenga, gets the ball back. It's bowling around there like a pinball cookie. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, clearly both teams want to start, start with intensity, but, you know, I think intense, as you well know, Cookie, it's, uh, come on, boys, call, 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 call heads is what we're looking for here, especially in the first couple of minutes. And, yeah. uh, you know, Barbar's created all the opportunity, but just couldn't convert. Young Nicholas Brown on the tight head here for Priscelli. He'll want to underline his front row credentials in this early scrummage. So far, Priscelli putting all the pressure on. But Apache come away with the ball. Oh, scrag to the ground, but rolling, rolling. But Cole Nash tries to go quickly, but the referee pedantically brings him back to the mark. <laughs> we wouldn't expect anything else. Tarasenga, another strong drive. He's got his knees down, looking to pull this ball back. Cole Nash rips it out to the left. Oh. Big dummy run there from Nick Brown. Again, there's got to be someone in there. There's got to be a bit of leadership, I think, Richard, in terms of just saying, hey, guys, like, we're down here. Let's stay down here and let's convert. You know, just, I think, you know, Hail Mary's, you know, 50-50 balls at this time of the, of the, of the game are really not what they want or what they need if they're going to convert this into points. Just trying to swing that big haymaker for the knockout punch. Oh, that ball. Nick Brown. Gets his shoulders through. Good hands. First try. This man, Nick Brown, sponsored by the Happy Valley Bar and Grill. Tremendous athlete and patron of that said establishment. Tremendous establishment. We've been there a few times, you and I, and had a couple Indeed. of Guinnesses, I think, mate. And Hugh Alexander nails the extras, so... Finally, the early pressure that Priscelli were putting on comes to fruition. Just that overthrow drops into the hands and a good offload. And Brown kept his legs pumping, outstretched, dots it over the whitewash. Geez, I've got to say, comedy of errors there, but at the end of the day, the Barbars come out on top out of that one. Decent take in the wide channel there by Apache, trying to set this ball up. And Nick Brown gets in and over that, but uh, beaten by the ruck. So Apache come away with this one. Look to spread it out to the left edge. Oh. It's 
Timmy Alapade is the danger man, number 14. Yeah, just uh, couldn't quite get it. I think he, he, he overran slightly on that one. I mean, uh, yeah, as you say, danger man uh, has been all the way through the, the tournament and uh, they need to get the ball in his hands. And there he is in the background with that shiny pate, Steve Dolman. Long-time legend of the Hong Kong Referee Society. Always see him on a Saturday afternoon somewhere. And the AR on this side is Mr. Carl Dixon, who is allegedly on Sunday refereeing Toulouse versus Racing in the European Cup. Oh, and some good work there from Priscelli. Looking to put some width on this ball early. Henry Scheel, who scored that dramatic try once the clock was in the red. So this is the first silverware on offer, Cookie. Bowl first, final. Yep, first silverware on offer, and uh, these two teams are going at it, hammer and tong. It's great to see. It's good rugby. And a decent nudge through, doesn't quite hold the line. Tarasenga and Ianto Davies. You know, when you're in a tight contest like this, Richard, you need field position, and uh, clearly that was uh, the strategy there. And uh, they came away with it now. They'll now be looking to disrupt this line out. So as we come up to closing in on the final minute of this first half. I think it's safe to say neither of these teams are going to die wondering. No. Absolutely giving it their all, and Priscelli come up with a turnover there. Driving through the contact. They spread it wide. Sam Potter. Game, Priscelli keep working through the contact there, fighting hard. Jordan Coxley carries that in. No sweeper at home, but good work there from Headlam. Priscelli here have had all the pressure. I think that they would want to try and come away with a little bit more than the seven points they've got so far. Apache spread it out, getting up to their own 22, playing multiple phases here. Oh, and they've uh, spilled the ball. It's in the hands of Henry Shield. He's making good headway here. Slips the ball away. Oh, and a good offload there. Some action there right in front of sequence corner, Cookie. Yeah, I think out of these two sides, you've got to give the advantage at this stage to the to Priscelli Barbas. They've had all the field position and most of the possession. The ball just seems to be swinging their way. That said, they've just turned it over, but that's the end of the half. Referee blows blows for half time. So uh, as we've said, I think Priscelli have thrown the kitchen sink at them in the first half, and uh, Apache have done well to only be seven points down. No question about that. I mean, they've absorbed a hell of a lot of pressure. Uh, yeah, they just need to get their hands on the ball at the end of the day. I just feel like if I look at the two sides, the difference right now, the Barbars, the uh, Sir Priscelli, they just they seem to be just a little bit more creative. Uh, in terms of moving the ball away from contact and putting their big men in space, drawing in the defenders and then be able to, being able to create some opportunities wide. And so I think from a strategy, from a game strategy point of view and an execution point of view, first points to Barbas. And 
center of the screen there. Kia Harawini, winning captain of the women's premiership. As we now get a look at Apache. I think they can feel that um, they've done well that half. As I say, they've had to work very much in their own quarter. But uh, they've kept it 7-0, so some good work there. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's... Richard, it's anyone's anyone's game, mate. Like it's, uh, you know, it's for the it's for the chocolates. It's for the silver. We had ten minutes to go. I think in terms of half-time chats, Apache, they really just need to get their hands on the ball. They need either they need some field position and they need to, they need to get their hands on the ball. So, you know, with the bar bars on the rest, this has to be a good receipt take on the restart. Start look to create some phases and get down the field. So as Ghostbusters fades there, Priscelli put enough pressure on to force the force the knock on. Again, and that's again just as I described. They need to take that receipt, and they didn't take it cleanly. And that, once again, that then creates pressure, not only on the scoreboard, but field position and territory. Big, bustling second row here for Priscelli, Henry Sheil and Tom O'Howells. Two back three players not used to putting their head in dark places like this, Cookie. <laughs> the dark arts, mate, the dark arts but they've held on to it and they've got the ball to the open side pretty well telegraphed that ball and good defense from apache making priscelli That's a good good ruck. good ruck but they towed it forwards there so yeah apache coach going to be happy with that that's uh that's good intent you know very good on the uh, in the ruck there, just over rucking and getting over the top of, of the bar bars. Apaches now have a chance to get themselves down the other end and hopefully create something on the set piece. So they've carved off about 20 metres there, taking play down to just outside Priscelli's 22. Ewan Kingdon with this throw, and he's found his man. Oh, a little bit of a mix up there, and a double pump. But and they uh, got away with it. Oh, they the actually got away with it. Alec <laughs> Hampton Smith. <laughs> For all so money. So, like Cookie, I think with that, even with that mix up, I think that that, that confused the opposition. And uh, they weren't, they didn't do it bad enough to be called shadowing. And then that gave him the opportunity to just run straight through the space. Well so done, Apache. Apache level things up, seven points apiece. A couple of minutes gone in this second half of this bowl final here at the tradition Hong Kong Football Club 10s. Things so. heating up nicely here, Cookie. We've got uh, a lot of people out there in the patio at the Sporties. VIP looks like it's nearly full. We're on for a good afternoon, evening. Oh, good take there. Shield. So they look to spread this ball out to the left edge. Trying to spring the man free. Toes it ahead. Bounces up nicely for Kai Jones. A little bit of a stutter step there. Runs into the bulking frame of young Nick Brown there. Yeah, good to move it here. Should be moving it here. Move it here. Oh, and some great work there. Oh, no look pass. Didn't need to do that. Gives Priscilla the opportunity. Brown drops his shoulder. And Shield 
running in midfield broken defense and spins strongly out of that one and he's got to keep pumping oh great follow-up work there from uh, the shirt would say Tom O'Hales, but I know that's not Tom O'Hales. Great work there, though. Good follow-up. Yeah, great try. Very good try. Created by the big man in the midfield. And, uh, you know, once again, you know, it's your follow-up. It's your guy in behind calling. Where are you? Where are you? Like, giving him the opportunity great to get the ball out. Great Shield. Just kept pumping offload there and then under the sticks and we're for these boys we're coming to the end of two tough days of competition this will be game six for these boys so Richard Barbar's just uh, pretty much uh, emptied their bench they got a lot of fresh legs on now good time just after scoring four minutes to go Big high hanging kick there from Hugh Alexander, fielded by Jones. He's got some lovely feet, this man. Gets bundled over the touch. Tarasenga comes away with it. Oh, great offload there by Alexander. And they're screaming for it wide on this left wing. Big cutout pass. And really good defense from Apache there. Oh. You and Kingdom, big. great turnover and great ball up the middle. He's looking for some mates and uh, they've got it and they keep going same way. Hard into contact. Tom O'Howes fighting for all he's worth in there. As Apache make their way up to halfway. And they come back down this short side. Charlie Cross stepping his way through there. Hard Charlie Cross, one the of the man. standouts. He's been a standout in both halves. Oh, and they've got it out to Kai Jones. And a big old check as he scores that one to bring it back to a two-point game. Great finish by Jones. Wow, wow. You don't see much better finishes than that in any competition. That was very impressive. Had a lot of work to do. Just stayed in the fight. Silky skills there. Right in front of the pack sequence corner there. A very, very special part of these hallowed grounds, Cookie. Yeah, no question about it. G'day, boys. Good to see you all. And it is packed. Sequence corner and on tough, that basis. A very, we very we tough... We remember uh, Craig Wharton, what's tournament director, sadly yeah. left us. Um, Craig, mate, I know you're looking down from above, mate. Love to you and your family, buddy. Tried to body check him into touch, but we've got about two minutes to go and we have a two-point ball game here. And a lot of this second half, apart from the big breakout try, has been played down in the Priscelli half, but Tara Singer putting on a bit of footwork. The big man trying to freeze hands. On oh, a really good... Silky uh, skills. Howells now. And he tries to go down the outside, but bundled into touch. And Apache, under two minutes to go in this bowl final. You can feel the heat, especially on the sideline. The boys are all up out of their seats, both sides. Everyone egging each other on. This is a great contest. Still one and a half to go. One of the Apache players here down, injured. There he is, tournament director, Billy Mason. So I don't know whether this is a cramp 
or a specific strain. But I think the referee is basically saying, you're off the field, fella. Oh, and a great take there from James McRae. Two-point ball game. Oh, on the ball thrown on the floor there. Priscelli come racing forward, and Kai Jones, those dancing feet, trying to free the arms. Snuffed out there. Oh, and the ball dropped on the toe, but Hugh Alexander at sweeper. Oh, great tackle there from Alapade. Well, I think Priscelli are deciding that attack is the best form of defence here. Hugh Alexander puts the ball deep and into touch. The referee checks his watch. And that is it. Priscelli Barbars take out the men's bowl final here at the Tradition. Hong Kong Football Club 10s 2024, Kiki. Yeah, and, you know, like, I think that at the end of the day, well-deserved by them. I mean, there wasn't a lot between the two sides. I think, you know, they set the they set the uh, the result up. It really, it was all the hard work they did in the first half, but probably it was, it was more defensive work in the second half that got them there at the end, and often that's the case. But, hey, well-deserved victory. Great to see the first bit of silverware going out, and, you know, a great a match played in fantastic spirit, the spirit of the Hong Kong Football Club 10s. Lovely to watch. And uh, that Priscelli Barbars team, there's a good core of Hong Kong players, mainly from the Valley Club. So always good to see some of the hometown boys getting their hands on the silverware there. Lovely to see. And Sean Bennett there played on day one, but... Uh, Sadly, pulled a fat lock yesterday, so didn't get a run today. I've also got to just uh, give a shout out to Miranda Apache. I thought, you know, over the two days, these guys performed performed really well. You know, gave it their all. You know, they just they just got they got close, but no cigar. And you know, great credit to their sponsor, Paul Christopher, chairman of uh, Hong Kong Tradition Tens for 2024. Uh, I just thought they, you know, played well on both days and just, just came up short so they can hold their heads high and enjoy a, enjoy a cold beverage after this. So they're making their way over to the presentation area. Lots of big hugs going in there. Boys are very, very happy with that. So, as we can see there, Priscelli Barbars gathering up and as you say Paul Christopher tournament chairman some pretty happy faces in there cannot underestimate how tough it is to win a two-day tournament backing up on day two with the bumps and scrapes from the day before always very very tough to uh, get out of bed on uh, the morning of day two but that is going to make the beers and uh, the weekend celebrations for the Hong Kong Sevens that much sweeter for the boys of Priscelli Barbars So I'm not entirely sure, Cookie, whether we are going to see 
a prize presentation here. So making their way for a photo opportunity and maybe a presentation. We've got Morant Apache in the background there. Yeah, I haven't, Richard, having been involved with teams that have won silverware uh, back in the day, I know what this feeling's like, you know, that you come together, very short notice, you know, coming on the Sunday night, first training Monday morning you know everyone gets to meet each other and then you have another training on Tuesday and then Wednesday you've got to start playing your first game so for these guys to come together and do that you know so quickly and I know there's a, a, a core nucleus from Valley but there's also a lot of other lads here as well and to be able to do that is, is quite a special thing and then uh, the other side of that is is the fact that you know when you get to the final and you win it you know it's, it's such a great feeling such I've a great uh, feeling. got to imagine those memories of you winning silverware cookie there those memories are probably in black and white are they yeah i think they're in black and white mate yeah purple shorts now these days mate <laughs> <laughs> but there we've got paul christopher as you said he's tournament chairman organizing committee proudly wearing that morant jersey there Paul Christopher on the far left of the back row there and the crowd really filling up here and a little bit of ACDC coming over the stadium PA which is uh, good to see Sean Bennett Tom O'Howells Nayasha Tarasenga these boys are now going to step up and I'm hoping that we are going to see a bold presentation here any moment now and there's the, uh, the, the, the chairman of the Hong Kong Rugby Football Club Mr Neil Jensen shaking everyone's hand there Neil well done mate Great to have you here and on board and be supportive, even though you're a football, I know you're a major football fan, mate. I know you love the rugby section and the rugby side of things, buddy. Um, fantastic to see you down here and being involved in this. There's the, there's the trophy right there. Neil's got it in his hand and about to make the presentation, Richard. So... Chloe Biggs organising the PR there in front. And there we are. Looks like Neil's young daughter hands over the bowl to the bowl champions, the Priscelli Barbars. Those boys are happy wouldn't get the biggest skull of beer out of that trophy cookie but um oh look you know what they'll it's good for a wee snifter do you, do you know what they'll do a wee snifter and they'll, they'll they'll do their best mate it'll be there'll be numerous rounds um just make sure i'm sure they will give it to the either their biggest guy or this youngest guy who's got to look after it as the night wears on but congratulations really barbars Great effort, fantastic effort. And I think that's Neil Jensen's daughter in there in front with the trophy, Lovely. getting fully involved. It's a fantastic family day at the tradition Hong Kong Football Club Sevens, the world's best sevens. And tens even. And tens, perfect. So fantastic scenes, but as we've said, that is just the first set of silverware that we see given away here today.
So we are back and live now. Match number 47, which is a plate semi-final. Jiangsu Lions in their lovely turquoise blue and black kit kicking off from right to left as we look at them playing against the A-Trade overseas old boys. This should be a hell of a matchup. Oh, massive bat back there by uh, the Lions. Yeah, pretty impressive. Clearly a strategy of theirs, very much seven-ish. A lot of these boys, you can imagine, uh, or we know are involved, these men are involved in the uh, sevens and the fifteens set up in China. They use this as development for them moving into the higher levels. Oh, the danger man there. Sue drops the ball. Looking to probably take off before he got it firmly in his grasp there. there from the Hong Kong Society. Old boys get their first crack at this. Oh, ball to the wide outside there. Darrell William. It's not the first time he's shown a clean pair of heels in this tournament. Cookie, absolute sheer pace. Yeah, that's Darrell William, not Pharrell Williams, but he's got to be happy with that, Richard. Oh, I love the pun there. Um, but, yeah, like, just too much width there, and uh, Zhang Xu just got caught out on the outside. Decent uh, nudge for the extras there from Lachlan Munro. Overseas old boys, perfect start, really. Couldn't ask for much better than that. First uh, first possession that, uh, that they had, and they just ran hands and sprung... Williams and that's just sheer pace to the outside there so now Dylan McCann high and wide and they're going to try and contest this Jiang Xu absolutely fantastic take boys screaming up on the inside and that is the perfect answer. Nian Zhi, fantastic take. And yeah, the thing about this, you know, these sides from China, I mean, because of their athleticism, their ability and precision, they're able to create opportunities really from nowhere. And uh, certainly that situation, they've, they've done, done very, very well. That's the extra. Got a ball game here. Cookie. Oh, this was a fantastic catch, and he just powered away down the line, and a perfect pass in field there. Yeah, I think just to have the ability to just stay patient at that speed and give the ball. Oh, and that's a horrific kick off there. Absolutely shanked that one. So Tony Lamborn, the big fella, been here many a year for the overseas old boys. And like to all take the big men, he's keen to uh, keen to get into a scrummage. Big smiles there from the overseas old boys. Yeah, well, hey, they definitely fancy themselves in the uh, in the scrummaging lineup. That's for sure. There's a lot of experience in there. Oh, good nudge on there, just quietly 
patiently walking it forward, but Jiang Xu staying compliant. Oh, and it's on the toe for Williams again. Oh. oh, and he comes back and makes a good tackle back. So Sue looking to get himself to the outside there. And they uh, just managed to force him into touch there. Good piece of defence there from the overseas old boys. Clattering into the hoardings just in front of us there. I can almost sniff the liniment cookie. Yeah, there it is, right in front of us. Lamborn to throw it in, goes to the back. Easy ball there. Aiden Lee drops his shoulder there. And you can see they're playing route one through the middle and then trying to work Williams as the spare man on the edge. Lamborn trying to keep his arms free there. And Jiang Xu get over that. All rights to it. Yeah, good technique by Jiang Xu in that contest. Just got the advantage, got the edge, and were able to force overseas old boys into a mistake, holding on to the ball. Young Matt Rickard there, missing touch. Overseas old boys gain, get the ball into the hands of Lambourne. Tries to hold the defence off and pop it inside to Williams. But Jiang Xu were uh, alive to the threat. Francesca Camisa having no truck with the old boys. Oh, and they dropped it on the toe, forced it deep, and they're streaming down the paddock, but uh, bobbling into touch, but that's a huge uh, territory game. Yeah, great nudge there by Knee. He's, uh, he's having a good game so far. That was the right option. We've obviously got to compete in the line out here. Overseas old boys bringing on three pairs of fresh legs, which will make a difference. Aiden Lee's put in a good first shift. Crucial, crucial time in the first half of the match. Two minutes 35 to go, Richard. Yeah, good time to make the changes. Ken, Ken Woodward, the spiritual master of the overseas old boys, <laughs> rolling those changes. Oh, and that's onto the toe. They're chasing down here. Oh. Doesn't quite manage to get his hands on that. And the big man powers through. Lotava. And the try scored by a good follow-up there from Luca Fuller. Really good bit of individual skill and uh, and great to see uh, Lotawa. Big man as he is, probably the biggest man on the field. Uh, but showing the legs of a gazelle and able to get up there and make, break the tackle and get the offload. And Dylan, Dylan McCann there just pulls that to the left of the upright. So we've about 90 seconds to go to half time. Big, high, deep kick, easily fielded by Zhuang Zhuang, who set up that try for Jiang Xiu. Oh, really driving hard through the gap there, looking for some weak shoulders. Zhuang Zhuang, lovely measured pass there, and Su keeps powering through 
the end she can't quite hold on to that so overseas old boys are going to get at least one more crack here they get the penalty and they go quickly Tommy two guns there In. Jiang Shu just fumbling their lines at the back there a lot of tower again it's rinse and repeat just stopped and waited for the ball calmly and the offload to Dylan McCann second try Try assist for Apelli Latawa. And, uh, and for McCann. a big man, he gets around the park. He's looking pretty good. And McCann takes it into half time. Overseas old boys 19 7. But it's been a really closely fought game of uh, game of tens here. And in the previous games, Jiang Shu has shown that they are a supremely well conditioned team. So we can expect them to keep coming in this second half and I know that overseas old boys will not be resting on their laurels here 100% you know 197 um, while it sounds like a big margin it's not really you know one try one try and a bit so this yeah as you say the Jiangsu side from what I saw of them yesterday and this morning they're a team that's not going to give up uh, they'll be there they won't be panicking they'll just be sticking to their guns uh, just unfortunate, you know, at the back there, they haven't cleared up when the ball's, you know, coming behind. And overseas old boys, well, you got to say, you know, they've tried it twice and, and they've, they've come and it's come off twice. So I would just say they're going to keep doing that. Just just putting the ball in behind them and forcing the errors, forcing the pressure. Good strategy. So Jiang Xiu will want to get themselves onto the scoreboard first in this second half you'd have to think that if they do not make the first score they will have a mountain to climb but if they do get it it's all on like donkey kong let's go And Jiang Xiu trying to now bring this ball out of their own quarter. Coming out to this left edge. And again, just that pass being held up. Zhuang Zhuang, the number 74, is a real strong, hard runner. Always looking to run between players get the arms through I think the key the key player here for Zhang Xu is is um, is Xu Ni uh, he's in the centers at the moment Richard and you know they've got to if they can got to get the ball to that guy he's their playmaker he's the guy that's going to make the magic happen for this Zhang Xu side Broomfield looking to dig this ball out to the old boys. May Lua. Some real bustling play here from the old boys. Taking it up that short channel. Oh. and the chicken wing trying to get the ball out to Sayatombo yeah Aiden Lee looking for the miracle ball there and just uh, didn't quite come off going to have to practice that one Aiden and Jiang Xu opting for the feet to the scrummage Young Matt Ricard with the feed. 
which is quite interesting when you when you know they got scrummed off the ball in the first half to take this to offer to take the scrum instead of the line out it's quite an interesting strategy Ricard clears the ball well Jian Cheng a really good carry there young Ricard does well here's the danger man but they've got him well marked and uh, diving on a ball emerging from a ruck here he goes again and so referee's arm out not 10 there with a really strong carry there good step through the initial contact Ricard moves it out to this left edge Aiden Lee in with a fairly aggressive shot there oh. and another hard line run there Getting very close to the touchline there, but looking after. And the ball lost there. Turnover ball. Oh, and Latava tries to hook it inside. Fluffing, yeah. fluffing their lines in front of sequence corner there. Zhang uh, Xu have got to be just, you know, a little frustrated there. A lot of created a lot of opportunity. Just really didn't get get on the front foot. They were going from side to side, quite lateral. And you have to give the uh, the kudos to the overseas old boys defence. You know, good line speed, man on man marking, and man on man defence has been outstanding by the side. And typically. You know, when you hit on the scoreboard, that's where you end up winning the game. So, so they know what they're doing this here. This scrummage is very much in coffin corner for Jiang Xu. They're in front of sequence corner. For those of you not familiar, it's very much like Bay 13 at the MCG. The shed down at King's Home, Gloucester. And I don't know what do they call it. Uh, they used to call it at Carisbrook. Yeah, the zoo. The zoo. It's very, very similar down there. Or the South Stand at the Sevens. Oh, ball spilled in contact there. Good skills there from Latava. Ball pulled back inside. Little reverse pass there, but it's a little bit. Uh, a little bit too clever there. Yeah, Jing Xu, they're just Jung Xu, they're just guilty of just filling the ball at the, at, at the you know at the, at, at the crucial opportunity. I don't know whether that's tiredness or you know lack of concentration, lack of application. But, you know, if they want to get back into this match, I mean there's four minutes to go and they are camped down here on their own line. They've got to get out of here and get out of here quickly. Oh, it's a good scrummage. Well, the referee has a judge that uh, it was illegal. And here goes to has he got the legs to go all the way? That is a fantastic chase back there from the overseas old boys. And they're now counter rucking hard, but Jiang Xu cavalry arrives. Numbers here. Need somebody to run straight, draw the man. Oh, great ball there. Jian Cheng is crucially forced out wide, making the conversion pretty tough. Well, almost on cue, Cookie. They uh, they got out of their own territory and managed to get down the other end, and it was that danger man, that playmaker, Su Suo Ni. He's been very good and instrumental, and he may or could be. This conversion goes over. The ace card on the pack of the Shang Shu outfit. It's a decent strike, but it's just off to the right of the posts. 
Jiang Shu really, really did a good job there. Once they got the ball to the outside, they didn't try any wild cutout passes, just ran straight, drew the man, which meant that the defence just drifted off. And Jian Cheng just smashed it straight up. So we've got a seven point ball game. I'm just looking at these two sides, Richard. I look at overseas old boys, they're sucking in the big ones here, mate. So this conditioning that we talked about, the conditioning fact of Young Shu Lions could come into play here in the last High stanza of the game. Kick, and that's well taken there by the overseas old boys. I don't think the old boys can afford to stop playing here. Toa Maxwell there. There's a little juggle of the ball. Aiden Lee. Big, solid carry there. For Tumbua. playing knock-on advantage here old oh boys still 90 seconds to go so all to play for here Jiang yeah. Shu almost getting their hands in the cookie jar there Toa Maxwell the big fella off he goes down the touchline and a good tackle but he's made a clear line break here and they've got the ball to the inside and Leilua scores in the corner taking it out to 24-12 with less than a minute to play that could be the hammer blow cookie yeah I think so I mean PC I thought he might have blown it there because I think he could have gone just straight ahead and scored maybe under the post and he ended up taking a right foot step and Nearly got caught by the uh, Zhang Shu player, but uh, good on him. He got to the line and 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 got the five-pointer. And yeah, as you say, that could be the W that overseas old boys are looking for. So taking his time to try and put it beyond doubt. In fact, in, in truth, he's probably trying to wind the clock down. A good strike, but no cigar. And Francesco Camisa calls time on the game. And Jiangsu Lions going down 24-12 to a pretty decent looking overseas old boys side. Latava was the difference there a couple of times. Just calmly picking up the bouncing ball in the 22 and uh, laying the offload to the man coming. Yeah, no question about it. Overseas old boys deserve to win that. And as you say, Latava, you know, calmly, and it was calm, was able to, and he had men backing him up, was able to put them in both times, two try assists, so good on him. Also, big shout out to, and I, got a, I am gonna call them brave, these brave men from Jiangsu Lions. I think they've had a great tournament. You know, they've played uh, a good brand of, of rugby, good brand of 10s rugby. They've never, never given up. They've fought for every inch and every every bit of turf. And just a couple of moments, key moments, you know, letting them down in the end. So, but they need to come off the field with their heads held high and, and be very proud of what they've achieved in this tournament. So the crowd building nicely here down at Sports Road. Good to see the ladies enjoying themselves there. And the young girls waving to the camera. Not looking quite so happy there, ladies. 
So we have the next semi-final here. We have the host Hong Kong the Texas Club taking on Taiku Place Scottish Exiles. This is the replay of the final game of last night that went down. We got so excited during the game, the scoreboard and everybody had it at 17 all at the end. But in actual fact, Jamie Hood had nailed two conversions in the first half, which meant that when Murray Breakin went over for the final score, it was 1917 Winter Club. And of course, these two teams met in the uh, grand final of the, uh, the Hong Kong Premiership as well, Richard. There he is, young Tom Wilson. Rubeni Kambu making some decent ground down there but gets run into touch. Football club with some scintillating young men in the team here. Thomas Gibbs, ah, oh, but the ball getting out of the grasp there. And I think that's Mikkel Christiansen. Kumbu there, a big run, and Jack Moses. Real contest in these wide channels. Tom Wilson, another big looping pass. Rory Campbell and Wilson. Sees the door close on him as he goes up the blind side there. Brings the ball back to the open side. McCurdy. Some jiggery pokery there. Jack Moses having a crack down the blind side there. And the referee brings it back. Looks like there's potentially a couple of options on this penalty. The referee certainly got plenty to say here. No man tackle without the ball there. It's the call. Wilson backing the line out. Tap off the top and Gibby oh. gets his hands on that ball. Great hands, Gibby. Keeps his shoulders rolling. Some good work there. Oh. Always good to put the ball on the toe for your loose head prop to chase. <laughs> yeah, Ollie Roberts. I don't know, maybe you heard the advantage, but he's not a guy that would normally kick like that. He'd normally take it straight up the middle. Full of grunt, that man. Ball on the toe there, chasing through. Football try to commit themselves to the floor, but Exiles have come away with it, and that's a really good steal on the ground there. An opportunity here. Ollie Roberts takes it into contact. And James Phillips, who is actually in the running to potentially be the next James Bond. That big square jaw of his. <laughs> Just what we want from a James Bond. So safe. That, that was a good turnover there. Normally Ollie Roberts is pretty safe when he's taking it into contact. So to turn him over, that's uh, that's well done by the Scottish Exiles side. Good ball off the top there from Campbell.
James Phillips again. Football club all on their feet here. Harry King. Always good to see the front rower with some footwork there. Good work. Yeah, I mean, uh, you say he's a front row, but it, you know, he, he wouldn't shame any uh, league centre, league back line. He's got the bill for it and the uh, and the pace. Good power and pace from a front rower. Very fit looking man. And Tom Lady, six points. Wilson nails the extras, 7-0 to the Exiles. A little inside-outside jink from Harry King there. High-hanging kick. Oh. And Ollie Mathis, this exciting young player, Former player at Hamilton Boys High. He had an outstanding showing in the final of the World Schools Festival against Gray College in 2022. Good to see Logan Asplin bringing these young men into Hong Kong rugby. Yeah, it's great. He's, you know, given us a chance to come up out of uh, Hamilton, out of New Zealand, come up and ply their wares at an international tournament like this, and and even sit and look and say, hey, look, you know, yeah, Hong Kong might be the place for me over the next couple of years. So it's great work by so Logan. So the Exiles putting all the pressure on. Jack Moses gets over the top of it. Ollie Clark copped a little bit high there. Yeah, referee's arms out. Wilson running across the field, but gets it to Kambu. And a big, long advantage played there by the referee. Brings it all the way back for the high shot. But he's insisting that uh, they wait to be shown the mark. And Wilson coming over for this ball. Looks like he's going to use the line out again. And here we have the cavalry for football club. The wheels of Denmark and Brekin. And Juan Esono. James Phillips comes up with that ball. Does well to get it to ground there. Lewis Berg. Another strong run. Jack Morris in those wide channels. Juan Asano. Another solid carry by Berg. Scottish staying in possession. But football club forcing them backwards here. They need to get themselves back on the front foot here. And Wilson nudges it over the top. Denmark is shepherding this back. But he's under a huge amount of pressure. Again, just there, Denmark. You know, it's not a ball that you want to let bounce. You really want to try, and I know it was over his shoulder, over his head, but you want to take that sort of ball, if you can, on the full, and then try and, you know, move off either feet, let it bounce, just creates all sorts of problems. 
and this gives Scottish a big advantage here going into half time. So scrum feed for the Exiles. This game has been played exclusively in the football club half of the field. We've had little or no territory. So young Joe Denmark defending at half back. Lewis Berg just drops his shoulder. Gets forced back over the line though. And Wilson. Great option. Great option. Out to Wilson. Campbell. Great finish. You know, the captain, Tom Wilson, he, he's a smart rugby player. I mean, he had men out left, but had a look, heads up, saw his man out on the far side on the right, threw a double cut, cut double miss ball, and just got it right on the button, right on the money. Clever skill from him, and he's played. Very, he's had a very good tournament, I've got to say, so far. Tom Wilson, the captain for the Exiles. So half time, 12-0 to the Exiles. They've been pretty much in command, looking to reverse that 19-17 win. But even last night, football club came from behind. Yeah, well, this is you know this is knockout cookie so you know 12 nil you know you look at it and you say well that's a big advantage double score to required to get back in the match but it only takes one kick quick try seven pointer and then uh you know you, the pressure comes back on both sides and mistakes happen and stuff's created so yeah uh, you know we've got 10 minutes to play here it's still anyone's match some nice cool beverages being consumed in the stands as we see coach Alex Allen issuing the instructions to his charges there. Tom Wilson also front and centre in there calling the shots. Some of the crowd there are oh, Mel Potheater. And on the football club side, good to see Jamie Hood in there. Shame he's not fit and able to play in this match. But chatting, having a lot to say. Super experienced Centurion, Hong Kong Football Club Centurion and absolute legend of Hong Kong Sevens rugby. Be interesting was, to see uh, what his messages would be at half time. Yeah, Jamie Hood was very much the difference last night. So, Football Club will now be kicking off, heading towards the much fabled Sportsman's, Sportsman's Bar end of the ground. The balcony there is or the patio is overflowing now oh some good work there from Kumbu oh Harry King caught there and a Thori Mantel Referee playing advantage. Oh. Some decent speed down that far touchline from Momo. Advantage over. But Football Club come up with a turnover. Just bobbled forward. Yeah, club dodged the bullet there. High tackle down the other end. Exiles all the advantage, or good continuity, good ball in hand. Just the last pass and obviously advantage over, which has given Football Club the opportunity to relieve out of their own 22. So Joe Denmark with the feed. Digging it out. On a loose ball over the top, but 
Football Club. It's a good step on the inside, but well covered by the Exiles. Murray Breakin. Some really good defence here from the Exiles, putting Football Club under a lot of pressure, forcing the turnover there. Someone's hurt on oh, Harrison King there, just kept those legs pumping. And Momo, oh, he's got to try and stretch out there, but he's pulled down short. Oh, and a really good turnover there by Bryn Davies. They've got fully 100 metres to go. Joe Denmark spots the opportunity. Jamie Ross, unfortunately, hands let him down again, just overran the ball. Soft hands required in that circumstance. Wasn't able to execute. See the frustration on his face. So they knew they had a breakout opportunity there. So Jack Moses, a little bit of claret there. Being replaced by young Merv Lowe. So Wilson with the feed. Lewis Berg has made some really strong carries. But good work over the ball there from club. Solid carry there from Liam Anderson. Oh. Putting the receiver under a lot of pressure there. Still six minutes to go in this game, so still an opportunity for club. They've got to get out of their half. Someone's got to create something special. Know whether that's a kick and chase or step in the middle, but they need something and they need it quickly. As you say, around six minutes to go, Wilson making an absolute pest of himself there. Ollie Mathis gets the ball to Asono. Outsteps himself, though. And Joe Denmark recovers a really important ball for the football club there. And Ollie Mathis drops it on the toe. But the ball beats him and everybody to the touchline. Five minutes to go, and you kind of feel this is championship minutes. Right now, right here, right now. Cookie, no question about it. And uh, there's got to be some kind of, let's get up, let's get some disruption going. Let's try and disrupt the Exiles ball. We need, football club need the ball back here. Fresh football legs club. on. Football club now have... The abrasive back row forward, Gabe, Gabe Carroll on the field, but Merv Lowe. That is a sensible kick, but Denmark is back there. Carries it hard into the contact. Lowe following up on his own kick there. Break in, gets the offload to Gibby. Oh, and they've slipped away. Ollie Mathis and the chicken wing. Gibby sliding his way to the line. Some real committed play, and Breakin is on that ball. Got to go right. And there was only one thing he was ever going to oh. do. And there's two men overlap there, and, Richard. Uh, hey, they're going to be kicking themselves there. Big opportunity the missed. 
gives it as held up. Is smiling, but I think Football Club are expecting to get another crack at that. And somehow it's ended up as a scrum feed. So no, no goal line dropout in tens. I'm not sure what's going on there. As I say, somehow it's ended up as a scrum feed. Denmark with the feed. The ball bobbles away. Scottish are all over it and they've come up with it. Good scramble by Scottish. That's a high tackle. Rubeni Kambu taken high there as he was bustling out over the 22. And that could be the chance that's gone begging for football club. They definitely needed to score there, no question about it, to have any show, I think, in this match with only two or less than two minutes to go. It was a scruffy ball at the base and uh, Joe Denmark, not usually a nine. That's a tough one to deal with. Mm. Harry Barron with that throw. Momo there. So 90 seconds to go. Club need to get their hands on this ball if they are going to progress to the plate final here. Mervlo digs it out. Momo. The club have come up with that ball. There is a chink of light as football club looking to attack, but Hong Kong Scottish exiles just equal to the task there again, turning their defence into attack, and that could be the ball game, Cookie. Minutes ago, and Wilson just. Using all those grey hairs that he shaved off this morning. The touch judge there on that far side, young Rory Crombie. It's Harry Barron steps up to throw the ball into this line out. Only 20 seconds to go on the clock now. Good ball off the top. Low. Drops it into the safe hands of Dean Squire. Rory Campbell, who's been an important part of this game, steps in and gets held up. That's them all. What does the referee say? He says full and time. That is the ball game. Taiku play Scottish Exiles. Get their revenge for the game last night, Cookie. Yep, and uh, sadly for me as a club man, it's the one that counts. But, uh, you know, I've got to say, football club, you know, hold their heads up high. Guys, you know, I think, you know, two wins out of three yesterday, I think that was, you know, a high bar to set. And that put them in the game this morning against tradition YCAC, which was, you know, a pretty big wake-up call. But they've come back out of that. I mean, you know, 12 0, it's not a huge score. But <laughs> congratulations to, you know, Exiles. You know, they get through. Well done. And I think it's safe to say that Football Club really missed the skills and experience of Jamie Hood. Yeah. He was absolutely running the cutter last night. And, uh, yeah, they really missed him there. Yeah, and no, I absolutely agree with that. I've got to take my hat off to, you know, these guys, Ollie Roberts, you know, um, a lot of these these young men, you know, Gibbsy, Brinwell, you know, Denmark, Gabe Carroll, fronting up, Jamie Ross, these club boys. And I've got to also say, Cookie, you know, the two lads from Hamilton 
from Hamilton Boys Hawaii. They certainly stood up and didn't look out of place in this in this kind of fixture and, and at this level. Yeah, absolutely. As I said, I was lucky enough to be down at the World Schools Festival last year when I saw Ollie Mathis. I'm not sure he was awarded man of the match, but he had a phenomenal game taking on the might of Grey College, who they beat quite easily. So he's clearly got a future in the game. So we are now going to be moving into a phase of mini rugby. So we'll be signing off for about half an hour, but don't go away. Cookie, uh, been a pleasure, mate. That's me to sign off, buddy. And uh, it's been a pleasure sharing the tens again with you this year, mate. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully we can share a cold beer later on, mate. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Looking forward to it.
Hello, hello, is anyone there? Hello, this is... Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. This is Gordon Bray. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Testing one, two, three.
provincial derby. It is. Um, uh, don't um, trust my knowledge of the tournament too much, Gordon, because I'm old and I forget things very quickly. But yeah, this, this is great. There's a couple of absolute standouts in this tradition team, actually. Um, I think particularly, if I remember rightly, I'll go through the team here. Oh, really, but um, the guy to me that I think everyone watching. Well, good, I can't find his name, but I'll find it in a minute. Yeah, well, they're certain, uh, certainly laden with outstanding players and a lot of youngsters uh, who've yeah, been that, given that, the opportunity to, to gain the experience. That's you're bang on. Do you know, this tournament, I mean, the players that have debuted here, if you were to actually hear about it, I think the most notable one that's recent because of his high, his high profile got in the Rob Warrior Cup, um, the tight head prop for France. Um, He's, he's 145 kilos, he's yeah. Played, he played here as a 17-year-old. He was over Is that here. Right? He was yeah. playing for Cosway Bay. Yeah. Um, and, the, and, and the 15s, and, and Robbie McRobbie in the Hong Kong Rugby Union had to phone his mother to get permission to play in the first division because he was only 17. And she said, as long as he doesn't hurt anybody. He came here, he was so good, the French team that were visiting said they wanted to take him. And that's how he ended up there, as the world's highest paid tight head. So the ball's been taken here by tradition YCAC representing Japan the Yokohama Country and Athletic Club this is a call we made yesterday by the way these strips are very similar yeah it's certainly very uh, colorful the tradition traditionally colorful and we're 15 meters from the halfway line at the moment but tradition who are the defending champions defeating samurai last year samurai now have changed to Shogun Rugby, so you could say it's a rematch of last year's final, and we're still 10 metres from halfway, but it's all about patience here. It's all about patience and physicality when it gets to this top grade in the Cup. There's all about pace and everything, but they, they win the contacts first. Find a bit of space, and you've got big men out wide who can just do that by breaking a tackle. And this guy's been a superstar all the way through the tournament. This is Pieta, he's also been yes. outstanding. Good strong support there for the ball carrier but no mistake so far so this is really what the game's all about probe for the openings have that space awareness and they're going up the middle at the moment and they've made about 30 meters so slow and steady wins the race good hands here from Pieta again and this is Ufa He's lost about five or six metres with some pretty vigorous defence. But he's kept the ball, is the one thing I think. Oh, great hands. It's Toby Taylor, far side. They're about 35 metres out from the goal line, and they've had the ball now for nearly two minutes. I was going to say probably about 20 phases already. Good support from Church. Young man from St Kittigan, so in New Zealand. Famous rugby school. All about ball retention and now a little bit of room out wide. Number seven here is Matic in support. And that's Ofa again. And that's the goal line ahead. They're very close. Can he get it down? Good counter rucking there from Shogun Rugby. And that's a turnover. It was good because you nearly went, oh, fuck, can he get it down? And I was, I was worried about what you were saying. <laughs> um, but, yes, <laughs> great effort, actually. But that's a, that's a turnover, honestly, after three minutes. That's an amazing passage yeah. of play there. And they come away without any points on the scoreboard, so they'll be looking for a big scrum here. The referees haven't really been soft at all and people turning scrums around unless they drive really hard and straight. So you can basically assume in two teams like this that the putters in will keep it. But we shall see. Surakuru packing Great in the second Great pressure row. after what I said. That's Great a beautiful pressure. scrum. Yep. Well, that's forward power there from tradition. And... That was what's called the dominant scrum. They've got the turnaround. Yep. 
And we have an outstanding referee here. John Bruce, we have Carl Dixon, who refereed the opening Six Nations match in Marseille between Ireland and France this year. Uh, one of the top English referees. He, he turned up to volunteer in a part, and they had him running the line yesterday, which I thought was quite decent at a football club. But yeah, it's marvellous that you got a top grade, top grade referee here well, uh, he, at a tournament like this. He played here 20 years ago in the tens for one of the local clubs. There's a bit of space here, and there's the gap, finally it comes for Tomer Anderson, who plays for Northland in the NPC, and that really was about uh, waiting for the right moment, more room on the field with the scrum. And good feet from the finisher. Yeah, that little bit of extra speed and footwork out wide, creating the hesitation. Now Henry Saker will be attempting the conversion. So YCAC with an excellent start. Well, that's basically a try after five minutes of possession. I mean, basically, that, that's where we've been at. So it's, it's the turn now of Shogun to try and get the ball and see what they can do with it. Getting the ball out wide into space in a one-on-one -on -one situation, just backs on backs. Less cluttered field in those open spaces. And this man looks as though he'll be taking no further part in the game. So that really is a, a blow for tradition. Nasty shoulder injury by the look of it. Yeah, so Carl Dixon was a scrum half and uh, played 169 games for Quinns. Yeah. He's only retired about six or seven years ago. Yeah, yeah, and it's actually, I mean, the thing about a scrum half is that, believe it or not, more than other referees, they understand the scrum better. Yeah, And absolutely. they also understand the game. No, he's in a good look. And here's the mass substitutions. I think this is part and parcel of how they've ruled the tournament list, that if you're bringing your forwards on, you have to do it on mass. Yes, you can do it on only one period in each half, and yeah. there's no limit to how many you bring on. You can bring yeah. on yeah. one or you can bring on six. If there is an injury, you can obviously substitute, and you can also change at half-time. But six players coming on there for Shogun Rugby. Now, can they finally get their hands on the ball? Oh. Uh, and the answer to that is no, but they've got <laughs> the scrum. They have got the scrum, so let's see where we go. So, yeah, finally after... Nearly... What's seven minutes seven and a half minutes of the first half they finally get the ball and then they've got it for a few seconds and they get it in a scrum here and we know what happened with the last scrum they had i think this will be in and out very quickly shogun were founded in 1996 originally the samurai an invitation team and they operate on a, a non-profit basis a mix of amateurs and pros Great work here, but again the defence is up to it. it. Looks as though there's an offside ruling there from the referee. From that scrum, they obviously came up too quickly. No, but Samurai that are now um, Shogun, they've been great supporters of this tournament over the years. Come nearly every year. Come loaded for bear and sometimes win and sometimes get disappointed. But they always bring a good team. And there's Sofi gaining some good ground. So coming up to the eight-minute mark. And finally, Shogun get their hands on the ball. Can they respond now and, and hold it for these last two minutes and address that scoreboard? They're down by five points to nil. But they're in, they're in the other half, finally. And there's another no, handling error. On, knocked it on into contact. So two handling errors in this first half. Very uncharacteristic of the Shogun side. But it says something about the physicality, doesn't it, of tradition YCAC's defence. Both of these teams. Um, physicality first, silky skill second, actually. And it's how you win top grade tens. You don't win it playing seven or eights. 
Kyle Preston. He scored the opening try in the quarterfinal against H Hong Kong Football Club. Likes to run. And we're just short of the halfway line here. It's Tamatene. The turnover's good. There's a brilliant low tackle there by Emil Vaonga. And just an unfortunate accidental offside leading to the penalty there. Just ran into his own man. Quick clearance there by Suakuru. Who has been outstanding throughout this tournament, actually. Referee says the ball was knocked back. Shogun have regained. But they've been pretty well suffocated so far. They're looking to come wide here on his giving them the chase. Sweeper and back here for made that easy for YCAC. Toby Taylor just short of the halfway line. Colosse showing good leg drive. Through the legs. Through the legs to the touchline. Yes. Ala Noah Nandruku. Back in 1990. Yeah. To Tomasi Thama. You're just showing you've not where lost your memory. Like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, where was Tomasi? <laughs> That's the half-time score. It was a but the certainly legends, a, the legends are in town, though, Gordon, because we were, I was at the Dotty dinner last night with a charity dinner, and I've got a picture of my wife with um, Serebi and Michael Liner in the oh, taxi wow. ride. You know, it's, yeah. it's not bad that you can socialise with the lads like that. Well, you know. an Australian rugby immortal and uh, the king of sevens, yes. probably the greatest sevens player of all. Do you think? Why Sali Sarevi? It's, it's very hard to judge different yeah. generations, but yeah. he dominated the period he played it. Uh, I think it's a real problem. I don't think DuPont's at the, at the Hong Kong Sevens with the French team because he's spectacular in yeah. Sevens. I mean, absolutely so. But look, this is. Um, I love the tens because it, it just brings the big players, the big players, the guys that can get their hand through a tackle, they can make the space for, and we've still got the lightning quick players as well. But. It's, it's that balance, isn't it, between the, the sevens and the tens? The and co conversations we have had in the past when we used to host Weedy and McGeek and over, I think maybe seven or eight years ago when tens was really beginning to flourish and we thought it would grow more. Obviously, it's harder to play a big tens tournament. Yeah. It takes more time. Because he, he was very much of the opinion that it should be the development game for your 15-a-side game. Yeah. Because it's just, it brings in the whole skill set. But obviously, as I say, playing a big tens tournament just takes a long time and a lot of pitches, you know. Well, it's it's interesting. Uh, a lot of the women's teams are playing tens in Australia. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're now very much involved with the clubs at country and city level. I, I think it's a bit that, once again, when your numbers initially are a bit shorter, you can get teams out playing tens, you can have the depth. But I think the women's, the women's rugby here is phenomenal. The skill set, you can see it every evening from 20 years ago when, frankly, we had a few Westerners mm -hmm trundling about very slowly the yeah. skill set frankly at times is better than the men's because they're better they, they play more to a structure it's really great to see and yeah. they listen to the coaches well someday i don't <laughs> know, i don't know if china fights i want to listen to their coach because he gives them an awful hard time <laughs> tradition ycac with a nicely floated kick and rhodes featherstone was there under the high ball Let's see if Shogun can eliminate those little errors they made when they had the ball because their opponents, tradition YCAC, have pretty well been mistake-free so far, certainly with the ball in hand. And here's a, a chance up towards halfway. Strong running there by Northcote Hill. He looked wide and decided he didn't fancy the big fella one in one. He could have given it here. Again, another turnover. Did the right thing and then just forced the pass on when he didn't need to. And credit to the defence as well, oh. just forcing the error. Quick switch of play. Defence is equal. Akiri. The county's winger during the 18 jumper. 
Perdic here. Yeah, brilliant. Very happy to get the outside in this game, Gordon, I'll tell you. Back for an offside penalty again, I think, though. Well, when you've got um, such skillful defenders, too, with pace and power, you know, it's very hard to find any space at all. And that's where the, the, the speed side comes into it, and the footwork, as we saw with the opening try. And it came from the, from the set piece as well, with less defenders out in the open. So there's a um, first mistake then. Shug Shogun are back, have come into this in the last two or three minutes though. Um, they're in the game and it's now a case of who can execute, I think. Obviously it's a case of who can execute, but they, 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 they seem to have got themselves and like don't a level. Make mistakes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Carl Dixon really has allowed this game to flow nicely. As you'd expect from a, a man of his calibre. Referee. That's a far better scrum from Shogun. That's the 22 metre line ahead. And they have to retire 10 metres, which they did. And they've lost the ball again. Again, pushing the pass. He just got it ripped off of me. Just, it's all very well to go quickly, but you've mm. got to have your runners with you. Brown's important. The referee looks like he might be signalling that he played him in the air there, but I thought it, he timed it well, the tackle. Cameron Church did very well. Walter Fafita, too quick to scurry yeah, back yeah. in defence. Stadium announcers of the opinion it was, he, he caught him in the air actually going through there. Always very hard to be a defender in that situation because mm -hmm. he's that pace coming down on you. And if you actually let him land, he's probably beaten you as he hits the ground. Well, this is certainly it's it's cutthroat. We've got six and a half minutes remaining, and a converted try would put Shogun in the lead. Tradition have defended well so far though. Oh, almost intercepted. And the, the other, the other big aim is to stay on your feet, and again, the referee spotted uh, a yellow card here. Yeah, it's a penalty. A yellow card. Tip tackle. That's, yeah, that's. Good. Yeah, yeah the yellow card to number six from Shogun. Sofa Maka from North Harbour. He's in the uh, Auckland Blues wider squad, the S Samoan winger, Samoan heritage. This power play now, though, from tradition, might be absolutely critical at this stage in the game. Saker trying to step his way through. Here's big Pieta. Some of the experienced players likely to come in. Now, there's a big, nice big step off the right foot there by Sam Clark. And that's careless play there by Tradition YCAC. And um, roll, ro rolling subs come on in force. <laughs> yeah, it's like the little big horn, I'm telling you, <laughs> over the hill. Uh, but yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a great turnover penalty to Shogun. Just take the pressure, pro kick for touch here, kill 30 seconds with the line out, get their player back on. You know, and then they've got five minutes to get, to get that score. Yeah, just that very careless pass out wide by uh, YCAC. Ball actually went over the touchline. And that's given the opportunity for Shogun now to take advantage. Will earn rest. The, the temperature's cooled a little bit, though. There's a nice breeze providing, and this is the biggest crowd we've seen so far. Yeah, it's always, you always want a bit more. But being a public holiday today has helped. It's unusual to have the public holiday in the tents, and the stand could fill up later on. It's, uh, but I mean, where it's actually noticed, you'll notice the, the sportsman's bar, end of the bar, is absolutely crowded. So, Shogun. To take play um, over the halfway line, as suggested by John Bruce, and now a chance to attack. 
Tradition, the sponsors of the tournament, the Tradition YCAC, Tradition is Asia's leading inter-dealer brokerage firm. And Adrian Bell, the CEO Asia Pacific of the group, is the water boy. <laughs> well, that's a big carry. It is not. Now, who's got the legs? Man in front here is Preston. And Must have been running near time the players back on from that yellow card. But Shogun down the right end of the field. In front of sequence corner, here we go. Just over three minutes remaining. One try the difference. And very important line out here for YCAC. Uh, Shogun got up for that. Oh, that man was on the ground. Carl Dixon are judging that Shogun had offended there. It was touch and go. There was bodies in the ground, but... He was bouncing around like a pinball, yeah. wasn't it? Get out of jail for tradition, I think. Well, that's a re timely relieving penalty for tradition. The Yokohama Country and Athletic Club is Japan's oldest sports club, formed back in 1866. The rugby club is one of the ten oldest uh, active rugby clubs in the world. But they're inside their 22 at the moment, and some open space. They're just going to trust their defence here. It's a good bounce. And the ball shadowed over the touchline. So that's a, a gain of nearly 50 metres. Using the, that swirling breeze. A bit hard to tell which way it's going at the moment. One and a half minutes to go. They're playing for a place in the cup final. In the tradition, Hong Kong Football Club 10s. The 36th edition. The penalty goes for YCAC. I thought that would have been a short arm penalty. It doesn't make much difference. You just tap it anyway. Somehow Shogun have got to get the ball back. They've got to get a turnover. Big run by Tungiri. Lucky Takiri. Cameron Church, little slight overlap, it closed. Sam Clark did well to set up, five metres from the goal line. Here's the penalty. Isolated. Last penalty, Shogun. Last throw of the dice here for Shogun. And he's walked on ten metres as well. Are we going to see a dramatic finish here from Shogun Rugby? I'm very honest, actually, Shogun haven't looked like I'm making a line break all game. Uh, my mind is, and both teams have struggled, so... But there's their chance, when the ball off the line out, 60 metres to go. Well, when these two sides met in the final last year, it was 7-0 in favour of uh, YCAC, only one try. And the interesting thing about Shogun is they've conceded only one try in this whole tournament. Sorry, finals, knockout rugby, it just gets tight and, and, and all pressure comes to bear. Time's up on the clock. And it's a poor line out throw. It's been taken away by Cameron oh Church, the 22 year old, and here's a chance. Well, the referee's seen a high tackle. That was a high tackle there. Yeah. Well, what a mistake. Dear, oh dear, the game was in the vault. There for YCAC, there's an overlap and they've thrown it away, but there's still a penalty. Still penalty advantage. advantage yeah. And they're keeping the ball alive. And the referee was smiling, he's really enjoying this. And the advantage penalty is still there. Last ditch opportunity here for Shogun. He had to call it. Cut. 
so they're a man down. Here we go. Yellow it, card. It's where your coaching comes into it. You've got an extra man, last play of the game. Uh, do they? I think they'll tap. I don't think they'll risk the line out. Yeah, they're going to tap. Ten men on nine. They've got to score a try. And if they can get it close to the post, even better. Can tradition hold on? There's the gap. And they're going to have to right. kick. They're going to have to kick the conversion from the touchline to move into the final. I'm just looking at I'm looking at the showgun bench, and there's some very happy and relieved faces there. But I wouldn't want to be the kicker. Well, it's going to be five metres, four metres in from the touchline, and it's a drop kick. So this is the the ultimate pressure kick. And we go to sudden death extra time. Yeah, yeah Gordon. He's going to make it. Okay. My money's on it. This is not a commentator's curse from you, is it, John? It looks good. He's done it. He's made it. You well, call well, it. And uh, look at the joy in the faces there. They've beaten the holders. Uh, and the bench in front of us, the tradition. Uh, I've been brilliant this tournament. Absolutely gutted. Let's be honest. They bought that game until the last two minutes. Well, they had a flawless first half, but the errors really cost them dearly in the second half. That's a heartbreaker there for Tradition YCAC from Japan, the Yokohama Country and Athletic Club, because Shogun Rugby have done it in the death, in injury time, getting a late penalty, and what a drop kick it was. You could see that. That's, that's pressure, and it was always going over. You know, you, he must have been happy when he struck that. You know? Oh, boy. Um, so, I mean, it's always sad to see a team go out that's played so well, but great tournament again from tradition. Absolutely great tournament. And um, I know the team behind Shogun, they'll be so happy to make the final. Absolutely. Yes, well, tradition's had a, a marvellous tournament, and... Only a couple of points in it at the end. It was 7-0 in the final last year and 7-5 to Shogun Rugby. And so they advanced to the final in 2024. And they'll be playing the winner of Pig Athletics Barbar Barbarians and Ashbury Tropics. Yeah, and I, would, I think I would say, Gordon, that the surprise package of the tournament have been the Pig Athletic Club Babas. Yeah, they, they've, they're they've physical, big, but they've, they've got some wheels as well. Um, they've obviously got a Scotsman as well, Lou, Luke van der Smit. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, yeah, you know, that well-known Scottish name, you've heard one or two yeah, of that. That, we, that's right. that, that we, the, we, we lent to South Africa for a few generations. Yes. Well, there's a, there's a few South Africans in the Scottish starting 15. Ex-South Africans, please. Ex-South Africans, yeah. As, as we line up for the second semi-final in the Cup, just a, a shout-out for that conversion, actually, to the only man I'd ever have seen it make it before, would have been Dave Willow-Williams, the fattest 10 ever to play in Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's up to Pig Athletic, Barbaz. They were founded in 2016 in these dark jumpers, the former Chistester Rugby Football Club. And Jonathan Brown and Joseph Shopland were the two founders back in 2016. And they have an Australian influence. Their aim is to make Australian rugby great again. James yeah. McGregor, Gordon, has been sensational throughout this tournament. Six tries, I think. Well, he's been my player of the tournament yeah, so far. Very, very. He has been absolutely outstanding. And he's a member of the Australian Seven squad. He's not playing in the Sevens in Hong Kong this weekend. But tell you what, I'm sure... John Menenti, the coach, will be having a good look at him. I'm sure he's been here to watch him. But it's Pig Athletic, just near their 22. And that's Manny Hira. Used to be, Gordon, you would get somebody, a couple of players from this tournament, ended up on the bench at the Sevens. Back when they, when they used to have emergency in New Zealand, would occasionally call up somebody from one of the teams. Well, I know the feeling I came off the bench myself in 1990 and finished up in hospital. <laughs> That's a long story. So now, throw in here from Tanimo. And nicely taken away there by... 
Good jump yeah. by Angus Fletcher, it was. Big athletic Barbaz. Quite a difficult one to call this, Gordon, actually, and form going into it. And there's some driving defence from the Ashbury Tropics. Well, they're coached by Ben Gollings and Namani Nandolo. And yeah, Namani yeah. will be uh, taking the field at some stage. I asked him if he was fit after his quarter final. He said, I'm not fit, um, but I still got through my six or seven minutes. Yeah, you, they, they, they obviously don't, you don't play him as the big quick winger. You play him, get into 22 and give him the ball. And some brilliant low tackling there. A bit too much into out there. He actually got himself nearly got himself turned over, but nice rocking. Now here's a, a speed man. I think they're going to catch him though. Looking for support desperately, and he's got it. Oh, the number seven, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant from Asbury Tropics, scored by number seven, Lilea Fangu Fangu. Which, by the way, will be his fourth try at, or maybe I'm not sure, I think of the tournament. But actually, the, the, the composure shown by the player that made the break, just to slow up and keep the ball alive. Yes, yeah, so it's the Ashbury Tropics in the, the dark shirts and Pig Athletic Barbaz. So great work there by Fungu Fungu. Ashbury Tropics to kick off. Son. Pig Athletic Club Babas. I don't think they've been behind many times in this tournament, so let's see how they react to this. That's a great hanging kickoff. And brilliantly well taken. taken. Ball was knocked back. Looping pass there to Balai Soma Somo. A better build up here from Big Athletic Barbars. And here's the danger man. He's got Stice, pace. Half back. Oh. That's try number seven for him. Yeah, he's absolutely brilliant. James McGregor, the Australian seven squad member. Electric pace and step. Yeah, just. He's a great defender as well. Yeah, <laughs> great, very, but, but he is just so lightning quick. Um, yeah, that did just coming off the back of the rock there, just so quick. And that's he's putting his hand up for player of the tournament at the moment, definitely. And once again, you know, like, like Van der Smith, he sounds Scottish as well, McGregor, actually. <laughs> so 7 5 in favour of Pac Barbaz. And this is all about the awareness of space. And who's in front of you? He spotted a couple of slightly slower men. Dale <laughs> Somosomo <laughs> still with the ball. He actually liked shoving him off that he ran into him again to have a second goal. He's a very big unit. Yes. Ooh. Oh, that's a penalty. And that it almost could be a card. That'll be a yellow card. Because I don't think there was an arm in it. No. I don't think there was an arm in it, no. It was a, it was, that was... As to a, tell the truth, one of the more stupid offences I've seen. It was a brain fade, that yeah, one, yeah. wasn't it? Just over-anxious. And uh, I don't think he needs anyone He's to remind him He's not making any eye contact with anyone, so... Yeah. Just let me. So, Fangu Fangu, from uh, hero to villain. And another opportunity now for... Pak Barbats. That's beaten everyone. 
been a lot of overthrown right line outs in this tournament. They're obviously, it's good to attack off the back of the line, but you need to get your line out right. There's a penalty. To the Pig Athletic Club Babas. Sam Adams, our referee for this second cup semi final. I think they've called the scrum here. Called the scrum. It's been a fairly standard tactic of the good teams um, and a penalty in the opposition 22. Winner of this match to meet Shogun Rugby in the final. Just out from the 22. Now the penalty's gone the other way there. James McGregor. He thought it was his. Yeah, he can't get everything right. Big Nandolo ready for his stint at the end of the first half. He's waved off a lad who's about the third the size of him to take his place. <laughs> Probably half the age as well, to be quite honest. Well, he's certainly a very popular man, and his experience has shone through. There he is at the front of the line-out. Just a, a massive human being, but a very skillful one. The pace is certainly dimmed. He did retire last year, and he played his last test for Fiji back against the All Blacks in 2020. So now it's that's a, Pac that's a defense. really good steal. Could have argued that his hands were on the ground, but quick and got the ball. No sweeper here. Chases on. It's a good one here from Hickey. And Hickey scores. Another one of the Australian Sevens players, Connor Hickey. And just lightning pace. Lightning pace. Great reactions to actually touch it down. And that's a second try to Pig Athletic Club Babas. Yeah, that was really, I mean, seven skills coming into play there. I think they... they Realising there was no sweeper. They've been found out twice by having no sweeper in behind, mm -hmm. actually. Well, that's a telling strike as we close on half-time. And let's see how our star player goes with the conversion. Conversion He's, is good. He can do no wrong. So that'll be Pig Athletic Club Babas 14, Ashbury Tropics 7. As we come to the end of the towards the end of the first half. Terrific chase there by Connor Hickey. There are four members of the Australian Sevens team in the Pig Athletic Babas. So it looks as though we'll have one last opportunity here for Ashbury Tropics, who were launched in 2015 by eight mates to play sevens in summer in the off-season in the UK. They're based in London, an international club. They've had cap players from all over the world. And they're also involved in the Sevens Academy, making coaching accessible for on a global basis for communities. So they, they play in the Dubai Sevens, the Safari Sevens, much travelled team, Ashbury Tropics. And there's half time. Oh, there's a bit of a crackdown really here. Some of the reserves got involved. That that needs that's, to stop right now. That's that was... very untidy. So that was a little unfortunate, that ending to the first half, but Peak Athletic Club Barbars enjoy a half-time advantage of 14 to 7. I think, God, we were quite lucky that was at the half-time bell because there were a few arms and elbows swinging in there that, yeah. uh, that could, they could have made more of. Well done by the, the referee and everyone. Let's just quieten it down, play on. Needs to have a word with both captains, I think. 
Oh, someone dived in over the top. That was unnecessary. And then all hell broke loose. Players pulling others away. So some of the reserves found themselves in the middle of that fracas. But uh, all has settled down. I did like down. when Big Nadami and Nandolo walked up and just went like this when they patted the guy yeah. in the back and he just yes. walked away. <laughs> the Red Sea parted yeah. when the Mali... It was deeds, not words, from the big man. Yeah, yes, exactly. So Talking about the Red Sea parting, we've had two players called Moses playing this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Well, not, not this weekend, this week. Well, 14-7, half-time, 10 minutes to go. Um, I think this game could still go either way. It's who, who can keep a hold of the ball. The two captains have just uh, shake hands and had a little bit of a hug, which is a nice touch. And a couple of nice peacemaking gestures there by a couple yeah. of the senior players just talking to each other just as they took the pitch again there on either side. A lot of players also from the New Zealand NPC. Angus Fletcher plays for Tasman. And that man, Angus Fletcher. And the one in question, ex Sydenham Rugby Club in Christchurch, known as the Bus Drivers. Club that's both. Is a penalty that's ha is only given just arbitrarily once every five games to in front of the kicker. But I would recommend if you look at every other kickoff this tournament, there's been a few in front. But well, maybe he's won them. Maybe he's won them. It's a good reminder. I think the the last time we saw it with the, the Chinese women, the five stars were a little anxious, over anxious to kick off, and they got pulled back. So it's just gifting possession back to the opposition, and not the way you wanted to start the second half. As far as Ashbury Tropics are concerned. Here's McGregor to put in. CB fancies a snipe. Sam Adams saying that scrum was wheeled and taken down. Starting exactly the way that, Ash, that big athletic but club Babas would like this half to start. Turn the ball over, keep the ball, get a penalty. And Connor Hickey with a with plenty of distance on that kick. So we're in a nice attacking position here for the men in green. They merged with the Singapore Barbars back in 2016. And they're all about old fashioned values, fun, being competitive but also uh, respect and I think we saw that after that incident they're just on the wrong side of the referee at the moment Ashbury Tropics and um, just penalties basically walking them up the park this goes in the corner again they'll be pinned down again Connor Hickey making sure of his touch Scored the second try with a very clever chip and recover. And there he is. Amani Nandola, you're not going to get past him. There's a rare mistake by McGregor. More likely to get past him than through him, Gordon. <laughs> That's, right. a, that's a turnover, that's a scrum to Ashbury. They'll be need that relief. Well, they've got and here come the army. Yeah, there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Five players, I think. Six players. No, seven players. Eight players coming off the field. There you go. That's, that's no seven. That's the biggest I've seen. Now McGregor's playing out wide here. They must have a different guy playing half-back. Yeah. 
And again, the, the new scrum having a, a good effect. Frustration for Ashbury Tropics. These two sides vying for a spot in the final of tradition. Hong Kong Football Club 10s for 2024. A tournament that has been continuing since 1986. Pig Athletic Club then. That's Connor. Good presentation. Taken up by Ballet Soma Somo. There's the bounce. And that could well be the clincher, even this far out. Time will tell. But uh, Shea yes. Turner. Yeah, Shea Turner knocked through by McGregor again, I think. And I'll, I'll do it. Another North Harbour man in the NPC. Conspicuous with his uh, wide headgear, he's been all over the field in, in every game. Terrific just work, great, great support man. Just read the defence up flat again, Gordon. Um, great nick through. The kicker was sort of taken out, but the chasers were there. Ume Fosita, former Tongan World Cup player in 2019. He's one of the biggest number 10s you'll see <laughs> in the tournament. He's the biggest here, that's for sure. But he's a very skillful player. And that was manna from heaven. Twenty one plays seven. The sun may be shet setting in the tropics, Gordon. Yes. As McGregor with the restart, just gets the 10 metres. And again, that's very skillful play from Pac Barbas. That's some good retrieval work there by Ashbury Tropics. They've got three, just under four minutes remaining. They're trailing by two converted tries, so they're going to have to put their foot down. Just do with a crowd pleaser and just give it to Nadolo in, in yeah. space and let him run at some people. Well, he's he's not going looking for the ball at the moment. They've got to get it to him. There he is, number 11 on the right. It's Pakalani. That's a great turnover from the Pig Barbarians. Connor got it away. And McGregor again with that electric speed. Boy, is he a crowd pleaser. And uh, he's had an unforgettable tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not really much for it. I'm in a big blunder bus and just having him and cutting away from him all the time. Uh, I know he's not going to go 60 metres, but he might go 30 through a few people. Well, you've got um, Paris Olympics coming up with, the, with rugby in the sevens, and he's yeah. in the sevens squad. So, yeah. I mean, the... Australian selectors certainly could not miss what he's been doing here over the last two days. He is a very exciting player. And made the conversion, and that's oh, 28 points to seven from the Pig Athletic Club Babas. And it certainly sets it up for a, uh, a sort of a an Aussie New Zealand showdown in the final. Shogun getting there right at the death and now this man with his second try in the game his eighth in the tournament and here's Namani finally the big man gets the ball takes in two defenders
So a minute and a half to go. It's uh, all over as far as the Ashbury Tropics are concerned. They've done very well to make the, the tournament at this stage to the last four. They've really well to hold on to that there, God. Another good mm. pressure. Oh, that was a huge hit there. Massive hit by Ume Fosita. Off the knee, play on. And an opportunity now for Ashbury Tropics. But it's plenty of defenders back there. And, and he's concerned. And somebody's hurt. Uh, I didn't want to do that, just referees called time off immediately. A couple of the players looking concerned. Let's hope he's okay. Florian Markaya is the, the injured person, but he's, he's moving around, but he's in a lot of pain at the moment. But the medical staff were right on the job. And what, with 30 seconds to go, um, it's all ac academic now because... Let's just hope the medical staff are taking huge precautions there. Yes. Went letting him up, but hopefully... And he's, he'll be off the pitch, but... They're oh, very he's worried very about him. Very groggy, isn't he? Yeah. yeah get somebody supporting his head now, just to make sure there's nothing wrong. This will just take some time, ladies and gentlemen. We'll just um, wait till they take care of the player. First and foremost, the most important thing. The game itself is all but over. It's all over. The pig athletic. Club Babas will be in the final to play against Shogun RFC of the tradition Hong Kong Football Club 20, 2024. I was just saying 1924. <laughs> 2024 tens. But you did say that it is yeah. the 100th anniversary, by the way, of the Paris Olympics. Yes, that's and right. We've got plans here actually and in China to celebrate Eric Little. Yes. As, as of Chariots of Fire, because yeah. he obviously, interesting, obviously, you, you saw the story when he was born in Meter Gold and being a Scottish rugby player, but also he was actually born in China. He was is actually right? China's yeah. first gold medalist. Wow, is that right? Yes. You're, you're and, absolutely you, trying to say information. Because actually, we, we, we've been talking to him with the consul and Chinese people up there and very keen to celebrate it. Okay. Well, tell me. Um, who won the rugby gold medal at the 1924 Olympics? Just because you can remember. <laughs> uh, no, uh, you, most people wouldn't get it. You, United States of America. They won the. I, they I have won heard the, that before. Yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there was an Australian Dan Carroll in the side, so we we had an Australian presence. But uh, yeah. I thought you were all still convicts in Australia <laughs> in 1924, sir. No, no, no. We we're all reformed at that stage. Uh. We've done our penance, and we all uh, had... Let's just hope this... Oh, he's up, he's up, I think. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, give that's a big wonderful round of news. applause. Well, I think we're not doing that now. Yeah. Anyway, I was... Uh, let's do that. Yes, great round of applause from the stadium here for the injured player. Number 15, Florian Makaya. Just, he just took a big, big hit there, yeah. and the, the way he landed, but he's up on his feet, and... Looks all right, and well done to the medical staff. Yeah. He's a very athletic-looking guy, and uh, I think his flexibility really helped in that uh, collision. So last play here for Nandolo. Nice little offload. Good support there from Fangul Fangul. And that's been the story of the second half, unfortunately, for... Ashbury Tropics that they've made the last four of the 2024 tournament and they should be very proud of that but they came up against uh, the Pac Barbars today who were on fire and their two Australian seven stars probably stole the show you've got to say James McGregor and also Connor Hickey Sam Adams says this is the last one boys
to a wee bit of a flare up at the end of the game there. You'd expect nothing less from a feisty halfback. A nice consolation here, hopefully, for Fungu Fungu. And he's in, yes. And he gets his second try. So he's been on a bit of a roller coaster in this game. Uh, yeah, yes. On and off the park, <laughs> two tries, but that's it, end of the game. And uh, there's a great semi final, let's be honest, Gordon. Yeah, terrific semi final. And it's going to be the Pak Barbas taking on Shogun Rugby. Right, and getting into some women's action here. We've got Papua New Guinea, Tokyo Sankey Phoenix about to face off our women's plate, our women's bowl final. Straight into the action here. <laughs> That's another 40 meter pass off the right eye of Joanne Lagona. Done it all too. We've, yeah, we, I was going to say we've seen some really, really big skip passes from her as well as a, a really good beat. We've been impressed by some individual skills from this Papua New Guinea team. Not, 
number seven is actually Sean in my book out of the team actually been really good uh, Magdalene Swacky <laughs> just what rate oh. start there from Tokyo Central Phoenix maybe not quite hit the heights they hit last year Tokyo but they, they can still see they're so well organized and they just play rugby in such a disciplined and structured way and there's nothing better than when they, they leave the pitch they're substituted that's a try by the and way here well, we go what a beautiful start there from Tokyo Sankey Phoenix there's a game going on while I was talking lunches there but that's absolutely great but they are so respectful they'll bow to the crowd when they're substituted just show respect to everyone in the park they're really, a, really good I'm a big fan of Japanese style rugby it's one of the things that's made watching this team really fun last year they of course made it all the way to the cup final it was a, it was a big battle I think 14-12 came away second they've had a bit of a tougher uh, competition this year but they've still been really great and it's been really fun because they've got some Hong Kong based players yeah. playing with them this year but anyway, try scorer was Maui Shida, we should say that. Um, and she's, and that's it, 7 0, starting, oh no, 5 0, sorry. Tokyo Sanku Phoenix, and them to kick off. You certainly feel like they've gotten better every game, but they haven't quite hit as good as they can be. So I'm sure they want to go out with a good flourish. So equally said, Papani getting the winner in their tournament on a high been so great to uh, include their national team here in this competition and have it give them ability to play great teams and great players. Oh, we're going around the outside here. She's going to have enough space right down the sideline there. Oh, nifty little kick. <laughs> Didn't quite work out, though. It's hit, uh, and it's, uh, sadly, it's hit, it's hit the Japanese defending player on the head, but uh, she's smiling. Which is actually very happy she defended that because I think she'd rather hit it with her head than turn and chase that lady. Yeah, look, you've got to take one for the team sometime. Yeah. Got a sting though. Oh, yeah. Jan Lagono is running down the sideline and scored three tries this tournament. This has been taking the conversions. Really nice, neat little line out there. It's the hands of Bella Milo. To give Phoenix passing well down the line. Oh, a little interchange. Bella Milo once again, she finds her winger. Tanaka sends it back inside. Tanaka back on it. The hands of Akurodo. She's a player who got the ball in the face. She's been such a playmaker for this team. Yeah, it was, wasn't a great kick that, but she knew she had advantage, I think. Uh, the, 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 the Papua team just suffered no discipline earlier on, but they, 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 they've competed, and you know, I think number seven's work rate's been great. Obviously, Joanne has been an inspiration to them. So I just. It's just if they can if they can keep the pace up because I think the Japanese players are fitter. Yeah. Yeah, Papua New Guinea certainly have been played maybe the most structured of games, but I think being able to play more in tournaments like this will just really help them as a team. Line out quite close to the try line here. Oh, that's not really one you want to lose. Knocked on. Given to Papua New Guinea, they've chosen to go the scrum. Suddenly, quite a different size here. Quite different strengths for these two teams. So, one thing I think makes Japanese style rugby so fun is that can't focus on maybe the size and the, the brutish <laughs> nature of the players on South Africa and I know that because we like to have big players and scaring you, people. I mean, you don't have big players, you're monstrous. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Dwayne <laughs> Verbo and I saw him yesterday and he's a small South African. Um, um, and that's a great example when Japan did beat South Africa is that if you focus on the things you can do and that's play really quick rugby, really slick rugby, move that ball, Another thing be the fittest of the Look at them, their set piece is never as weak as you expect to be. They've actually no. shot Papo off that ball there. Because they're so together. Oh, the bounce is hard though. 
Milo swinging the plane to touch, but the ball stayed in. It's a scramble. <laughs> Referees coming to calm things down a bit. Tokyo Sanky Phoenix sending on a whole lot of replacements. They like to bring them on. Oh. Papua New Guinea yet really to get out of their half apart from that one break, but the, the Hawks only 5 0 to Tokyo Sanku Phoenix, so games all to play for. Just under four minutes to go in this first half. Yeah, you can camp out uh, in the danger zone all day long, but those runaway, breakaway tries happen, and that's really what counts. Who scores the tries at the end of the day? Oh, nice little interchange there. Akurada has found Ishida. Ishida's heading right towards the post, and it's try time. Number eight, Mao Ishida. Oh, second try. Second try, she's having a good game. Conversion taker, um, Yumi Akurada, has had a great tournament as well. Oh, she's, she's everywhere, great engine on her. She's really got a good rugby brain in her. She's she's the playmaker, making things happen. Linking up well there with her players. That was a great finish, though. Try scorer there. Smiling at she should. Off received well by Papua New Guinea. They're going to sit, boot it back upfield. You have two players there at the back. It's gone to Aileen Wu. She plays her rugby in Hong Kong, Valley RFC. Started to go right. Back to the hands of the try scorer. She decided to take it into contact. Pushing up the middle there, linking players nicely. I'm going to keep moving left here. Into the hands of Masako Ueki. Tanaka sends it back right. Good take there, crashing straight into some contact. Sometimes you've got to just take the hit. you got a little up and under. It's bounced beautifully into the hands of Yumi Okoroda. She is heading straight towards the post, and that's another awesome try for Tokyo Sanku Phoenix. You'll find that when it's the conversion kicker scoring the try, they always manage to get it under the posts. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah that is that, but yeah. Not every time, but they do seem to make a, a, a good concerted effort. And you said it after the last try by Mayo Ishida, this girl makes this team trick. She just, she's the playmaker, she's got the eyes, she's got the time to see what's happening. And that's just great individual skill and vision. I think this is looking like hard work for Papua New Guinea now. I think when they could keep it tight, there was always a chance of a big breakaway, but they'll, they'll tire quickly. They're just having to make so many tackles, I think. Mm, it is like tiring to be on defence, and on defence, and on defence. And also on defence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> take it, thank you, Phoenix, to kick off again. Right left. Once again, a lovely take there by Papua New Guinea. I want to try to keep this ball in hand. Their pass is a little bit wayward. They really don't need to be so scattered. There we go, the classic skip pass. As you said, we've seen so many this tournament from it. Oh, ball's it's lost forward. Ref's going to play on um, because it's in the hands now of Tokyo Phoenix. Here's the playmaker. She comes away with penalty. High tackle penalty, I think, yeah. Oh! oh. I really would have liked them to go through this final without it happening to Papa, but that's a yellow card for number five, Claire Akuma. That's unfortunate for Papa New Guinea. She'll be sitting in the noise for two minutes. We actually are just about to head into half time. It's always unfortunate when it's right before the break. 
Oh, nice little one to one there. Oh, we've got space out of the right. She doesn't. And uh, gave away the chance for the hat trick. Passed it back inside to her friend, Yumi Okarada. At this rate, they both might get a hat trick. Beautiful little bit of play there. That's They're really linking up well. She, she didn't need to give that back in either. It was really quite nice to see. I don't know, maybe the Japanese girls have to buy drinks if they score a hat trick as well. I don't <laughs> know. It's half a kick. That's going to take us into half time. Looking at 24 0, Tokyo Sanki Phoenix are up against Papua New Guinea. This is, of course, the ball final in the women's competition at the Hong Kong Football Club Tradition 10s. We're down here. It's a really beautiful evening in Happy Valley. Oh, lovely. We thought it, thought it was going to rain earlier, Kim, but no, we're, there we're was laughing. There was a little hint of a drizzle. We were a bit worried. It has been gorgeously beautiful yeah, well, today. While, while, while we're here, Kim, mm. your, your picks for the two cup finals? Oh! Um, I, I, I was quite surprised that um, YCAC have not made it through into the men's. Um, let me just pull up. Okay, that, that, that was Shogun. Shogun put them out, and they'll be playing um, the Pig Babas, won't they? It'd be fun to see the Babas. Well, they're, 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 the surprise, they're the surprise package of the tournament, although when you actually look at their squad, it's not quite as big a surprise as it was, you know, but they're new to the tournament, and it's unusual for a team to come here the, the Wi-Fi problem for you. Um, I am quite impressed, though, because we're going to see in the, the Women's Cup final, we're going to see the two Chinese development teams face off. And I think that's really cool for uh, rugby developing in China. I think they'll really be they'll really be happy. Well, con um, conver conversation we were having yesterday, I think uh, one of my co-commentators co up in the box was having with Gordon Titchens, who's been helping out. Mm -hmm. And there's an awful lot of this. These are almost like the next string of players coming down here. There's a lot of them they haven't brought. But yesterday, um, China Five Star just at the edge, but Shandong looked very good today. Yeah, uh, Shandong, I commentated it on the first game of the day, and they were just on fire. They'd really grown from the previous day, and so I think I'd maybe pick them. Both teams, you can see, train a lot together, know each other really well. It's going to be a slick final. Yeah, great final, I think. Again, we're back in the hands of the playmaker here. Eight to five. I think Eleven. they're just going to run the Papua New Guinea team around now, going side to side. Oh, finding their play as well. This is Hastings and Claire Toa. She finds her valley teammate, Bella Milo. Oh, Bella can't quite get there. So? But it seems we are play on. Masato Kuramochi checking there with the ref. Ask the referee, is it all right if I run under the post with this? And, and that is, is a try. Good on her for double checking. Kuramilo doing a lot of the hard yards and uh, pulling up just a few inches short there. Managed to keep the ball in play. Made an easy kick for Yumi Okorodo. Tokyo Phoenix have started the second half well. They're now 31 0 up over Papua New Guinea. It would just be nice to see Papua New Guinea get a foothold in the game, get a, get a try, and then just stem the flow, because at the moment they're just chasing shadow skin. And it's really quite hard. They just need to get the ball back in their hand and just keep possession for a bit. Oh, Yumi Akorodo is now sitting atop of the points tally. 39. She's made seven conversions, five tries. She kicks us off. Once again, one free taken by Papua New Guinea. So strong in contact. Number seven, Magdalene Swaki. She's been good all tournament, actually. She's, she's been your, yeah, she's been your favorite of this team. Yeah. Oh, oh, what a... Bella Milo's looking for a bit of help. She... Finally does find some in Masaka Uyeki. And once again, oh. Oh. 
Great uh, try. He's caught off sides. Good to see Claire Akuma back on the field after a yellow card. Crashing bit of contact there from Janet Michael. Oh, unfortunately she was holding onto the ball though. Has been refed very strictly this tournament. Wanna to keep that game moving. I've chosen to go with scrum here. To be the tactic all the teams actually midfield penalties to call a scrum just trying to pull the defence mm -hmm. in a lot of them are doing it particularly the, particularly the better teams you know they just they're obviously they're maybe more structured they know they're going to play off mm -hmm. for space but it just just opens the space up doesn't it yeah you can draw half your team into that five man scrum it's a lot less defenders to get through out on the wing as you can see now, there is space out wide if they can get it to the player. Hastings sends it back into Bella. Beautiful hands there for Mila. She sends us back to five. I could have quiet trying to take it herself. Big pass there. Oh, they've got lots of players out on the right here. Wonderfully timed pass. And Masako Uyeki is over. After last one being disallowed, she gets her try. That's good, sir. Masada Ueki, and that takes it to Tokyo Sankyo Phoenix 36, Papua New Guinea nil. Conversion to come. Oh, some great hands on display there from Tokyo Sankyo Phoenix. five minutes of play really want to see Papua New Guinea just get a little bit into the action here they haven't had much possession to work with straight into contact strong running into contact once more pulling in a couple defenders every time right back into that same zone looking for the holes there oh now we found one she is slightly away Hail oh, Mary Pass. And but Joanna Laguna was waiting for it. She could go all the way down the sidelines. We are watching her fly and towards the poles because she does take the kicks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you have to say that. that they're, they're the two standout players uh, uh, in the Papua New Guinea and they combined for that try. The throw over the head, bit speculative, but uh, great. Just, they just needed that. They deserved a try, I think, actually. Uh, that was so a spectacular to try. That's the fans of Tens Rugby. A little bit of space opens up. Also a really great example of uh, just making sure you've got a, a player in support nearby. That was a, a full Hail Mary panic pass there. I'd prefer to the quickest player in your team back yeah. as well. Right now, yeah. <laughs> no, that was great. That was really good. Um, good to see. Good to see Papua New Guinea on the scoreboard there. Got the full seven points from the try. Although an uphill battle if they are to win this game. Oh, tricky bounce. Gets into the hands of Milo. She passes to Akorodo, who sends it out. Staying with a sneaky little back pass, but I think it was unexpected from her teammates. A couple of mistakes from Tokyo Sankyo now, just maybe foot off the pedal, but that's good. That just a lift for Papua New Guinea, put some pressure on, see if they can get another score. Makes it more, more, an, ex more an exciting game for us as the spectators. Papua New Guinea with this line out. They're not too far from their try line, so. Oh, what a beautiful bit of line out defense there. Akorodo cleaning up. Tokyo having to run it quite near their own try line. Milo kicks to clear. 
We've got some fast chases in there. Nice. It'll take a couple to get it down. Excellent work there from the chasers, putting the pressure on Papua New Guinea. They did have two sweepers in the back. Oh, wonderful display there, getting around. Milo trying to cause a bit of hassle down in the rack. Claire Como. She's holding on. Surprised the whistle hasn't gone for that. Papua New Guinea fighting. They're trying to find some find some holes again. Oh, gone for the kick. It's very high up. Oh, the bounce has gone backwards and they're back in the hands of Tokyo Sanky Phoenix and their playmaker Kurodo Valley's hasting Leia Tower she goes with a little kick it's collected by Papua New Guinea oh unconventional Catherine Werner there yeah. All getting a little bit messy and frantic. You can't you can't fault the effort from either team, Kim. Still Papua no. New Guinea really running themselves to a standstill here just to try and stay in the game. Papua New Guinea throwing everything at it. Which has really been so impressive to watch these last two days. Of course we had a, f a full day of rugby yesterday and we're having a full day of rugby today. Fairly packed crowds today. It's public holiday in Hong Kong, so if you love rugby, why wouldn't you be down here? No, the clock's just run down half a minute to go here, Kim. This lovely line cut. Big number 16's been very good all day. Miguel got good distribution on her. Take your Sankey Phoenix heading towards that try line once again. Mila goes to the kick pass. Is she going to find her player? Oh, the bounce is just unfortunate. That oval ball. Ah, just nice to see something a bit different late in the game. Try something a bit. A bit of silky skills didn't quite come off. Yeah, at this point, the clock winds down. 36 7 up. You can feel quite confident that you can give something like that a go. Ends rugby is also just about the fun. Oh. With a penalty kick. Well, that was a, a congratulations to Tokyo Sanky Phoenix. They really turned up for that final. I mean, as you said, Kim, they haven't quite been on fire like last year, but they'll be very, very happy with that performance. Surely. I certainly, yeah, I certainly enjoyed watching them this game. I think they found their flow a bit better. I do hope they come back next year. One of my favourite teams that come to the Tens. They've been fantastic. And uh, they are our Women's Bowl winners, Tokyo Sankey Phoenix. A huge shout out to Papa New Guinea. It's been fabulous to have them in the tournament as well. And, uh, just just the, the game growing. Just, I mean, the, the, the tap with them, you're just brilliant, you know. I mean, th th throughout this tournament, there's been a history of teams coming. Made the Aboriginal teams that used to be brought, forgot their name, actually. Brilliant. They were brought with the Ellibra family. Really good. Um, but I mean, to see, this is good. I mean, because Lau Rugby, the ladies were here before, remember, as well. They came over from Lau and they played, they played an exhibition match at the Game Football Club. I played in that. <laughs> Back in the day. Um, you were talking about this earlier. Uh, just so wonderful. It's Katsumari and Japanese rugby. They always thank their fans. Uh, absolutely. She, she, she's really, really nice, actually. Uh, if you... I was just going to point out my other half and my friend there to you. Oh. <laughs> Thank That's just really nice to see, actually. Oh, and uh, the action comes fast and furious, and... We're heading, we're <laughs> heading straight into the next game. Women's late final of the tradition Hong Kong Football Club 2024-10. We've got Shogun Rugby versus Hayward Tropics now. This is the women's plate final. These have both been two really great teams in the last two days. I'm actually super excited for this game. 
and player two and to really look out for is Kelsey uh, Tonetti in the Hayward Tropics team. That's because the orange team, she's, um, she scored seven tries. She's been fantastic. Oh, oh, straight away. Shogun Rugby playing in the black. They've kicked us off here with Tropics in their orange. Coached by Heather Fisher. Oh, this, this girl was so unlucky in her oh. semi final of the cup. Tinetti sends a three to Taffy. Taffy, a Hong Kong based player. See, see, big see the account of there that just was brought down. She had a try disallowed at the beginning of the semi final of the cup, and on replay, uh, I was watching her, she was very unlucky that it was disallowed actually. She'll surely be looking for a bit Look. of redemption in yeah. this plate final. I think the standout for me actually was. Um, Big eight, number 18, Dis Valia Fagger. Oh. Uh, just young girl, brilliant ball carrier. Still to totally agree. There's some real players to watch in this Hayward Tropics team. Tropics have come away for penalty. Eloise Hayward there is um, asking for a scrum. Number 10 for the Tropics scored six conversions. She pops the ball in. Decent scrum. She thinks about taking it herself. Decides to send it the opposite direction. That, of course, is Kelsey Tel Tonetti, a player to watch. She was brilliant in the semi final. She's so fantastic, well. as was this number 15, Olive Wackerston. Earlier today, scored a multitude of tries, and she's added one more to her collection. That was that was um, just a bit quick. I, 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 that was a great finish, I think. Yeah. So, Asbury Trop, sorry, Hayward Tropics, straight in there, five 0 against AKS Shogun Rugby. with Tropics, not here to mess around. Eloise Hayward lining up a kick. She's got to face a packed crowd in the Sportsman's Bar. That's a, that's and a she great kick kicks it all the way into, almost into the jinx stack. Thank goodness with the net there. Here's the try replay. Kelsey Tonetti gets a little flick off in contact. I mean, talk about keeping the ball alive. And Olive Wackerston there, finishing it off just in spectacular fashion. New Tropics are back on attack again. Oh, there are quite a bit of tackle there. Oh, she's coming from the side. Not quite yet. The breakdowns have certainly been hotly contested. Oh, and if you can hear the cheering in the background, it is because the Tokyo Phoenix team is doing the round. They're going all around the stadium and yeah. thanking all the fans, and the fans are thanking them back. Brilliant, yeah, yeah, I'll see. Probably one of my favorite things about rugby uh, in Japan. Back live here, I think the Hayward's Tropics will be hitting the midfield with the ball here. Big runner. Refs having some chats to the props. Look to get the binding and engaging right.
Oh, bit of a, a big shot um, was. Bit of a messy uh, scrum, but it's going it's the way of Hayward Tropics. It's, it's very much been it throughout the tournament. If you're if you're actually the defending, so you have to get absolutely clean to win a turnover. Oh, massive tackle there. Yeah. Hayward Tropics still on the run. We found Olive Watherston again. You can see she's hunting towards that line. Kelsey Tinetti sends it back inside and have a nice little crash there from Tess Evans. Oh, nice little pop pass. Oh. Hasn't well, has come off the foot, so we're still in action here. Cecilia wants that. Ah, ah, it's over the line. She, she's been deserving that since the start of the last game. Second try to Hayward's Tropics. Celia Kansa. It's a Louise Hayward in shot. Getting ready for a hijab goal attempt. It's not going to curve in though. Unsuccessful. So 12 0. It remains here with Traff. Here was Tropics 12. Again, okay, Shogun Rugby 0. Shogun's haven't had much to work with yet. No, actually, there was the, the previous game, um, actually, the men's semi final that one team had no ball for nearly the whole game. And then actually turned it around and won the Shogun there. Certainly in the realm of possibility, Shogun Rugby have some real danger players in their squad. They've got the ball now, so we'll see if they can do anything with it. Huge tackle there from Kelsey Tanelli. Shogun keep coming. Oh, intercepts Olive Watherston. She just can't get that pass out. She, comes in, she just hit the ground and let them clean out over there. They probably got it. Oh, mind you, if the other girl did sticky hands, you never know. Excellent reaction skills there from Marlo Atherston. Tropics are not too far from their try line once again. However, ball is in the hand of Piper Simons of Shogun Rugby. She's been immense in the last two days as well. Real nippy little scrum half. Scored one try earlier today, so five conversions under her belt. See what they've got here because they, they do need to score next, I would say. Kim. Yeah. No, no, they. They're choosing to run it. Oh, little chase. There's nobody at the back. We do have a chase that she's gone with a little tap. However, it has given Hayward Tropics a bit more space to gather. Kelsey Tanetti does just that. Piper Simon's there. Probably the smallest player in the field. She still goes in for the tackle. Kelsey Tanetti just sh shrugging off that tackle attempt. And Hayward Tropics are going to choose to send on a couple of replacements. Natalie Walsh, Caitlin Hubbard come on. Tuffy Petalaga comes off. Good shift from the Hong Kong race player. Once again, Eloise Hayward is asking for the scrum. Just kind of calms everything down. And I think certainly when you've got 50 seconds left on the clock and you're in the lead. You're 12 now down. It's going to take 30 seconds to set this. You'll get one strike play off of it. It either works or it's half time if you're lucky. Piper Simons there. She'll be putting pressure on Eloise Hayward, but Eloise gets the ball out. Slightly wild pass that is gathered by Tess Cross, and Cross chooses to run it. Comes into contact. 
ball set down nicely. It's Kelsey Tonetti once again shrugs off a defender. She really has been immense. She's got one more player to beat. She does just that. Another missed tackle, another step. She's desperate for a bit of help here. And unfortunately, the ball has been uh, lost. But she. She could not have done that anymore. No, there's no, not one more thing she could have done there. I told you she was one to watch. Just look at her set off here yeah, re and the replay. Uh, yeah. I thought she was in here Game actually. Game one. Missed tackle done. Steps aside. Shrugs someone else off and desperately tries to get that ball back to Olive Weston. That's one way to go into half time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you, you, you're definitely finishing on the front foot there, I think, Kim, actually. Yeah. Um, absolutely um, huge. Um, am I right? Was Farley Faggot on the pitch in the first half there, or is she maybe injured? Um, I haven't seen her. Haven't seen her. Yeah, she's not, she's she's not on the pitch right now. Because she was outstanding she in was, the last game. But oh, there she is with a boot on her ankle, actually. Ah. Well, that'll be why then, yeah. I, just, I, I wondered because... Um, She's incredibly unfortunate. That's ah. Dice Felia Faga we're talking about. She scored three tries in this tournament. She's a really strong runner. Oh, She's been super to watch. Great in contact. Uh, on screen here, of course, we can see the Tokyo Sankey Phoenix. They ah. are collecting their trophy. Very deservedly so, winners. Team photo coming up. This is the Hong Kong Football Club Tradition 10s. In the long run, you know, whatever trophy you win at a tournament, you win a trophy, it's a great tournament, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, put some champagne in, yeah. have a good night. They can, no, go, they can go party now. So great there to see some Hong Kong-based players having played with the Tokyo team. It's one of my favorite things about tournaments like this. You merge players from the from the city, the host city, with players coming in from all over the world. Yeah. We, 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 obviously, we've got the aging stars with like Nandolo here, but throughout the 10 years I've been here, the player, the emerging players. I mean, Nandolo mm. was here 12 years, 30 years ago, and he was player of the tournament. Yeah. As a, young guy. A, lot then, of, a lot of the players we're seeing in the women's teams as well, in the Black Bones, the Australian wider development squads, they're not going to be playing in the the seven squads this weekend but they're they're here and they get to play in tens and that's why we're seeing such great rugby the, the one, on the one that stands here. out just because i know him here was that the young lad that played for i was saying earlier on that played for causeway bay uh, he was 17 year old and he came here and played in the tens uh, you know what you know what he does now he plays tight head for france he was picked up here as a 17 year old flown back by the french pyrenees and said we'll give you a trial a young boy out of Auckland that can play with Cosway Bay, and, and you'll, you'll recognise him being 145 kilograms and playing tight head for France. But he was actually, Robbie McRobbie had to ask his mother to give him permission to play in the Premiership here because he was only 17. And everyone that's listening to this broadcast, that's the second time I've told that story to your board. Well, it's Hong Kong Football Club Jishin 10s with dreams are made. Fun rugby is had. We're back in the action here. This is the second half of the women's plate final. Shogun Rugby. Chance, chance on the outside for Shogun. Shogun Rugby. This has been a danger player for them. This is Flo Jen. She's heading down that sideline. Is she going to make it? She is. Oh, that, and I think she beat probably Ashbridge's quickest player on the outside there. A great try. A great hairdo as well, let's be honest. I've certainly enjoyed watching her as well this last, these last two days. We spoke a little bit how Shogun weren't really getting much space, they weren't having much ball. Just give them a little bit of a space, they've got some danger players. At this gate, 5-12, five, 12-5, five, 12, 12, five, maybe conversion to come. Piper Simons, a little bit of tricky conversion here. 12-5, the game on though, game on absolutely, one game score game. Game absolutely on, Shogun Rugby have come out the second half put their stamp on it. Maybe people just like scoring near uh, the sportsman's bar. A big cheer. <laughs> Crowds are certainly packed in there. Gee, score in front of the bar area, it's always the best place, yeah. It's a try scoring camera there, Flurgeon. So we're going to get to kick off again. It's not taken well by Hayward Tropics. We're going to play on because the ball is in the hands of Kinza Olsen Riahi.
Shogun moving their ball to the left, coming back in, straight into contact there. Solid ruck. Not the best pass, but it's okay. Ball keeps moving. Rush defense there, putting Shogun under lots of pressure. They're stepping backwards, so they haven't actually made a whole lot of ground. They've actually but lost. But the composure was a bad pass, everything else. They still kept the ball. Still kept the ball alive. Yeah. Ball in hand. That, that's a great break. There'll be front foot ball. If oh, they don't have a half back's not there. She made the break. It's a good bit of fight there from Jordan Russell. Got a little bit of a kick. And I think a little bit of a kick was complimentary to that, actually, yeah. Setting up the line out here. Sort of. Hayward Tropics could just do a wee bit of possession. They, they, they've not had it this half. Um, so, Shogun Rugby, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, here we go, they have it. Here's Kelsey Tinetti. <laughs> oh, she shoves off more players. Some players look for space as she makes space. She just refuses to be tackled, and I absolutely love it. Demita Betham going into contact there. Bit of a messy rack. Shogun come away with the ball. I, I, mean, I think that's quite an unlucky decision. I mean, the uh, Hayward players were all on the ground in the mm -hmm. way, and he's penalised the Shogun player. But... We are setting up for a scrum right near the commentator's desk here. It's also right near the benches, so we can hear the coaches cheering yep. in their teams. Or screaming. screaming. I, I, I think Shogun will have a real go at this scrum here, Kim. They, they, they were penalised early on, but they definitely were on the front foot. Piper Simons has certainly enjoyed putting a lot of pressure on nines. Oh, we tend to go for a, a boot. It hasn't worked out well to hit the player. Oh, ref looks incredibly unhappy <laughs> with uh, Kiala Jaff. I think she was told to be offside. She was offside. Ref's having none of that. And they set up for another scrum over here. I shall make no comment in the replay. That just seemed fairly harsh given the scramble that was going on for the ball that if the midfield was offside after that amount of time, but we shall see. Well we have seen. Not quite a headmaster look from him there. <laughs> but set up for another scrum we do. It's another Hayward Tropics put in. Eloise Hayward there with the ball again. Scrum is set. She doesn't seem happy. Comes up very cleanly though. And then into the into the hands of Tanetti, who goes into contact like it's a Sunday. <laughs> like a Sunday? Do you, do you do contact on a Sunday? No, I was uh, thinking of like an ice cream Sunday. Like oh, it's just yeah. something enjoyable and soft. <laughs> Anyway, penalty to Shogun. Still only a score behind. But, but yes. Um, Shogun wanted to take it quickly, but unfortunately. Kelsey Tonetti has actually just been so dominant in this game with ball in hand. Oh, she's just so much fun to watch. And I do hope she has a great rugby career ahead of her because I'd love to be watching more. So inspiring. Oh, a little bit of shoving here. So Shogun Rugby we're just desperate to try to take it quickly. We'll obviously want to be safe when we've got an injury. It's good to see our Hong Kong based physios out here doing service. Football club player herself. Big claps here for Demisa Bethim as she's walking off. She's having quite a strapped knee, so... 
Yeah, he maybe been carrying it, Kim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's hurting a bit. If they win, I think she'll feel a lot better. Back into the action here, though. Shogun have come away with a penalty. Oh, oh, refs reaching in. It's a yellow card for, oh, for the danger lady. And she didn't look very happy with that decision, just a quiet shake of her head, though. No. So Kelsey Tonetti's in the seat for two minutes. That's a dream come true, really, if you're Shogun rugby. <laughs> I really want to make that count. Oh, how do you roll away from there? Shogun Rugby on the attack. It's good to see them. Ball in hand. Putting together a few phases. Dummy runner. Oh, we find a little bit of space. Swing sideways. Into the hands of Anaya Krikshank. Sends it back in. They just look a little bit panicked. Oh. And then some awesome rush defense there. She just looked at the defender and gave up in the ball, actually. As Tilly Kid. And her work has given the ball back to Hayward Tropics, who are now on their attack. Bruising midfield crash. Natalie Walsh looking for fights again. She's come away with the ball here with Tropics. Time's just getting tight here for Shogun. They need to get the ball back. Just over two minutes to go. These infractions, particularly when they're a man up, or a lady up, should I say, a woman up. Player um, up. Player and up, exactly. You just kick there. You ever get there in the end. Yeah, this is really their moment. The Kelsey Tonight has been causing all sorts of problems for them. She's off the field, so this is when you really want to want to be scoring tries. But unfortunately, they find themselves on the other end of the field, and they are now defending their try line. Haywitt Tropics. Yeah, Haywitt Tropics, they could put it to bed here, actually. If they get a clean catch, you think they'll probably hit the midfield. Happy Petalaga back on the field there. Just, I think, counting numbers here. Two rolling subs, and there have been a few instances yeah. where 11 players have ended up in the field. But at least the clock stops when we're doing this, so it's not killing the yeah. game. Yeah, no, absolutely. We're still counting. Quite a few <laughs> players seem to be removing themselves. I think a lot of subs were made for Shogun Rugby. All right, back we go. Oh, they've gone for sort of a sneaky maul. Not your traditional rugby maul. She kind of ducked her head in and went straight. Oh, love that little bit of interplay there. And that's Eloise Hayward. She finds... Olive Watherston and Olive Watherston is over once more. What a great set piece there and from Hayward uh, Tropics. And uh, the players back from the sin bin as that is scored. I think it's full time. No, it's not a minute 20 to go, but that's probably the killer blow, Kim. And that, I think that that's done it. Back to her pace. We've got some big singing in the crowd here, of course. Um, both Tropics and Shogun have men's and women's teams in this competition, so there's a lot of support on the sidelines for these two teams. I think, you know, I mean, to be fair, um, Tropics have dominated much of this. I think much of it through Kelsey Gennetti's front foot ball, but um, they've, they've managed to score there with her off the park, so very, very hard to find a way back for Shogun now. They would yeah, have to I, score I, in the next 30 seconds or I so. I see that you suddenly feel like Tropics are deserving of this win. But stranger things have happened. And with 30 seconds left on the clock. Shogun have a player not looking too happy. She's desperate to come off. They're sending in a sub. 
like she got a bit of a rib injury. Oh, that looks very sore, yeah. She's cramping. On runs Jordan Russell for a little bit of the action. We've got 15 seconds to go, and you know what? It would be fine for either team to end it in a flourish. There's a big tussle down in that rack. Shogun come away the ball. The traffic Tropics boys is singing away. They of course have just finished for their day, so they're now in full fun spirits in the sidelines. Big tackle there. It's Kelsey Tanegi once more. And she's given the ball to her fellow orange teammates. I think she'll just be wanting it back. Oh, jazz. Oh, back. big pass there over. Eloise Hayward's there in supports as well. Of Eliana Rashoon. Coach is yelling time. We kick it out. Oh, the ref checks his watch and says, yes, that is it. And that is a wonderful Hayward Tropics win. They are the winners of the women's plate final here at the Hong Kong Football Club Tradition 10s. 2024. 2024. We'll be back next year. Well-deserving well winners, Kim, let's be honest. Um, and, and a standout player. Let's be honest. Uh, standout player in their team for this game. And, and it, as I say, um, they were missing to me. I was expecting Big, big Philly Apaga in the wing. I thought she would be the, their weapon. And she, she's obviously sadly been injured for this final. Yeah, we certainly saw her in a boot. I do feel like this team just rose better and better the more games they played together. And they've been absolutely fantastic to watch today. <laughs> big shout out to Heather Fisher, their coach. I'm sure they're going to have a lot of fun there. The boys team certainly cheering them on. Um, I'm going to be uh, leave it. Yeah, I'm going to be off for a bit, and I'll be back later for more women's fun. We've of course got a few more finals on today. Right, men's plates coming up now. A trade overseas. Old boys are taking on Taiki Place Scottish Exiles, and here they come. Tom Wilson leading the mark. Will he score another 15-second try? Coach Tom. Thank you, Kim. So now it's the plate final here at the Hong Kong Football Club. And John, uh, a lot of local talent on display here with the Taiku Place Scottish Exiles. You'll know a few of these guys. You're in your element here. I am. I'm, I'm a Scottish Exile. Perhaps not talented enough to be on the pitch, but um, uh, they, they, they actually came out of the Hong Kong Barbarians, which came the Hong Kong Scottish Barbarians, which, be, which I, I, we, we, back in the day I was the organising Hong Kong Barbarians, and they've been long-standing players here, and they've done well, so they're going to kick off, and I shall be totally unbiased in my commentary. I'm sure you will. I see well, the overseas old boys have been great supporters of the tournament, Gordon, for years, and they beat Scottish quite comprehensively earlier on. Well, Moses... Um, getting an early touch for the Exiles. And uh, what a fabulous crowd we have here. Strong work by James Phillips. Just looking at the squad, there are 10 locals of the 18 yeah. members, yeah, yes. which is fantastic. No, that, that's it. But, and obviously the, uh, the Scottish Exiles are mainly Hong Kong Scottish, but we've got one or two um, from the Scottish Islands in the South Pacific playing for us as well. <laughs> Highlands and Islands Select, Mount as we like what? to call it. Yes. <laughs> so the old boys. Th this is good, though, from Hong Kong, Sc from sorry, from Scottish Exiles' point of view, because it, in the last game against this team, they were on the back foot very early on, and having some pressure on. making heavy weather of it at the moment. We've got some really good strike runners, some good strike runners, this overseas old boys team. Yeah. Streamline Sports overseas all to get the sponsorship right. Well, Daryl 
Williams, Daryl Williams is the, the 14th kicking. man for the USA uh, Sevens team here in Hong Kong. And there he is on the left-hand side there in the pink jumper. And uh, he's the quickest man in the whole tournament. Don't worry I about that. He does look very, very quick, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. Let's hope he doesn't get the ball in any space. Well, sorry, Hong Kong Scottish excellence. Yes. Hope that. We are very objective here, of course, aren't we? Harrison King into the line out. It's a good ball. Tom Wilson with a nice clearance. Out wide is Momo. Oh, that's a kid, yeah. Unfortunately, kicked out the rock. Really accidental, but it is a penalty. Tom Momo has had a. Um, I should say uh, Tom Wilson has had a very good tournament. Yeah, and a great haircut. Yeah. Agree, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're just jealous, are you? Yeah, I am. He's a, I think they were all revealing yesterday that he's naturally a ginger, but he's too ashamed of it. He shaved it all off. <laughs> so this is the, the plate final. Nice jump there by Kumbu. That's it. A lot of pressure on the defence. Lovely Wilson. little kick. Oh. And Scotty, that, that, that's, that's a great result from the kick, and he'll look to go quickly here. And Wilson tries to, but the defence is up very quickly. His teammates need to be a bit more alert, Gordon. They were he didn't have anyone to pass yeah. there, did he do? Bit of space out wide now. This is Moses. And wasted ball. That was a year. It's been a sluggy start by both teams. Back for I think back for the knock on for the advantage, I think. Yeah, it was, it was a wasted opportunity from this Taiku play Scottish Excels. I think in particular when Tom Wilson took the quick tap, his players around about have had to be much sharper. Well, this standard here in 2024 has been absolutely outstanding. The, the brains trust the Taiku Scottish excellence there. Alex Allen, former Scottish prop, trying to work out when he's making his substitutes or replacements. He hasn't packed in too many scrums, has he? No, he, did, he used to be. He used to. He was, a, he was a prop, but he actually put himself on the tournament last year. Obviously, for his long-lasting athleticism. Big scrum there from the Exiles. But, well, thank you. And the ball and knocked on. There's so some real wheels in this, eight, in this overseas boy. So. Trouble here for Very. Jacques and Moses. And he was isolated, so there were I, I, plenty I would, of men there. I would have to say that, nah, yeah, he was isolated, but I'd have to say that the overseas boys came in from the wrong side, the second player. Great pace. Fuller, only metres short of the line. And a great turnover in defence from number six, Rue Campbell, for the Scottish XLs. Referee for this match is Callum Robertson. And now it's with... The captain crowd making Wilson. themselves heard for the first time today. Chance of Scottish from the corner on the member side of the stadium. Yes, a well oiled uh, chant it is, too, by the sound of it. They're slurring a little. Yeah. Now, chance for the midfield. And that's a pretty effective kick because he's found open space and it's a good chase. Gain of about 40 metres. Yeah, the overseas boy just slipped when he tried to get in. It's a, they've done well to keep it here. Again, trying to probe for, for space. That. Here's an opportunity for... Flicked out the back of his hand, but all he did was put his own player under huge pressure. And Munro... Clears in the last line. So what we've 
had six and a half minutes of play. Still no score. And uh, yeah, it's six, six and a half minutes. Um, and I, I think if you're the type who plays Scottish Excel's coach, you're a lot happier there than you were in yesterday's game, where they never really get into the game against overseas old boys. So it's um, it's just whether they can sustain this pressure. Yeah, they lost that match by 15 to five, but they've stuck to their guns and they've played well today. Strong running there by Lewis Bird. And there's another probing kick and the chase is on. Has he got the legs? I think he has. Beautiful right. work by Rubini Kumbu. Rubini Kumbu, as I say, one of our Highlands and Islands select. Absolutely great score. Lovely kick from Tom Wilson. Saw the space, put it through. 5-0, Taiku plays Scottish Excels. Well, his football brain uh, has really shone through in this tournament for mine. Tom Wilson, the captain, he knows where the space is. And that the kicking game has been actually very good, hasn't it, in this game so far? Yeah, has been. Um, I, I had a word with Tom Wilson yesterday because I felt in the first game that they won, they seemed to kick an awful lot of ball away in. They'd come out with a game plan, he said, in the first day that from their own inside the road they would just kick long and pressurise. I think the game's evolved a little bit since then. They've played a bit more of it. Yeah, they, that, that was a great attacking kick. And they, they kicked away from uh, the opposition players as well. The conversion into was the successful. So Rubini Kumbu, the 27-year-old from formerly from Northland in New Zealand. Five points to nil in favour of the Exiles. Taiku plays Scottish Exiles. The rugby club was formed in 2011. Turnover to Scott, no, to Scottish Exiles. Cabu on the outside Here he again. goes again. Can they stop him? On well, some desperate defence. And uh, already he's a, a danger man. Showing how elusive he is when he gets a bit of time and space. So it's 10 minutes each way. 10 players per side. Rolling substitutions are allowed. Uh, you can make them once in each half and also at half time. And what we've seen in this tournament is sometimes six and Scottish. seven. Well, it's just reset, which is good to see because referees have been penalising teams for you know going around the corner. Um, and there was nothing illegal from either team there. It just swung round. Well, certainly a good shunt on from Taiku Place Scottish Exiles. They've also formed the Ho Hong Kong Scottish Foundation. It's Hong Kong Scottish. The team, was, the club was formed about 11 years ago. I got it, and it's taken this long to actually start to get charitable status for the foundation. Right. But they do a lot of other stuff. That's really good. Nice oh, dummy, which is created chance, break some out chance. chance here. Two on out one, out. and the less said about the pass, the better. What a shame. That's oh, and he seems to have blown it just a couple of things early for half time, but I don't think any player will be complaining. 5-0, um, Taiku place, Scottish Exiles. Um, well worth it at the moment, but I have to say, Gordon, overseas old boys have not had the ball. And when they've got the ball, they've looked really good in the last days, two days. So They certainly have looked good. That, and that's that's the key. They, I think they were very disappointed to just lose narrowly in their quarterfinal. Yes. Um, they had their eyes set on the, on the cup competition, and they've certainly had some very good moments in the tournament to date. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think realistically, throughout the tournament, the, the, this this final was the best that Taiku play Scottish Exiles would really have aimed at. Yep. Whereas I think um, overseas old boys just maybe came with slightly higher ambitions than a couple of them. There's a good game for rugby. Yeah, they came up against a, a, a red hot Shogun side in that quarter final. I'll be taking a break uh, during the women's final, which you're doing with Kim. Yes. And then we'll be back for the men's final, which I think will be a humdinger. Will be a cracker, yes. Yeah, yeah. A bit of an Australian-New Zealand flavour. Yeah, um, and, um, I'm sure we can find a Scotsman in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I think I will, yeah. yeah. I think, I, I, I think the, the pig barbarians making the final is just nice. New team in the tournament. 
just gives it a bit of flavour. Obviously, the Shogun. Um, they'll come with. They've got long experience of this kind of tournament, so we'll see how it goes. Shogun were the uh, beaten grand finalists last year as Samurai. They went down to YCAC, tradition YCAC, who they beat in the semi-final here. Uh, when YCAC had the game well and truly in their keeping and, and made a horrible mistake right at the end, most unfortunate. And uh, the, the opposition were able to stay, score. Staying in the game was yeah. a thing for sure, but exactly, yeah. yeah. That's a great clearing kick, actually. Just get back, way back into the crowd, can't take it quickly. Oh, past the 10 metre. Oh, no, the no, sorry, line. The assistant referee's got them back to nearly halfway. Still a great clearance, but platform for overseas old boys to attack from. Their ball, their throw in. Dylan McCann. An overthrow, that's, that's, that's been prevalent throughout this tournament. Number of overthrows from the attacking team. They have to release him once his knee's on the ground. And now it's a, a, a matter of holding yeah. on to the ball. That's Rubeni again, just showing the physicality of the South Seas. Some high-stepping. Momo managed to offload. And they're keeping the ball alive here. Harrison King. Out wide is Campbell, and they won't stop Campbell from there. Rue Campbell does it. And he stepped inside to get closer. Um, a hint of a side step. Hint of the side step. I don't, know, I don't think the McDonald's in the world will be too happy. I never should have at these Campbells. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually played great through this tournament. He's been really good. Um, won them some turnovers, been really physical. And, he, and even these two yards he stepped inside at the end, just make it a bit easier for the conversion, could be critical late in this game. Well, that's been a feature of his game, hasn't it? He's, he's hard straight running. Yeah. Hard, and great he's defense. been running, running into gaps. Yeah. Right, set up in the midfield by the tri Rubeni Kabu. That carry in the midfield, though. Just put the overseas old boys on the back foot. And the conversion is not good. So it remains overseas, uh, streamlined sports, overseas old boys. Nil. Taiku plays Scottish Exiles 10. Eight minutes to go. And Again, some good clearance from Harrison King and the wide pass out there. Still a bit of work to do. So it's time for, for old boys to get their game together here. They've played every Hong Kong football club 10 since 2003. They won the plate in 2016. So they'd love to repeat it here this evening in 2024. They were beaten in the uh, the cup semi-final last year by Samurai. And there's an opportunity here. The man with that it's blue wow. headgear. Brilliantly executed two and one there from overseas old boys. No, number 11, uh, Tom Ruhi Huyu. Tommy Ruhi, who, whose nickname, Tommy, something to do with super fast boots. You hear it there, uh, he's quick. And he's only 18 years of age. He plays locally. Yep. So great to see these young guys getting their opportunity. Scottish, a couple of walking wounded coming off the park there. Substitutes taking on. And the kickoff is gathered by Taiku Play Scottish XLs. So it's a fascinating game now. All to play for. Six and a half minutes remaining. Great straight carry again, though, just to set up the next phase. Scottish just holding on to that ball there. Well, this, that one's rolling in over need, end. They need the chasers in a line there. They're a bit disjointed, the chase. Broomfield moved it into space. Good charge by Le Tawa. This is Le Lua. That's rather a, that's a penalty overseas, old boys. 
this is the momentum shift we were talking about, Gordon. Uh, this is when Scottish Taiku play, Scottish Exiles just got to dig in. Yeah, the Exiles, have, they've just fallen into a flat spot at the moment. And a couple of penalty oh decisions just put you in the back foot. So a trade, old boys. They have this great tradition of, of playing uh, local players as well, the old boys, and promising youngsters. Let's see what these big men out wide can do. Again, to overseas old boys, just front football all the time at the moment. Hasn't been much opportunity for Daryl William. I think that's another penalty advantage we're playing. Awesome soccer skills. Oh! Oh no! <laughs> well, that was remarkable there. There was. It's an offside it was more like penalty. A, yeah, yeah. More like a game at Tottenham Stadium. <laughs> a wicked bounce of the ball. He was maybe he was brought down by the player behind him. But anyway, it was it's back for a penalty advantage anyway. Again, Tom Wilson uh, saved the day in the last line. This, this is scrum called Taiku plays. This is this is just a critical phase of the game because if. If old boys score, it's not going to be an awful lot of time left. Um, so they really want to dig in their defence here. And we've got four substitutions coming on, maybe even five. And uh, the speed to Daryl Williams coming off, so yeah, he's had no opportunity. They're attacking scrum. I think they, maybe, they might just have loaded up the big boys to try and win the scrum here. Even go for the penalty. Well, they've not they've called a penalty system, but they just keep the pressure on. Well, we've seen some some timely substitutions at crucial stages in these big games, the pointy end games. Short pass, but again, some very great good defence. Great great counter ruck from Scottish. Yeah, it's a brilliant counter ruck there from Lewis Bird. And the penalty goes for the Exiles. That was a great bit of defence. Will that prove to be a, a real turning point in the game? Because certainly old boys were looking very threatening. <laughs> Fresh legs on for Taiku Police Scottish Exiles. All, all about their structure now. They've just got to win this line out and play some phase rugby. Two and a half minutes to go. 10-7 in favour of the Exiles on the left. And, uh, taking off Tom Wilson there, who really controls the game for Taiku's place against Exiles. Through Ed, oh, that's a penalty, that's a... Well, we saw a, I think we saw a punch throw in there. That was, that was unnecessary. The man Sen on the sen on sensibly that somebody held back the players off the bench that went to walk mm -hmm. on the pitch there. It's all calmed down. I think, was it you and McCurdy? Seemed to cop one there, and that's when it really erupted. But let's see if the officials. The, the tackle was high. It's uh, number 11. Um, Ewan McCurdy. Well, it, it looks a bit like number 12 from overseas or boys was a bit guilty there, but I think he was provoked slightly. I think some, some muck was thrown at him. There's two number 12s in overseas old yeah. boys, by the way. So Big Tony, Tony and Tony, Tony. Tony Lambeau. Yeah. 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 It wasn't the punch, it was just a... Yeah, yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. a palm. Nice to see that they just played on. Yeah. So we're inside the last minute in this plate final. And Taiku play Scottish Exiles. Holding on.
secure line out ball. That's Merv Low. Please, 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 second team rugby for local team. Um, and, uh, what was the Tigers? Um, Kambu made a, a, a great 10 meter burst there. He's been a very influential play, player for Taiku Place Scottish Exiles. They're running the clock down now. There's nine seconds uh, to go. A, they need to be a bit yeah. more positive than this. They'll get turned over. Well, they're looking at the clock, I think. Can they get a turnover? Leave the half back alone. Time's up on the clock. They have only got to kick it out. And there it is. The referee says that's it. Well, great final, Gordon. Um, and I mean, I think overseas old boys will be quite disappointed because they were quite dominant against Scottish XL just to do it. You know, the bounce of the ball in this game. They just never quite got it early on. Um, and Taiku plays Scottish XL. They've got to be very pleased. I think, particularly with the bench they brought on for the last three minutes, they took off some of their key players yeah. and brought on the fresh legs, and they did very well. Well, it was a gamble there to replace uh, Tom Wilson, but. Uh, the exiles held together, didn't they? Yeah, and they yeah a lot of them showed, do. They and showed the a lot that, of heart. And the ones that don't play together are the real superstars. A couple of real, they brought in some X Factor players and they did add to it. Yes, uh, um, most definitely. Yeah, so, really good. so, there is the, the plate going to Taiku Place Scottish Exiles. And, John, you're a, a very happy man. I, that grins almost spread right across the commentary box yep. but that was a very courageous victory there and nothing in it really no nothing in it i mean I, I, just to tell the truth what that one facet of this change that is different maybe it's because there are fewer teams is in the first day you used to always get some huge score lines yes and then it tightened up with it once the seedings there haven't really been many blowout games at all in this tournament Hey, so everything's been competitive, which is great to watch. I'm going to hand this over to Kim for the ladies' final, ladies' okay. cup final, which we'll be doing, and I'll be back with you for the men's And it's cup an all-China affair. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Well, we saw a, a, a magnificent cup semi-final, and it was YCAC, tradition YCAC. Um, from Tokyo, the Yokohama Country and Athletic Club, going down at the death in, in an amazing outcome to Shogun RFC. And now we are ready, Kim, for the All China Showdown. Ah, oh, it's going to be a, a, a fun affair. What's really interesting to me, this is actually the opening game for these two teams. Uh, and Shandong Rugby lost 10-22 to China Five Stars, so China Five Stars. But I do feel like Shandong Rugby, particularly today, and the earlier games I saw of them today, have just looked so on fire. And I feel like they could edge it this time, so I think we're in for like a great final. It's very interesting um, speaking to Sir Gordon Titchens, who's the, he's now the uh, director of uh, coaches and sevens in China. and. Um, He's looking at a, a few of the players in the Shandong team tonight. They're looking at them right through the tournament, actually. And um, there's a, a three young ladies. They're only teenagers who could well be added to the, the, the National Sevens team in China. So this is the beauty of this tournament. This Shandong uh, Rugby Club provincial team have come here and they've unearthed some real stars. Yeah, it's pre it provides such a great opportunity for players to uh, show off their skills but also their rugby brains, what they bring to a team on a, on a high platform. They're playing players uh, of experience, players that in setups, whether it be in Australia and New Zealand setups, in the UK, you've got such an array of players and stars of rugby. Um, so fantastic for young players, as you said, to be able to put their hands up um, and people to take notice. China so the, Five the, Stars, the, of course, is the, the development team that's come through. So pre presentation of the medallions, the official presentation by the chair of the Hong Kong China Rugby Union. Chris Brook on the, the left there. Scottish exiles beaming as they should. 
They've certainly played some exciting rugby in the last two days. Yes, we're looking um, through their performances, the Scottish Exiles. They lost. They won their first game against uh, Murad Apache. And, and then they lost to uh, Sports Old Boys by 15 to 5. And they had a 17-0 draw with um, Hong Kong Football Club, the Texas. That was the last match last night. the last night. match of the game. I was yeah. here. It was one of the most exciting matches we've seen over these two days of rugby. And they got to have a little redo with Hong Kong Football Club today. Although, of course, they did go, go down to Shogun. 29-7 in the men's cup quarterfinal. 29-7, yeah. And then in the plate semi-final, they downed um, the Changchu Lions by 24 to 12, and that was an important victory for them. And I must say, the Lions did impress the Changchu Lions right through this tournament. They're a side that are going to only improve, and they would have gained a lot of experience from this outing. But well yeah. done to the Taipu Place Scottish Exiles with 10 local players in the team. A couple of Fijian seven stars. And also there in the background is Brad Hemapo. You can just see him there in the middle, right in the back. Um, he is from the Brothers Club in Brisbane. We'll just see if we can pick him out. There he is with, with, with the sleeveless uh, singlet on at the back there, the big man in the middle. Formerly of Canterbury, he played with some of the great All Blacks, uh, Dan Carter, Richie McCaw, and he's recently won the Australian Club Championship for Brothers when they downed Randwick. And of course, Brothers beat West in the grand final in Brisbane last year. There he is on the right-hand side, and he's a, a very popular figure, and he's a, a math, science and PE teacher at Nudgee College. And one of his pupils from last year was in this squad here today, only 18 years of age, Ollie Clark. So that's a great story. It's an awesome story. Big smiles around there from Scottish Exile. Of course, overseas old boys themselves have had a wonderful tournament. Consolation then for the old boys. Yeah, a few disappointed faces there, but really done well these last two days as well. It's a tough tournament. This Hong Kong Football Club Tradition 10s. Today has been a day full of playoff rugby. No second chances. And they've got a, certainly got a good sprinkling of uh, New Zealanders in their side. Uh, Vatambua from Waitamata. Um, just looking down the list, uh, Tom Uhiu uh, is, a, is a Kiwi. And uh, also Luca Fuller, only 19 years of age, um, played for the New Zealand Maori Sevens team. And uh, Jack Barnes from the Crusaders Academy. So um, PC Le Lua from Northland in New Zealand. And uh, Thomas Davery, another Crusader who's with the Crusaders Academy. So good to see all those young players getting the opportunity. And that's this is a very high standard competition. This is probably the highest standard of tennis rugby we've seen so far in Hong Kong this year. Yeah, this tournament's been going for many a year. It's the second year that we've had a, a women's section in as well, which has been absolutely fantastic. We've had eight women's teams compete. There's only two left standing, Shandong Rugby Club and China Five Stars, both teams from China, which I think just really speaks into the development of Chinese rugby. Yes, looking at the performances so far the china five stars now uh, they're uh, part of the national team but they're all development players the the number one chinese uh, sevens team is is in china at the moment they're actually training at the olympic um, academy in uh, in beijing 
or they may have just moved from there but um, these you can look at the faces of these young ladies on both sides and they're mainly teenagers mm. it's a young team we have for a great experience with both teams lining up here we've seen some excellent rugby from both of them so the the chinese sevens team playing in the sort of the tier two to the the world series circuit the challenger series and they are dominating that and um, they play the the final tournament in mm -hmm. poland and um, they're leading they've been unbeaten and they're vying for a place not only uh, in the the full-blown professional circuit next year but also there's one remaining spot in the olympics so it's quite a drawn-out process but the chinese women's sevens team still have a chance of making the paris olympics and all of these young players um, are certainly being watched and uh, sir gordon oh, titchens we've, we've got the fireworks as our women's cup final teams run out this is shandong rugby club they're playing in red china five stars in the black on screen there you can see shandong rugby club they're in their huddle what a big moment for them. There's China Five Stars. Both of these teams play a very disciplined game. They look like they've trained very hard and well together. They seem to know each other well. It's going to be about who takes the big moment of playing in a final better. He plays better heads up rugby. He capitalizes on the little opportunities, sometimes the surprise opportunities. China five sides are going to be ready there to kick off. We've got packed crowds here down at the Hong Kong Football Club and it's getting very quiet. We're about to kick off. It's exciting stuff. Yes, well, you made that uh, comment um, how the China five stars won the, the opening match against their opponents here tonight, Shandong, by 22 to 10. But uh, you feel after what you've seen that maybe the tables could be turned. I was, I was really impressed by uh, Shandong Rugby Club this morning and their opening game today. Um, so I, I do just think we're going to be in for a really great finals battle. Here we go. Beautifully taken there, Shandong Rugby Club in possession for this Women's Cup final. Shandong founded in 2010 and I love their philosophy Kim it's integrity enthusiasm discipline unity and respect and it's all about stick to your dreams and never give up fight hard and be fearless and love we've it. seen certainly seen that from both of these teams it's certainly fearless going into contact there and looking to run the ball wide oh. Whole shut down well there by China Five Stars. Aggie Poon wrapping the final here. Obviously very well known. She's the Hong Kong Seven Star. She's now moved into refing. I, I saw her with a couple of ice packs on her calves and quads um, about an hour ago, but she's moving freely. It's tough work being a ref. Number 10, Xiao Ying. We're moving it left. Going into contact, great speed there. Good support at the breakdown. Move it back to the other side. Once again, trying to get through the middle and see if we can create some space there. Well shut down by China Five Stars. Been on defense this whole match so far. Well, the great thing about both of these sides, you, you'll see they're uh, so fit. Mm. And they've given away size uh, to a lot of the other teams in the competition, but they've been over overcome that even in the set pieces, in the scrums and, and in the malls. But their technique at the breakdown is so good. Mm. They protect the ball and they're very fast. And they tackle hard. Yeah, I've seen, we've seen some really competitive breakdowns in this tournament. Good lines there. Excellent defense there on the wings from China Five Stars. Number 28, Mao Xiandan. 
finally they go to the boots up to halfway but there's a bit of an arm wrestle there early on it's a war of attrition and a good chase potential to make a bit of ground comes with the risk of opening up too much space players have realigned well nicely and obviously china five stars with ball in hand for the first time driving forward excellent fight there that's gained about 10 meters space oh, we found some space down the middle number 24 wang Wu. she scored five tries the tournament an absolute danger for them oh what an exciting opening try there of this women's cup final china five stars getting first blood well it was a, a stalemate wasn't it and finally some pace and beating the opponent on the outside just blinding acceleration off the mark a little step the gap came and it was no contest thereafter Liao Julie gets the conversion This one. And then the support from Ma. Beautifully done. Uh, China five stars to the opening try. It is 7 0. China five stars up over Shandong Rugby Club. Beautifully taken there. Shandong will want to hit back here. They worked so hard at the beginning of this game, kept the ball in hand for so long. Didn't gain much territory there, got no point in the board for it. No point having the possession if you're not going to do anything with it. Fighting forward they go, they're going to once yeah. again try to find some space at the middle. Well they're just operating a long way behind the advantage line, they've been held up here we've and we've it's going to be the, a turnover. We've seen them all used a few times in this tournament. straight into our first scrum of the game we're being uh, suffocated by the china five stars defense which is moving up so quickly and uh, it's an umbrella defense and uh, they're really struggling to to work out how to find a way through it and getting caught so far uh, behind that advantage line it's a nice quick exit from the ball there Kang Jian Tiang in the scrum half. Haven't seen too many dive passes this tournament. Oh, little dummy. Moving on left there. Oh, penalty though, holding on. Chen Dong taking it quickly. Shaking off one tackler. They're moving fast there at the breakdown. Pass though goes a little awry. You saw the momentum wasted there with a loose pass. And there's a steal. It's back in the hands of China Five Stars. And to come back to the mark. Number 20, Joe. They're asking for the scram. He had a very quick ball in ball out of scrum just now. And you can see all those young faces. Um, as Sir Gordon Titchens mentioned, they're 18 and 19 year olds. And uh, he's looking at uh, number four, Ren. Also number seven, Gao. And the song, if she gets on, she's very tall. So. Those three players in the red team, looking at them um, as possible prospects for the, the national sevens team. Once again, you need to come back to Mark. And again, we're going for another scrap here. Had an attempt to go down the blind side. 
well, you, I get the feeling that the China five stars feel that they are the superior team and we're showing Shandong Rugby Club who's the boss here. But Shandong have been very determined in defence. It was just that one defensive error that separated the two teams. Sometimes that's the, the nature of tens. But there's only one try separating the two teams here. Two minutes. Okay, quite a few. Before half time. It's a set play here, kind of slowed down the momentum. Shandong Rugby Club on attack. Good strong running once again from them. Getting tackled a bit at the breakdown here. China Five Stars looking for the turnover. And they will come away with this. Some Player desperate, the there. desperate hands in there. Got to be able to hold your body weight. We've got Kang Jing Oh, here. this massive hit. It should the take a while. Of it certainly rattled the, the wax in her eardrums. Certainly might need to catch a breath. Right? We're trying to five stars on attack here. Ferociously hunting towards their try line. They're cranking up the pressure. Wing is there. Wu Jian is over for China Five Stars and that is try number two. And they really went up a gear there, didn't they? The oh. intensity level went noticeably up a couple of notches. Absolutely. You could just feel it. Poor Kang Jeng Tin still taking a few breaths after that enormous tackle. Conversion is not over. Gives our score 12-0, China Five Stars over Shandong Rugby Club in this Women's Cup Final. Clock is counting down the seconds of this first half. And look at the uh, the passing skills. The ball thrown out in front of the player. So often we've seen in this tournament, um, balls too high going behind the person, but that was a copybook finish. Uh, it's certainly something I noticed about both of these teams. They just look like they've run passing draw after passing draw with one another. Kick is taken well there by Shandong Rugby Club. So Shandong, which uh, eastern province, uh, sits on the Yellow Sea. Very large industrial and manufacturing area of China. Unfortunately, lost the ball. And China Five Stars looking for one more little bit of score before we break for half time. Recent try scorer Wu Jian is on hand again. Another penalty advantage. Oh, what a nice little ball that one was. Well, this will put them out of sight if they can finish off here. Needing a nine. Rough defenders hold steady. Beautiful tackle there. And they've managed to come away with the turnover, Shandong Rugby Club. So Shit. Shandong, Shit. desperate to try and get something out of this first half. But again, they're being pinned down inside their own quarter. Player gets down to her knees. Nobody's there to be nine. We're just running into a black wall at the moment. Yeah, this... To say is trying to five star defense is impenetrable, however, oh, Shandong Rugby Club almost found a way through, but that's going to bring us into half time. China five stars go in with that advantage 12 points over zero. Shandong Rugby Club, I mean, you just feel if uh, Shandong could just find a little hole somewhere. They could do some massive damage, but that defensive line of China five stars is holding so strong. And then when they are on attack, just looking deadly. Yes, the line speed in defense, um, they're up so quickly in the faces of Shandong, and they're really struggling. Uh, they're rattled uh, trying to work out how to get through this um, almost invincible black wall. But 
Shandong. Shandong. Importantly, they held out there before half time. Another try would have been disastrous. So they're still in the game. China five stars, though, very much in the driving seat at 12 0. So China five stars uh, made. This is their sevens team, made their Olympic debut at Tokyo in 2020. And as we mentioned, their national sevens team, there's still one spot available um, for a country in the Paris Ol Olympic sevens rugby tournament for women. And I see that number two, um, Zhang, is coming off the field, who was um, on the receiving end of that huge tackle. So importantly, uh, yes, there's an opportunity for the, the Chinese women's sevens team uh, still to make the rugby tournament at the Olympics in Paris. It celebrates 100 years of the last Olympics in Paris and rugby was played back in 1924 as well. Shandong Rugby Club will be kicking off the second half. Aggie Pim blows her whistle. And away we go. Oh, it's going straight up there. Players waiting to see if anyone will be tempted to touch it. That's an automatic free kick when you don't go the, the distance or any uh, indiscretion from the restart. China five stars uh, choosing to go with the scrum on the halfway line. They seem to be very confident with their scrumming. You must have all five forwards in the scrum uh, all the time, and only the halfback can pick the ball up from the scrum. No player involved in the scrum is allowed to pick the ball up. Yeah, so we've seen it quite a lot this tournament. There's a lot of pressure often applied to that halfback from the defending halfback. One nice thing about setting up a, a scrum setup is it, it potentially creates holes. You've drawn so many players into that scrum. There's only four of the defenders left out. So we get that ball out quickly. Players just diving over that time to seal off the ball. And that time they were caught. You can't get away with it twice in a row. Shandong showing a little bit of spirit here. I think they've had a fairly stern talking to at half time, but their execution's again letting them down. Bit of a wild pass there. It's not making it any easier for themselves. But some excellent running. Keep going, same direction. That wall, as you said, is moving up, moving up. China Five Stars really does a great job of not allowing an attacking team to... They have some numbers here, if they can take advantage. Good pass, however, she is brought down. Coming in on the side of the ruck that time, of the tackle. China Five Stars really need to let, not let the discipline get in the way. Again, the numbers are out on this side of the field. And they go the other way. Got right, a little grabber. We do have a fast chaser. Oh, and she catches her. Well, she certainly didn't play the ball straight away. Support got there quickly. So China Five Star is still in possession there. They're calming it down, going a bit slower. Calming it down, not rushing. They're right near the try line that they're defending. Sometimes the best way is just try to get <laughs> crash straight through. Aggie Pin. Oh, is reaching into that sock. And unfortunately, Number eight, Zhao Xiaoxi uh, from Chandong Rabbit Club will be sitting in the naughty chair for two minutes. Well, that's a, a critical error. Down 12 nil, six and a half minutes remaining in this championship final. It's just feeling like Shandong Rugby Club were building something. So that's certainly a blow for them. Of course, she will be able to come back on after her two minutes is done. But two minutes can be a very long time in a game like 10. 
the tradition, Hong Kong Football Club Thames, tradition, Asia's leading inter-dealer brokerage firm, stepped up as the major sponsor in 2023 and 24, coinciding with the introduction of the women's oh, competition. Oh, that's a beautiful run there from the scrum half. She's got a whole field to go, and she's been mowed down by Jaishi Jing. Will she get to her in time? No, what an incredible individual try there. From number 23, Kang Jingxian. She's got to be tired after that run. She's run almost the entire field. So that was off, off the scrum there. She put, ball came out of the scrum. She took it and she went. And then had to keep going and keep going. Yes, that was a, an act of burglary. She absolutely dumped out of the defence who fell for her dummy. And a rich reward. And Liao Julie with the extras. The score in their first round clash in the pool was 22 to 5. And what a textbook dummy pass that was. Again, the defense was flat foot at that time. And a nice gap appeared. To score a try, Sydney with the momentum had looked the other way. Speaks highly of this China five star team. Perhaps Another turnover, but ball lost forward. Perhaps also winning the mental game of the Shandong Rugby Club. We're, we're coming back for a scrum, and it'll be Shandong put in here. Number 10, Xiao Ying. Waiting for a forward pack to get it right. Shandong in, in red, making their tournament debut. Founded in 2010, as we mentioned. And they draw they draw from a population of a meagre 102 million people in their province. Only the best of the best make it. On the fight here. Moving the ball nicely. And it's been turned over by China Five Stars. Here's a little knock on. We'll go back. Three minutes remaining. Kim. Three minutes remaining. Ball's going back into Sandong Rugby's possession. We've got a few. A replacement coming on number five, Yu Xiao Xiao. Certainly been a lot of scrums in this final. It's been a very professional, very clinical performance by China Five Stars. They really haven't allowed Shandong any oxygen in this game. Shandong Rugby hoping to create something here. Fight on the contact there. Running it well. Ah, it's a big tackle in there. Such fight for the breakdown once again. The tackle coming in from Chen Xi Ying. Once again, Shandong Rugby, although managing to keep possession of the ball, just aren't making match ground and it looks like China Five Stars has turned it over once more and really not far out from their try line again it's all down to the physicality in defence ah, 
slid in to get that ball. Tricky. They still have it. Back left they go. Oh, little flick back. Aggie Pins hand up in the favor, China five stars. That's the other point, Kim, that Gordon Titchett was saying that they're really trying to focus on that physical side of the game at the breakdown uh, in their defense, but particularly at the breakdown. And I think we've seen that tonight. That's been a big difference oh, between the sides. Absolutely. It's something I've noticed uh, in this tournament. Really aggressive at the breakdown view. Oh, committing and that plays into that rack. Turnovers are happening. Mind you, Shandong have pulled off some bone shattering tackles as well tonight, haven't they? So just seconds remaining. This should be the last set piece of the game in this all China Women's Cup final. Oh, that's just a very clinical, clean line out there. The ease of their jump is something I've also noticed in those last two days. Oh, an exciting runner. That's an excellent pass there. She's got so much space out on the left. And she is over. The whistle is up. That's 21. Xiang Yu Tong. And you've just got to say what a... What a commanding performance for our final. I did think there'd be a little bit more in it. Shandong of Sydney plays some incredible rugby, particularly today. They just got no room to breathe. So not only can you give props to this China five sides attack, I think it's really their defense that allowed them to attack so well. And that is full time in this Women's Cup final. Our winners are China five stars. Very deservedly so. 24-0 final affair of Shandong Rugby Club. This development squad that feeds into the National China 7s and 15s program. Are the winners of the Hong Kong Football Club Tradition 10s 2024. These are your cup champions. You see them bowing to the crowd and having a photo moment. Look at the elation on everyone's faces. So wonderful. Thanking their coaches. Historic moment for China Five Stars. Downing their country women, Shandong Rugby Club, who are making their tournament debut and were certainly far from disgraced. They've performed splendidly right through this tournament. And uh, first ever all-China final in the women's competition. Mind you, this is only the, the second year. But these two teams have really been at it all the way through with their consistency and their skill level. And uh, I just saw Gordon Titchens at the back uh, of the China Five Stars. So Gordon Titchens. And uh, those young development players that were sent over to, to bolster this squad have certainly done the deed. There's our elated winners. For me. All smiles tonight. A victory lap of honor and a lot of them have their um, some family members here I noticed and they're really enjoying the moment walking over to their medal ceremony and I believe that um, Ada Milby who is the president of the Philippines Rugby Club will be making the the, the presentation just off to the right so philippines having a hand in yeah. 2024 
she is well known in women's rugby doing so much particularly for women's rugby in asia so she'll be well pleased to see a development side coming away with the gold Let it take. There's a bit of hobbling. I saw a nose all stuffed up. Certainly fought for this cup. Paul Christopher there handing the cup over. Paul Christopher, the Hong Kong Football Club Thames chairman. The women's cap. Champions getting ready to lift their trophy. Well done to China Five Stars. Yes, and some very young faces, and I'm sure we'll see a lot more of these players in future years. So we're building now to the men's uh, cup final. And China five stars celebrating the 36th edition of the tradition Hong Kong Football Club Tents. It's probably a good opportunity for us to mention all of the, the volunteers. I mean, all of the officials are, are volunteers that make it all happen. Um, the committee members, Bill Mason, Benita Lung, Evan Moore, Josh Stone, Paul McSheefrey, Rashini Turner, Stephen Das. Chairman Paul Christopher is managing partner for Murant, Asia and Pacific practice leader of the Corporate and Investments Fund in Asia. And uh, Murant, who sponsored uh, the Apache, winner of the Offshore Law Firm of the Year in Asia. So all volunteer officials, but a lot of terrific corporate sponsorship and backing for the tournament. And there's uh, Sir Gordon Titchens on the right-hand side there uh, with the baseball cap, with that, uh, speaking to that lady in pink. And he's a very happy man to see his young charges coming through. So thank you, Kim. It's been a pleasure. It's been so You've good. You've enjoyed yourself. Oh, I've had such a great two days of rugby. We're leading into, uh, obviously, a lot of fun with the Hong Kong Sevens. We'll see the best of the best women's and men's teams. We've got one more exciting uh, game of rugby here for you. It's the Men's Cup Final, Shogun RFC versus Pig Athletic Club. I think you're in for a bit of fun. I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm going to find me a good drink. I'm going to cheer the boys on. And I'll see everyone at the seven. Ladies and gentlemen, the final We're back. of the 2024 Tradition Hong Kong Football Club Tens Looms between Shogun RFC, Samurai as was, Terry Sands baby. He's been bringing players here for years, young players, experienced players. You've got to thank the support you get from people like him. And then obviously you get the Pig Athletic Club Babas, new to the tournament. Come here and they've blown away some good teams, some real athletes some big boys we, we've got a great final looming and i just think that we, we at this point we should probably thank all the sponsors reading them on the list come out re relatively in no order obviously tradition um as the comments on a screen before me so i should be able to read uh, we've got tradition obviously 
and then we've got Natixis, the home sponsor. We've got AIA, we've got Mourant, we're Mourant Apache New, Taiku Place, Scottish Point, Allied World, Streamline, Sports, they did overseas old boys who once again just lost the final. Always a great team. Budva, we need a beer sponsor. Shoford Press, Samurai, his Havas play, and Haywards, the Tropics teams both came, they were great. So the final looms, and that's actually your 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 move in to a weekend of sheer enjoyment and debauchery. Right next to me, I've got Australia's answer to Bill McLaren knows more about every player in each team than I've ever, than, 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 I, than I know about my own, myself quite honestly well my, one of my great joys was always on a wallaby tour going to Hoik and uh, and visiting the home of the great Bill McLaren yeah, we who's the greatest rugby commentator of all time just did it so well and, and imitates that we his, 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 his cousin came the first time we took Hong Kong Scottish Hong Kong Scottish his first ever game was at Melrose Sevens yeah, Hong Kong Scottish Gate, first ever game yes. was at Melrose Sevens, and we were in Bill McLaren, as it was his cousin, a nephew, worked for the BBC, we did the interview, but it was just spectacular, and, and, and it, the, the Borders is just such a home of rugby, and McLaren was just something, there, there's a few of us still got a bad taste in their mouth that he never got a knighthood, because yes, well, he was well, such a Did you ever taste thing. one of his hoik balls? No, 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 no. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, of course I have, mate, I'm, I'm a Scotsman with a sweet tooth, <laughs> but he was, you know, the man that said a day out of hoik was a day wasted. Yes. You know, and travelled the world commentating in rugby, and showed the respect to all the players, you know, and, and, yeah, yeah, and well, some he, wonderful He used lines. to come here and I was commentating on the on the sevens back in the 80s for a decade into the early 90s bill used to come over and i used to take him around on the underground to get to all the training grounds because it, i mean he'd come here to happy valley but no way he could do it by himself so i was his chaperone as well and he would always have his tin of hoik balls for the players and that was his way of having a conversation I, getting a little bit of background yeah. on the players which is all part of his uh, Wonderful commentary and, and style. You, you imagine, could you imagine? Because I, I was, I went to 2011 the World Cup in, in New Zealand. Actually, we, we got hospitality in an engineering company's room that I got to. Uh, and Hicker Reed was our. Hicker Reed was our. Was our um, the unemployed nightclub bouncer. Yeah, but yeah. he <laughs> was the guy that Bill McQuarren crucified. So christened some magnificent name. And we we were in this when we were playing England. We had to beat them by eight. We would have won if we just had to win, but we lost. But they all sang songs, and there was about five of us. One young boy that was crying. Four of us that were experienced older Scottish rugby fans that said, "Right, we've lost. That happens a lot. Let's go drinking." But um, the Hickory they sang, and I did Scottish poems back to them because I can't sing. But we, the hosting and that were, I mean, and rugby just brings them all together. And, yes. and we talked to him about Bill McLaren because that's what you talk about, you know. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. It's and yeah. and it's, it's almost more notable because there's so many broadcasters now, so therefore there's quite a number of not very good commentators. Yeah. Well, anyway. I think it's it, it, you're getting so many uh, young commentators coming through now, which is encouraging. And yes. there, there's so much rugby. Everything is streamed now. Yes. There's not a rugby match played anywhere that someone's not doing a stream coverage. The man, man behind the semi that was doing a lot of the commentator, he used to run Asia. What was the what was the rugby thing you ran Asia rugby? Rugby Asia Channel and that right. he used to go to tournaments around the England just never quite get the funding but it was it was before streaming really yes. before streaming you were but ahead of your really time Sammy yeah. yeah 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 and he Sammy yeah. I've got to be as a man here from long time Hong Kong with I've talked about you about Winnie Antonio bringing over tell me who's going to win the final oh it should be a close one but I think uh, maybe the uh, oh I'm not sure it's hard to tell what do you think pick one of two Sammy the winner. I think Shogun, Shogun will start favourites. Pardon? They'll start favourites, won't they? I, I, oh, I think so, because they, 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 because Pick Athletic Club Barbers are new to the tournament, but they've got some quality players. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. And I'll tell you what, there might be a couple of blow-ups here as well that got a bit pissy in the, in the semis. Yeah, I, I think Shogun... And I'd quite like the Pig Babas. Yeah, yeah. But although, I'll credit to Terry, he's lost a lot of finals. And I, so it'd be quite good if they won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one thing we know that um, James McGregor will certainly be a marked man in this contest. Who will be? James McGregor. Oh, absolutely. For Pig Athletic. They're going to have to I, shut him I down. Think that, I think Shogun are the kind of team to mark him as well. Yeah, they will. Yeah, they yeah, will. Yeah, but, um, 
he'll be underplaying his hand, yeah. I'd suggest. And, and I think, um, from my point of view, um, I think it was... I get this wrong in Shogun... It was one guy, I always got his name wrong, standout. Semi, who was the standout player with Shogun earlier on? The boy with the hair? That, that's quite a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a bit of a pity, Semi, that in the plate final of the ladies, the big young girl from Wellington was injured, so the boots didn't get to run on. Yeah, but you know, it's, 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 it looks like a small, hopefully a small injury. And she's a young kid. Here we go. Final. So the grand final is underway. The tradition Hong Kong Football Club tens in 2024. And immediately, Pig Athletic have been dispossessed illegally, says the referee. Yeah, there's always going to be some big contact over the first rock, and the ones that get out of jail here are Pig Athletic. They come with the first penalty. And it's James McGregor with that uh, long, left hefty left boot. But it's been, has it been kept in by Shogun? It has. Kick it back. Well, that's a feel, that's a feel each other out because I think later in the game Shogun would open that out. He had three PS players. I'm surprised they him. didn't actually. Yeah. Plenty of space there, and it's giving the ball back to the opposition. Right on the 10 metre line. He's McGregor. He's elusive. I think essentially he's very, very quick, Gordon. Yeah. That's the thing. Another penalty to the pig babas. So McGregor's going to opt for the line out. Referee is Sam Adam. Inside the first couple of minutes of the game. And it's all attack now for Pig Athletic Barbarians. Pig Athletic Club, PAC. The big number 10 for Sita. Here's the danger man. He's been caught, well caught. They've managed to scramble it back there. What a early pressure.